download from Triple J. For more music, current affairs, comedy and culture, triplej.net.au. And now... Hello world, pants off Australia. The whips are cracking, the surf's up, the doctor is in. It's just another afternoon when too much sport is barely enough. And now here's the team who can open the batting and take the new ball up the hill into the wind, who can turn defence into attack in the twinkling of an eye, who've enjoyed the highs and learnt from the lows, who are all the better for recent racing and in the wash-up at the end of the day win a lot more than they lose. It's the team of H.G. Nelson and rampaging Roy Slavin and the dominant backline of this sporting life. H.C. Ah. Yes. Thanks very much indeed, King Wally Yoda and the Soundproof Booth. I just lost communication with the booth there briefly. It was going well and then all of a sudden it just went. It just went. But, King, I heard enough to know that you're in terrific throat. Uh, and thanks to uh, Sarah Howell for the last uh, 14 or so hours of Super Sounds here at uh, the youth headquarters on the station that strangles the nation, Triple J. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, shareholders and school kids. Welcome to Triple J. I know that's only went too much, boys, barely enough. And welcome to, uh, well, what has been a weekend highlighted by the terrific concert for Nelson Mandela mm-hmm. overnight. Uh, I know Nelson can't get enough of Queen. And to see Brian May with his axe just doing what comes naturally. And, of course, Amy Winehouse, just tremendous. And there were so many greats. So sadly, Bob Gildoff didn't get a Guernsey because, uh, you know, everybody loves Bob. And the whole thing was an absolute triumph, I think, and especially to see the uh, Nelson Mandela there. Uh, and I'm just sad that somehow Rugby League didn't get a mention because Rugby League is hurting. Uh, both Roy and I were listening to your very sobering interview on crowd numbers in rugby league on the way to work today. From an angle, of course, we're out watching a few of the trot races out there at this new great track they built there. Terrific state-of-the-art trotting harness racing venue and crowds and food. And you can see why people are going to an angle and not rugby league. But more of that in a moment. Uh, the other great social event, of course, on the weekend was Sharky's wedding. Uh, if only those two events, Nelson... Well, those three events, uh, Nelson Mandela's 90th, the opening of the new track at Manangle and Sharky's Wedding could have coincided in the same geographic location. That would have been great. I could see Sharky's Wedding at Manangle. They've got terrific uh, catering facilities there. And uh, to imagine putting a, a bit of a, uh, um, uh, a stage up at one end for Amy Winehouse and so on to perform uh, would have been just great for Nelson Mandela. And I know he loves his harness racing. Fact. Uh, I thought Sharky could have gotten married at El Caballo Blanco because he owns... It. He does. A free venue. Mm, with and those white handed illusion horses. Uh, with, say, Chrissy coming in on one of those. In a carriage tow. And Sharky coming in on another one. Maybe uh, a modern black one or something. I don't know. And could the celebrant come in on a third one? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, you could have all the guests sitting on a white horse. horse. Be fantastic. Mm. Look, uh, to get the uh, table of knowledge agenda underway for another week, and uh, look, I, look, this one hit me late. And I somehow I hope it's not true. I didn't believe it. but uh, And I'm completely devoured by the news. If you do feel me faltering today, you'll know why. Is that the new million-dollar wheel has been axed over at nine. Mm. Uh, both Roy and I thought it was just about just finding its groove nicely with uh, all those extra, uh, you know, you could almost win a, uh, something or other on any stop. Car, that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, sure, the uh, it did, uh, well, let's put it this way, baby John Burgess was flushed out for a comment and he didn't. He said he didn't rate it. He gave it the thumbs so down. So it was a bit dull, so did Adriana. Well, I put this down to sour grapes. I might have mentioned this oh, to you at the I time. I you did, but I just thought it was at the wrong time. It was just a little, it's not a leading to the news sort of show. It's not. No, it's a five o'clock show, isn't it? At the earliest, yeah. at the latest, I should yeah. say. I, yeah. I said more as 3.30. <laughs> you know, I, I'd put it up against... You know, Huey's Cooking Adventures. Ah, uh, now you're talking. You know, they, or, they... or um, I don't know, Judge Judy. Mm. Well, I take your point entirely because, uh, you know, it's up against that suitcase show. Yes. Uh, we have to guess the number inside the suitcase. Yeah. Like, what number am I thinking of now? That's right. Uh, yeah. So that's, that, and the, the spinning, mm. it's too complicated. Yeah. People don't people, want to be no, challenged no, brain-wise. No, it's too hard. At 5.30. No, it's too you hard. You know, grapes of riff, you know, they yeah, don't want to be, they don't right. want to have to fish for that I no. instead of the A. Mm. Anyway, I put the uh, Burjo comments down to sour grapes, meaning that he would have liked to have done it. And I, I thought the show was doing a wonderful job of rekindling the wheel concept for a whole new generation of top-dollar spinners. I, You know, it's not easy to get that. People forget probably the wheel 
No one watched the wheel for the first, say, five years, mm. all those years ago when it came on. I mean, I don't know, when Burjo started spinning. Don't know. It would have been 25 years ago. I don't know. I don't know. In fact, I think there might have been a spinner prior to Burjo. There could easily have been. Mm. And Burjo brought glamour to it. Oh, he did a lot of a glamour to it. And a nice shirt. He brought a, a beautiful a very nice collar. Shirt. He brought collar. the shirt to it, mm. yes. Yeah. Look, I... Might have been Ernie Sigley, might have been the original. Well, that May fantastic? have been. I, I'm just guessing yeah. here. Yeah, it could easily have been. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure where we go with here with for wheel freaks. I mean, I'm not sure if they have a box set out of every uh, game Burjo ever played to keep you going. Mm. But, uh, I, look, I'm just open to suggestions. You know, I'll try and pass them on as best as I can to Channel 9. Elsewhere... Uh, and it used to be on Channel 7, I think, when Burjo had it, didn't it? Was. Oh, well, well, yeah, I think it came across from 7 to 9 yeah. with Burjo at the helm spinning and then he got sidetracked into catchphrase and then, then Burjo's, Burjo's catchphrase. catchphrase. Yeah. And then, sadly, uh, mm. still easing people into a little Anne Murray at the bottom of the hour. Mm. Uh, now, elsewhere in show, the Dancing with the Stars judge and top breakfast DJ, Todd McKenney, has chosen the... Uh, rather unusually, what I describe as the pants off defence, mm-hmm. uh, to explain his night of debauchery that found him bashing his head against a picket fence in a park in the wee hours of one Easter morning earlier this year. I think it was. He was set up, time. wasn't he? he was completely set up. Set up. The trousers were off, and people just loading them yeah. up with gear, yeah. and then giggled when he got busted by. Pot. I know, I know, but surely you know you've been to parties. I have. Oh. Where you, you're dancing so much, you're sweating so much, you think oh, I'm just going to take my trousers off. Uh, no, look, I've, I, I, that was exactly my next comment. Was, yeah, we get along to a lot of these exactly. pants. Exactly. They were great a few years back, but now, honestly, you can't trust mm. anybody no, to do the right no, thing. No, it's a sad state of affairs if you can't take your duds off and leave them on a lounge somewhere without someone... Put Loading them, them up. Yeah. Well, look, I've just got to say is that I always often ended up with someone else's duds. Yeah. Which was great. Uh, and mine always seemed to go missing, and if I did get my own back, they were always chock-a-block full of gear, which I then flushed down the toilet. That's my mm. advice if you go to these pants-off dudes. Mm. If you find anything in your trousers when you put it them back on... It doesn't belong to you. Yeah, it doesn't be- belong to you. Just yeah. flush it down the toilet, no questions to be asked. Mm. Uh, look, I did think it was an unusual and brave defence, put it that way, though, the mm. pants off. You know, as you point out, I did get excited. The mm. pants came off. Yeah, I danced absolutely. wildly. I you tell know, you what, there wouldn't be a judge in Australia... Who would convict? No, who no. wouldn't relate to that? No. That's true. That's true. Get, That's get, true. Get the, I don't know how many judges do as you've been to, but I've been to a few. Oh. And the, often the loudest noise in the first 20 minutes is the buckle hitting the floor. I know. I know. And I tell you what, there when the, when the uh, pants off sign comes up, mm-hmm. the first to drop them, yes. you know, from the high court. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, still with show, and this is very good news, uh, Pamela Anderson is housebound. Mm. Uh, look, I... I, I didn't realise that she didn't have anything to do and could come yeah. to Australia to be part of uh, Big Brother. I think it's just fantastic. Yeah, is it? When did she go into the house? Well, I don't know. I think within the last two weeks, I think. Well, she's not in there now, is she? No, she's not in no, there now. No, she's coming in soon. She's coming in soon, yeah. But mm. I think it'd be one of those little ratings buttons oh. that uh, would come to the Oh, end, it's a must know. view. Yeah, it's must see. view. You can see why they took, uh, you know, wheel yeah. off, though, because they would just get belted by the mm. Pamela Anderson's appearance in the house. Mm. Look, uh, oh, I mean, how the, the how the housemates going to react? I don't That's know. That's the thing, because they don't know. No, they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue. Only we on the outside. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Just oh, imagine, yeah. though. Not, 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 oh. Who is it? Yeah. Oh. It's... God, you look familiar. What's yeah, your name? who are you? <laughs> That's right. What are you doing here? Well, and then when Tommy, Tommy Lee, Lee? Yeah. well, Tommy Lee might turn up, mm. and I'd, I'd love to, you know, I reckon this is the greatest, you know, Let's face it, uh, Pam brings a lot of charm and... Oh, she does. ...you know, magic to the house. Yeah. And I reckon it's the greatest touch-up for a format since, speaking of Burjo, uh-huh. since John Burgess changed the name of catchphrase to Burjo's catchphrase. Yeah. Pamela Anderson in the house would yeah. be that great. There's no talk of Burjo going into the house, is oh, there? Well, look, I was going to say, um, look, I'd love to I'd see love to Tommy see Lee that. come. Uh, Tommy Lee as well as Pamela there, because mm. that'd be a real surprise. And not no... Mm. You know, obviously Pamela go in the house and then we're told Tommy Lee's coming as well because mm. Pamela's inside, she doesn't yeah. know. Uh, but, I mean, it, I mean, where this can go is just... It, I, know. I mean, it next to be Nelson Mandela. He'll be there, in that's the right. In the house. That's right. Just knock, knock, any year with Shark or someone well, like Shark. that. I mean, you don't well, know who to expect. Well, look, I tell you what, uh, remember a, a while ago, you may not remember this, I think Warwick Kappa was in the he house. Was. He was. That was great. Anthony Mundine went Anthony in the Mundine house. Anthony Mundine was the, in... He's got right. his nails painted. That's right. His toenails. Funny. Yeah. It's incredible. Funny. That was just... Unreal. And look, I, I'm just wondering if uh, the British Father of the Year, Peter Andre, mm. who's the forgotten man of Australian show business, mm. uh, look, I'm just wondering if he could go in the house because I know Tommy, Peter and Pam would be a threesome that'd 
mm. really get people thinking. Mm. Uh, tourism and the where the bloody hell are you disaster has been officially cle- declared now a disaster. Mm. It was very sad. It was, I had such great hopes oh, for it. Oh, it was a great campaign. Yeah, there it was, was funny, thing, you know. Funny. funny. If, funny. If, if you're overseas and you see oh, It's just funny. You just want to go. You do. You do. Now, the um, remember this, uh, it was a great, uh, I think, uh, you know, Michael Clark's girlfriend. Mm. Was, Laura Bingle. Laura Bingle was the boss of it. She was. Uh, headed it up. And, oh, I don't know if she wrote it. Oh, I think she might have been roped in to just, say the just to say the lines and, right. and be the you know the, the very fights. attractive figure. Yeah. The figure, figure, true figure. Mm. That's a better word. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, this has now been consigned to the ash can of history, and hopefully, mm. and I think this could just work. Is the minister of tourism Martin Ferguson mm. uh, could be the new face of a campaign with his rather unusual speaking style? Mm. He, I think, could pull in a lot of backpackers, high rollers and ordinary punters from across Asia and Europe to a gulag-style experience mm. uh, across rural and regional Australia. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, he's got that feel of somebody from yesteryear. I mean, well, He does, doesn't he? Yeah. And he could... It would be a real mm. interesting well, choice. Well, it would be unusual. Unusual and brave. <laughs> yeah. And exciting. Well, certainly people overseas would never have quite Who? heard an accent like that. They wouldn't. Or how does he speak? Can you characterise how he speaks? No, I can't. No, I can't no, either. No, it's a sort of lisp and uh, he has a curious... Dropping the, of the vowels the, sort of thing. All consonants yeah, seem it's to all, provide it's all, And no intonation. No, none whatsoever. No. No, it's as flat as our mm. landscape. And even... Mm. Now, look, boxing, and what a night it was Tuesday night at the Maya Music Bowl when the big fights returned to the open air. Look, it was a carnival atmosphere. At the bowl for the first time in a generation, a couple of gold nollies who went round in the main bout, which gone down way so late, I think many viewers had gone to bed. Um, it was pretty late in the night. You had to be a fairly interested or fueled up on the, uh, on, uh, you know, the sort of gear available at a pants-off night. Uh, it was Hall of Famer Jeff Fennick going to ground against his old nemesis, Hall of Famer Azuma Nelson. So many questions that had lingered, lingered over the careers of these greats were finally answered at the bowl on uh, Tuesday night. The bout was for redemption, obviously, for Jeff because he feels great now that the stain that he carried so long on the front of his trousers has been bleached away. And there was a surprise, uh, the new reform, should I say, the reformed new Seekers entertained the crowd between the bouts and joining the new Seekers in the Judith Durham role was Susie Fennick, Jeff's missus. She thrilled the crowd with her rendition of the carnival is over. And when it was time for the national anthem, but she did the right thing, she came out and sang Lionel Rose's I Thank You. Very good. Mm. It was just great. That's it wasn't fantastic. And when you say the new Seekers, were there any of the old Seekers amongst them? No. Was Athel Guy there? No, or Athel, Bruce no. Woodley? Or? No, 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 it's all new. Okay. And uh, now, it, look, it was pretty trouserless ringside. I mean, Kyle Sand was there. Uh, Ian Dicko Dixon lobbed. Ding Dong Wendell took his titanium head along. Shane Warne was introduced to the crowd as the world's greatest bowler. Mm. That was a nice touch. The boys from Underbelly uh, looked right at home and sadly... Oh, the Carl, cast were there as well? The cast were there, yeah. God, they were they there. get they'd around, around don't, don't they? 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 Carl Williams couldn't make it due to stir commitments, but Mick Gallo thrilled everybody genuinely with his mm. size. He's really bulked up. Mm. Uh, still with the sweet science, and there appear to be now five million large reasons why the Green Machine is thinking of slipping between the ropes in a mass to take on the greatest fighter in the world since the Cinderella Man. That's now fact. That is Chuck Mundine. Uh, I think... Uh, you know, obviously anybody think about it for that sort of freight, five million. And honestly, if they're five large on the table, the scripting will be out of this world. I understand uh, some of the writers from Home and Away are being called upon for something with flair and surprises. So that's the sticking point at the moment. Although I did see an item today in the paper that Danny Green mm. ha- casually suggested that he'd like to go drag racing and now has been offered a full-time job as a drag racer. Might get round to this in other wow. comments. Remarkable. Rugby League, and a quick reminder, the decider is on this Wednesday at the Girl. Uh, kick-off 7.30 at Homebush. Uh, it'll be a night for everyone who loves their Rugby League. And I, I, this whole new Blues lineup, with the inclusion of G- Junior Pierce boys, uh, Mitchell, for the first time, it's going to be fascinating to have another junior taking on the nutbags north of the Tweed. Mm. How, how have you seen, uh, without going into too mm. much detail, a uh, refreshing makeover for the Blues? Oh, I think so, yeah. Timely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And no, I'll tell you I, what, I think it's going to be just a fabulous event. And, and really, this spice that's been added now with Junior's Boy oh, and uh, Braith. Braith, having, having yeah. Braith there, that, you know, that very wise... Mm-hmm. Senior. F- and senior figure with the number six on his back mm. now. Uh, I, I Look, I, I, I just think it's going to be sensational. Uh. 
Right. You know, rugby league's night of nights. This is it. Right. I mean, there's no more dress rehearsal. <laughs> That's what I'd be saying to the boys. Would you describe this as the biggest game for rugby league? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, good. Yeah. Now, while it was great that Junior's chip got the goons here, how about the Morris chips, mm. uh, Brett and Josh? I mean, how much they feel about this snub at the selection table at the highest level? I mean, I hope the lads can put it behind them. Mm. And can I just point well, out Well, Brett and Josh were magical again last night. They were. And can I point out they have an uncanny ah. ability... To know, know where each other is at all times. At all times, I know. I, know. I tell you, he's nice to have back though. Jared Hayne, who's settled right down since he he's has, had a couple since of shots that shooting, yeah, yeah, in the cross earlier this mm. year, they settled right down. Mm. Good to have him back. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And, no, it's uh, fantastic. Mm, no, it's got a little bit of everything, and maybe the Morris boys could. Maybe the enough players will fall over between now and Wednesday night. You know, slip on path down. Maybe, but you know, you never. I, I wouldn't mind the Morris boys being there in the rooms to talk to the blokes, right? To, to tell them what it's like being. Twins playing rugby league for so long. With an own can. Yeah. <laughs> well, I noticed you pointed out to me that the last time, mm. uh, on the last time the nutbags got in uh, Lachlan Murdoch and somebody else to tell them what, how, what, what it's like in yeah, business. Yeah, Alan Cole, I think his name oh, might Alan be. Cole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would a former riveting. CEO of somewhere or other. But, uh, I mean, these are CEOs that have had... Experience, vast experience. Vast experience and have known Knox. Knox, yeah, True. You know, I mean, they've been they've, they've been kicked down, they've mm. and they've bounced back. Well, the thing is, they've had their you know they've been to a couple of trouserless dudes and had to go home nude. Because mm. let's face it, they've had you know Lachlan Murdoch. I mean, oh. how often has the ass been you yeah, know, out of the trousers there? Exactly, hundreds and hundreds. I mean, one tell just there. Oh, I mean, there's a story there. I, I mean, know. he might have one told him about one mm. tell. Mm. Maybe that's the story he mm. told him about. He had to move into a garage. He did with one tell. I know. It's just incredible. I mean, it just you know, and mm. the other bloke I don't know. Him I don't know him, but oh, I know yeah, he's had just a the hard stories. Mm. And doesn't it make that terrible, weak ploy that uh, you know Craig Bellamy got that bloke who wandered up and down Everest? Yeah. You know, to do everybody can wander up and down I Everest know. these days, but to be Lachlan Murdoch, there's only one of them. Mm. Mm. Uh, now, look, <clears throat> sadly, just a little bit of uh, bad news here is uh, remember that you can only be we can only be heard in the Eastern Time Zone. Yeah. From 7.30 p.m., so that's obviously Tasmania, uh, you know, Melbourne, Victoria, um, you know, ACT, New South Wales, Queensland. Mm. And the rest, I think, will have super requests with uh, whoever's presenting that on the night. Racing, and this is very sad news. Uh, while we opened a new track at Menangle today to great ap- uh, applause from everybody concerned with harness racing, the Queens- in Queensland, Albion Park, well... Look, there's Jim occupational health and safety issues concerning the Russ Inn stand, and the track has had to be closed till further notice. As many of you may remember, uh, the whole complex was a dream. The former Minister of Roads uh, in Queensland, Russ Inns, had it was a it was a dream to have a place where an ordinary Joe could go and watch the dish liquors and trots in comfort while having a couple of pies and a slab of beer without paying through the nose for it. Mm. Which seems to be a problem rugby league's got. Yeah, I mean, has. I n- never realised how bad it was. Those figures today. I know, I know. I think it was uh, Warren Ryan said he went with a whole wallet full of money mm. and came back with nothing mm. except a bucket of chips at one point. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I this... Mean, uh, rugby league's got to, got to address the food issue at venues. Food issue, yeah, that's what's keeping I mean, that's, away. that's number one. Get yeah. the food right. Uh, I mean, the product will sell itself. product will sell itself, you're absolutely right. But get the food right. I mean, I just... I, I was looking some old tapes of Rabs uh, calling State of Origin this year, and he said, mm. you know, uh, Origin, what a great product at one point. Mm. That is right. Are, it is right. Yeah, the food, the parking, yeah. the petrol, yeah. the house, the rage, yeah. all that sort of yeah. stuff. What was Rabs on the roast, was he? No, 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 this was just during the call the oh, other night. Okay. You know, I just yeah, went back right. and sort of wondered yep. how he went. Sure. You know. yep. uh, now, look, the uh, grandstand, well, a lot of, coming back to the Russ Hins grandstand at Albion Park, a lot of very ordinary work went into the build. You know, the usual story of government cost-cutting, well, the termites are in now and biting the hens on the bum and the whole shebang is about to fall down and understandably the Albion Park races have to go elsewhere. Look, I have been told where they're going. Mm. I think the trots are going somewhere in the, uh, in, in the Gold Coast direction and the dogs are heading north. Mm. Um, but understandably the races have gone elsewhere until the committee can get a working bee up and running and get a couple of acro pops in under the roof. And the Grand National, still with racing, the Grand National hurdle at over 4,000 metres of Flemington yesterday was an all-action affair with two-thirds of the field failing to complete the course. I think there were 13 runners. Mm. Originally, a nine failed to complete the mm. event. Mm. A couple of hoops ended up in hospital and the vets were calling for the screen so often I couldn't keep up. Uh, certainly before the horses had completed the first circuit, they had a number of horses down in serious trouble. And, you know, then... 
post who to post the clearing of correct weight, the predictable calls for the caper to be called off. I mean, how stupid is that? I mean, the hurdle was won by Derringer, mm. Derringer having his second hit out over the stumps, mm. and that showed the rest of the pillows just how easy the whole thing is. I, I just hope authority don't cave into the do-gooders with our pro-glacier agendas. I mean, I put the whole thing down to a hard track. You know, so little rain happening now mm. across right across Australia. Like, it pretends it's going to rain, then powders away. Mm. It's too hard a track. They're just going to have to find some water from somewhere and start watering. Yeah. Yeah, I, d- I didn't see the track as the problem. I just thought the standard of the horse is the problem. I mean, oh, the standard of the horse is the standard of the horses. But, 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 I mean, you can't have a grand national like that. I mean, you're going to have horses fall over. I mean, that's, that's the idea. That's why people go. Yes. Did you see To weed on? out the... Uh, dud horses. Yeah. And we've mentioned already today the opening of the Menangle Park in Wimbledon. What about Little Leighton? It's incredible. Oh. Fourth round clash with Roger. Oh. And don't tell me that Little couldn't pull Roger apart completely. I mean, apparently it's the brain game. Mm. Beating him at the brain game is the key to taking apart the Swiss mister. Uh, the world game and uh, final of Euro 2008 cooks up tomorrow morning, our time when the Spain take on the might of Germany. Uh, just one comment in passing. R- hitting Russians were pathetic in the semis. A disgrace. Thank goodness this overrated Dutch cheese is no longer in charge of the Socceroos. Thank Christ for that. And uh, with those ideas getting the agenda underway, it's time to let the dogs out. And we can do that by asking rampaging Roy Slavin. You got anything up the back of the kennel you want to unleash this week, Sport? Yeah, thanks, HG. Uh, a marvellous week. And what a beautiful day it is to be alive on a sunny day in wintertime. Does it get better? I don't think so. No. Now, uh, just speaking of rugby league, now, rugby league is flourishing, as we know, in uh, the United States... Uh, sorry, in the United Kingdom. Uh, it's birthplace, really, uh, and in uh, France. And England played France this week, and uh, England won fifty-six to eight. Wow! In what was described as a fantastic open Big test game, match. Yeah, game. yeah. Now, uh, Sean Marsh, I just pose the question: Could he be even better than Swampy was? His old man. Wow! So soon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just love the look of him. I mean, Swampy was such a doer. A doer opening batsman, whereas, you know, Swampy Junior, uh, the, the little swamp, uh, left-hander oh. and very aggressive. Yeah, no, he's fantastic. He's fantastic. Yeah, great to see. And no one could be prouder than uh, than Dad. Swamp when yeah, it no, comes swamp. to uh, Sean, Swampy Sean's two, work. Yeah. His name? yeah, I think so, Swamp mm. too, mm. Or Little Swamp. Now, speaking of Little, Little Aiton, as obviously H.E.'s mentioned this, he's, he's through to meet Roger and he's uh, promised to... Uh, Pull Roger's game apart Pull Roger's on game Monday apart. night. That's, right. That's what I've heard, and this is the way Little's going, and I think this is a good idea. A little bit disappointed that he was fined a thousand dollars for abusing some sort of some clown that was picking him up for foot foot faults. Uh, oh, the, that was uh, in the first uh, match, wasn't he? In the five setter against yeah. the Haas. Mm. Yeah, find him a thousand bucks. I mean, right. it's just That's very disappointing. Stupid. Yeah. Now, uh, Brad Haddon has cut short his tour with a broken finger, and I, I hope this isn't... It's always difficult when you're slipping in to replace, you know, a, a custodian that's been there for a hell of a long time, as it was with, with Gilly. I just hope that uh, this isn't the end of Brad Haddon. I, hope we, I don't know if we've seen the best of Brad Haddon. Uh, Casey Stoner, back in form, taking out the British Grand Prix... And what uh, hurts me and disappoints a lot of fans about this is the poor fan behaviour. Uh, little Casey was uh, abused mightily in his uh, triumphant lap, his lap of honour, uh, gobbed off, everyone was gobbing off at him. And uh, I just don't think this is right. And I think, uh, you know, British authorities have got to look at the fan base for uh, your MotoGP and maybe weed out the troublemakers. So this doesn't happen in the future. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd be hoping that Stephen Smith, our foreign minister, would be speaking to, well, perhaps even Gordon Brown. Gordon Brown? To get a bit of action in this behalf. Is there any, intru- is there any suggestion he's bike crazy? I don't know. I've no, no idea. He's, he's, I don't know. I find him a bit baffling. Yeah, baffling. Gordon Brown, he's just such a doer, Scott. Scott, yeah. You know, and I don't know. They don't where, give much away, do I they? don't know where his doerness stands in terms of... Mm. Uh, Fun. Uh, MotoGP. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the Chinese sailing facilities, uh, uh, it's utterly unacceptable. Utterly unacceptable. Were you surprised at all? Very right? surprised. I spoke to uh, a couple of our sailors during the week. Did you speak to Lars Klippich? I spoke to Lars Klippich, was the first person I spoke to. And Lars, 
you know, you you wouldn't find a more amenable guy than Lars. Lars, you know, he's a real take it on the chin merchant. Mm-hmm. You know, he just it's the rub of the green. You know, if he wins, he wins. If he doesn't, he doesn't, and he doesn't lose any sleep over it. Well, he's losing sleep over this. Is he? Even for Lars, it was just too too unacceptable. Mm-hmm. This uh, green algae they've got going there, it's just not right. I can't quite work out. It's in open water. Yeah, yeah. Something must be weirdly going yeah, wrong. Yeah. Well, that's right. That's right. Mm. Yeah, they've got. Toxins in there, I'd say. And, and they've got sort of boats harvesting it. Yeah, they're so. trying to, pathetically. Tidy it up? Yeah. Oh, Lord. I mean, it's, how, did they, how did those clowns get the Olympic Games? That, there's your question right there. Well, I don't know Kevin if Gosper voted for them. Did oh, Gosper vote yeah, for them? Do we know that as a fact? Yeah, I'm sure he did. God almighty. No sense. Um, uh, well, I tell you what, it wouldn't have happened under Samaranch's watch. It wouldn't, no. Samaranch's would have shot a few people. Yeah, I know, there. before letting the Chinese get it. Well, yeah. And if you uh, had, the, now, the Ollie Roos now went down to China 4-3 in Darwin. Uh, very disappointing result for our Ollie Roos. And we still yeah. don't know who's going to be, uh, you know, the seniors to join our Ollies. Is, uh, I'm hoping it's going to be, obviously, Harry and Big Mark. Dukes yeah. and Kewell. Yeah, Harry and Mark. And they've been given a deadline of this weekend to declare their availability for Olympic duty. Yeah. That is Kewell and Big Dukes. They've got till tonight, midnight, to, to give their it. thumbs up. Yes. Now, the very popular Andrew Bogut. Oh, yeah. He's unable to talk uh, to even talk to boomers, administrators, or coaches or anything until his NBA contract is finalised. Oh, I mean, by law, he's Lord. not allowed to talk to anyone. And I don't know how this is affecting our Olympic boomers' race. preparation oh, because they're going to build their game around Bogut. I mean, the whole game. I mean, that's it, Bogut. That's that's our plan. And yet, our go-to man, our number one, our the world's greatest centre since the Shack. He's been compared to the Shaq. Some have called him Shaq 2. Have they? Shaq 2? Shaq 2. Not allowed to talk to him. Now, what do they think? Uh, that they will be able to play for us or that he won't? Don't know. He Don't can't know. say. Well, mm. and he can't the, say. How about the lad from Thursday Island? There's a, uh, a bloke from Thursday Island, mm. J. Joe, I think his name oh, is. Yeah. He, he's somehow picked up a... Uh, is he in the Boomers? Not in the Boomers. No, he's picked up an NBA. Uh, oh, well, bird. Bogut would have got that for him. Yeah, Bogut, Bogut would have yeah, d- d- done the schmooze either yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have got him in. Well, no one's doing more for Australian basketball the in the Bogut. United States than Andrew Bogut. I oh, know, that's fact. That's the that's, fact. That's I'm just great. saying that's great. now. It's got to be said. Yeah. Now, South Korea's Park Taehwan. I'm reading that he looks set to take away Ian Thorpe's last world record, the 400 metres freestyle. Where's this bloke from? He's from South Korea. So, who said they could swim? I know. Come on. Park Taehwan. Can real. you see that name with world record? I can't. I no, can't. Honestly, it would take me a fair bit of hypnosis exactly. to get anywhere near those exactly. two things. Exactly. Exactly. And who's saying this? Don Talbot? No, I, 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 I've forgotten who. Well, it's his times that appear to be no, uh, doing scaring people. I just don't think it's right. And I think this bloke has got to be, without doubt, uh, some sort of drug abuser. Yeah. To get those sort of times. Yeah. I just hope they're doing enough blood testing on this bloke. Yeah. Now, Athletics Australia, on other Olympics oh, news, no, I know have selected story. no men to contest the 100, 200 metre sprint. No Shervo, no Patrick Johnson, no relay team. No relay team. No relay team. No. First time ever. On good news, however... Two bits of good news. Casey Delacqua has stormed into the world's top 40. Yeah. Our and little, remember, you can say thank Casey. you to Casey at Hopman Cup time in yeah, Perth. Yeah, when well, she's paired, partnered with Little Aiden. Little Aiden Hewitt. Yeah, our, yeah. our top Come on, 20 kid. man. Yeah. And uh, just finally, Mark Hensby. Yeah. Sadly, his ranking seems to have dropped a few places this week, and I don't know why. I mean, you would have thought with, with the man they call Tiger Tiger Woods... You know, on the sick list for the next nine yeah. months. You would have thought he would have gone up from 208 to 207. Seven. No. He's dropped to 216th. But still not forgotten. 
Ah, uh, Pendulum from uh, Perth and the other side from the CD in Silico on the life on Triple J. If you're an Australian proudly committed to finishing off at Gallipoli what our boys couldn't all those years ago, then you may be interested in the Enough is Enough Desert Crusade. For just $5 a week, direct debit from your bank account, you can join the crusade and receive the gum leaf, the Enough is Enough annual featuring a full colour spread, a list of the top 10 Australian plants for the backyard and a kids activity page highlighting the joys of model making, knot tying and how to spot teachers with non-Christian tendencies. And kids, you can win an Australian made Shanghai every month and go into the draw for a high powered slug gun made in America and a handsome pair of night vision goggles. To become a Crusade member, you need 100 points of identification, a reference from a Justice of the Peace and an introductory certificate from your Desert Crusade Regional Commander. Send away today and get the Gum Leaf Annual with Simpson and his donkey on the cover. Stress, mortgage, interest rates, council rates, bills, 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 pressure from the family, need of a new car, new house, school fees, food, it's endless. You need a bit of me time. Crystal Spa Gardens is a haven for those trapped in the mad maze of modern mayhem. Think how pleasant it would be to check in and lie back with the following treatments available 24-7. A lime wash enema, a hot rock workout, a cucumber cooled liquefied half mud face pack, a fish chilled lead blanket that can reduce stress levels to zero, a hot olive oil hose to replenish nervous energy, and finally... Share a pyramid with a genuine American Indian chief in full regalia where you sit in the silence of eternity, broken only by the Comanche drums of harvest. Crystal Spa Gardens, a place to forget where you're up to your neck in debt. This Sporting Life takes this opportunity to acknowledge all those Australians who were told to get stuffed by Kerry Packer. Recent evidence suggests the following should be acknowledged. Neville Ran, Ita Buttrose, Mr Sparkle Carl Scully, Boxhead Lecky and Sky, Peter Reef, the very Reverend Dr Gordon Moyes, The Body, Elle McPherson, Tracy Grimshaw, The Dangerous Floater, Mark Philippousis, His Royal Highness, Prince Philip, Supermodel Kate Moss, Maccabi Diva, tennis great Pancho Gonzalez, Wendell Saylor, Tim Costello, and singing sensation Taman Sursok. These great Australians are now all proud recipients of the Rene Rivkin Medal. And remember, all Rivkin medalists get a 3.5% discount at all home and away AFL football fixtures. Australians, if you feel you've been overlooked for this prestigious bauble and have felt the abrasive side of Kerry's tongue in the past, then get in touch with the Ruskin Committee, chaired by Sir Michael Jeffrey, VC. Uh, Roy, the crowds at Rugby League, look, it, somehow this has just kind of come out of the blue. I thought the game was having its best year ever. Totally. Um, you yeah. know, the the hundred years of hate we were celebrating, we yeah. went to dinners. Remember that night over at Birchgrove Oval where we yeah. kicked the balls into the harbour? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, reenacting what happened originally all those years ago in 1908. Yeah. Um, and people were turning up. Mm. Then, mm. bit by bit, this facade seems to be cracking. Mm. We had, uh, I think... Uh, Peter Homsacourt say that he couldn't guarantee South's future. Yeah. We had a desperate plea from, I think, the CEO down at Shark Park saying, turn up or we'll take the matches away from well, you. that's right. Remember, uh, Sticky was suggesting, and uh, we might have followed this up in the following week, uh, to have uh, Civil War to jail. Involved. Involved. Providing... Providing people bums on seats. Bums on seats, yeah. that's right. Uh, the uh, of course the problem is that people d- don't appear to want to get out to Homebush in the Sydney, you know, yeah. a little way from where these tra- teams have traditionally played, like mm. near where they lived. And that's a, such a great shame because, honestly, if you do go to Stadium Australia, you'll go back because the atmosphere is so it's fantastic, it, it, electric, absolutely mm. electric. Mm. Then this mo- the, today on the way to work, or so we had uh, you know Peter Holmes at court saying yeah. it's it's all staff we had pleased to turn up. Mm. Then uh, today on the way to work, we had this problem of Newcastle Knights. The mm. Newcastle Knights appear to have budgeted mm. on roughly a break even of maybe 18,000 turning up to the game. Mm. I may have the figures slightly wrong here, but they're only getting 12. Yeah. Uh, they're wondering what they can do about it. And people are saying the game day experience is a little bit hollow now, that people want to come along and sort of 
I don't know, see cheering girls and bands and, you know, things that are not historically connected with the game day at Rugby League where Rugby League team to take pride of place. Mm. And now, mm. if this wasn't bad enough, and I just want you to gather your thoughts uh, on what we can do about Rugby League crowds, mm. we have a story breaking in the Murdoch press that South Sydney have conceded they include stadium workers, media referees and possibly players when counting home crowds. I'll give you that list again. They include stadium workers, you know, people who open the yeah, gates yeah, yeah, and sell yeah. the pies. Yeah. Media, you know, people like who go out to call the yeah, matches yeah, yeah, and report yeah, on yeah, the matches. Yeah, yeah. Referees, who might be there for a couple of fixtures beforehand mm. and, uh, you know, the ones in the main game. Mm. And possibly players, they count their own players mm. when establishing crowds. To bump up the numbers. The stunning omission came to after a special investigation in the attendance on Monday night's game at the uh, against the Gold Coast at the Girl ANZ Stadium. Mm. Uh, they in a swoop organised by the Daily Telegraph. They sent three of their head counters mm. out there and got on each gate, so they are monitoring each turnstile. Mm. The Daily Telegraph's clickers tracked seven thousand five hundred twenty-two people into the game. Mm. Uh, from the time the gates opened, 4.45 to midway through the first half. The Rabbits later announced a crowd of 9,827. Well, that's a lot of referees and... Uh, people who work there. People who work like there and officials, isn't it? Mm. Rabbits CEO Shane Richardson confirmed to the paper, the Telegraph, the club staff, stadium staff, media officials are, are, are accounted for. Mm. People that come from our club staff and the other club and referees don't come through the check system of the turnstiles. Oh, I see. They so they get the, slip in the back way. Yeah, they slip yeah. underground. So a lot know. of your corporates would uh, probably slip do in the, the back same. way as well, wouldn't they? There's yeah. a whole range of people who go in through other entrances. Yeah, well, that's true, yes. The revelation provides an mm. insight into how clubs crowd, uh, count crowds at a time when attendances are being monitored closely as Sydney's nine teams struggle to, you know, obviously maintain a mm. <coughs> toehold in the market. Mm. There are unticketed guests who entered via a staff gate that appear to have missed your scrutiny. Oh, God. Mm. Well, Dude. it's very hard to get an accurate account, isn't <laughs> it? it? Is. That, that, that <clears throat> seems to be what they're saying here. A, a, you, you know, all they can do at best is take a, an educated guess. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and sometimes they get it about 2,500 wrong. Yeah, by the looks Added of things. Well, a huge margin, for, plus or minus 2,000. You know, well, whatever thing you bad. get, you get a plus or minus, minus 2,000. 2, yeah, yeah, I think that's fair enough. Out of this group, such as uh, club staff, staff media, etc., who haven't been counted, the terms uh, used in the statement are wide enough to include players, referees, coaches and mascots, according to the Telegraph. Well, the mascot, well, that's two. You can put an extra two there, can't you? You can. On any number you get. You can get two, mm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> True. So you've got to have a minimum of two mascots. You are. Mm. So the staff are employed by the, uh, obviously, the caterers and so on. Mm. Rabbitohs, however, did confirm they only counted uh, season ticket holders who turned up on the night. Mm. To further reconcile the discrepancy, South's pointed uh, VIP car parks, entries used by players. This is your point, Roy. Mm. Match officials and selected corporates located yeah, on corporates. level O. The entry not marked uh, by turnstile can be accessed by about 300 cars. Oh, it gets a bit technical here. Well, it does. But a lot of your corporates cars. don't want to go through the turnstiles. No, I know. You know, they just want to, you know, get out get of the to car, the game. into a lift, boom, up a, to the, the level they want box. To, yeah, yes. the level they want to watch it at. That's what they expect these yeah, days. That's true. If, you, if you're paying your top dollar, your corporate dollar... You don't want to have to worry about turnstiles no. clicking and being counted. No. Because a lot of people would probably be embarrassed there, South's fans, mm. especially I mean, apart from the uh, run of... You know, they've turned their season around in the last four weeks with a buy and a couple of losses to the... Ca mm. sorry, well, they're the couple of wins team to the of the competition. I know, a couple of wins to the Cowboys. Mm. But up until then... They were struggling a bit, yeah. And, you know, Russell can't yeah. come in through an ordinary... No. Entrance. I mean, Russell... The, no, you know, the, well, let's say he has got some uh, Hollywood VIPs, friends Will here. Smith, say. Will Smith and John Voight. Yeah, John Voight, yeah. Well, that'd be good. Or Sidney Pollock or in the Sydney, old days. Or Sydney Poitier. The so two Sydney Poitier. Is he? A, is he? Well, a, I don't know. Let's just yeah. imagine he does, you know, because they they're the, the sort of ground. circles he mixes in. I know. Or somebody, say, from Grey's Anatomy here. Yes. Uh, or Mr Big, I think, was here from, uh, what's that show called, you know, uh, television, Sex in the City. Mate. Oh, right. Mr Big, the character, Mr. Big. Oh, okay. I want to say his name's Chris Knopf. Well, OK, Not well, if here. he was going to be here, promo on some promotional thing to do with the film. Yeah. He'd it's certainly tough, bump into what Russell. They'd they get together, and the next the thing you know, they're at the game. Yeah, they can't. Well, be that type, you yeah. know, that, those types, they're certainly not going to go through the turnstile. And it's very hard to put a figure on the number of stars that uh, that Russell will be taking to a well, game. I but you'd think that. a minimum of ten. Oh, easily. I was and they have their minders. 
Yeah, oh, so you're talking uh, Tweddy people, yeah, and people, their people, yeah, and secretaries, etc., yeah, hangers on. Hangers on so you may be talking another couple of hundred. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, <clears throat> now, the observers made no allowance for the corporate VIP, etc., etc., etc. Closing account 25 minutes into the first half produced further errors. The official attendance is concluded 10 to 15 minutes into the second half as patrons continue to arrive until this time. Do you think that's right, Roy? Mm. People who arrived. Well, I suppose, stage. depending on what, what time of the day was this match. Well, played? it was a nighttime game. And not time like game on, on, a, on, a, on a working Monday day, night. Monday yeah. night. Yeah, well, I suppose they could get stuck in traffic. Get stuck in traffic. I yeah, mean, the traffic is a nightmare. Yeah. The Telegraph arrived at the venue an hour before the gates opened and witnessed only a handful of patrons in the precinct. There was a line of just 15 people at one point outside. So you could get in very easily. Mm. Even fewer patrons observed, you know, the half time. Uh, when the count ceased, Richardson said he was comfortable with the official crowd. No, there's no fudging of figures here. I've got more, m- nothing more to say, mm. no more information to give. This is the CEO talking. Mm-hmm. We're more than comfortable that it, that was the crowd. ANZ Stadium declined to respond on the basis that it's a, it's not their problem to count crowds. No, and that's now, probably commercial incompetence too, that would information. Be, that's right. I, I think that's it would right. be. So, yeah. Roy, what we've got here is this problem of, you know, a, a lot of things lining up. I oh, would just use this to illustrate a point. People don't seem to be going to rugby league. No. Well, it's been a very cold winter and there's been a lot of flu this year. A there's been colds. a lot of flu. Yeah, a lot of flu. You've got to factor that in. Yeah. You know, I've talked, spoken to many GPs and said to them... Rugby league? Yeah. I said to them, look, how many... Look... Rugby league supporters uh, are down with the, the flu. The sort of colds and flus you're seeing, Doctor... Yeah. Would that affect people's ability to go and watch a game of rugby league, especially at night? No. They say to a person, yes, yes, Roy. Yeah, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't You'd do be it. Mad to do They'd it. be, and they've been recommending people stay at home, stay at home, and not go to their rugby league. Now, can you trace a correlation between the? And I, I, I'm sure people will be able to do this. The mm. price per yeah. barrel, the dollar price per barrel of your West Texas crude yes. and rugby league. Crowd for Yes, I look, I think there is an absolute correlation. An absolute correlation. Mm. How many people do you know mm. go to your go to their various rugby league venues by car? Many of them do. I know. I know. They just can't get there any other way. Yeah. If you said let's go to Newcastle, yeah. I mean I don't mean to be unkind to the Newcastle people. Mm. I could catch the train and wander around stumbling about looking for it, but I'd be much better off driving there. Yes, you would. You know, especially at night with my flu. I've yeah, had the flu I myself. Think, I know you have. <laughs> I know there. I, know I haven't have. been going to my league. No, no, you haven't. Much but but to... if you were pushing yourself to go to your rugby league, mm. say to your Graham Parks, your mm-hmm. Stadium Australias, your uh, Energy Australia, or whatever mm. they call it, the the, 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 the International Sports Centre there in Newcastle, yeah. uh, by the Queen, great venue, three beautiful venue. Mm-hmm. Would you drive? You would, right? Now. And now, okay, sitting in Newcastle, I don't know. It's going to cost a lot of dollars. It is. You might I don't, that I don't. on top of your admittance price, which is yeah. often very reasonable, and the issue of food. Food. The issue of food seems to be a big problem. It is a big problem. People are getting ripped off. I don't use that word, you know, no, advisedly. No. You know, it's just my impression is that people are paying over the odds for a bucket of lukewarm well, chips. Well, I know, and I, and I can see the difficulties with your food, your service providers at these venues, mm-hmm. because okay. You've got the job. Let's say we've got the job catering. to provide the catering for but Stadium Australia, Souths v yeah. whoever, Monday night. You yeah. think, well, God almighty, how many, gonna, how many pies do we get in? Yeah, I know. How many sausage rolls yeah, do we get, get in? get it horribly do wrong. We, do we go with the veal scallopini? Yeah, I know. You know, do we... Stick to we rack of lamb. pasta with a tuna sauce or something? Yeah, I, I mean, Who's going to buy it? Who's going to buy it? Yeah. I mean, what are, what are the numbers going to be? Yeah, I know. You know, do we go and get you know fresh lobster at, mm. at the fish markets to mm. take out for well, those corporates who, who like a bit who of lobster, like a with, lobster with their with rugby, rugby league. league? And there, there are one or two who do like that, and it's very embarrassing. You know, when Russell comes in, say with Swanson, John Voigt and Chris Jade Noth- Spader, and you know, yeah. Tom Hanks, yeah. and they say, "Well, we w- actually wouldn't mind a little bit of lobster mornay tonight, thank yeah. you." And you sort of think, you well, think, oh, well, you well know, all you've got is a pie. Well, we've got a couple of sausage rolls and yeah, a pasta. Pie. Yeah, we've been cleaned out of lobster. Mm. You know, we only yeah. catered for well, four Well, I mean, it's it. really impossible. And if you are going to get your lobster in, you've got to factor in the cost that you're going to the fish markets very oh, early, no. maybe only getting half a dozen oh, no. lobsters, oh, no. which aren't cheap. No, they're not cheap. They're not cheap at any time of and year, but especially at this time of year. Then you've got to get them out. Oh, you've no. got to cook them. You've got to present them. Yeah. More than that, though, mm. is your lobster, yeah. you mightn't sell one. No, sir. that's exactly right. So you've got right. to make it up on the chips because that's what I you know. want. Them. I know, I know. And, you, and there's nothing more heartbreaking than seeing caterers putting their lobster out in the bins at the yeah, end of the night because it's not as if you can say, 
Send mulch it, it up and roll it into a sausage roll or something yeah. the next week. It doesn't yeah. work seafood, like that. You know, use it as seafood extender. Yes. It doesn't work. It's going to go off oh, no. before next Monday night. Mm. Mm. I, it's I, a I, very I it's, difficult thing. I know. And you've got to factor in your fuel costs I as know. well I, with your lobster. Which is sending the price which of your lobster send, way up. I know up, it is. And that's knock on to your bucket of chips. I know. All of a sudden people are complaining we're paying $15 yes. for Ford hot chips. Yes. Well, they don't see the full picture. No. And this is what I get so no. riled up with, especially ABC commentators. Yeah. You know, they only see one thing. Yes. They only see it from the point of view of the, hard, the Australian working family. Yes. They don't see it. From small business no. point of view. Well, working families are providing those buckets of chips as mm. well. I know. And it's not easy for them. You I know, know. We're, 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 I mean, we've, we've catalogued the, 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 the issues here, the difficulties here. Getting your potatoes. Mm. You know, what's on sale this week potatoes-wise? Well, you know, is the Pontiacs on Pontiacs sale? Or no, you... well, they're not. No, your Desirees. Your Desirees. No. I'll tell you here for nothing. Nothing is for sale at the no, moment. No. Nothing it's is cheap. It's the wrong time the of the moment. season. Wrong time of the season. Yeah, they don't keep potatoes. People think they do. Yeah. And once you've, once you've, uh, once you've uh, peeled and cut, mm-hmm. you're committed. Yeah. <laughs> Peel, cut, committed. And do you know what's happening now, Roy? Mm. You know your oil that you... Yeah, I know. You, I you, yeah. People are describing that as liquid gold. I know. Liquid gold. I, I saw some figures. They weren't Australian figures, so don't no. get too excited no, by this, no. that the price of that stuff at the end of the night had gone from 75 cents a litre mm. to $2.65 a no, litre. I can't believe that. $2.65, this is for that. crap house oil that's been used to fry yeah, fish yeah, right. and chips. Yeah. I mean, that's the sort of cost you're dealing with now. Imagine in mm. 10 years' time where it's going to be, I, you know, we've got to get move rugby league back to the people. Mm. Asking the people to go to rugby league was a big mistake. Mm. A big mistake. Yeah. We're going to have to have benefit concerts mm. for busted-ass teams like in Newcastle. I know. We're just going to, I don't know, you know, Queen are just going to have to do a lot more free concerts. That's the only thing oh, I can Well, think. that's true. With that's true. Newcastle and... are struggling. I know that. I know. But you're going to have the same problems. Let's say Silver Trier did put on a put do, on for, a, a do for the Newcastle, Newcastle. Knights. Yeah. At say at say the uh, the International Sports Centre yeah, opened by the Queen opened by the Queen nineteen seventy three. Let's say they did. Someone's going to have to make the chips. I know. Someone's going to have power? to make the yeah. How will people get there? I know. Cars. Yeah. Will they be able to afford it? What well, are the price exactly? Be? What are the prices going to be? Can you see a, uh, the fallout from all of this is a rationalisation of teams in the Sydney area? I'm not. Mm. I know the Greater Sydney area, Newcastle, Penrith. You know, obviously. Mm. You know, Shark Park, which is now you know on its knees. Look, I, I, look, the, the the logistical issues involved in this are, are just mind boggling. Yeah. Just mind boggling. It's like if you want an you apple know, you're going to have to amortise all your chip makers in the metropolitan area, all your your hot chip makers. Yeah. You know, because we don't want a situation where you know provider A at yeah. Stadium Australia yeah, it's got has got you hot know chips hot chips to burn, say, just, just throwing them out. I know. And say up at there, they're selling them for ten dollars a yes, bucket because they haven't got anything. Because they haven't got anything left. You know, this reminds me of. So we're going to have to have you know, petrol watch. I think is great. Mm. You're going to have to have chip watch, yeah, chip watch. Pie, watch pie watch, sausage yeah. roll watch, yeah. pasty know. watch, so that people can access the best value at any time and make sure we don't have these excessive wastages we've had in days gone by. And also the disposable income is what's spent on well, hot it's chips. Shrinking. It's, it's shrinking. It's That's it's shrinking. It's shrinking. shrinking. That's the word I was looking for. Shrinking. shrinking. Disposable income. I mean, I say to a lot of people, you know, have you, well, how's your disposable, disposable income? They say, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Rage Against the Machine. Testify from the Battle of Los Angeles. Mm. Uh, Roy. Look, before you get there, Rage, <laughs> just Sorry. with the issue we're talking about vis a vis crowds and rugby league. Mm-hmm. Maybe we've got to think outside the square a little and maybe offer tax deductibility for... Season ticket holders. Season ticket holders. Or members. Or members. Yeah. Or anyone who walks in off the street, as long as you keep your receipt, mm-hmm. that that could be tax deductible. Or offer, or offer, say, carbon credits. For going to rugby league. For going league. to rugby league. What a lovely idea. Now, look, can I just say that we do have a lot of problems with the, uh, mm. you know, the, the, the economy slash environment nexus. Yes. And I'm just wondering if we could extend that further and to say if you bought a bucket of hop chips inside a rugby league venue, mm. which would be on the receipt. Yes. That that could also be used as a tax discount. Yes. And that this could offset some of the mm. problems that people seem to be screaming for now 
for relief of the Bowser. In other words, that it may be too difficult to give relief at the Bowser because of the way the world works, but because we can control rugby league administration in a much better we way, can. Uh, we will be able to kind of take those. Yes. And we might have to set up an office mm-hmm. where on a Monday, might be open between, say, 9 in the morning and 4.30, mm-hmm. people can go and get their refunds uh, in each area. <laughs> sort of A refund? As in... Uh, well, I'm just thinking. That well, well some I'm just I'm just looking at the the bureaucratic difficulties know, with this I HG. I mean, rather than get your more. refund, you know, the day after and having to go yeah, into town sure. again and queue okay. up, perhaps at the point of sale is where the refund could cut in. So let's say you're paying four dollars fifty for a small bucket of chips. Mm-hmm. It's four dollars rather than four dollars fifty. That's not bad. And that is, then is is reduced from mm-hmm. a, as a tax offset to GST. Uh, when, 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 say each three months, mm-hmm. that vendor uh, does his accounting for for GST no, compliance. I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Mm. What I had in mind was was that rather telling, and, and what I found was chilling statistic. I think that was quoted by the Newcastle Knight CEO mm. that when they started off 20 years ago, mm. their demographic was 35 to 50. They yeah. secured exactly the right demographic. Yep. Now, 20 years later. That demographic is 55 to 70. I know. And I was thinking, well, maybe some people in the younger demographic wouldn't be tax in need of a tax oh. refund on the larger scale. Yeah, but aren't you trying to encourage them to get them there because, because they're the ones not turning up anymore? It's, it's the older ones who can hardly afford it because they're pensioners. Largely. Yeah, that's what I'm meaning. So you might get the 10-year-olds yeah. who think, oh, you beauty, the, if I, I can either take the bucket of chips today for four dollars instead of four dollars fifty but if mm. i pay the full four dollars fifty i can get a complete refund the next day it was just an idea oh you, you know, get so the whole refund yeah what, the well, whole four dollars fifty back yeah. so that the government would be subsidizing your whole chips. rugby league experience well well yeah i know of a certain age group oh i see of a certain age group uh-huh. because these are the people we want to encourage to enjoy and participate in rugby league mm. uh oh, okay so it'd be means tested and effectively a form of means testing. Mm. If you mm. couldn't afford to have a tax return, you could get a refund yes. on, on that purchase. Yeah. I mean, I'm not suggesting... No, no, no. You know, don't, no, no and and well, don't get me well, wrong. Well, you know, can I, I suggest we get a green paper? What a lovely idea. On this. A green paper. <laughs> so we can examine all of the options, actually. Because, mm. well, let's say we can't go through all the options. We don't, we don't have the we expertise. We don't have the time. No, the expertise. We don't. No, and we can't we just see... just know we've got a problem. Yeah, with rugby league crowds. With crowds. And we've got to somehow put some sort of incentive there mm-hmm. that makes people want to get off their fat asses and go and watch rugby and go league. and watch some rugby league. So sit on their fat asses watching rugby league, eating now, chips, eating yeah. chip, hot chips, and hopefully maybe even having a pie mm. or a hot or lashing dog, out or taking advantage of some of what I describe as the caterer's specials. Ah, oh, yes. You know, like the lobster mornay, uh, which the big what, end of town didn't eat. Ah, oh, I see. What bubble and squeak style. <laughs> Just... <laughs> MGMT and electric fuel from Molecular Spectacular. MGMT from New York. Now, look, one thing that uh, has been a bit of a problem is promoting games of rugby league. Now, oh, yes. I think there was a match the other night. It must have been the Roosters v. Oh, Canterbury, the, the Bulldogs. Bulldogs v. Roosters. Oh, what a great game on paper. I, I, well, <laughs> <laughs> a great game on paper. Mm. You'd really use a couple of tanks to petrol to go and see that one. You would. Uh, now, in the first one, you may remember, there was quite a lot of promotion from the eastern suburbs side, which they thought would be reciprocated yeah. uh, by the yeah. uh, Canada well, Bankstown boys well, when it came time Willie to... Willie Mason to worked his ass off I know. promoting that, the, as did uh, Brad Fiddler. And then all we got, really, mm. was the ogre, mm. Mark O'Mealy, being pushed out of the the foul house, mm. to say they've lost their aura. The, the uh, Bulldogs have, Bulldogs yeah. have lost their aura. Yeah. Well... Yeah, hardly a promotion, is it? No, it's, it's not. But one thing I did see in the paper this week was that the dogs are now sick and tired of the verbal attacks on them, mm. according to fullback Luke Patton. He's mm. disgusted that former players like the Ogre, Mark O'Mealy, are taking pot shots at the club. Mm. I'm sick of all the negative talk. The blokes are, uh, having, that are having a go at us wouldn't be where they are today if it wasn't for the club. I Meaning, you know, Willie, yeah. the new face of the eastern suburbs and yeah. the Oaks and Braith, of course. And Braith, yeah. Probably a few others. Yeah. They, had a, they had the good years and then they come out and kick us when they're, we're down. Mm. 
They should show some respect for the club. A host of Bulldog greats, including former player Paul Langmack, have slammed the current squad as rubbish. Oh, dear. Rubbish. On Friday, Roosters prop Mark O'Mealy described his old teammates. Mm. Uh, you know, O'Mealy basically he played 110 games with the Dogs, mm. said the club had lost its aura and should be no longer referred to as the family club. But an angry Patton said enough was enough as he struggles to return from a back injury. Mm. For former players of the club like Paul Langmack to come out and hammer us, mm. we don't need that at the moment. No, if you've no. got something to say to us, maybe you should come down to training and say it to the players instead of going the other way around. Ogre, O'Mealy, a good mate of mine, but things he said in the paper with, uh, like we've lost our rural and everything else, do we really need to be kicked when we're down? I'm sure fans are sick of reading it because I know I am. I'm pretty passionate about the club and without being able to do anything on the field at the moment because of his back injury, I've taken more notice of it and maybe I've taken it a bit, you know, too personally. Yeah. Right. But how does that feed into the conversation we're having with regard, you know, your hot chips and trying to get people along and, mm. you know, surely it should be the other way round. They should be talking it up. Talking they? it up. That's right. Yeah. What a great game it's going to be. They're just so hard to beat the dogs. This is ogre yeah, talk. They're, they're threatening, you know. Threatening, they're just back, yeah. They've got a great pack. They're a family club, you family know. Family club, they're, they're, that's right. They're, well worth driving, if even if it costs oh, you a couple of tanks of petrol. Yeah, well worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't need... Was, but see, then again, the ogre, I mean, what training has he had in he talking up rugby league? Well, He's had no, no training. He's no. just going to say what come, first thing that comes into his head. <laughs> I think the first thing that came into his head, he said, yeah, they're real soft these days. They're real soft. Oh. And he was proven to be correct. They were a bit soft. Where does it go Where to? Where does it go to? Because they, the papers thrive on yeah. the idea of controversy and, mm. you know, sort of, you know, one lot disliking yeah. the other. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. very hard to know how we're going to rescue this now. Mm. Uh, because the, the well, we've got to behavior... involve, well, it's got to be a lot more incentives to go. Yeah, you know, right. I remember the Sydney Cricket Ground Trust uh, a few years ago, HG, when there was talk of, uh, you know, cricket crowds being a little bit down. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a lucky door prize. Oh, yeah. Where you could win a cricket bat. Is that right? Yes. And so a lucky during, door prize where you yeah, could win a cricket yeah. bat. So at uh, during the luncheon break, the they, announcement would be made. Yeah, great. You know, hurt. ticket number, mm -hmm. you know, B six hundred and twenty nine, come down, you've won your cricket bat. Mm -hmm. And you'd go down and uh, there'd be a quick exchange in front of the you know, the crowd there. On the big screen. On the big screen. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it generally, you know, was a terrific... Went over very well. Yes. Now, do you think... Yeah, now, what about something like that? What about just a simple idea, just some sort of lucky prize where you could get, a, say, a... A night out with the ogre. Or, no, 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 no. How about a free bag, a free bucket, bucket, of, of, chips. bucket of chips and a sausage roll? Lucky door prize. Wow, isn't that fantastic? Just something Has like that. Has that been tried? No, I don't think so. Uh, give me that again, a I free so. bucket of chips yeah. and a sausage roll. Well, I know we did this with the uh, the shamrocks mm -hmm. when uh, numbers were struggling a little bit mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Could you notice an increase in the... When you put that... Say, you might have yes, advertised in the local paper? Of course. Come down and yeah. one lucky rugby league fan will be going home slightly fatter mm -hmm. because the door prize this week is... Yes, yeah, that's a bucket right. bucket of chips and a... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Isn't that great? Yep, 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 yep. yep. I'm just wondering yep. if if rugby yeah, league. Or maybe no. you know, uh, other times it was it was the ability you, you, you'd get, uh, uh, say three or oh, sorry four four quarter lamb chops at the butchers. You know, if you went during the week. Isn't that amazing? Four quarter lamb chops. Yeah, four quarter if you lamb went, chops. You could go yeah. down and pick them up. Yep. Yep. Yep, and in a casserole, cunningly done, cunningly devised, that'd feed, feed a family. It would. It would. It would. Oh, no, there's no doubt about that. Mm. And did you ever, uh, Finlay's for the Fine Finlay's Furniture? Finlay's for Fine Furniture. Did they come to the yes. party? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Now, yep, yep, for sure. Yeah, right. you would get a free evaluation and uh, measurements taken if you wanted to uh, get a new carpet or lino. So wow. there's someone from Finlay's had come around, it was usually Reg. Mm -hmm. would go around with a tape measure, measure free. up for free and say, well, look, this is what it's going to cost you if you want a Berber, uh, if, you want underfelt, if you want yep, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Or line of tiles. Yep. Isn't that incredible? Yep. And was this for a whole season that you had a different yes, thing on Yes, for a whole season, yeah. Different, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And it generated a lot of interest because you think, oh, well, I wonder what's who's going to have you know, Reg around this week. Yeah. 
Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, and it got a, got a real buzz along the, mm-hmm. you know. And were there photos in the local paper? Yes, there were Reg there, the actually there, with a the, with with the the measuring tape. We, we, yeah. Yeah, measuring up, yep, Do yeah. You know? And you'd be surprised, win-win, you know, I, I don't know what the what, what the uh, upshot was, but maybe one in 50 people would, would actually then up. buy the carpet. So two a year, roughly. Yeah. Two a season, yeah, isn't that that's fantastic? Right. That's right. Now, look. That's right. That's just a little thing. You know, can I just say that I was disturbed by some... You may not have seen this, but Bob McCarthy came out and bagged the New South Wales people, yeah. uh, selector of the you know New South Wales Blues, yeah. because people at the match the other night when mm. it was played here, the first state of origin, mm. didn't appear that interested in rugby league. They had a beach ball going. Uh, they had Mexican wave. Obviously, they were interested in the carpet offer, the <laughs> the fish the fish and chips or the hot chips, mm. all that sort of stuff. I was shocked by this. Mm. That he saw mm. that these things, which people love doing when they're together in an in environment, yeah, yeah. and let's face it, rugby league's just an entree these days to further adventures. Often, you know, mm. so you get legless by about two in the morning, pick a couple of fights, you know, romance. It's all there, yeah. all triggered by a night of watching eighty minutes of good old fashioned state of origin rugby league. Yeah, yeah. Something to talk about, bringing yeah. people together. Yeah. Who are we going to meet? The yeah. furniture, the the you yeah. know, the hot chips, the prizes, the door, you know. Yeah. He bags them because they weren't concentrating on the rugby league. Is that our problem? Is that no longer is the audience satisfied simply by? You mean you've got the a va- product? You've got a value add. Value add. That's the word I'm looking for, or two words I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a very sorry day, if that's the case. Mm-hmm. A very sorry day, and maybe we're coming about around it the wrong way. Maybe we've got to. <laughs> maybe we've got to draw a line in the sand here and say, all right, all right. You're here to watch rugby league. You're not here to eat chips. You're not here to have a sausage roll or a drink, any of that rubbish. And so we don't provide those services anymore. All you get is somewhere to park your ass for 80 minutes to enjoy your rugby league. Aha! Uh-huh. The Utah Saints. Utah Saints, we haven't heard of them for some time. That's the Something Good 08 uh, remix. Not sure, well, I don't know. The Van Shee, if that's how you say it. Tech remix. Uh, Something Good 08. From the Utah Saints. Uh, now, Roy, just moving on here, coming back to this story. I mean, Tuesday night does loom large. Mm. I mean, that whole Fennec, you know, oh, Zoom Nelson, it, it was just incredible, wasn't yeah. it? And they'd lost none of their skills or passion for boxing. That's what I... That, that was writ large, wasn't it, it? It was very large. Mm. And now Jeff appears to have made a career move mm-hmm. where he's now going to get involved with poker. Great. He's headed off now to the World Texas Series. Texas Hold'em HG? I or? assume so. The World Series of Poker in Las Vegas. $20 million up for grabs, Great. plus a bucket of hot chips. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, what I loved was in the bout, though, was the um, two judges scored at 96-94, and the other one had a 95-95. I know. So I it was saw just that. sort of basically one punch in it. 95-95, that's, that's a tie, isn't it? It is. And I did notice Azuma Nelson after, you know, obviously the mm. hand was held in the air, said, you know, I thought we were meant to draw it. So they got as close as they could. Mm. I mean, that's a terrific thing yeah. there, isn't it? Well, they, Jeff shut, shut up shop really for the last two or three he rounds. He did, he just ran he? away. He just ran away, yeah. 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 But, and I, I think a lot of the fans were a little bit disappointed because that wasn't the way Jeff used to fight. Jeff, no. Jeff used to go, just keep going forward. Well, he's got very soft hands, though. Remember how he mm. had all the... Oh, the metacarpal nut- difficulties, yeah. Yeah, yeah that all shot. Mm. But, uh, look, it was obviously a terrific night. And I thought that, um, let's face it, you know, Australian boxing stood up a little bit. It did. And certainly it's had a bit of a runabouts mm. lately, credibility-wise. And I just thought that the... Well, that know, answered two, all those questions, I know. didn't it? Two 45-year-olds or over 45-year-olds having a swing at each other just brought back a lot of memories. Yeah. And memories. Yeah. And what I loved was that people didn't seem at all to be put off by the fact they had to travel... And pay quite a lot of money for their hot chips. Uh, did you yeah, know what, what I mean? was the chips worth? I didn't no. buy any chips, HG. That no, I, I didn't. Sort of I think. got a bucket for about four dollars yeah, fifty. I saw you with a bucket. Yeah. About four dollars fifty. Yeah, mm. I know. thought it was quite a good price. Did you get any sauce on that? No, no, no that no, was quite no. a bit extra. They had a real surcharge on the sauce. On the sauce here. Yeah. What about uh, salt? Salt. Yeah, no, they were okay. That was you, okay. Plenty of. Now, how do you think Jeff will go as a uh, with the soft hands mm. holding a? You know. Well, a, I've never seen him play poker, but it's a numbers game essentially. Isn't it? You've got to. No, no, your cards, you don't do. you? You've got to be able to... I mean, is Jeff that way uh, mathematically gifted in that regard? Is he... I'm not sure. Mm. Or is he just sort of follow his instinct? Like, yeah, he's another card. That sort of stuff. <laughs> I don't I, know. I, well, we, we live to be impressed. Yeah, yeah. Now, coming back to the uh, story that I want to introduce here, but um, <clears throat> now, 
Danny Green. Mm. It appears that Danny Green's drag racing career could prevent the rematch with Choc. Well, Monday. hang on, if he's going to get five... Isn't there a $5 million purse well, hang on. involved? Well, wait a minute. Manager Coda Nasser, Mundine's manager, Coda Nasser, has offered the former world champion a deal that is believed to have significantly increased from the widely reported figure of $5 million. I tell you what, I'm... I, you know, $5 million, It buys a few bu- buckets of hot chips. Yeah, too. well, what I was going to say is don't expect going... You know, to go to this bout thinking you're going to get a bucket of chips for less than ten bucks, oh, because somehow how are they going to pay for it? Knock-on effect, isn't it? The knock-on effect. How are they going to pay for well, it? Well, they did. They'd get a fair bit of money out of cable television, wouldn't they? They, they would. Rights. They would. Um, Green maintains Which is continu- five for Danny himself. Five million for Danny. Never mind what Chock's getting out of it. Uh, Green continues to maintain his retired champion. Green is also considering an offer he received two months ago to race with the renowned Brett Stevens team. It's something I've been thinking seriously about, and it's something mm. I could do. This is I'm, drag racing. Drag racing. Uh, oh, geez, now, that's going to have a future, isn't it? Drag racing. It is. Oh, it is. It is. You know, the chips are given away free at drag racing. Mm. Uh, Stevens contacted Green after he heard during a radio interview that the WA based. Uh, you know, boxer, mm. harboured an ambition to become a professional drag racer. Good Brett morning. said he could offer me a contract as a profile driver. Mm. His wife, Kath, has a world record at the top door slammer mm. and Brett has a world record so they know what they're doing. Green believes motorsport would provide him with the adrenaline rush he's missed since his retirement. I didn't know he was missing that. No, no, neither did I. I thought the epiphany had worked all that out. Uh, We're talking about rocketing down a quarter-mile track at 380 kilometres per hour. It would be totally insane, dot, 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 <laughs> crazy. The only thing that would he match He means it, insane good, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, 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 yeah he does. Yeah, I mean, he, just, he, just, well, he means unreal. Unreal. Or awesome. Or awesome, yeah, yeah, that's right. Or surreal, probably. Probably surreal. The only thing that would match it outside uh, boxing would be big wave surfing. I know a lot of people would think... Boxing is safer. My wife, Nina, is one. Mm. She's rolling her eyes in disbelief at the drag racing. Mm. Uh, the fact that Green would be starting a drag career at 35 did not concern Stevens. I said to Brett I'd be worried about running his car because I imagine they'd cost a mint mm. or ruining his car because they'd cost a mint. But he said the fact that I had no drag racing experience meant they wouldn't need to break any old or bad habits. Fair enough. I suppose so it comes that is to a fair fresh enough. approach. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just <clears throat> trying to think of the skills required for drag racing. There'd be a lot of right footwork. And? I mean, you'd and, have to pump that right foot down pretty quickly. Yeah, and releasing the parachute. And releasing the parachute. But, but the, the steering does itself. you just got to hang on, it, keep it going straight. Yeah. It's not as if there's cornering involved. And would it seem fast when you were going along or just uh, you'd, you'd learn mm. how... I don't know. ..when to pull the chute? You'd probably see the end of the the bit when you cross the mark and you just pull the chute and away you go. Yeah. I mean, they might be able to pull the chute automatically. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah I, true. Fired should... from the grandstand. Yeah. Can I just ask, just by the by, I'm putting that on pause Do slightly. they need to have actually anyone in the car? I don't think so. I don't think so. Mm. Just by the by. Um, it's great any... fun, though. It's great I know. Fun. I just it's incredible. It. It's just wonderful. I like, I've like. i loved the funny cars, you know that. I know you, know you love funny yeah. cars, yeah. It's just incredible. You know, what about a good old... Can you still get a good old-fashioned demolition derby? I think you can. Because they're funny. I, I mean, I kids... Are, if there's a, no better way to get kids involved in motor car racing. I don't think that's where you start. You do. Just put them behind the wheel and go and get them to bang something. Yeah. Can I just ask you, by the by, did anybody approach you after your, you mm. know, skydiving for seniors mm. offer last week? Did you get many people no. interested? No. <laughs> no, sadly. In general and Yeah, I will. Yeah, I... You couldn't understand. They're very standoffish. Mm. Mm. No, well, that's... Mm. Well, I, no, I, I, I thought it was a neat see... way of getting around you know, the laws. Uh, no, so did I. But do you, you know, s- I mean, you've got to sign a paper saying you're sane before you get up in a hit. I don't think so. I no. don't think so. No. Would you have to sign a paper saying you're sane before you got into a, you know, drag racer? You'd obviously have to have a driver's licence of some sort. Are you suggesting this be a way... Just another way? I think options choice is what we need in this society. Mm. You might come back, say, pretty hale and hearty after the first 40. Mm. There's always the 41st. Well, that's true. I was just picking that as a... No, I know, but how, how do you deliberately do yourself in drag racing? What, you what, you point the... Steer oh, the car into the crowd? Well, oh, that seems to be a selfish way. No, that would be very selfish, and you'd probably, if you survive, be up for murder. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> you, need to, you need to find some way of it. 
Drag racing, I'm never sure quite the statistics. How safe is it? You know, like, oh, well, I'm, just know. Asking, I'm just throwing well, that question out there. Well, when was the last there? person we heard took their life through drags? I can't remember. No, I time. can't remember either. Maybe, maybe skydiving is a better bet. <laughs> ah, stay with me, Bright Eyes. Something with numbers from the Central Coast. New album from them in September. And the current CD, Engineering the Soul on the Life on Triple J. Might be time for a fat. And now on This Sporting Life, it's time for the first fat of the afternoon. The fat is as Australian as Barbara Streisand, as new as cats, as wild as Johnny Oakey. What are Australians fighting for this week, HG? Ah, well, it's a terrific prize, really. All music, all CD... Uh, we've got uh, CDs by the Royal We, the Cave Singers. Uh, we've got a fantastic one for you from N- Nicolay and K Time. Uh, we've also got Torgia Vasvik and the big one, the special edition of the Fratellis, Here We Stand. So it's quite a diverse uh, selection of music mm. there. Just uh, f- five CDs, women only. Some lucky listener who can answer the following question. Name two stars who could possibly turn up to a game of rugby league with Russell Crowe. Name two stars who could possibly turn up to a game of rugby league with Russell Crowe for women only, and that number is one three hundred eight triple five three six. Phone now. now. Oh, Kings of Leon, and wasted time from youth and young manhood. Who are we talking to, Roy? Yeah, we're joined by Lucy, who's joining us from Longerville in New South Wales. How are you there, Lucy? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good. Now, Lucy, is uh, the price of petrol stopping you from going to your rugby league? Oh, absolutely. Yes. What else is it stopping you doing? Uh, University. Yes. Attendance has gone down significantly. Yes. Uh, Work. Yep. When you when you go to university now, though, Lucy, taking the car, is it much easier to get a car park space in the uh, car park? Oh, absolutely. Uh, what, by about 50% better? 50% more slots? Let's say you're going at 9.30. There might only be two slots uh, available normally, but now the petrol's eating into the disposable income and people don't have it. There might be four spots available, something like four. that? Yeah, four, that, that, that sounds accurate. Right, yeah. good. Oh, jeepers. It's Where's terrible. It, it is. And, and what, is it affecting your disposable income, I guess, is the question, Lucy? I mean, have you had to tighten the belt... <laughs> and are you? Can I put it to you in a way that you'll understand? Tighten the belt may not be a way you understand. Are you still buying your bucket of hot chips every day at the what I want to call the union mm. uh, takeout area? Actually, I've I've lost a considerable amount of weight. Wow! I've been deprived of the hot chips. Right, right. And well, that's a good thing. So I am not only um, metaphorically tightening the belt, but right. actually physically. Right. So, and, well, that's got to be one of the few upsides. It is. This, uh, it is. We're going to people this, are going to this, this price of this barrel price of mm. oil. I mean, that's that's. I mean, it could come to our assistance and might challenge us as being at the pinnacle of the fattest nation on earth. Well, I think that's gone. I think that's gone. Now, Lucy, on a Tuesday night, do you find yourself moping around various petrol stations in the Longerville area looking for somebody who's got it cheap and joining a queue, sometimes, I understand, from people in Parliament, sometimes three or four kilometres long? Mm, I like the um, the shopper docket things. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah who right. doesn't? They're very good. And you, very good. Very you, good. You know, when you go to Coles, I think you get a discount that enables you to go to the petrol station Same and get something off. Some people them. have suggested, though, they bump the price of the groceries up to cover the losses at the Bowser... Do you think that's um, right, Lucy? Do you think oh. that could possibly be the case? Oh, probably. Look, they're all <laughs> in it together. They're all in So when you go and buy, you know, this would be hot mm. chips to be, but let's say you bought a McCain brand of frozen <laughs> chip, which you'd turn into a hot chip later on, that that price would be slightly inflated as a, from, result. As a result of people getting petrol Is on their right? shopper dockers. Is that right? <laughs> well, I'm not saying it happens... I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there, saying that people have suggested it to me. Mm. How yeah. far is your nearest rugby league ground from where you live? Uh, well, you can get to see one of the NRL teams play as opposed well, to... It's so about 50-50. She could go to, to, uh, to uh, Stadium Australia. Stadium Australia. Yeah. Uh, or Actually, I was at Shark Park last weekend. Shark Park? 
Mm. What took you to Shark Park? Oh, it's just some friends. Friends? Just a, a good... Good day, good afternoon. I bet it was a great day. What, 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 did, what, what did you buy to eat? Did, did you get some lobster or...? Oh, yes. <laughs> what did you end uh, up with? Beers, actually. Beers? Mm. Are you allowed to take beers into Shark Park? No, you buy them inside. No, you, you buy them there. Yeah, you buy them, isn't that great? So you just had a couple of beers. and What about, what about something to eat? Uh, no. I have the... And did you kick on afterwards? Did you think, we'll go and look at the rugby league and then we'll have a few beers of the rugby league, then we'll get in the bag, then we might go down to, I don't know, Northies, if I've got the right part of town, and then <laughs> onto the tradie on, uh, I want to say, Presence Avenue, mm. and then... Well, why, why not back to the Cronulla Leagues Club for, well, for, for a real... Well, yeah. Real, real, real three-course meal. Yeah. Well, Northies was happening. Northies was happening there. Yeah. That's good. Did you go there? Yeah, we went there. Uh-huh. What'd you get, get to eat? a bit rowdy. Yeah, well, yeah. of course, but what'd you get to eat? Um, I'm... Any again, lobster that had been brought over from three... the ground? Sorry? Any lobster that had been formally <laughs> served at Shark Park? Yeah, frozen. Frozen. Oh, good. Good. Well, look, uh, Lucy... Uh, uh, it was an enjoyable day out. That's really what we're trying to get to, yeah. to the body was. And yeah. you'll be going back. Definitely. Are you interested in the sharks? You know, Bird, Galen, all them. Do uh, they talk to you? Yes. Well, I think um, Noddy. It's, it's more my boyfriend. Oh, in the... right. Oh, now the, uh, the boyfriend. All is revealed. Did he pick you up and take you? <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, well, that oh. saved your petrol right oh. there. <laughs> <laughs> never, never go the other way around. Never take him. No. I think oh, you'd no, be disappointed. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Is there any chance he can take take you, uh, if you're going to uni, he can pick you up and take you? Oh, OK. He might have to quit his job, but... Well, that's all right. Uh-huh. No, sacrifices. That's what yeah. romance is about. And he is. <laughs> now, let Roy set out the question. Lucy, have a swing at it. Name two stars who could possibly turn up to a game of rugby league with Russell Crowe. Oh... Uh... Barbara Streisand? Yeah, well, we didn't suggest that, but you could. It wouldn't surprise me if he did turn up with Barbara. Yeah, anyone else? Mm, and Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, certainly. that's right. So, the, Fratelli, the Fratellis. Uh, we've got this mystery uh, CD, Torgia Vaspic, is I think how you say it. We've got... Uh, Torgia Vaspic? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Sounds like a tennis player. Or, or, yeah. <laughs> Nicolay and Kay Time. We've got the Cave Singers and the Royal We. We'll get them in the mail to you. Uh, Lucy, they'll be there before you set off in the boyfriend's car to another game of rugby league. Uh, oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thanks very much for being part of this sporting life. Thank See you. Ya. Bye. Bye. TZU there. TZU right away from Computer Love. Now, they were the third of the three on the trot, which got underway with Gold Frap, Caravan Girl... The title of the track, uh, seventh seventh tree. The title of the CD. They're playing playing the life in two thousand and eight. Which life? Not this sporting life. They're playing Park Life two thousand and eight. Gold Frap from the UK. In the middle of the three on the trot, we had the last Shadow Puppets. The Age of Understatement. Uh, so we had a bit of uh, Frap Puppets and TZU on our three on the trot on this sporting life on Triple J. Sick of shoveling it in at the top end only to have it bob up at the back door a day later? Well, say goodbye to top end back end blues with energy filled gourmet wedges. You can eat them where you drop them, leaving the mouth completely free to do what it does best. Gourmet wedges come in two, three, or four course packs, and half wedges are available for children. Art lovers, they said it could never happen, but it has. La Stupenda is back, bigger, brighter and heavier than ever. Joan Sutherland has always dreamed of reprising the role that put her on the international opera map as a sprightly 47-year-old. That role was her unforgettable Juliet in Verdi's smash Romeo and Juliet. But in Opera Australia's new production of this timeless tale of two houses torn apart by heavy petting, La Stupenda doubles up as Romeo, Mercutio, Tybalt, the nurse, 
and still has time to hold down the tricky title role of Juliet. And just before the long break, La Stupenda brings the house down with her performance of a recently discovered aria for the Arras stage left, which was omitted from the original. Supporting Dane Joan on this night of nights are the stars of the Australian musical stage. Hugh Jackman, Anthony Warlow and Bert Newton as Mr Capulet's clock when duties at Channel 9 permit. Book today to secure a seat at one of only 12 January 9th performances. Hi, Frosty La Hood on the line, remember me? I'm the no root, no toot man. And it is strange, but I've always been bowl shy. But now that I've tried that date ace stuff, I'm itching to drop a load any time, day or night. My stool shyness it's a thing of the past. And guess what? I dropped the log jam in Bexley on Wednesday, and last night I picked up the leading edge in Fiji. And since then, I've spotted my slugs in Suva, Tahiti, Nauru, and one even got as far as Poland. Oh, it is unreal, but it's a lot of fun, and I really look forward to pushing them out and seeing where they end up. Oh, no, Day Ace has changed me completely, and it certainly has made me much more regular. Oh, now... Roy, listen, uh, one thing that's bothering me, of course, mm. is is that now I'm beset by the problem of me pride of Australia medals. Oh, has that come around again? Has it? it has. We've got to nominate an unsung hero. Mm. And there's so many categories. There's bravery, courage, young Aussie, community spirit, role model, mateship, true blue environment, fair go and peace. Mm. I don't know where to begin. You know, I was just wondering if some rugby league people might be possible to well, include this Well, the good year. guys. What about the Parramatta good guys? What about the, that reading thing they had? The reading they? thing. I think Parramatta, for the, something to do with the community, mm. community spirit, mm. you couldn't fault that. No. I'm just wondering if, you know, you... What's off true air, blue? Is there any definition well, of what's true blue? Well, true blue is for a lifetime achievement in fostering Australian values and making Australia a better place to live. Can I suggest one name immediately comes to mind? Vlad Wharton. Mm. A name we haven't mentioned here. In well, fact, no one's done more than Vlad. No, indeed. Mm. For airport travel or, mm-hmm. you know, making things better for boxes around Australia. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just wondering if. And, uh, Code of NASA? Code of NASA could easily be true blue. Could I say that for courage, could I suggest a name? Uh, Jeff Fennick, the n- comeback. Well, not bad. And then going on to win the world title of poker. Mm-hmm. That'd be a rare double. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I was thinking of Mark Hensby, the forgotten man of Australian golf, because this would ensure that he would never be forgotten That's and he'd true. have to come at, back out to Australia. Under what category, actually? Well, yeah. I was just wondering about courage. Courage. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, Courage. what about our bloke who went up uh, Everest, Everest twice? Twice. Andrew Locke. Andrew Locke. What about Andrew Locke for Courage? Oh, ha- well, or role model. See, you know well, Andrew here. Locke. Yeah. You see, I hate role models. I, I just think it's a complete stupid mm-hmm. uh, concept. It, it seems to me that if I had a role model, I'd model myself on, say, Mark O'Mealy, which wouldn't do me any good because all mm-hmm. I do is go around bagging people. Mm-hmm. Bagging soft Ford packs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I'd call them pillows. Right. And right. they're dark as the incoming right. happen. Is there a role model award, actually? For there it? is. That's why I mention it. Oh. You know, so what happens is Andrew Locke could go in the role model slot. Mm. And, um, you know, then you've got uh, difficult things like fair go is a tricky one too. Fair go. Fair go. Um, you know, just, just, you know, thinking outside the square. But, you know, it could, mm. I mean... God, it's hard. I know. It? That's what I mean. I'm, I've got them. I'll go through the categories here. Bravery and courage. I find it hard to separate that. those two. Then well, let's say you could. All right. Yeah. Well, we can come up. Young with Aussie that. for an Australian twenty-five years or younger. Mark O'Mealy might be able to get this actually. But what's the young Aussie got to do? Well, for an Australian twenty-five years younger who has demonstrated outstanding resolve, mature judgment, and moral character beyond their years. Mark O'Mealy. He actually might be older than 25. He, he may not. Think. I don't think he can win that one. No. Okay, community spirit, role model, mateship. I don't know, mateship. mateship. Hard for... How know. is that defined? Well, for an Australian group or... For an Australian or group of Australians who have demonstrated loyalty and goodwill to others, pulling together to achieve common good, especially when times are tough. I'd say South Sydney Rabbits win it easily. Mm. I mean, look, they're the form team of the competition. They've played the bottom two teams twice and won and got the bye. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, I just, I mean, I'm just trying to yeah, 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 yeah. think here, really. Yeah. True blue, mm. environment. Environment. Yeah, well, the, for, for an Australian or a group of Australians whose actions prove that by making one degree of difference to their local environment, people can collectively make a difference to the broader community. Oh. Mm. 
you know. No, I don't know. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I'm not expecting inspiration here. Mm. Fair go, and peace. I'm just going to have to work at it. I mean, I never get that done. I'm peace. What, what about peace? Uh, well, for advancing understanding, tolerance, and social harmony among Australians of any background. Mm. Vlad Wharton. Mm. Mm. Yeah, speaking of Vlad Wharton. Do we know any past winners of these awards? No, I've got no idea. No, no idea at all. And is there a cash prize and a bucket of hot chips connected with it? Or is it just sort of a mention in the paper? By the way, this year, the 2008 Peace Prize, Pride of Australian <coughs> Peace Prize, was went won to, by Detective what? Sergeant yeah. whoever. Yeah, mm. not bad. Or Tony De La Harris, the mm. well known rugby league referee. Mm. Mm. Or the cast of Underbelly or something. Oh, the cast of Underbelly. Well, they've good. done a lot. They've done promote. heaps. Community. Mm. Yeah. God, they've done. They're everywhere. Mm. They're real role models, aren't they? They are. Real they are. Models. Real role models, yeah. literally. Yeah. yeah. Now, look, uh, Vlad Wharton alerted me to this uh, Friday night. Three of Australia's brightest boxing talents mm. had a hit out at the Campbelltown Catholic Club. Mm-hmm. God, they've done a tremendous job with the community, they haven't have. they? Campbelltown Catholic Club. They have, yeah. Uh, on a show topped by the IBO world middleweight title bout between local star Daniel Giel and mm. the London-based Serbian Gerard Adjatovic. Mm. Giel, uh, 27, sadly you can't get the youth thing, mm. uh, a Commonwealth Games gold medalist, is unbeaten in 18 fights, mm. undefeated world-rated feather, featherweight, your favourite, Billy Dibb, mm. should have no trouble with Ray Olate, mm. while baby Peter Mitrevsky faces Frank Laporto uh, for the Australian Junior Middleweight title. So they're all, well, that's a great night. What, when's this on? That was Friday night. I just mentioned that. Well, we don't know who won. We don't know. No, sorry, I haven't got the results in those. Okay. No, I just picked out as a great night, you know, that does bring peace Gee, and there's harmony. there's a lot happening in this city, isn't there? Perfectly put. Give me isn't that there a again. lot on? Yeah, there's a lot on. You can I mean, no wonder you, that crazy old game rugby league struggles a little bit well, when you've got something like that on at the same time. And Menangle Park today, I bet your crowds are down because people have gone out to have a look at this state of the art. Mm. They say the best trotting track this side of Beijing, yeah. Menangle Is that Park. right? Remember how we, I think yeah. we broke the story, they were thinking of moving harness racing from Arrow Park mm. to Menangle Park. Mm. So this is Menangle Park really putting itself on show. On show. Especially with the news Albion Park in Queensland. Yeah. Apart and what's happened with Harold like, Park? Is that still... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it's been very valuable I uh, have this sort of thing that hasn't just slipped away from us without us knowing. No, to some, you know, sort of... To some developer. Shoebox developer. Mm. No, I just hope... I hope so too. Yes. Uh, right. Look, Roy, the um, one thing I did like this week was the centenary medallion... Mm-hmm. Celebrating a hundred years of rugby league. Oh, the medallion's out, is yeah. it? Is that an official coin? Like it is it's legal it is. tender, is it? It comes with a bit of a sort of story. The centenary of rugby league is proud to release mm. the centenary of rugby league medallion series, featuring the Canterbury series. I don't cent- like that. Featuring a centenary of rugby league medallion, mm. the official two thousand eight season team photo, and key club statistics. Each piece comes beautifully framed and is strictly limited to an addition of 25 million of each of the 16 teams. Demand for this commemorative piece is high, so get in to avoid disappointment. What it is is a photo of, let's say, like Lucy's case, you know, the Sharks, a photo of the current list of the Sharks with a coin, as you might be able to see tacked in there. I might have to pass it over so you can get a hold of one. Just have a look at that. So you get your sharks or your roosters. Wow. Now, th- tell me more about this coin. Well, the coin, I can't... It's just a centenary coin. Oh, uh, it's not a legal tender. You can't buy your Oh, no, no. It's it. not like your Don Bradman thing. That would have been great. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I'm expecting. What, what's going on with... Uh, is, who does this? Treasury. Treasury. Wouldn't that be great to put out a rugby league coin? Yes. Like a, a florin, a 20 cent piece. A 20 cent piece. With, with the Queen, obviously, on one side. And, on and the a other motive side. of rugby league. Uh, yes. Where? And limited edition or just try and flood the market? Oh, well, they would naturally be a limited edition. They, mm. they, they would Say put four out, million. Well, they might put out 40 or 50,000 of them. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Hmm. Yes, and then your real fans could try and keep them in pristine condition. Or if you use them at a rugby league mm. game, mm. you got a dollar of value. Oh, OK. I yeah. mean, I'm sure yeah, that's yeah, open yeah, to yeah, rorting. Yeah. You can see why. Yeah, I can, but... Yeah, well, I wouldn't rule it out of hand. But let's get the coin off the... I'm amazed this hasn't happened. No, what's Gallup been doing with his time this year? I mean, oh. that would have, I would have approached, mm. let's say, Lindsay Tanner straight away as soon as he got in you yeah. know, in November. 
Lindsay or even Piggott. Wayne Swan. It Wayne might Swan. be Wayne Swan. Well, he's a rugby league nut. Well, he was captain of his school oh, team. No, he, they, they was quite a player. Mm. Anyway, would it go to him and well, say... I look at him often and I think, oh, well, he might be a case of trip. What a great loss to rugby league. <laughs> Cog. And uh, say your last goodbye from the CD sharing space. Uh, Roy, the Grand National yesterday at Flemington, uh, as mentioned, uh, I think Pat Bartley might have got this for the Fairfax people, mm. uh, descended into chaos after more than two-thirds of the field failed to finish the testing 4,000-metre course. Um, Caulfield trained Derringer, raced away with the event at only his second jump start, mm. overshadowed by the number of casualties. Uh, the Torian and the big noise, uh, well, should I say, Shroganet, Tadaketsu, Pasco, Daneva, Daneva, Chartered, Everready, the Torian and big noise all failed to complete the journey. Uh, Chartered and Everready succumbed to fatal leg injuries, meaning they had to be put down. Mm. Uh, jockey Adrian Garraway on uh, Pasco was hospitalised after being knocked unconscious, mm. or they were uh, going conscious and complained of a sore arm. The race was further complicated when two jumpers came to grief mm. at the second last jump of the first lap. Okay. This meant that when the field came around again, the runners were steered away from the obstacle because of the injured horses and jockeys, you know, clogging up the, yeah. clogging up the uh, space that they were going to run in, mm. clogging up the track. Mm. As well, the anti-jumps racing lobby arrived at Flemington and lined the fence at the 200-metre mm. mark, calling for the abolition of the sport. <laughs> Mercifully, uh, sanity prevailed, as Bartley says. However, it was a fitting result for Derringer, which is trained in partnership by the brothers Frank and John Sal- Salanitri. Mm. Uh, and the future looks bright. Well, unless he obviously falls at a hurdle and busts his ass and then has to be put down like uh, those poor old other horses, mm-hmm. you know, charged in every... I always thought he was travelling well. I was seeing a few come down around him, but I knew he'd stay the distance and he's jumped so well lately that I wouldn't uh, be in a problem getting over the hurdles, uh, John Sanilitri said Mm. after the race. It's a great feeling to win the Grand National. It's disappointing about the circumstances. Brett Scott underlined his reputation as one of Australia's finest jumps uh, riders with a faultless display on the conveyance. I was very happy, always very happy with how he was travelling. Be concerned that when he got to the troubled spot at the second last jump, things were getting pretty tight. But he did a good job. I was concerned I'd gone too early on him, but once I gave him a smack around the arse, he pricked up his ears and really went to the line well. The Robert Smurden trained Everett. He looked set for victory at the top of the straight when he squeezed through a narrow opening, but broke down 80 metres later. Mm. The drama. Many jumping enthusiasts said the high casualty rate during the Grand National was due to the firm track. Trainer John Leake put it down to the hardness of the track. So happens you paired Derringer, dot, dot, dot. Anyway, the, uh, well, you know. Mm. It's an interesting story because it's a bit hard to know where, where it the, goes from here because I think I'm right in saying that only Adelaide, or should I say South Australia and Melbourne, mm. I'm not sure what happens in Tasmania, but I don't think they do, mm. approve hurdle racing. Mm. It's completely underground elsewhere. You know, mm. you can often go to a good meet out the back of uh, Narandra. Mm. Uh, no, know, I've been to some illegal. great meets over yeah. the years. Yeah. 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 Illegal meets, though. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. just the sort of jumps. You know, yeah. if you want to come and see a few horses, go yeah. some big obstacles. Huh. Now, what I find amazing is, and mm. look, you know, we had Andrew Hoy, a discussion about Andrew Hoy and the... Do you pop- know how that conspiracy case is going? No, I, I, I haven't picked up any no. late mail on that at all. No. But here we have Andrew Hoy with his terrific horses uh, and he's training one to go very high over the jumps for the, uh, you know, the Olympics and it does appear he might be helping it on its way mm-hmm. with a sort of like a, a what appears to be a, a front-toe spur sort of device that's clipped onto the boot. Well, this is the allegation. Yes. Now, none of this is questioned. Mm. You know, people think, oh, that's great, how cute. Mm. You know, horses forced to jump over huge obstacles for, you know, going for gold. Oh, it must be okay. Whereas here they run around for a purse. Mm. They say, you know, they're trying to get something out of it. And, of course, everybody's up in arms about it when it goes horribly wrong. Mm. What about all those people, all those horses that haven't got a hope of doing anything with their lives once they've come a cropper in the, uh, in the equestrian events? Yeah. Or those weird races that take hours and hours and years to complete, like the quilty and things like that. Mm. And there's so many ways of being cruel. Mm. It's a bit hard to single out jumps racing for... You know, unfair mm. attention. But like I say, it's only held now in, uh, apart mm. from illegal meets, in South Australia and uh, Melbourne. Mm. And I think the yeah. Grand National is the highlight. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, the Grand, there's yeah. the Grand National at Aintree, of course, which often yeah. kills thousands of horses every yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, But do you have an opinion about it, Roy? Oh, look, I love it. 
I love jumps racing, I always have done. Um, uh, I, and I, I think I see it as a real cultural thing. Mm -hmm. cultural. You know, I think it's important to the culture of a, of, of a nation to, to keep jumps going. Mm -hmm. um, and let's face it, it's not for the faint-hearted, either jockey, no. horse or spectator. No, that's true. I you agree. Know, it's, it's for people who've seen life mm -hmm. and know How that cruel. life, you know, you dealt a couple of, you know, a couple of cards with life. You mm -hmm. know, one says keep living and the other says you're going to go. And uh, often the you're going to go cards played on that day, and uh, you, to me it it's it uh, just gives me food for thought. Mm, it does, you know, because w whenever I took the king around, you know, if we if we survived it, mm -hmm. you know, I felt that we'd done something great, mm. you know, and I didn't care sometimes if the king hadn't won as long as we'd survived it. Yeah, no, I understand. That's what I'd you say to home. him, you know, at the back of the flat on the way back, mate. We survived yeah, it. We got through it. We got through it, mm. you know, and training could be a. Oh, I training was hard. Yeah. You know, training for jumps. Yeah. I, I trained the rooting king to climb a tree. Yeah. Not that he could use that, that not, skill. Not, that, that skill. Yeah. But to, to give him confidence of, yeah. of being yeah, able to negotiate height. Yeah, I know. You know, yeah. I had him in the pine forest there in Lithgow, climbing trees, climbing pine trees. Mm. You know, once he got up to the first first bit, once yeah. he got up to the first bow, he was fine from yeah, then on up. So it was just that first one that was hard. Yeah, yeah, it was. And that was the one he had to leap up to. Yeah, to get up there. Yeah. And hold and his then, then then obviously when he got really high up, he'd start to teeter a little bit and mm. he had the common sense to come back down because mm -hmm. he knew it couldn't take his weight when mm -hmm. you got out in those small branches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, but I, I just felt it was a great thing for character building. Yeah. Do you, think, do you think something in the Pride of Australia medal should go towards jumps racing? Yes, I've always you know? felt that jumps racing should get so, more accolades than it deserves. And I, mm. I've often argued that even with your Queen's Birthday oh. mm. awards, you know, your, your ACs, your, 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 your yeah. AMs, yeah. Your, your, uh, your, yeah. your order in the, or the companion to, oh, all AM. of those, yes, yeah. all of those, whatever they mean, that very few of them have ever gone to jumps racing people. Oh, I can't get enough of that weird. It's spinning in my head. Uh, familian. Uh, they're, they're at the life. Yeah, they're playing park life as well. Uh, I don't know who isn't. If you're not playing park life, you must be, you know, on life support. Uh, Is there public transport going? There would be. Yeah. There would be plenty of. And, and carpooling. Yeah. And all those things. Car, well, carpooling. That's, yeah, that's the, the future, future isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. And I think I think multiple events. You know, look, I here I was just noticing here while the familiar were playing that terrific song, it's spinning in my head. Was it Lance Thompson is becoming a boxing promoter? Here we have a rugby league player becoming a boxing promoter. Good on him. That's where Vlad Wharton failed. Is mm. he only had was a boxing promoter? Yeah. He, he didn't have any other. You know, strings he, to his bar. He didn't. He couldn't multitask. Yeah. Uh, it's not about. Uh, he's but he's not about uh, to start looking after his good mate Anthony Mundine. Instead, he's taking over the management of Sakio. Beaker, who we've oh, mentioned Sakia before. Beaker. Yeah. Oh, that's The fighter good. who won the yeah. American TV reality show, The Contender. Mm -hmm. Beaker wants a piece of Mundine and Thompson. will be trying to set up a fight between the pair. I didn't realise Beaker was on the sniff for Mundine. No, I didn't either. That'll be sensational. It will be. Uh, That'd be coming post-green, though, wouldn't he? He's got to put... Oh, he's got to put green ahead of everything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. five million. Uh, I know it's a, it's a fight that the nation would be interested in. Mm, Beaker v. Man, yes, it would. Is that how you'd see it? The nation would be interested in I that? I think the nation would be interested, yeah. I think the nation's ready for such an event. Now. Where's he thinking of having it? Stadium well, Australia? Or is that being talked about? Or, well, or before, is it going to be boutique? He's not going to go boutique, is he? I don't think he's going to go boutique and go into the butter box. No, no. I think he's going to go open the, in the open air. Open air, good. And really big. Like, I thought the Maya Music Bowl was a beautiful venue yeah, the other was. night. it was. For the Fennec Do. Yeah. Uh, Cold. Do, what about Nippin? Rushcutters Bay? Rushcutters Bay would be good. You know, where the sheds where, were. Well, yeah. Where Take the, it back to the roots. Yeah. What a lovely idea. I don't know what Lance is thinking, but uh, There's he some ideas strikes me as a sort of tradition sort of man. Uh, yeah. I, uh, what I like was... Unless I... you're talking about the Taj Mahal, having it there. Oh, no, I don't think so. Too small. Unless oh. they've revamped it mm. by then. Mm. Look, I know it's a fight that the nation would be interested in, mm. uh, but uh, does this does his new role affect his uh, long friendship with, the, with the, obviously, Chock? Uh, this is about business. I'd be disappointed if Anthony can't accept that. He knows with my retirement from football, I've got to make a living. Mm. And this will be part of the management that I do with my footballers, getting them into bouts. Now, I'm just oh, wondering... He's, see, he's looking for... But, but Beaker's uh, never played football. No, I know, I know, I know, but... He meant without 
you know, beacon notwithstanding, beacon not I intend stand. to get a lot of rugby league players, players who might be wanting to push on in a boxing game. I assume this is the area that uh, Hopper as a manager would be he going is, into. He would be, yeah. God, now, we're going to have more managers than, than fighters. fighters. Can I suggest to you that a double header here with a rugby league fixture in this one as well? I mean... I oh, to cut down on fuel costs. Yeah, that's right. So you have got the gathering oh. of the tribe, so to speak, for rugby league, yeah. and then you've got a gathering of the tribe for the Beaker Chuck Mundine bout. Mm. I mean, I'm sure if you're going to ask me what sort of match could hold a candle to it. Well, I think you'd have to go for a top of the table clash, maybe at a semi final, mm. uh, or even a preliminary final that you have the 80 minutes of rugby league, mm. and then you bring the chairs on and people sit down and watch a nice bout put on by Lance Thompson, you know, and he, he's introduced to the crowd. Mm. The underbelly people had come along. Uh, you'd probably find Dicko would be prepared to pop in. Uh, you know, Mick Gatto might be able to fly up. Let's say it was in Sydney. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, so she added a bit of a glamour. Warnie yeah. would be there. Yeah. Kyle Sandlin's, uh, oh, okay. you know, people like that would come. I uh, suppose the housemates would be out by then. The housemates, too. some maybe of the housemates, the housemates would love to get along. along. Yeah, yes. they'd love to get along. With uh, maybe Pammy might like to come along. Pam, Pam yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. maybe if Russell went, he'd take along, like, Tom Barbara Hanks Streisand. could come and Barbara Streisand. And... Well, I think that's all possible. Mm. And he'd be able to maybe introduce the crowd. As John Australia's... Voight. John Voight, yeah, Australia's greatest living actor. Mm. And then he might be able to get into the ring and show a few moves from Cinderella Man. Yeah, you know, just for show, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 well. You know, and oh, when you buy, you bought your ticket, say, either through Ticketek or... What I'd love. It'd be the two events together. Two events together. The so double if you wanted header. to go, you could go one singularly if you wanted to. I don't think you, so. You, no. you could, could obviously just arrive late or turn up oh, early and leave. I see. But I see. But be the one ticket price. has... Yeah. Mm, okay. But what I'd love to see also is bits of it where you tear off your bucket of hot chips and maybe a couple of beers or vodka and tonic or something like that. So that's all oh, included in the one price. So, oh. so as then you know, you, you're going to sell them because people are going to not want to uh, go... Home without using the fullness of the ticket that they bought. If you, do you it's get not what going I mean? to be a cheap ticket though, HG, if you've got a bucket of chips, coupons what, on it as well. But look at what we're offering. Look at what we're offering. We've got, uh, you know, obviously, uh, or the, uh, Lance says it right, the whole nation would be interested in this. Well, he's right. You know, I mean, I could only think of those wowsers down at uh, Flemington the other day trying to ban the jumps races would be the only mm. people who wouldn't be interested in this. Mm. I mean, that that would sell itself, that. Mm. Even if people hadn't heard of it, they'd love to go. They would love to go, yeah. Uh, come and see what you may be missing out on. That could be the way it's yeah, promoted. Yeah, 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 Plus yeah. your rugby league. Again, come and see what you missed out on. Mm. Uh, and All right, you've got, uh, you've got say, a, a preliminary final, perhaps. Preliminary you, final. You've, then you've got the boxing. Yep. Yeah. Right. That's pretty good. What if, say, Holden were to reveal their new model? Oh, no, I think that's got to be there. The 427. The night, yeah, the 427. 427S. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one that's oh, got the whole nation this talking. This revolutionise. Yeah, the way we look at petrol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a single, yeah. Well, in a single motor. Well. I mean, I've been looking at ways to revolutionise my thinking towards petrol for no, some time. It's now. a real carpooling car special, yeah, it is. isn't it? <laughs> carpooling special. Yeah, leave it at home. Mm. <coughs> no, no, no. It's going to be wonderful. Mm. With roughly four and a half litres, if I read the numbers correctly, in the motor under the donk stacked in there. Yeah, well, I think so. I think I'm it's... just wondering, you know, when you said the Holden, for a minute I thought mm. the Holden Hell Drivers reform using the 427 for a bit of a display while they set up the boxing ring. And one thing they've got to do is bring the seats close. They can't... They oh, just no, can't, no, 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 no. The chairs will have to go out. And, you know, bit. can I just say well, that... Well, that's, well, well, how's that going to work? OK, so you've bought your ticket and you're sitting, you know... I think you get, you have to, you'd have to... You'd have a... You know, stand for the rugby league, and then some lucky people would be able to sit ringside. Oh, okay. But your big hitters would come down there and probably have a dinner. Well, now, that's going to be for your celebrities, isn't it? Celebrities, and yeah, could, yeah, Do they yeah. eat? Yes, they like do. Like the lobster and stuff? There. That comes to their table. But I'll tell you one thing that wouldn't go astray. I could see this about being the second half of the Andrew Rieu show, Andre Rieu show, later in the year. Mm, well, he's that, still with us. Yeah, well, he is still with us, and I tell you, that just gets too big. I mean... <laughs> Too many people. Uh, uh, well, I mean, Rieu, that's the thing about Rieu is he doesn't need anything else. Well, the other thing, you, I know what you're going to you say. Know, uh, sure. I I, I, can I say. suggest rugby league might need Rieu more than Rieu needs yeah. rugby league? Oh, fair enough. Now, that'd be great. I would be approaching Rieu and saying, listen, Andre. How about the national anthem? How the about, the final? you know, you've got your crowd here for you do. Would you mind if we had a game of rugby league once you're finished? Those who want to stay, those who want to stay, can watch, say, Souths v. 
dragons or something like okay. that. Okay, I can see your drawback because obviously if you had the fight on, I was thinking more of the fight than rugby league, oh, right. obviously can't stage that every night that mm. Andre Rieu's here, so you might have to pick a different sporting event. Mm. Because remember we're talking about saving costs on petrol, mm. you've got your discount ticket price, yeah. including your bucket of hop chips and your lobster yeah, water yeah, for yeah. those ringside yeah. and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for, is some way of yeah. bringing these things together. Yeah. I mean, for so long, we've wanted to live in separate boxes. Mm. Now, because society is changing, the cost of society is changing, we're being thrown together in new arrangements mm. that may prove to be much more rewarding mm. because seeing Andre Rio do the Radetzky mark, I feel like punching somebody, honestly. Every time I hear that, I, I feel do. like punching somebody. And to see yeah. a good game of rugby league or a fight after that or a demolition derby if you want to, Okay, all right. You know, right. after okay. that would be great. Okay, all right. Why not fight? You know, you've got your ghettos, your, 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 yeah. your underbelly stars. Yeah, Shane Moore having their, to go. Yeah, yeah. Ringside. With their tables, ringside. Yeah. Lobster, lovely, da di da. Then clear the set, rugby league. Rugby league. Then, hold on, everyone. It's not finished yet. <laughs> Coming through. Here's Andre. Well, that's <laughs> that's a night out, isn't it? It is. Well, that's the future. That is a night out. <laughs> oh, hey, resin dogs caught us on the hop there with caught up. Uh, now the city's called more, and it's time for another fat. And now on This Sporting Life, it's time for the second fat of the afternoon. The second fat is brought to you each and every week by Mad Dads, the Woody's Float, Actar Technology and Chunky Chains, the rolled gold links that have your head coming out better. What's on the chopping block this time, HG? Well, look, it starts or it's anchored by a CD put out by Kel Stoner. It's Casey's sister. Oh, Casey, Casey Stoner's, Stoner's sister. sister. Yeah, Kel Stoner. Wow. Um, the real deal. The real deal, yeah. Lull me to sleep, long road, make me blue, burn and track, bless you, sister. Burn and, and track, me. long road. There's a oh, couple of all, references know, there, there are there. Yeah, there are. It's hard to imagine, but Kel Stoner has got a CD out. I'd love to see Kel and Casey get together. Yeah. Now, Well, there, yeah, see? You go to the concert. You watch the Moto GP afterwards. That's the future. I know. Barassus is the title of a CD put out by La- Lars Ante Kuminen. Mm. Terrific, uh, terrific, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, really. Part of that explosion of Swedish funk we go on about. What if he knows Lars Klepic? He would. Mm. Uh, we got The Herd and Summerland. We got Black Stars, Money of Your Life and Time's New Viking. Uh, this one does uh, be wary. This one does explain contain explicit lyrics, so it's a terrific prize. Just CDs, five CDs, five CDs. That's and fantastic. Anchored by the herd, and of course, Kel Stoner. Yep. Okay. Question is for all comers, Hello. all comers. Uh, how many rugby league centenary coins would have been minted had the rugby league had its act together? How many would have been minted? Mm-hmm. And that number, Roy? That number is one three hundred eight triple five. All comers three six. For now, Thank very you. good. Oh, Dead Letter Circus and reaction. Uh, Dead Letter Circus from Brisbane. Who are we talking to, Roy? Oh, we're joined by Zach, who's joining us from Bundamba in Queensland. How are you there, Zach? I'm excellent, Roy. Now, Zach, Wednesday night, mate. Uh, how will you be enjoying the spectacle? Well, I'll be watching it on the. On Kerry's old station, and yes. with sound down, and um, tuned into tuned into the and your card table. Where is Very there? Good. Is there any way Very you good. want the match to go? I mean, well, I'm, I point? was born south of the border, so uh, I'm a blue at heart. Yes, it's a bit difficult when you're when you're living in the it is in the midst of uh, Queensland. When now, get, when do you let people blocked. know? Do you let people know that's how you feel that you're going for the Blues, or do you shut up about it? You just keep your head down and keep your mouth shut. Yeah, oh. good. That's the best way to go if you want to, you know. And what do you make of the team selections? I mean, obviously there's a disappointment that the Morris boys aren't uh, part of it. But apart from that, how, how do you think the the uh, team's been revamped since the record equaling loss at well, Suncorp the other day? Well, they got a lot of young kiddies in there who are going to have to step up. Step up, 
Yep. Well, Wayne Jr.'s boy has excellent pedigree, doesn't he? He sure does. He sure does. So yeah. let's, let's hope that some of that comes through on the night. Well, let's hope it does too. Now, what about Braithen Astor? I mean, are you confident that he can uh, do the job Bird was doing? How could you be confident in Braith? No. It's, difficult. it's a difficult call, isn't it? Do you follow a team in the uh, south of the border competition? Obviously, you've got a number of selections north well, of the border, but well, south of the border? I've spent many years in Townsville, so you've, you've got to oh. go for the, for the Angry Mangoes. The, the Angry yes, Mangoes, the, well done. Cowboys, but uh, they're having a pretty dud season, aren't they? Well, they are. what, how do you explain this, Zach? Well, you've got no Matty Bowen for a start, you know. Mm. He's the heart yeah. of the team. And then Thurston's away a lot with his rep well, duties. Thurston's got a lot of sort of off-field duties that I think are causing a few other troubles. Oh. And, yeah. and, of course, Graham Murray's gone. Well, you sack your coach before the season starts. It's not a, you know... It's not a great look, is it? No, no. And then half your props want to leave, I think. Mm. I don't well, know. and then you've got injuries and whatever. True. But, you know, what an excellent match last night. What a brilliant effort to, you know... Be 22 points up. 20, 20, 24 four, points. Sorry, 24 points yeah. up and to lose by a point. To the, to the team who are equal bottom of the table with you. Yeah. That's it. You wa- I know, I know. Did you watched it, did you, Zach? Well, I actually watched it online. The score is ticking <gasps> over on the NRL.com oh, website. That's the worst possible way to watch it. It must have been devastating for you. Well, I actually uh, picked Souths in the in the work tipping comp, so I was quite chuffed with my, my effort there. Yeah. Oh, OK. So either way, you were going to win. Good call. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think that's, you know, that's the way you've got to do it when you've got two teams on the bottom of the ladder. Well, yeah, true, 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 true. And uh, now, <clears throat> do you think there was a hint of show business about the result the well, other night? I think night? it was perfectly scripted. I think yeah, I know. Jeffrey I know. French's script writers sort of got involved. Were, you know, moonlighting. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. They had a couple of hours and they knocked up a beauty. Uh, it does. Uh, it does uh, mean that the product's so good now. Of course, as Ray keeps reminding me, that's Ray Rabbits Warren. Uh, it keeps reminding me that we'll never see a two-all, uh, a two-all score line, no. it'll always be one each and then a decider because you can't afford to have that last game mm. not pull a crowd because if anything... Well, that's what I think happened at, mm. uh, up in Brisbane the other a few weeks ago. Yeah, I think the Blues, Newton, you know, they know who's paying the bills. They know what's yeah, going to happen. They do. True. And how, do, how else do you explain it? Well, you can't, can you? No. Oh. And then to hear that, you know, Bird was out partying yeah, all night after that, thing. you think if, if they were serious... Yeah. You know, maybe they'd they have, wouldn't have the energy for that. They'd have gone back and sat in the room of mirrors for a few hours and mm. and had a good hard look at themselves. Exactly, but they're sack. out partying on the town. You've got to say, what's going on here? What's going on? No, it's, it's, and then they're complaining about backing up the following weekend. Well, no. maybe if they didn't have to go out on the town so much, they'd be able to back up or end up in the back of the paddy wagon. And we still haven't got to the bottom of that. We still don't know what actually happened there. We still don't know. Well, Whether we have the minister for police saying one thing, we've got Bird saying another. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, Zach... I've got no comment at all. No, no, no. fair enough, no, fair enough, course. fair enough. You shouldn't have. Well, look, we weren't there. Yeah, no, that's right. It just seems that somebody took offence at the mo and thought a spell in the paddy wagon might bring a bloke to his senses. I think even if we were there, we have no comment at all because, you know, the Queensland police are involved, so... Yeah, that's well, very good. Well, yeah, enough said. Yeah, now, uh, Zach, let Roy set out the question and have a swing at it. Zach, how many rugby league centenary coins would have been minted if the uh, rugby league got its act together? Probably about 20,000. Yes, 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 exactly right. Now, the Herd, uh, the Lars and a Kumanen CD, the Kelstoner CD, uh, Casey's uh, sister. We've got the Times New Viking and the Black Stars, Money All Your Life. Uh, Zach, we'll get them in the mail to you and they'll be there, but well, hopefully not long after Wednesday night. Should it go either way? There's something coming in the mail that'll cheer you up. And in the meantime, good luck Wednesday night and thanks very much for being part of this sporting life. Cheers, thanks, Zach. See you, bye. See you, Zach. <laughs> two on the trot, two on the trot this time. The mm. Killers and Smile Like You Mean It from Hot Fuss and that was Lady Hawk. Paris yeah. is burning. Lady Hawk. Paris what about, is what, 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 what about those wallabies last night? I know, we'll get to them right after this on Triple J. Owner Builders. That new house going up in your street. What is wrong with it? The design seems okay. The house to land ratio, not a problem. The grey water mechanisms are state of the art. So what the hell is wrong with it? One, the bricks are imported from New Zealand. Two, the toilet tiles come from Italy. Three, the copper pipe was extruded in South Africa. Four, the white goods are German. No wonder the place stinks. Ask yourself, would former ARU legend John Eales live in an eyesore like that? When Rocket Rodney E took control of the Western Bulldogs, what was the first decision he made? He booked the team for a fortnight at Crystal Spa Gardens in Werribee. 
they all can't be mad. Builders, a scaffolding cost blowing your bottom line? All 457 crew come with their own bamboo. Builders, is interstate transport sending you to the wall? Get a 457 crew to carry it there. Builders, are your shareholders tired of paying out profits in per diems? All 457 crews live on a sausage roll for a week and sleep on site in all weathers. Interested? Of course you are. Contact the Pacific Island International Labour Hire Specialists, Roy and HG. You've seen these grass-skirted island blokes on the warpath. Roy and HG can get them working on your footpath. Uh, Roy, it was a terrific night of uh, rugby union and this mm. whole revolution that's going on with Robbie Deans. It's just them around. Turn, change them around. turn them right around. They've got composure now. Composure. Composure. And I don't see them getting out of their comfort no, zone that often. they're not. The composure's just yes, unbelievable, composure, isn't it? Yeah. And Especially sure, with the set piece. The set piece, <laughs> That's right. And I tell you what, the, the <clears> second phase, the third oh, phase, there's never any doubt no. that they're always in their comfort no. zone. No, they're good with the ball in hand. Oh, tremendous. And Matt Dunning... And ball through the hands. Ball through the hands. And Matt yeah. Dunning is a revelation, yes. you know, as, as your prop yeah. up front. And, of course, they're no easy to beat the French. They've got that no. caveman there who doesn't like being called the caveman. But no, uh, Does he take umbrage? He does. 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 He's a bit like Dishhead Dowling. He sort oh. of arcs up a bit when you call him the caveman. Oh, I no, thought he was trading off that. No, 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 he doesn't appear to. He doesn't trade off anything he just likes his hair like that and looks right. rather he looks like jeff robinson he does the wild man yeah, the wild man but it was a terrific oh. night and i can see them having a terrific season the wallabies no, with I, Robin too. Yes. Uh, I mean of course you know the french aren't the only what would i call it the only big nation in world rugby union no they're not uh, no they're I not mean, but it's a start isn't it and i think we're playing them again next week and we've beaten ireland we've beaten and ireland, france yeah. yep and the big two are coming, you know, South Africa and obviously, mm. uh, you know, the All Blacks. Mm. But uh, I, I just think it's a revelation. I, mm. I was taken by a terrific quote from Matt Dunning this week. He said, uh, I've got no set profession to get into when I've finished football. That's mm. really refreshing, it isn't is it? It is refreshing, isn't it? Because usually they're lawyers or doctors yeah, or stuff like that. They've often. Got, uh, yeah, professional people. Professional yeah. people. Mm. Uh, Matt Dunning said, I've got no set profession when I get into after when I finish football. I've yeah. definitely got some career paths I'm looking at, but they won't be hampered if I'm playing football until I'm 45. Fire. Isn't that great? That is fantastic. Yeah, Another refreshing. 15 years of Matt Dunning yeah, leading this round. Of Dunning right. magic. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, no, it's it's just fantastic. Mm. I, I just thought the whole mm. the whole thing is just going so well and, mm. and countering some of that disappointment that mm. Australia is now not sending any sprinters to the Beijing Olympics. I know those things are mm. sort of hard to put in the yeah. scales of yeah. the sporting week. I know. But I, I was I was, de- I was devastated by that. News. Yeah, I was devoted so, too. Devoted. Completely yeah. dev- gutted. Gutted, yeah. Because I thought a lot of young kids, you know, what a great experience it would have been just to have been in a team mm. with, say, Shervo and Johnson. Well, even if you didn't do anything. I know. Even, even, if, you, even you know, if you, you know. Just smelt the smoke. Yeah. You know, and ran around and yeah. came last. And you heard, I mean, that, surely matter. the Olympics. Surely, the, what happened to the Baron, to, 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 to Cubitans? Edith. Dream. Dream mm. of it's not to win, it's to participate. Exactly. I mean, that's gone for a Burton in the modern era. I know, I know. I mean, it's up to Gosper to bring that back, but he won't. And, and Coates. Coates, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if John Coates had stepped in and said to Athletics Australia, look, not Sense good enough. So. Not good enough. We need somebody there for the 100 metres. Sure, they're not going to win it, but yeah, who cares? They're who going cares? to participate. Who knows where it'll go? A seed might be sown. Thank you. With some school kid plucked from a school saying, do you want to go to the Beijing Olympics? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. What events? I haven't got any events. Have you heard of the 100 metres? Yeah. No. What is it? But couldn't You'd we be... get a couple of our stall gift Ah, oh, what a terrific Blokes. idea. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, they're pretty quick, aren't they? Mm. Sure, it's a staggered start and all of that, and it's a bit, you know, it's fine, mm. it's a bit hard to understand, but mm. uh, well, but what I do understand is there's a finish line. And they go fast towards They it. do. And then the 200 metres, no one in the 200 metres. And then I what's wrong with the, with the one, you know, the 4 by 100 metre relay? I haven't said that right. No, I know, know what you mean. But because we're not sending any sprinters, we've got no relay. To How embarrassing is that? I, I can't remember a time and when Australia wasn't represented in relay. I know. Say 200 metre relay. And then we get to the problem that's brewing Mm. with all these things is that on the opening night, on August the 8th, Mm. it's going to be Coates Mm -hmm. and Gosper Mm -hmm. and a flag bearer Mm -hmm. and that's it, walking in. 
Yeah. Well, I, look, I understand that. I, I, I don't think the, our athletes should be subjected to that sort of smog. Mm-hmm. And I think our training's happening in Taiwan, isn't it, HG? Uh, and offshore then we can, yeah, yeah, and then we can just blow in for the events and then blow back. Yeah. But aren't you persuaded by the oh, Chinese look, I government? would have done it slightly differently. Mm-hmm. I, I would have had uh, a lot of fans just dress up in Aussie clothing and if yeah. they were prepared to wear the smog, sure, let yeah. them wear it out there in the middle behind the flag bearer to yeah. they look as it because there's honestly the psychological impact you know that you, you cast your mind back to the grand old girl mm. 2000 yeah, no, when well, those no. australians entered we had more a larger team than anyone i mean anyone else i know our team was almost as mm. as big as the rest, the rest of, the of the world, world combined. combined i know it looked great didn't and it, it looked great we, they just kept coming i know it was just incredible and i tell you what i i mm. tell you in china a lot of facial hair wouldn't go astray either we could get mm. bearded australians Yes. Somehow out there in the yes. middle, in the dryers of bones or whatever they're going to, what stupid gear they're going to wear. Yes. Have we seen those costumes yet? The opening ceremony costume. I don't I think I pretty, have. No, pretty no, conservative, I, don't, I would don't imagine. Don't. Yeah. But um, look, it's just going to be fantastic, and I believe the Chinese will do a great job here. Sure, they got their problems with the algae. Sure, they got the pollution that can be, can be seen by the moon. Yeah. But when you get a billion people to stop smoking for a month, it does oh, lower the pollution it, rate it a fair bit. Must sure, do. it creates a lot of other problems in oh, society. I know, I know. People, people having a gas tetchy, and the, yeah. yeah, and tetchy in the chook shed and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Fires and I think there are no cars allowed either. No cars, is that right? So, so no people cars, are going to walk. No smoking. Well, that's a start. Mm. I think once you shut down the factories, you're starting to get fairly close to a fairly clean... Well, area. if they can shut down all of the factories and shut down your, uh, your, uh, your power stations, mm. they appear to be the main culprits here. I think there are 26 or 27 that just service the Beijing area. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, which is as much as we have in the whole country. When will we know it's sort of clear? I Just a recreational question. I mm. mean, you know, all clear, tickety-boo. I mean, would August the 8th be too soon? I mean, surely we can have a look at it, you know, with our mm. measuring pollution devices. Well, we can do We that, can't right? have... I don't think we can do much about that algae. I think last clippage in them are just going to have to get used to it and oh, sail well, on I'm it. not so worried about that because, you know, even if, you know, if Lars is there and affected by it, it's going to affect everyone who's I know, competing equally, with Lars. Equally. yeah, yeah. You know, that's fine. It just makes it a slightly different event, maybe a slightly slower event, mm. and therefore maybe a slightly more interesting event. Mm. Unusual. Because those yachting races, often they're over in the bat of an eyelid, and you think, oh, who won? How? Oh, no. What? Why what happened you? there? Yeah. I often have to have lines drawn on the yeah, top of so the screen. Yeah, so I know. To make sense of it. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe course, there's no need for that. Can I say also that uh, finally this week is that our rowers haven't let us down. We've sent a crew in every division. I know. It's I, just I think we're rated as the number one nation in the world now for for rowing, yeah, for sailing, yeah, and isn't that funny? I mean, this coincides with no the rowers. Collapse. I know the collapse of athletics as a sport. Yeah, but I mean, you take your eye off the ball. Yeah, I mean that's what happens, isn't it? I mean, we've taken our eye off the ball when it comes to hockey, well, and when it comes to running. Mm, I know it's just disappointing, mm. but. <clears throat> Hopefully this week will bring good news. And uh, if you want to find out the good news, join us Wednesday night for The Decider in uh, State of Origin 2008 when Roy and I will be presenting uh, the final tribute to the legacy of Jack. Jack Rupert Gibson, uh, one of our finest coaches, left us on the as we almost kicked off in a, uh, in a test match recently. The centenary test match cent- against New Zealand. New Zealand, yes. And we remembered him this he left, year. Uh, in, how many was it? Was it something like 49 minutes before the kick-off? It, 49 like minutes before the Rabs kick-off. Rabs didn't know. I yeah. think Rabs told us. Yeah. I've just forgotten. But, uh, so, so no, a nine was involved. <laughs> If you've got nothing to do Wednesday night, think League and think Triple J. We'll see you on air from 7.30 in the Eastern Time Zone. In the meantime, we leave you the reminder of the Triple J sport. Bye now. Triple J. This is a download from Triple J. For more music, current affairs, comedy and culture, triplej.net.au. And now... Hello world, pants off Australia. The whips are cracking, the surf's up, the doctor is in. It's just another afternoon when too much sport is barely enough. And now here's the team who can open the batting and take the new ball up the hill into the wind, who can turn defence into attack in the twinkling of an eye, who've enjoyed the highs and learnt from the lows, who are all the better for recent racing and in the wash-up at the end of the day win a lot more than they lose. It's the team of H.G. Nelson and Ram paging Roy Slaven and the dominant backline of this sporting life. H.C. Yes, uh, thanks very much. King Wally in the soundproof booth and, you know, King, 
Can I just ask you, with World Youth Day coming, to tone it down a bit? Look, that shirt you've got on. I mean, I know it's funny, the slogan and all that sort of stuff, but, you know, honestly, you'll end up you'll end up in jail wearing it. I mean, honestly, I don't want to have to bail you out, but you're looking at 5500 straight away for that shirt. And as for the trouserless look, King, you know, it might be wise to put that away until Mardi Gras next year. I mean, I know these pants-off do's are all the rage, what with Todd McKinney and all that sort of stuff. You know, his defence is I wasn't wearing my trousers at the time. Well, you know, don't take it... Out of context, King, that's all I ask. Uh, and uh, thanks to Sarah for the past 14 hours of Super Sounds here at the youth headquarters on the station of the Strongest of the Nation, Triple J. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, shareholders and school kids, pilgrims and saints, and lovers of old fashioned annoying miracles. Welcome to Triple J and another time. Too much, body's barely enough. Uh, welcome to another afternoon when we have the courage to dare to dream. And a little bit of housekeeping. Look, annoying is obviously the problem of the week for with uh, WYD looming pilgrims. Uh, and if you aren't up to speed pilgrims with WYD, it's going to be a great day. I, I see it as a club style, uh, a day club style of experience. You know, obviously transferring the fun of what Todd gets up to at night to the day. Experience for all pilgrims and pilgrims of all persuasions at Ramwick Racecourse with lots of gear to get you high religiously speaking. Now, you'll have to make up your own mind what sort of Eucharist, if that's the right word, you know, like a blood and wafer gear that you get into. That's up to you. I can't help you with that. You're on your own there. You know, just consult the good book. Uh, and uh, the big, J, big day is a fortnight today, a fortnight today, July the 20th. And remember, in 2008, it's Dry July. That's right, Dry July, apart from Alter Wine. And this Sporting Life will be on air, bringing you up to speed with our normal, very annoying mixture... That's right, a very annoying mixture. It'll be especially annoying mixture of facts, scores and smart. And if you want to be really annoyed, tune in and cop a blast. Uh, And if you don't want to be annoyed, don't listen. That's right, don't listen. You'll only have yourselves to blame. Now, having got that housekeeping out of the road, remember it's a a fortnight today. Smart scores, updates in the most annoying manner. Join us. Now, could uh, former Baywatch superstar Pam Anderson, who is on her way here for a spell in the house, be about to meet uh, our Prime Minister, Mr Karud? Uh, the attractive Big A is a very active member, I understand, of PETA, uh, the worldwide, worldwide Animal Rights Lobby Group. So Pam and Karud will have a lot to talk about, especially, I think it's termed mulesing, Roy. Oh, it is mulesing. Mulesing. Yeah. I don't know what Pam's position on mulesing is. Oh, she is. would be anti-mulesing. <laughs> she would be yeah. anti-mulesing. Yeah. yeah. And... Yeah. <clears throat> yes, she'd be totally anti, anti-mulesing. I think um, um, Peter have had some success with uh, other campaigns as well as mules, and you're going to say, well, like what? Well, maybe clubbing seals to death on Canadian ice packs. Have they stopped that? I, they haven't stopped it completely. No, they haven't I think, stopped that. No, I think they're trying to. Yeah, oh, Sorry, well, obviously they're trying to. Yeah. I would say success in, uh, how do mm. I put it, in the fact that they're they, raising They've drawn the attention to, to, to the Thanks issue. Yeah. They've drawn attention to yeah. the issue. Yeah. Yeah. And look, um, still with uh, media bigwigs, and this is, I, I woke up, Obviously, I went to the football last night, saw a great game between the Swans and the Pies, and halfway halfway through, I woke up wondering uh, who is going to fill the very big vacant shoes that Daryl Summers has left when he uh, farewelled and did the flip from the Dancing with the Stars MC gig. Apparently, Shane Bourne has knocked it back. Uh, probably uh, he's got too much work with City Homicide going on. And leaving it open, I, you know, can I nominate a name here? This won't surprise many people who, who know the television industry, the Australian, Australian television industry and the talent to burn that we have here in the Australian television industry. He's an underused talent. He's familiar with television. He has a lot of runs on the board, both in and out of the media. And that man is Ian Thorpe. Uh, look, I didn't know whether anybody saw the bloke's rig I use that word advisedly, is rig at the final of Australia's next top model midweek. The bloke stole the show with his overcoat ensemble and thumb in the pocket and he booted the winner, Demelza, I think that's the right pronunciation, Demelza, right into the try-hard bargain basement remainder bin. Thorpey stole the show and don't tell me he couldn't do Dancing with the Stars because he could fat. Now, speed. A lot of speed issues this week, Roy. Uh, The V8s are coming to Homebush. Uh, It seems that everybody doesn't think this is actually a good idea. The only person who thinks it's a good idea is Maurice Yemmer at the New South Wales government. Mm. He's not known for his good ideas, (laughs) really. (laughs) No, he's not. He's not. I think annoying is one of his. Uh, And how about this? Wait for this. V8s, Coldplay and Kylie. 
That's what I've heard. Fleshing out a bill that'll have speed freaks and music lovers drooling in anticipation. Remember, I think Kiss came to the F1 last year. They that saved sort. it. Saved it. Saved it. That's right. Saved it. Mm. Saved it. Imagine Kylie saving the V8. I mean, anyway, speed works in mysterious ways. And I don't What's know wrong if... with Eastern Creek? I thought Eastern oh, well, Creek was world class. It is world class. And I've seen figures that suggest that Eastern Creek could become even world class. Yeah. For much less money than it would to turn Homebush into yeah. a yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What is going on there? I don't know. Somebody must be. People making... love the creek. I know. The creek is motorsport. Yeah, it is motorsport. I've yeah. been out there, as you know, mm-hmm. and I've been mm-hmm. there for a classic uh, motorcycle yeah. event. Yeah. Not huge crowds, but honestly, you could not imagine that being staged anywhere in the world mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are so many terrific vantage spots, too. And the yeah. corners. Yeah. The corners. Yeah. Vantage yeah. spots in the corners. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Mm, and world, world it class. has hosted, I'm sure, the V8 It the has, it has. I, don't know why I, they... I mean, the, that used to be the home of the V8, V8 Supercars. Yeah. It was Eastern Grand. I mean, that's where the concept was born. It's be returning to its birthplace, wouldn't it? It would. It would. Look, um, I'm not sure about this uh, in terms of the V8s and the unfortunate message. It's well, just... I don't think it's going to happen at Homebush. I'm yeah. telling you now, I don't, just don't think that's going to get up. I don't think it is. Roy, I know we've touched on this before, but Garno report was released on Friday in the same week that we're talking about V8. Look, there's just an unfortunate... Well, I know the Garno report is Which suggesting V8? Eastern Eastern Greek. Greek. Is it pro V8? The Garno report. Look, I think it. <laughs> look, I think it's tolerant of V8 if if there's enough if, carbon credits. I was going to say if everybody walks to the track, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or plants a tree or something. Yeah, you I know. Is that all it takes? Something like that. Well, you, well I mean, you got to you know pay your carbon debt. I know, I know, I understand that. Mm. Now, how about this? Uh, look, he's back. Uh, well, speed just doesn't get it better than when you slave it up to the name Jason Crump. Uh, our former number one, well, he probably still is our number one speedway rider, he's on track for another world speedway title. Mm. Uh, the bloke is incredible. He took apart a hot field winning the British Speedway Grand Prix at Millennium Stadium, Cardiff, this week. He bumped a comp leader, Bjarne Pedersen, his nemesis, into fifth place, uh, obviously uh, in the event, and second, obviously the comp leader. He was in fifth at uh, Millennium Stadium, and I believe there's a lot more to come from Crumpy. More speed in our DNF specialist, Mark Webber, has been snapped up, up by Red Bull for another year. Uh, the bloke is so good he could have gone anywhere, but he's... Uh, you know, he's obviously re-signing with the Bull is a wonderful affirmation that Mark still has something great mm. to offer the F1 service. Well, he's loyal to the Bull, isn't he? Loyal to the Bull, that's right. He could have gone anywhere. Yeah. He, 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 he was obviously... Look, can I just say about the, the car now? They seem to have tricked it out to Mark's needs and this brilliant DNF maestro, I believe, in 2009 will make a very meaningful contribution to F1 around the world. I'm hoping for a clean sweep of DNFs. Let's say there's 20 Grand Prix in the world each year. I'd like Mark to set himself the site, the challenge of DNFing in the lot. And still more uh, on speed, the St Petersburg Grand Prix uh, will now be running Melbourne for the next five years. I think this is terrific mm, news. Isn't they, it good news? It is. The, the, look, can I just say hats off to the people of Melbourne for uh, being prepared to shovel large amounts of lolly into F1 Bernie's trousers. Mm. Uh, this seems to be the only thing that's going on there, apart from Ronnie Walker. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a twilight event, though. A now, twilight event. Which is well great. Done. I like it. I like it. Look, mm. you know Burns has been to the Taylors this week, Roy, just to have him let out a bit so he can cope with the money coming in from Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. terrific mm. uh, amount of mm. money. It's a, well, I, I think say, the Garno report thought it was a good idea it's just to, as a twilight event. A t- Ah, uh, yeah, because there'd be less, yeah. I suppose, yeah, cooler and not yeah. so damaging and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, tennis, and I'm sure Roy will, will want to mention this one, but, uh, I mean, did you catch him go around, I think it was Monday night? Uh, he was plucky, courageous. It was drama-filled, but sadly he couldn't take a set off the champ, Roger Federer, who now goes into the final. And we've waited a generation to see this one, a generation that I think that might have lasted a year. Uh, Rafa V, the Swiss mister. Incidentally, just what has Justin Gimmelstlob uh, got against Anna Kornikova? Mm, uh, she obviously him. said no at some stage. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Mm. No, no and I don't blame her. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, Gimmelstlob. Oh, you wouldn't use him for practice, you would you? Wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No. No, no, no. Oh, he came out and did the Hopman Cup one year, Gimmelstlob. He did. He was hopeless. 
Now, look, you might think these things, Justin, but it's an entirely other matter to blurt them out. It does seem like a lover's tiff. What about Marin Safin? Didn't he turn back the years? Incredible. He's part of a revolution that's going on in Russian tennis. Sadly, there doesn't appear to be any sort of revolution going on in Australian tennis. Rugby league! And what a night it was for all lovers of the game in this its 100th season. Wednesday night, the Brimming Soup Pot ANZ Stadium. You know, it, it overflowed with at the hooter with what I've described elsewhere in media commitments as maroon nutbag joy. Uh, I'm sure origin legend Tossa Turner would have loved every minute of it, and I saw him. I got a glimpse as the clouds parted at one point, uh, sitting alongside coach of the century, Jack Gibson, on the great rugby league settee in the sky, bearing down. And let's, while we've mentioned Tossa, let's not forget why Tossa is called Tossa. And uh, there are problems for New South Wales Rugby League brewing after the disappointment of Wednesday night. <clears throat> Look, I was shocked and devoed, shocked and devoed, when Blocker Roach tossed in the towel after calling the referee, ah, cheat, uh, as Tony Archer, the referee, came in for a post, uh, sh- should I say, a shower post hooter. There was nothing wrong with the big A's game. He blew 12, which is his average. He didn't go silly with a P out there. He didn't look like a goose. He wasn't overawed by the occasion. People will quibble, but I don't think his uh, P work influenced the result. Sure, there were some surprises, like calling back a couple of forward passes, You can watch a lot of rugby league without seeing that happening. And I saw Blocker's decision. I've got to say this, and I wouldn't normally say this about something connected with Steve Roach. I saw him as the first sign that rats want to leave a sinking ship. Get me drift. And if that was the low point of the night, the nation teetered on the very brink of joyful chaos chaos, when the titanium head of Ding Dong Del Sailor ran on to resume his love affair with rugby league when the Dragons took on the Knights last night. I mean, the years fell away. Honestly, I I loved every minute of it. I didn't see it all, but I loved what I saw uh, as a man, you know, know who was out there to greet him at Energy Stadium. It was Mad Dog Adam McDougall. Mad Dog Adam... Yes, it was the... Dog and Dell show, at it again. Sadly, they were on the opposite sides of the paddock, but, uh, uh, well, they were out there sniffing each other as best as they could and the possibility of a clash had rugby, you know, a front-on clash in some way, shape or form, had rugby league lovers of all ages drooling. I did see Dell, incidentally, get a bust down the sideline from a bit of broken play. Sadly, uh, he did make some yards, but uh, at the moment when he it mattered... He was easily pushed into touch by the smallest knight on the park. Uh, I think it was Jared Mullen who got him. And uh, when I look back at the footage a couple of times later, Dell looked like exactly what he is, an old bloke out of his depth, clinging to memories in a game that has passed him by at the speed of light, only able to hold his position in the Dragons lineup because the fire-up bitch man is buggered. Uh, you know, if you're writing a match report, incidentally, scribes about that, you can use that one if you like. Because uh, still, I don't, honestly, I don't think he's got that much to offer. I did cite the future, though, the, uh, a, a bit, wonderful bit of Morris mayhem. Mm. Brett laid it on for Josh to run the length of the park to score. These two chips from Slippery's groin, Brett and Josh, they have an uncanny ability. And look, you can fill in the rest yourself at your leisure. Uh, still with league, just what is going on at Manly with bovine blood top-ups. Coach Dr Des Hasler has been getting great results injecting calves' blood and Viagra into the players' thighs. The calves' blood topped up Seagulls put away the Titans Friday night, 34-14. Uh, Olympics and uh, former gold medal great swimmer, sprinter Gary Hall, Jr. says swimmers are at it. They're on it up to their eyeballs. He points out, well, I, I, when I rang him and said, you know, what do you mean, Gary? Uh, you know, they're at it. Well, he just pointed out 40 world records are broken this year and he maintains it just can't be the suit. It just can't be the suit or, as he suggested, calves, calves blood top up. And uh, when Gary talks, others listen. I tend to move on and just let him burble away. Still with swimming and a half-hour Beijing-bound team appear to have broken down this week. Don't know what they're doing in the pool, but I think they have to look at training methods. Uh, racing and the new old Melbourne Town Cessna Cup was won by Cruzado earlier in the week. And yesterday, the Frosty La Hood Queensland Cup run over 3,200 metres in trying conditions. Well, it answered so many questions, the, uh, the La Hood as usual. The only one that mattered was at the death. It turned out Kadim went through the ground better than the rest. And in uh, Melbourne at Flemington, Genelad uh, scored over the 4,300 metres uh, in the Grand National Hurdle. The horse completed a very rare double. In fact, uh, I've never heard of this double ever being done before. He uh, won... 
the one yesterday, the Grand National, and he also won the Grand Annual Steeplechase at Warnemill in May. Uh, incredible training feat. I don't think any other horse has been set for it ever. Uh, and uh, with those few ideas getting us underway, it's time to let the dogs out, and we can do that by asking rampaging Roy Slavin. Have you got any anything up at the back of the kennel there you want to unleash on the public this week's sport? Thanks, HG. <clears throat> I noticed... Um Ralph Dobell, I bumped into Ralph Dobell, Did you, and uh, yeah. Ralph, Ralph Dobell was giving a press conference at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've got to remember that Ralph Do- Dobell is our last male athletics Olympic gold medalist. Ralph Get Dobell. out. Mm. Ralph Dobell. Ralph Dobell. Can you give us a date when he won it? I think it was Mexico, wasn't it? That's 1968. 1968. That's the last time we won gold, a male athlete. Mm. And we're not sending yeah. anyone to run. Hang on, hang on, do you count, do you count uh, the bloke from Geelong? I want to say the walker from Geelong, Nathan Deeks. Do you count him as a... Because he must have won gold at, at I don't Olympic think he did. Level. don't think so. Wow. don't think so, no. Anyway, he's lashed out at Athletics Australia for oh, promising so much and delivering so little. His thesis is that we should import overseas coaches for our athletes. What? Hmm. Overseas coaches. Can I just suggest we import mm. overseas athletes? Mm. We well, we've done can- that. We do that with our weightlifting. And, and, and with some success. And, and let's not forget the Winter Olympics, the lad from Canada. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the future, that's right? The, that's the way to let's do it. Let's go to Kenya that- and find <laughs> a few blokes. It's not too late. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's that aspect. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anyway, food for thought. And I think mm. it's something we should seriously consider. Mm. I mean, Athletics Australia has been getting away with it for a long time. Mm. And you forget how little they've produced. Mm. I mean, I, it brought me up short. I sat bolt upright when I heard Ralph talking. Have you any Stefferson news this week? No. He's our hope no, no, no. I know he's our hope. Yeah. No. He's terribly quiet, though, wouldn't he? From yeah, the he Stephenson is. Camp? Yeah. you think he'd be, mm. you know, trumpeting something. You'd think he'd be jumping on Ralph Tobell and saying, Indeed. you're wrong. Yeah, well, sadly, he's got an American coach. Mm. Ah, well. So, see, mm, he's well. supporting the... Oh, I think he has. He's with the Flojo <laughs> coach, isn't he? Right. Experimenting. Uh, now, what's going on with Harry? Is he going to Turkey or not? He is, as nearly as I can tell. Well, I heard he hadn't signed. He hasn't signed at all. Well... He hasn't signed. You know, the well, Turkish clubs that he's been inked to are saying, right. well, no, we haven't signed anything with Harry. Oh, Lord. So, That's... Harry just made this up so that he wouldn't have to honour oh, any commitment with our Ollie, Ollie Ruse. Ruse. Ollie Ruse. That's that... how it appears. Oh, Lord. He's made Graham Arnold look an idiot. Look yeah. a goose. You know our senior players that at the Harry level. Well, at the Harry level, our senior players look a bit ordinary. I well, know, but who's Big Dukes go- isn't there. Big Dukes isn't going to no. Beijing either. No. Lord. No. Because you know what the problem is, is the mm. Premier League and all that. Sort of league I know. Players, they get underway. I know, but this time. is Olympics we're talking about. <laughs> well, you, mm. you don't make money at the Olympics, Roy, in, in football. No, <sighs> anyway... Uh, as HG's been... point out, Ray, Raff is to meet Roger tonight. I, I, I can't wait for this No, one. I know. I know. I cannot wait. I, just to see Raffa. I love it when he bounces the ball, say, 11, 12, 15 times before yeah. he serves. Mm-hmm. And then again, after the fault, another 11 or 15 times for the seconds. I love that. I know. I love the pulling the you know pants out of his ring hole. Yeah. <laughs> All of that. And the pedal You never look. tire of it, do you? I know, I know. You just hope he comes out in something sprightly tonight, don't well, you? Well, he won't. We know what he's going to yeah, win. I know, true. You know, true. those arse-hungry, <laughs> bloody... Long strides. That's it. With the taper. Mm, your plus fours without yeah. the plus at the bottom. Mm. Now, uh, blues skipper Baderas is out for... I think he might be out forever with a busted knee. A busted knee. Busted, busted knee. heart too, you know. Oh, no, his heart's busted. And that's a big heart to bloody break oh, too. But oh, they right. did it. They did more about that later in terms of who's going to be the blue skipper down the track. Oh, no. I mean, there's... Have account. you got any well, early thoughts well, on Yes, that? I do. Mm-hmm. Gallon. Gallon's your go. Gallon's Two my man. go. Yeah. This is borne out by how a conversation non-pl- with Bird. Right, how about... Bird a non- wants Gallon. Right. Bird wants Gallon. Yeah. Can I point out a non-playing captain? Well, we know. Oh, an Astor. An Astor. <laughs> Uh, now, Rod Pampling uh, is doing very well at the PGA event in Maryland. He's the best Australian there, and I think he's only four or five off the pace, and uh, Don't you can't, can't ride off Pampling. You can't. You can't ride off Pamp. Pamp, no. And it's so good to see uh, so many Aussies doing so well 
Um, can I whisper a name? With the US PGA. Well, which is the PGA in general? Well, can I whisper yeah, a name? I'll get yeah, to it. Now, the man they call Tiger, speaking of golf, has had his surgery but has no idea when his really rehabilitation may begin. What? No idea. The surgery, as far as we know, was successful. Uh, they put in a little bit of titanium. Uh, but uh, the rehabilitation, we would imagine, might... I, see, I thought they started rehabilitation these Straight days away. as soon as you get off the bloody... Yeah. As soon as they stitch it up. Wake up, up you get, start running. I can vouch for that. Yes, mm. you can. But uh, with the man they call Tiger, they're saying, well... Lie down. Mm. Now, the Kings are gone. It's official. No Kings next year. Kings finished. Could the pigs fill in a hole? Thank you very much, Channel 9. Mm-hmm. I blame Channel 9 for the loss of the Kings. Could the pigs fill the hole? I don't think the pigs... Who's going to fill the hole left by the Kings? Oh, no, it's so no, big. Fair enough. Yeah, it's too big. Too big. Mm. Uh, now, Ricky Ponty is, Ponting is flying home um, early with a wrist injury. I don't know how he got the wrist injury, but I know he was upset by the death of uh, Dick Tosser Turner. <laughs> now, um... Do you think he really has a wrist injury? Oh, I who knows with who butter? Knows? Yeah, who knows I mean, with butter? You know, when was the last time? I mean, you couldn't lie straight in bed, that bloke, could he? <laughs> I mean, when was the last time you took something punter said seriously? seriously and thought, oh, I thought, oh, yeah, enough. well, that's right. Thanks, punter. Mm. Never. Can no, I say never? Fair, fair enough. Now, Mark Webber is uh, he's qualified for number for second. He's second on the grid tonight. <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two, which puts him in a perfect position for a quick DNF. Oh, he's got the whole field. He's got the whole field bearing down, and he doesn't knows. like traffic. Oh, he doesn't like traffic. Can I suggest yeah. turn one? Might be a Silverstone tonight, is it? Silverstone. Oh, I've got no idea. Oh, Let's say it's Silverstone. Yeah. What? Oh, the British Grand Prix. Yeah, T1. Weber. Wang. <laughs> He'll be the first to go. He will. He He'll will. Take a few with him, though, at Silverstone. Ah, uh, Weber has this uncanny ability, actually. He actually, you know, someone will hit him, but they won't be affected. I know, at all. I know gone. that, but I, I mean, that's I'm, his genius. He just goes yeah. himself. I know, I understand that, but I think I'm just tipping tonight. Well, I know. Mm. I'm just tipping something different tonight for the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And remember, if the, you uh, see him before the be, before the off, if you see him with a drill bit in his hand, <laughs> you, you know, know it's going to be early. You know, it's going to be early. Remember that time when he drilled, oh, drilled hey. a hole in the floor so that the uh, heat had come up and seared his ass. That's a great way to get out of it, wasn't it? <laughs> about, I think he got to about round three before oh, he had third-degree burns just beside his real. <laughs> Phone and raffer he was for mm. advice. advice. <laughs> now, Mark Hensby. Oh, yes, good. This is baffling to me. Last week, remember two weeks ago he was 208. Yeah. Then he dropped to 216. Yeah. Even though the man they called Tiger Tiger Woods was, you know, having his knee reconstructed. You'd think he'd go to 207. you think he would have gone to 207. No. Yeah. This week, he's 224. 224. What? Didn't he play anything? I don't week? know. I know. It's baffling to me. I just don't understand. Right. I don't know how they do these rankings. I don't know. But Hensby has gone in two weeks from 208 to 224 without... Taking his club out of the boot, you'd imagine. Maybe that's his problem. He's got to get the um, the clubs out of the boot a little more often. Yeah, well, I can't help you there because... See, that... I looked him up. I, he's not in the event in Maryland that the Pamp's playing. No. And I wonder why. Right. I can't imagine the people in Maryland saying no to someone of the calibre of Mark Hensby. Well, quite, and, you know... Who we know has been at least at some stage of his career as high as 208. Uh, uh, oh, no, it's, it is baffling. It is baffling. baffling. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm well, just... I just think their ranking system lacks credibility. Yes, the very exciting Gold Frap and Caravan Girl from uh, the Seventh Tee, and they're out here playing Park Life. Park Life 2008. And you heard it on This Sporting Life on Triple J. Phone freaks. You've enjoyed Shane's last appeal ringtone. Now from Cooey Cobber Ringtones comes. Fuck off, Tommy Shit. Shane's last sledge. Fuck off, Tommy Shit. Fuck off, call me shit. Fuck off, call me shit. Fuck off, call me shit. Hang on, that's for me. G'day, Bob. 
If you're an Australian proudly committed to finishing off at Gallipoli, what our boys couldn't all those years ago, then you may be interested in the Enough is Enough Desert Crusade. For just $5 a week, direct debit from your bank account, you can join the crusade and receive the gum leaf, the Enough is Enough annual featuring a full colour spread, a list of the top 10 Australian plants for the backyard and a kids' activity page highlighting the joys of model making, knot tying and how to spot teachers with non-Christian tendencies. And kids, you can win an Australian-made Shanghai every month and go into the draw for a high-powered slug gun made in America and a handsome pair of night vision goggles. To become a Crusade member, you need 100 points of identification, a reference from a Justice of the Peace and an introductory certificate from your Desert Crusade Regional Commander. Send away to Day and get the gum leaf annual with Simpson and his donkey on the cover. Australia needs laws protecting the flag, but have our politicians gone far enough in protecting those little things Australians value the most? How often have you seen someone wrap fishing bait in an old wallaby guernsey? How often have you seen your neighbour hosing off the driveway in the number 23? How often have you seen someone wearing an Essendon football jumper inside out while working under the car? Enough is enough. Support the Australian Players Association draft legislation that will outlaw these activities and enshrine common sense by protecting all Australian sporting uniforms. Visit our website at www.enoughisenough.com forward slash njumperabusetoday.com. Roy, uh, just beginning with Jason Crump last Saturday night at Carver Millennium Stadium. It was just incredible. The... I might have got uh, confused Nicky Pedersen with Bajan Pedersen, mm. uh, two completely different writers. And, uh, look, I think Crump gave the two-time world champion Nicky Pedersen a stark warning. Mm. That's how I saw it anyway. A stark warning that y- this year's title hunt is not yet a foregone conclusion. Right. Let me give you the points as they stand to set this in context. Is After round five, Pedersen 80, Crump 70. Mm, Falls, mm. Then Hancock 60, Globob. 62. So that gives you an idea of how tight it is at the top. Mm. Now, Pedersen, mm. according to my reports, clearly touched the tapes in the early heats, which should have resulted in a mandatory exclusion. Mm. Uh, it was an amazing night, an amazing night, uh, in which, you know, Pedersen, should I say, was twice the fortunate, uh, to be fortunate of uh, controversial decisions by Polish referee Marek Wojciechek, mm. uh, who allowed the race to continue after he... Touch the Touched tapes. The tapes yeah. And after Crump clashed with Lee Adams on the first corner, it was the Aussie who amazingly was shown the exclusion light. I mean, there was just drama after drama in the first heat. Mm. In the first semi final, Bajan Pedersen, who led the qualifying scorers with 14 points, clashed with his Danish namesake, Nicky Pedersen, in identical fashion to Adams, and he too was excluded, much to the chagrin of the 45,000 crowd who thought that uh, Nicky Pedersen got the better that of the deal. The deal, yeah, the same way Crump had. Now, Pedersen was... Because they're crump freaks there. They oh, love they him. love crump. They love him. I know. Pedersen was hardly booed for the remainder of the meeting. Good. Which I like. Yeah. But pointed out that it was the referee who made the decision and there have been plenty of occasions in the past where he has been the victim. Well, I don't oh, think that's well. fair. Mm. I mean, Barry Hall would probably say the same thing. Mm. You know, I've pushed a lot of players in the back, but people have pushed me a lot in the back as well. Mm. Now, this was the fifth time this year he has reached the final without going on to win, but crump... After such a low, so slow start, he's starting he, to the season. He's going fast. Mm. I don't know what happened to Crumpy in the earlier rounds, but mm. he's really coming with a wet sail. Mm. Well, it's often a confidence thing, isn't it? I mean, I'd like often to see Jason thing. with his coming with his confidence back. I mean, mm. that that I, I that's the, the 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 message we seem to be getting here. Look, that can Jason's I just say with his confidence? Because I know his confidence left him there for a little while. It did, and it's got to do with the dirt on the tracks. Mm. I mean, people think it's all the same just driving mm. around, but every track is different. It has different personality in the dirt. Mm. You know, sometimes you put the boot out, it just won't go through it. Yeah, I know. Uh, you yeah. know, you open the throttle and there's nothing there. And, yeah. You know. Mm. But it is good to say now uh, Great Britain's Scott Nichols reached the final for the first time this year only to break the tapes and earn an exclusion, which just left Crump, mm. the evergreen Greg Hancock, and Pedersen at the tapes. Pedersen crashed for the fourth time and gamely got to his feet while the race continued with Crump just getting the better of Hancock. Mm. Mm. So, so it was a fantastic a terrific night. Of night. I mean, no, Crump is. I, I, I don't care what anyone says about him. He's an entertainer. Yeah. 
isn't he? That's right. An absolute entertainer. Yeah. Oh, no. And, and I wish him all the best because um, it's the great to have the name Crump oh. and World Speedway Champion. Yeah. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm surprised he hasn't got more profile here. I'm surprised he hasn't been picked up for sponsorship. Well, I'm sure he has. You mean like you mean like Bonds or yeah, say, uh, Wix Nest- or Fruit or, or something like Nestles, that. Or, yeah. You know, a heavy hitter. Would it be? Uh, would it be something? Yeah, you know, I'm Jason Crump, and I love eating chocolate. When I reach for a bar, I yeah, reach for I reach for whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for a picnic. Yes, something mm. like that. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Or him somehow really mm. revving the bike up, dirt flying everywhere, goes mm. around the corner, slides up to the camera, whips out a product, shoves it down the camera. Yes. You know, in the yeah. product shot. And I think it's to do with the, 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 the lack of coverage. The lack of coverage? Yeah. I, I think the press has really undersold Jason Crump. <laughs> Hasn't it? Well, can uh, I... I mean, if, for young kids getting into Speedway, that sort of thing, you know. Well, uh, what a role model. A great role model, but I mean, you can look at your commercial news services. Um, say last night, night before, or tonight. Yeah, nothing. You're not going to get any crump. News. No, you ain't getting. Any in crump. fact, I can't recall ever seeing Jason. No, get that's any, fair. Any if coverage. he walked in now, I while I'm a crump freak, I mm. wouldn't have a clue what he looked like. No, that's right. You know, if the Pope came in here, yes. I could believe it was Jason Crump. If you said, oh, welcome to, J- welcome to, uh, you know, obviously mm. Triple J, mm. would you like to meet HG? Yes, hello, HG, this is mm. Jason Crump. I would believe it. You'd believe it. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Well, there, well, there you go. I mean, Casey Can Stoner, I... we know. See, yeah, well, look at the Stoner. difference there. I, I mean, it's all Stoner this, Stoner that, yeah. you know, Stoner that. And Stoner's done very little this year. Whereas I... Crump, you know, crisis of confidence, overcome the demons, and he's back. Can I say also that, uh, let's say we're in uh, Denmark, Mm-hmm. Pedersen News would be front page, first it is lead front story. Page. I, first story. And now that they've got two, yes. Nicky and Bijan, yeah. you know, it's incredible. Oh, it's all Pedersen. Pl- yeah, I know. Exactly. No, but you can't get away from them. The other. It's incredible. You know, they're advertising bloody cars and oh, all, you know, real, real estate, estate development. I know. They're Insurance. everywhere. They're everywhere. Just bikes, yes. leathers, mm. you know, hats, helmets, yep. you know, all that sort of stuff. It's just yep. incredible. Yep. And it won't surprise me. Mm. That when Princess Mad comes here, as she's coming soon, is she coming? I'm she? pretty sure she's coming, bringing the two kids mm. out to see the rest of the well, the place where oh, she's visit the, the family. Is it? Visit, well, I assume visit Australia and the family. Oh, okay, it won't surprise me that there's more Pedersen news associated with that mm. than you know along the lines of you know Denmark. How's it going? Well, have you heard that uh, Nikki Pedersen's you know the number mm. one in the world at the moment in the mm-hmm. speedway? That sort of Nikki, you mm. you know all that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the world of speedway, that is Danish speedway, is unlocked again for another generation here, which is, has been in the past. Mm. Uh, and no, and Crumpy doesn't get a look in, mm. even though he's second in the top uh, in the in and the world has rankings. been a world champion he in the past. Exactly. I mean, even when he was a world champion and he he came. To Australia, came back to Australia. I mean, not even Vlad Wharton was there at the airport. He came in by himself. He came by himself. Yeah. You no one, that, no one recognised him. You mean people didn't have signs written, you know, Jason Crump for Pope? No. <laughs> or good no. on you, Jason. Yeah, well done, Crumpy, Jason. Well, no, or, you know, there were no. Well, his supporters, I think, are called the Crumpets. Right. Were they there? But no, no Crumpets. Not, not a one. And there's a walk up, buddy. Thing for him. I mean, I what know. a natural bloody meeting that would be if Jason Crump mm. could endorse crumpets. Yeah, you know, winter time people automatically think crumpets. <laughs> well, yet in this day and age here in Australia, with a champion like Jason, we can eat a crumpet and, and not think I, of him I once. Can I? I, you're absolutely right. The great thing about the speedway is it mm. tends to be in the northern hemisphere summertime. I know that's all going to change with the Ghana report. Yeah, I it, know. Ideal here because of the winter. We're in the winter. Like if you said to me mm. the other night, oh, let's have a crumpet, I wouldn't have thought of me to let's Google up and see how crumpy went. Yeah. Well, well, it's it's all there, well there you go. I know, it's crying But every you time you reach for a crumpet, you should, think, you should be thinking of Jason I Crump. I know. And I think I'm right in saying this. I don't, I, this the listeners will know mm. that this is the second generation of Crump at the top. I think it is. There was a dad who yeah. was a remarkable speedway. That's right. A racer as well. We've got two generations of, of crumps. crumps. And we've never made the and connection. And we've never made the connection. Could the crumpet... And people are still eating a lot. I, I don't know what the sales are like in winter, this Incredible. winter for crumpets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you can know find what I mean? out probably. You know what I mean? Crumpet manufacturer. But there's no reason why, you know, the, the packaging... You know, the, oh. the, the, the top, the, as you look down, you know, from above, add a packet of crumpets. There's mm-hmm. no reason why that circle couldn't be, you know, the, the spokes of a, 
Yeah, I know. I will. A speedway bike. A speedway bike. How about this? <clears throat> Win the bike that Jason drove to world champion success. Mm. You know, some sort mm. of, you know, SMS. Why, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, online Some sort of lucky number between Crump at, you know, 10 and 11, <laughs> you know, 9 or 10 in the pack or something like that. Oh. You eat your way down oh. and once you pull that out, you there's a number there or something or a... <laughs> That's not bad. Or how about this? Get the lucky pack with the extra crumpet and win the bike. (laughs) An extra crumpet. I know. It would be amazing. A Jason pack. There's a Jason pack. Taking back Sunday. A liar. It takes one to know one from Louder Now. Taking back Sunday on uh, this Sunday uh, for the Sporting Life. Now, look, speaking of advertising, Roy, look, and. Can I just preface this uh, to say that I was a bit devoured by the problems of Australian swimming that cropped up mm. over uh, the last few days, where yeah. half our team seemed to be... A the, well, they're, they're getting injured backs and things, Injured backs, they? Yeah, yeah. They appear to be a bunch of crocs. It's a technique problem, isn't it? Technique, it appears yeah. to be. Uh, Eamon Sullivan, if I've... Yes, Eamon Sullivan. Oh. He apparently has some predisposition to buggering up the start of a race with his dive. You think mm. they should sort that out? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Apparently yeah. he hits the water and something goes in his back like a rib pops out because the, oh, what do you call the impact? Yeah. And he can't swim. Bloody hell. Because you've got to do a shallow dive. A very shallow dive. Yeah. Very shallow dive. I think if he went in at a bit of deeper angle, which would bugger him up. Well, it's going to cost him seconds. I know, I know, I know. He'd be more easy yeah. able to go in the water because yeah. he's sort of flopping in. Now, uh, Jimmy Wilson got this for the Murdoch people. Uh, swimming stars Eamon Sullivan and Stephanie Rice have ended a joint six-figure advertising deal mm. that experts could predict could be the start of sponsorship millions for the glamour couple. Wow. Now, first well, of, What are they selling, do we know? Yeah, crumpets, perhaps? Crumpets or... <laughs> <laughs> After a swim, I like a crumpet. <laughs> uh, look, can I just... Can I just always say that when it mm. says glamour couple, mm. I always think Ian Thorpe's involved. Because there's no more glamorous swimmer than Ian Thorpe. These Johnny Come Lately types mm. don't hold a candle to the Thorpey in the in the fashion stakes. Mm. So we've got that out of the right now. The pair are. Re- how about this? The pair who are romantically on. Uh, oh well, re- well, hang on. Well, of course you're thinking of Thorpey and Amanda Beard oh, well, as the glamour couple. Yes, I know. Well, yeah. yes, that's right. I mean, anything with Thorpey involved in would immediately make a glamour couple. Absolutely. Uh, now. The pair revealed they rarely see each other. This is they're meant to be having a romance. Remember, yeah. they rarely see each other outside competitions. Mm. I mean, obviously they're working hard at each other's events yeah. as they put everything aside to pursue gold at Beijing. Mm. Uh, swimming's new king and queen live on opposite sides of the country, rely on phone calls and text messages to keep in touch. But they did have enough time to strip off uh, together to become the new faces and bodies of crumpets and underwear uh, for the giant manufacturer Davenport. Oh, it's Davenport interest, underpants. I- interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I underwear. understand. I understand. I understand. Now, let's see. Uh, despite an injury scare Friday, uh, mm. both were complained of back problems. Apparently, their preparations for the games have been impressive. Hang on, both of them. Yeah, were complained both of them back got problems. back problems. So I didn't realise that Stephanie was down with a back problem as well. And this is uh, uh, at the end of a bit of time together. Uh, yeah, Shag is back. Mm. Uh, it goes through a swimming team always at this time in a build-up. Um, oh, well, can no. I suggest? A bit, well, it's up to I don't, I don't know who's the uh, captain of the team. Well, Grant Hackett is. Hackett, yeah, he's going he to have to keep him, in keep him say, apart in yeah, whistle, Beijing. Mm, I think he's got in. It, it's described here, Sullivan says it's not your normal dating situation, but it works for us, especially with our focus now being on the games. Mm. Rice trains and lives in Queensland, while Sullivan lives in Perth. That few opportunities to actually sit and converse in person. <laughs> Often with a young couple, it's the best way. Mm. Uh, miles apart. How did they ever get to know each other? I don't know. It must have been probably... Camp. Camp. Oh, Some yeah. sort of camp. Some sort of camp, yeah. Mm. Now, I think we <clears throat> are both cheeky people and we love having fun, but uh, we also respect the fact that we're individuals and have our own set of goals. Mm. Um, look, can I suggest that line's got the... All the hallmarks have been written by a PR flack? Mm. Um, it does a little bit, doesn't it? Now, well, let's see what they have in common. Well, apart from the underpant commercial mm. and the back ailment, they're both cheeky swimmers. They're both like fun. They have shared goals, probably a gold medal. Yeah, back ailments, and they swim. Oh, sorry, yeah, you might have mentioned swimming. Yeah, is that enough for in this day and age? <laughs> well, it's not a real lot, isn't it? But oh, well, it depends. Well, mm. cheeky. There's a lot in cheeky, isn't there? 
Mind you, Cheeky can just start become annoying. It can't can. It? it can. And yeah, Cheeky's could... fine with badinage, you know, the early days of a relationship. Mm -hmm. For the first five minutes. For the f yeah. yeah. And can I say Cheeky could be a description of what they're offering the underpant commercials? Mm. Uh, oh, sure. Cheeky, look. Mm. You know, uh, the one thing I wanted to make sure was that I wasn't uh, at all sleazy and I wanted to be portrayed in the right light, according to... Uh, Who's saying this? Well, it looks like... Rice uh, or Sullivan? Rice, by the looks. Mm. One of the media buys... Well, hang said, on, who suggested it was going to be sleazy, well, an no underpan commercial? No one. How could that possibly be sleazy? No. Uh, no, that wrong. They wrong. just need to have a look at a few. Yeah. And realise how, you know, great and tasteful they are. Yeah. I mean, it's not an FHM spread here. It's for people to look at as they buy, pick up their catalogues of, oh, what are we going to buy at Target this week? Oh, Davenport mm. underwear. Look, here's a couple of swimmers yeah. advertising. A couple of crumpet-eating swimmers advertising. <laughs> that, that's right. I mean, what is the message with, with Davenport underwear? What, what, what separates their underwear from other underwear? It's, it's, it's more sensible underwear, isn't it? I mean, it's nothing sleazy about it. No. It's, it's not, there's, there's nothing cheeky about it, is there? It's the underwear you wear if you're climbing Everest. I hope. I hope. That's the message that I get of it. Right. If you're going to the Barbados, don't bother buying it. Right. What's the underpants that uh, Pat Rafter advertises? It, it, They're comfy, well, aren't they? Yeah, comfy for tennis players. Yes. For well-hung tennis players. Yes. Well, that's... Room to move. And room to move. Bit of wriggle room. And you don't have to pull them out of your ass, Rafa style, every time you've got to serve. That seems to be the big benefit of the Bonds underpant when it comes to tennis. Now, are these Davenport swimming compliant? Well, is that the well, idea? Good question. You can swim in them without them crawling up, without getting crack rot or crack some, rot. some other malady that might... Like, is that sort of similar to buggered back? <laughs> I suppose so. Now, look, uh, just going on here, though, before we come to yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, Harold Mitchell said, the media buyer, said the world record-breaking pair could turn gold into cold, hard cash. Mm. He said, we all adore a love story... And if this union can survive, they'll make millions. I'm not sure how, but this is the tip of the iceberg and it's a classic Australian dream story. Sutherland and Rice are Australia's most prominent sports couple since, wait for it, Lisa Curry and Grant Kenny. Well, that'd be right. Wedding in 1986. That's yeah. over 20 years yeah. ago. Who would remember them? Yeah. Well, uh, Harold Mitchell does, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> then he says, but they were a golden couple. You can't take that away from them. They were a golden couple. They were. Oh, true. Yeah, if Grant you know. and Lisa, oh, they had ads for oh. might have been breakfast cereals and tours on boats. Yes, for that cruises. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now he says here their natural talent and appeal. Out and of they, pool. and they, I don't think they won an Olympic gold medal either. Oh, they, they had Com Commonwealth. Commonwealth, yeah, yeah. I, I, but imagine this this couple with a gold medal each. Oh, no, I don't incredible. want to put too much pressure on them. No, let's put the pressure you know, on with them. Their, with their buggered back and their bloody, uh, you know, What's they got cheeky that, fun. Cheeky fun and they've got that crack rot. <laughs> and the potential <laughs> crack rot, but now they've got these underpants that... So, don't put the crack rot in the... That take the rot out of the crack. <laughs> <laughs> now, Presumably. Natural talent <laughs> and a peel out of the pool could propel them into joining mm. the likes of Grant Hack and Ian Thorpe amongst swimmers' elite earners. Oh, they'd never be as big as Hackett and Thor, oh, could could they? That's, that's just... What that's about a... Kieran Perkins? Well, indeed, Kieran Perkins. How must he feel? He's got that What game. about Madam Butterfly? Madam Butterfly. Madam Butterfly. I can see her in a pool bobbing out in front of camera selling something. I what was she selling? Well, she sold insurance for ages, I think. Is that right? A sort of... Uh... Oh, she dived in the pool one end and did a Came couple, in. and then poked her head up out of the water and said, Isn't get get insured. It is. If well, not bad. <laughs> Was not a million miles from that. That was it. Because you've got to get a product that somehow relates to what they do. And not uh, everything... Well, hang on. The Awesome Foursome, mm. they successfully advertised oh, fruit... that's true. They which did had too. Nothing, to, nothing do with... to do with sitting in a boat. <laughs> it's good if it does coincide, because then if you, you get a say, happy marriage, yeah. A happy marriage, yeah. Mm. But I tell you what, you know, like if you're looking for a campaign for Lars Klippich, for instance, should he win gold, <laughs> yeah. it's very hard to find something that's compatible with sailboarding. Maybe wetsuits or... Leisure wear, after a hard day on the board, I like to relax in, mm. I don't know. Well, underpants, surely. Well, oh, underpants. I mean, I don't want to steal Davenport's thunder with the, with the, you know, the golden couple. But if I was, I if I was... A competitor a like A competitor Bond. like, you know, one of the others, <laughs> having Klepich well, slide off a sailboard in a pair and of slink, you know... Up to the bar. Up to the bar. And say, you've got a large one handy, buddy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, and say something like, you know, you might have noticed, I haven't changed. 
<laughs> what a great tagline. Yeah. Meaning, of course, <laughs> I haven't changed from Davenport. I've still got the trusty balls. Well, well meaning, I, you well, know, I can be out on oh, the I boat all day oh, and that. come into the I bar. Got that. I got you that. don't have to change your undies. Oh, no, I got They're that. They're strong enough to, to withstand. End, yeah. Gold medal competition. Yes. And relax and look good round the bar. That's no, it. No, I got that straight away. Yeah, right. But I was playing on words. Yeah, right. Okay. You know, it's not yeah. as I've came back. There used to be a campaign. I came back or something. wasn't there for ages ago. What, to a particular sort of underpants? Yeah, I think so, to Davenport. <laughs> Or bonds. Right, uh, I no, I haven't changed. I mean, I haven't gone anywhere. Still I got them on. Changed. I had them on at the last Olympics. I've still got them on that Beijing. The yeah. green algae didn't get them? No. I'm not taking them off now. Mind you, the only downside with a campaign like that, you run the risk of people suggesting, oh, poor old Cleppage never changes them. <laughs> <laughs> Children Collide, Social Currency, and a debut CD from them in October. Uh, Still with the Olympics, uh, Roy, and our swimming captain, Grant Hackett. Well, I've got to say, uh, with the Golden Couple, you'd want to hope that their lives could remain as separate as they are now, because getting together would be the worst possible thing, wouldn't it? Getting to know each other could stuff it completely. Could. Well, if they're going to work for years together as the Golden Couple... They've got to be apart for most of that time. Yes, you can imagine so. Now, our skip, <coughs> our swimming skip, uh, Grant Hackett, has quarantined himself away from his family and wife mm-hmm. as he prepares for Beijing. Hey, um, mm, I don't right. know if this can work, but am I right in thinking that the Americans have now got somebody who goes pretty quick in the 1500 metres? I think well? they have, yeah. And I wouldn't write off the South Koreans either. Oh, no, that bloke from South Korea. That bloke Korea, from South yeah. Korea. I mean, he's got the 400, he got that. <sighs> It's looking not that great. No, well, they're, they're, I tell you, we're, <clears throat> there's a pack out there hunting for us. I oh, know. I know. You know, our swimmers are... We're prey at the moment. Prey? Is that we? what you're seeing? Yeah. Well, look, uh, the two-time 1,500 med- uh, metres gold medal has not seen his parents in 12 months. I mean, this is... I'm not sure this is right. And has only seen his wife, uh, Candace Alley. Yeah. Five... Out of five of the past 18 weeks. Bloody hell, what's he doing with you? Is he becoming a hermit? It can be hard, really difficult. No surprises there if you're not seeing your missus. Uh, my wife is nothing, nothing but um, is nothing but supportive of me. She's amazing. I think out of the past 18 weeks since the March Olympic trials, I've been away training for 13 of them. Now, they got married in 2007, moved to Melbourne. Mm. He said it's tough when you miss your family like I do. The time away from loved ones is something you never get, really get used to. I, I mean, it's not exactly a normal job what I'm doing, but uh, it's what uh, is required when you're preparing for the Olympics. Uh, Hackett invited uh, the Murdoch people into his secret training camp at Cairns this week. Right. And they had to hack their way in with machetes to find him. Yeah. Couldn't and, the missus be invited in as well? What's the pro- Why can't she visit him? I don't know. As he finalised the preparation... Why can't Mum and Dad? I mean, they were, they were so supportive. For, they've, they've been to every meet he's been at. I know. In fact... Um, in fact, yes, they were focused on... In Athens. In Athens, in a big they, way. They were the story. They were the story. They the were the stars. Of, a bigger story than yes, they were... Yes, they I, were the golden couple. I was just going to say that. I call them, I think, our golden couple. Yeah. Um... Anyway, Hackett and fellow Australian team members, Kai Hurst, Libby Triggett, uh, Christian Springer, Melanie Schlanger, mm. Matthew Target, shifted to Cairns for two weeks to acclimatise to the steamy conditions awaiting them in China. I understand they've taken, mm. you know, to having a lot of people who smoke around them to give them the yes. pollution and all that. Yeah, stuff. and they're, they're eating a lot of Chinese food with yep. chopsticks and that sort of thing. I mean, I understand all that. It's a, yeah, But I just don't point, understand why you can't have the family there. I know. To this point... It's as much about solitude as it is conditioning myself for Beijing. The heat up here is similar to what we experience mm. in Beijing. Yeah. Oh, well, that may be true. Acclimatising the body physically and mentally to those conditions is worth it. Mm. It was back to Sydney yesterday uh, for our top swimmers at Homebush, etc. Mm. Uh, Hackett will contest the 1500 metres final. I think that might be on today mm. and then have a bit of a break back in Melbourne. So he's going to see, the, gonna see the family uh, over the next little while. But Roy, these are well. Hang on, if, you know, if you, look, I, look, I, 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 I approve of going yeah. to Cairns to oh, train yeah, to, to to you know mm. get to get the conditions, the Beijing the conditions. conditions. I mean, if, pollution. If, I mean, and the, Cairns is the Beijing of Australia. Let's face it, <laughs> and I think that's absolutely right. I, I haven't got an issue with that at all. But if he's up there with four or five others, mm-hmm. why isn't the whole team there? 
No, well, good question. Why He's the captain. Why? Isn't it the captain's call? Doesn't he ring around? Hey, everyone, we're off to Cairns. Right. Sure thing, Skip. When yeah. do you want us there? I know. Now. What, what did the golden couple say? Well, what exactly? Stephanie and uh, Eamon. Well, I had their buggered backs, of course. Oh, well, an excuse. That's true. Yeah, sorry, Grant. Can't. Well, sorry, mate, got us all back. Can we come up later? Yeah. Well, like when? Well, I don't know, mate. Just when our back's better. <laughs> <laughs> is that all right, Captain? But this I don't is... know how it works, but they, I would have thought they'd... I mean, who's in control? See, this is the difficulty. Swimming Australia? Well, oh, who are they? No, it just seems to be... Can I just say dog's breakfast? faceless people? Faceless people, yeah. Just interested in calves, blood and what it could do for oh. you. Now, look, can I, can I ask whether you think that this is really necessary? You know, this hermit-like existence and being... Well, like I question this. Yeah. I mean, I've I was... always thought a good swimmer, a fast swimmer, is a happy swimmer. Mm-hmm. Not a frustrated swimmer. Mm-hmm. No, fair enough. Can I ask also is that there doesn't seem to be what we... As you pointed out, we're mm. hunted. We're the hunted, yeah. Yeah, we're the hunted. Everybody can see us up front there mm. and they're gaining on they us. Know, they know our scores. They know yeah. our figures. They know our times. Exactly. Exactly. And it's not as though we're cracking up and down the pool quicker than they are. Mm. Look at the times in America this week and that Korea. Don't look at the... For God's sake, don't look at Korean swimming websites. Mm. you get the fright of it. It'll scare the shit out I of you. I know. I know. I mean, they're coming at us. Mm. And yeah. what yeah. have we got? We've got a couple of underpant wearers. You know, well, I just hope this doesn't come as a massive distraction. Mm. Uh, now, that's lyrics born. I like it. I love it. Uh, playing shows for Triple J from August the 3rd to the 9th. Now, Roy, mm. this one's a bit of a weird one, but uh, speaking of the fire-up bitch man, which we were sort of vaguely earlier, mm. uh, there have been further meetings between advertising executives mm. and uh, the Dragons and Mark Gasney's people. Mm-hmm. Dragons are hoping Gaz will stay and are sourcing more sponsors. They want to change his contract if he stays. They want to remove the clause, allowing him one month to uh, to look at his deal every year. They want him to remove the clause, allowing him one month to look at his deal every year. Uh, not quite sure. Well, he's not going to sign that, is he? No, I don't think That's so. But the interest. advertising for the Fire Up Bitch Man, you know, what yeah. products could you... Consider? Well, look, I don't... Look, well, he was promised something like five million in he sponsorship. Was, and that, didn't eva- that, that evaporated. But I don't he know has where... to do something for it. Oh, you know, does he? Say, well, you know, can I just say, you know, if you want to... Look, I think he would be the hottest property in rugby league well, he, well, He's, without doubt, outside the Golden Couple. Not He'd bad. be number two yeah, in he, the sponsors' hit list. Yeah, he would. And if you were sort of thinking of launching, say, mm. real estate at Catherine Bay Hill or Catherine, or Catherine Hill, Bay, Hill Bay, yeah, yeah, you know, just to sort of come up there, be the and, face of Catherine Hill Bay. Yeah, you like. I mean, it would be mm. worth an absolute fortune. Yes, because that's the sort of ca- that's the sort of thing that's dividing the community, mm. the development there, and you know, obviously, he could maybe do an interview with Frank Sartor for a current affair or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, ease the way forward. The planning minister in New South Wales. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, let's say the, you know, it's too late now, but, you know, he could apply himself to short-term things mm. like, uh, you know, high pilgrims, when you go to World Youth Day, catch a bus. Oh, or, the state government could... Yeah, uh, employee the, in that the, way. The, or, the Department of Transport, could he could be the face of... the well, face of bus use. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Hi, fire up bitch here. Yeah, well, I'm sure, he's, I'm sure and, he's agent and, and people are working on these... Idea is not a million miles away from this. You know, trying to cobble together something that's worth five million. Yeah, something that's worth uh, five million. Can I also point out Eastern Creek uh, vis-a-vis Homebush yeah. V8s? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Fire up! I'll be going to the V8s. Why don't you join me? Mm. I'll be staying on to see Coldplay and Kylie. Mm. You know that sort of thing. I mean, yeah. And then you'd have a bit of a grab of Coldplay and Kylie plus <laughs> yeah. uh, on the V8s. Plus, he's doing a bit of shimmy whoosh bit oh, right. business to open up. You know, if they could buy the rights to that, I suppose, uh, from the uh, New South Wales Rugby League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean... Mm. Uh, what oh, you sure. Or, or, you know, I don't know. He might do um, a flake. Flake? Chocolates. Oh, chocolates. Oh, chocolates again. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Or coffee. Coffee. Yeah, that's yeah. a good product too. Mm. Or soy milk. Paint. Paint. Remember, I think... Uh, am I right in thinking Thorpey made a heap of money out of flogging... Was it some sort of water in China or...? Mm, he did. Well, maybe fire up bitch could say, you know, after a hard day, does a bit of shimmy whoosh, you're right, comes up, stops short in front of the camera. Yeah. Hi, kids, when I want to refresh after a bit of shimmy whooshing, mm-hmm. I reach for, you know... I reach for a... H2 go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, there you are. Mm. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, well, if you could cobble together maybe... Well, to get up to five million, you'd probably need 20 or 30. No, I understand, you? yes. Yes. It would be a fair what? bit, wouldn't it? It's a hell of a lot. Yeah, but doesn't that 
I mean, people might start to tire of the bitch. <laughs> well, I don't know if if he Could was doing right? if he was doing twenty products. But you know, you and I know roughly what you'd be able to earn in this area, mm. and five million is a lot of exposure. Mm, it is. You'd probably get that deal once in a lifetime. Well, he could become, say, sort of like the face. You know, who's that person that her name might be Sally, and she say, recommends different products. You know, oh, if you, in I, brand power, brand power, brand power, yeah, brand power. Brand yeah, power. you know, the, I always use you know this yeah. for wiping Vim. wiping me bum, and yeah. then if I'm going to clean my toilet, I reach for the Vim, <laughs> and then, you know that sort of thing. And this week, this month, you know, tremendous value with whatever you mm. know, these pliers. Mm. No, now, be couldn't great. he become the sort of the oh, face yeah, of products you should try or something? Okay. You know how I've been critical of Bunnings advertising over the years? For yes. many, many years now. In fact, mm. I seem to remember when they were Western Australian firm, I was very critical of their mm. advertising. You were. I'm just wondering if they could make a leap into the future mm. and get the bitch on board for Bunnings. Ah, uh, you know, so yeah, but the change. strength of their advertising is that, everybody is that they just use ordinary people. Oh, no. Mind know. you, it wouldn't be hard to make him look ordinary. <laughs> Ah, yes, the John Steele singers, an evolution from Beagle and the Dub. And you heard that on the Life on Triple J. Now, Roy, there seems to be a great unravelling of the New South Wales Rugby League... Uh, fallout. For, for, from the fallout yeah. in, that encompasses the fallout from the other night. Mm. And I was very disappointed with Blocker being the first to go. Mm. Look, he must have called referees cheats all his life. He has. I don't know why he bothered to stop. On this occasion, I think, oh, maybe I've gone too far. Maybe I'm. Well, he phoned up and apologised. I know, and he apologised. I think to the organisers of the NRL, like Jeff Carr, so on, in the in the Mm. big house. Yeah. And I thought that would have been good enough because it was heat of the moment thing. He was disappointed. He wanted. He was. He's passionate. He wanted wanted Butterball Badiris to go out a winner. Yeah. Um, Yeah. 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 And he's known for his relationship with. He's rather. You know what would I call it? Eccentric relationship with referees. Tapping them on the head. Tapped them on the head. Eddie Ward, I think it was. Mm, was. About like Art Oval. Yeah. Uh, when he was playing for Balmain, yeah. it was a terrific day. It's yeah. something kids remember from then. They'd be about mm. 30 now, but uh, mm. be that as it may, they were kids then. Mm. Now, um, I just saw it as a sign. Well, he was the heart and soul of the Blues. Heart it? and soul. I mean, they love him. The, the, the players love him. They respect him. I don't know why he's not on the footy show anymore. He was the most, He was the best thing on it, a lot of people reckon. Well, I can't comment on that. <laughs> Because they've got so many good things. Oh, on. I know they do, yeah. See, I remember, the one I remember best was when I think the Chief and mm. might have been Andrew Johns, might have been Matty Johns, mm. were captains in a sheepdog trial. See, that's what one of the footy shows that is best is when it has nothing to do with football but involves footballers in it. Mm. I know there's a lot of criticism about mm. this and the jury mm. tends to think, well, it should talk about rugby league mm. and it get a lot better. But the other night it just talked Socceroos for about the first 40 minutes. Yeah, it did. I think you pointed out that it was yeah. 52 minutes into the show before, before anybody, I, yeah. anybody mentioned rugby yeah, league. Well, I went to bed because I, I, you know, I didn't need to know what they think about you know, how Harry's going to go in Turkey when he... Galatasaray. Mm. Well, look, can I just say the next problem is who should captain? Who should captain the New South Wales Blues? Because obviously Butterball Baderas has finished. Mm. He's um, mm. got a busted leg and can't, um, can't... Well, it's really important too because, I mean, there's your nucleus, isn't it? Well... I mean, the captain's the foundation. It is. You can't build it without a captain. He's, 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 your, uh, he's your concrete slab. Okay. Willie Mason doesn't think, this is the new face of the Eastern Suburbs, Willie Mason doesn't think he should lead the New South Wales team. Eh? He's, really, he's pencilling himself out. He's, he's ruling himself, himself out. out. Mm. Doesn't mm. think he should lead the team in New South mm. Wales Well, team, I mate. bet that's a great relief to anyone who might be thinking of putting their hand up next year. Yeah. Well, he says uh, Danny Baderas nominated Mason and Mark Gasnier as likely successors. That right. means a lot to me that Danny would say that. The thing going against me is I don't even lead my club. The idea of leading the Blues is something I've I've said I want to in the past, mm. but I may be better off as part of the team. Of course, I've thought about the idea, dot, dot, dot. It's mm. in the back of my mind, dot, dot, dot. Mm. But I'm probably not everyone's cup of tea when it comes to leading. <coughs> right. The article goes on and Danny Wheedler goes on. Uh, so who deserves the job? Gaz has already had a mention. Mm. Uh, this is Willie talking. I think Braith is going to become more and more a leader in years to come, and he made a good, maybe a good long-term choice. I Look, I shuddered when I saw Wraith is a long-term choice. I, I, I shuddered. I went weak at the knees when I read that. <laughs> wow. I thought, well, he's, well, hang on. Willie's a funny man. It was obviously a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. I, I think yeah. you could tell. We loved, but Wyler didn't get the joke. 
He took him seriously. And that, a lot of people take Willie seriously. You know, that's where he gets into trouble. <laughs> that's true. You know? That's true. Now, can I say <clears throat> yeah. that Gallon... Oh, who's... Paul Gallon. He's a natural leader. Thanks. You've just said it. Mm. Uh, look, he uh, doesn't accept he's the problem for the loss the other night. No, fair Some enough. Some people say that he was a bit of a hothead and went Well, he gave too many penalties away. <laughs> There's one school of thought. <laughs> the other is that they were asking to, you know, to be slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> they were asking for a high shot. Now, he's the captain of the Cronulla Sharks. He I'm, is. I'm just wondering if he's got the attributes, should be able to sort of, I don't know, moderate his, uh, his, his volatility. natural aggression. Natural aggression, that's right. He's naturally Barry Halls. Mm. Uh, if we could slow him down a bit in that department, do you see him as being leadership yeah, I do. material? I do. Yeah, he's a real follow me sort of man, isn't he? Mm-hmm. You need someone who can lead from the front. And? And that's what Gallon does. And and you know there there are a lot of there's a lot of there's a you know quite a school of opinion that says we need more Maddies in the team. Mm-hmm. You know Gallon's going to be a lightning rod for Maddies. He's going to get a few more. He's going to get a few more in there. Yeah. And I, and, I mean, and nothing would be more unsettling for people in Queensland to have a team of Gallons coming at them <laughs> <laughs> with the calves' blood in the thighs. Yeah. Look, uh, and he's turned around Cronulla. I oh, know Gallon well, has Gallen almost said, single-handedly. Well, he told. Uh, the Murdoch people that had a conversation with his close mate uh, Greg Bird on Friday morning had convinced him to maintain the attitude that continues polar. It's a big honour to captain the Sharks, he said. Mm. I want to be the first uh, captain to hopefully win a premiership at the club and hold the trophy up. Mm. Deep down, I'd be hurting if they took the captaincy off me, and I don't want them to do that. I had a deep and meaningful conversation with Greg Bird about it on Friday morning. He said, we love playing under you. This is Bird. Mm. Remember the bloke who spent the time in the paddy wagon up uh, out front of you? But the Wally Lewis lookalike. Like. Wally Lewis lookalike with a touch of mo that he mm. turned out with, you know, at the uh, Origin 2. Mm. Handcuffed, thrown in the back, prized out. This is the bloke. We love playing under you, Paulie. We don't want you to give it away. The whole team loves the way you play. We love who you are and what you're about. Well, it doesn't get better, does it? It doesn't. And this it is doesn't. Bird, oh, this Bird. Bird, who people are, to, are touting as a potential skipper. Of what? Of what? Of both Cronulla and the Blues. Bird? Yeah. <laughs> God, they'd have to be mad. Oh, no. To overlook Gallon. Yeah, well, Gallon says Birdie was a bit disappointed that he didn't get the job with oh, the C after his name at out. Cronulla. Oh, at Cronulla? Yeah. I thought you meant at the Blues. No, at Cronulla. Okay. It, it goes on. We're in this position leading the competition because mm. you play with your heart and soul. This is Gallon. You yeah. know, Birdie about Gallon. Mm. Heart and soul. Mm. I know Birdie was initially probably upset at not getting the captaincy at the start of the season, so for him to ring me meant a lot. I bet it did. Is he sure it was Birdie? It wasn't just some G up. It wasn't Terry Hill phoning him. Oh, was it would have been Terry Hill. You <laughs> picked that list. <laughs> now, how about this captaincy? Now that Danny Baderis, this is Weed again, mm. has played his last origin, maybe the New South Wales should seriously consider Brett Finch as their next leader. Young Finch. Young Finch, oh. Parramatta. Wow. I know. This is a bolt from the blue. Isn't it? Not never? even in the team. No. Anyway. Well, it's just this concept you've been pioneering here. You've been talking about of a non playing captain. <laughs> For backbone alone, according to the weed, mm. the Eels halfback should be a ken- contender after taking on selector Bozo Fulton. And remember, call, call him Bozo because he's a clown who had a shot at Finchie's father, Robert, the referee's boss, and referee Tony Archer. Young Finchie showed fierce loyalty, passion, and he's willing to risk everything for what he believes is right. Mm. This is the weed. Fulton come back to Finch. Fulton's come back to Finch. It's embarrassing. Was weak, meaning you know. Mm. Didn't, he had nothing left, no. got nothing. No, but that's Bose's go, you know, embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bose staunchly supported his sons, this is the weed, in mm. their rugby league careers, especially young Scott. Mm. You can't blame the dad for that or a son such as Brett sticking up for his old man. Dad wasn't happy that I said something, but he said he understood because he would have done the same thing for his dad. I didn't realise old Finchie, that's young Finchie's grandfather, mm. played the game. Must have done. And I tell you what, Robert Finch stood by his old man. I know, he did. He, uh, Finchie, young Finchie, I don't have anything personal against the clown, mm. Bose. I, I just didn't think it was right when he was attacking my dad when his performance as a selector should be looked at. I'll always stand up for my family. He Bose, sounds like a captain talking, doesn't he? Does. He does, he does. Well, Grant Hackett and the family, they're oh. with, uh, continuing with a bit of a theme today. Mm. Now, listen. Um, well, I, 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 I wouldn't mind young Finch with the sea after his name. <laughs> Can I point out? 
Mm. That Mind you, Gallon is looking good, though. I know, I think Gallon. I mean, Gallon has turned Cronulla around. I mean, you can talk about the game's greatest thinker. You know, he's the effect yeah, yeah, he's yeah. had. But remember, he picked Gallon as captain. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The game's greatest thinker. I know. Well, he knows one or two things. I mean, he's the one that said that Jonathan Thurston had been too, a bit quiet, oh. too quiet. I know. He's the right only on. one who picked it. I know, right on, right on, right on. Now, now. Uh, look, a origin fallout here. Selectors must go. There was a shocking incident. I thought it was just terribly uncalled for. Oh. I think Gus Gould had a go at Laurie Daly on the footy show. He did uh, in, a, in a prepared and searing editorial. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was. It wasn't off the cuff. No, 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 no. It was prepared. It was written. Okay, the selectors must go. There's some suggestions we need to curb the coach. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's behind this, mm. and there's a suggestion also of calling in, you know, well-established players and older hands. Mm. I mean, we would going back. You can't go back to the future, mm. you know. I, I just think that's dead wrong. And then, then there's an article here, a breakout piece on the player most under pressure in the Fairfax paper. Mm. I deserve another crack to prove my critics wrong. Are we talking about Bird? Bird? Are we mm. talking about Gallon? Gallon? Are we talking about, um, well, who, who would you like to name? Also, mm. oh, Jared Hay? Mm. Are we talking about, um, let's see, the Raw Bones? Mm. Uh, no, we're talking about the new face. He wants another pop to prove his critics wrong. How many more chances does Willie he Mason. need? Willie Mason. He's expecting to be picked again. Well, <laughs> he could be a non-playing second roller. <laughs> now, Willie Mason believes he's done enough to silence his critics and earn another shot. Oh, show. Jesus <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> this is made up. He hasn't said this, has he? Well, this is Adrian Prezenko mm. in the Fairfax pages. Willie Mason believes he has done enough to silence his critics and earn another shot at, wait for it, mm. and this is with World the Youth The most important mate. game in his life. <laughs> at Origin Redemption. <laughs> oh. He's up there on the cross at yeah. the moment. Nails going in. Bang, 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 bang. He has stringing up today, Willie Mason. Now... Mason played the interstate decider under intense pressure mm. to retain his place and responded by running 124 metres, the only New South Wales forward to notch triple figures. <laughs> well, they are pretty useless yards, though, weren't well, they? Well, they were. They were soft yards. Now, mm. former Blues greats Brett uh, Kenny and Tommy Rodonikis, or Rodonikis, mm. were stinging their criticism. You remember, we covered this in the, in the mm. program here, mm. in the lead-up to the match. Mm. But Mason said he proved he could aim up on a big occasion. I played my best game of the series. If I'd come out and played like shit, I'd have a good look at myself. Mm. I'm not sure there's a room in there that's big enough for Willie to get into, but be that as it may. Oh. I, I've had a good look. You've got to learn to cop the criticism, but it wasn't at all justified. Oh. I didn't read many papers or watch much TV. I knew something was going on in the background with Tommy and a few ex-players. It doesn't bother me. It was a bit disappointing, but I won't bag them. They've got their right to their opinion. It's not the end of the world. If we won, they'd sit back and say, look, we fired him up. I caught the criticism sweet. If I'd come out and played awful, I would have been pretty disappointed in myself. I thought I played all right. We just didn't get any reward at the end. Mm. Oh, I suppose that's one way of looking at it. That's it, isn't it? <clears throat> um, Asked if he believed he deserved another shot. Uh, Mason replied, yeah, it's a year away and I'll probably be a better footballer. You learn things from you learn th- from things and at, at the Roosters, Freddie, that's, uh, you know, Brad Fittler, is making me a, a better player. Mason, a captaincy candidate for next year's series, said he was desperate for another crack. We've got to win series. No one has ever lost four series in a row. No. We're on the verge of being on the wrong side of history. We need to fix yeah. all that up. Well, but, pick him and they will I know. be on the wrong side of history. <laughs> it's uh, who said he was shortlisted for captain? Who's making that up? Is anyone seriously suggesting Mason as captain? No, I don't think so. I Willie, don't think so. Willie's people i.e. Oh. Willie himself, the new face. It's disappointing to lose, especially for the butterball. Mm. No, one can, no one can ever come out and say... Uh, no one can say enough about him. Mm. Whoever says anything negative about him is a... And then he's got mm. an expletive. Uh, who can't repeat on World Youth Day Network, Triple J. Mm. Uh, we played well, but it was just some individual brilliance that got us. What do you do when you defend your ass off and Israel Folau jumps 10 metres in the air? I must say, I don't think that was the try that... Uh, lost them the match, but be that as it may. We controlled for a good part of the game, and that's what is so disappointing. The bell went, and I was like, oh, are you serious again? Mm. Can I just point out that the New South Wales team didn't only scored one try in 160 minutes. Of, it's not as though, mm. you know, mm. it's not as though there were many highlights. No. 
No, no, in the blues show reel, it's a very Thin short effort. reel, isn't it? Yeah. But in another paper, Kurt Gidley's been touted as a Kurt captain. Kurt Gidley? As a captain of the blues. Right. Right. Do they have to worry about this so early, though? What do you think about that? When we seem to have 12 months to go, we've got a grand final to get through. We've got the People forget we've got the World Rugby League Cup coming. Mm. I mean, that's not mm. getting the press it deserves at the mm. moment. No, well, that's true, too. That's a crump-like affair. Yeah, I know. Now, I know. what do you think about the selectors? As I, nearly as I can tell at the moment is mm. that they're... Well, I'd sacked a lot of them. Would you? Yeah. Daly? Yeah, Daly gone. Tugger? Tugger gone. Bob McCarthy? Bob McCarthy gone. And, and uh, Bose? And Bose, yeah, the clown. Well, the clown should never have been there. It's a slim lot, isn't it? It is. I mean, if you're lying, if that's your brain's trust, mm. I mean, no, no wonder it's three blot. It's not <laughs> a surprise, is it? No. It's what people expect. <laughs> Uh, the Mighty Mighty Cloud Room from NYC. Blackout, the title of the track and the CD, The Cloud Room, and it might be time after a bit of Cloud Room for a fat. And now on this sporting life, it's time for the first fat of the afternoon. The fat is as Australian as giving the bunny one to go on with, as having a blue tongue tugging on your todger, as having a leak in a creek. What are Australians fighting for this week, HG? Ah, yes, well, look, uh, we start off with the Bible, uh, with the World Youth Day just around the corner, Rugby League Week, and uh, I'll be dropping off a couple of Bibles for the Pope to read while he's here. And I've even tucked one into the Frassati coffin, uh, which, of course, is going to be a centrepiece of World Youth Day activities. And, uh, look, (laughs) it's so great to know that Frassati is with us. He landed last Wednesday, had a great flight. Everything's tickety boo for the uh, the big events uh, coming up with the frass involved. Do we know where he's staying? <laughs> we don't, no. do we? No, I'd like. Is to he think... billeted out? Oh, what a lovely idea! <laughs> lovely idea. Mm. I wouldn't mind him over at my place. You know, I'm not very religious, but having a mm. a dedum with his baggage would be mm. great. It'd be great. Mm-hmm. He w- he'd be very easy to look after. Yeah, very low maintenance. <laughs> now, we've got the rugby league week from June the 25th, which is obviously last week as part of the build-up to State of Origin number three. Mm. And it's got two great stories. The fiery feud number one, uh, this was uh, You've Got No Mates in the NRL, uh, Robbie Farris slams Ennis. Mm. I think he's the Broncos hooker from memory. I might be wrong about that. Mm. And then the other one is, of course, the It's a Dog Act, Filthy Eels Take Aim at Gallon. And as you pointed out, Roy, um, Gallon, uh, according to Brett Kenny, talks about being tough and never taking a backward step, but doing stupid things uh, like that is just a low act, uh, a very cowardly act, when he bashed up Cordoba, who was lying unconscious on the ground. Uh, so, so uh, but nonetheless, it's an article that indicates he has the perfect qualifications uh, to uh, lead the Blues. And Farrah on Ennis, uh, Robbie Farrah, mm. uh, he's been running his mouth off a bit and bringing my name into it, which I, I I didn't find the need for. That's why nobody likes him. Do you like him, Roy? No, I think he's a terrific player. He's great potential. Michael Ennis, Ennis. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes, he's a Broncos player. Very uh, the good. feud is between he and uh, Farrah. The, uh, well, this came out of the, um, uh, the West Tigers-Broncos match, didn't it? Correct. Yeah. Royce says, I've got a fair idea who, who I think is the best hooker, and Ennis can keep chasing. Um, There's words. Well, I, I think, think the match Ennis was drawn. The match was drawn, I yeah, think. It, it, it went into golden point, and nobody could get the golden point. No, and I think Ennis has signed a deal to, for quite a lot of money to go elsewhere next year, but um, I'm pretty sure it might be Penrith. Wow. Or St George. St anyway, George. Anyway, it's a Bible. Okay. Plus CDs, we've got Meow Kapow, mm. uh, the one they all want. We've got uh, The Bad Luck Charms, A Rant and Drift. We've got Hiskey and Luna. And we've got uh, one that I have to read the side of, uh, the F- Fiji Collective Live at the Mac. And plus the one they all want, The Last Shadow Puppets, The Age of Understatement. So it's quite a prize, women only, uh, for some lucky listener who can answer the following question. Uh, the question being, what's in a Jason pack of crumpets? What's in a Jason pack of crumpets? Mm-hmm. Uh, that number is one three hundred o triple five three six. Women only. only. Phone now. 
Oh. Plump DJs and Shifting Gears from Head Fresh. Now, they're playing Park Life 2008, just clearing up where Michael Ennis is off to. He's off to the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. I would have eventually got round there by process of elimination, I think. Who are we talking to, Roy? We're joined by Connie, uh, whose battery's Hello. getting very low. How are you there, Connie? I'm good. Now, Connie, you've just driven down from Newcastle. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're from Crow's Nest, and what, what yeah. were you up there for? For the rugby um, league? My or? family lives up there. Right, did they go to the rugby league last night? Um, no, we didn't. We went out for dinner. Where'd, where'd you go? Um, to Cozzy's Cafe in Swansea. Oh, Swansea. Oh. Yeah. Is that a go-ahead so We're part? actually Broncos fans, so we don't really watch the nights a whole lot. All right, how come you're Broncos fans? I have no idea. My parents have always been, so right. I am too. I just like the right. team, yeah. Right. Now, is this a seafood restaurant? No, it's not. It's just sort of a bit of a mixture of things. Uh-huh. Uh, was it good? It was. It was lovely. Ah, oh, right. Because th- there used to be one called the Squid's Inc., I think, near there. Yeah, yeah, that's just up at Mont South. Right. Still there. And you weren't tempted to go there for seafood? Um, I have been there. I went there a few months ago for lunch, actually. How was it? It was nice. It was very nice. Mm. And sounds as though you know Newcastle pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I've lived there for 19 years before wow. I moved down here. Well, and yeah, how are you finding fun. Crow's Nest compared to Newcastle? Yeah, lovely. Oh, yeah, good. I like it. Because they're similar towns, aren't they, Crow's Nest? They are you... a bit similar. Mm. Yeah. Now, now yeah, just a question out of the blue, you know, obviously a big sporting week. Do you have any sporting memorabilia at your um, family? You might have seen something your dad's got or maybe... No, I have a, um, a Wallabies jersey. <gasps> right. Signed? Yeah, I used to work with John Eels, so he signed it. No way. Now. No way. John Eels. Yeah. You know John Eels. Well, I don't work with him anymore, but no. I did for about a year last year. Right, is wow. That, and what have you done with the jumper? Um, it's my mum's partner's father has it. Hang on, your mum's partner's father has it, and yes. is it framed? It is, yes. And when you go around, you sort of wander in and, and salute it sort of thing? Well, they live in Port Macquarie. But oh, so you don't, get you don't see it very often. Up there. Yeah. No, right. <laughs> What, and do you ever do you have occasion to phone up John these days and just say how are you going? No, no, I'm sure he's a busy man. Ah, oh, very good. Now your battery's in trouble. Now, Connie, I'll get to the question. Yep. Uh, what's an adjacent pack of crumpets? Got an extra crumpet. It's that's yes. absolutely bonus, right, Connie. That's a bonus pack. It's exactly right. That's <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. And can you see the name Jason Crump associated with crumpets working oh, as an idea? All over it. Very good. Okay, the yep. CDs and the Rugby League Week, which incidentally contains a poster of Israel Folau, oh, as well beautiful. as all that other stuff. We'll get them in the <laughs> mail to you and they'll be there before the next Broncos game. In the meantime, right. good luck with that phone. And, Connie, thanks very much for being part of thanks. the Sporting Life. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Bye Connie. Uh... Hey, the Fratelli who changed their name from the Frasatis after they got a uh, letter from the Pope. Uh, the Fratellis and Shameless, they're out of Scotland from here we, uh, the CD's called Here We Stand and they're playing Splendour in the Grass and shows for Triple J uh, July 31 through to August 2009. Now, we started off the three on the trot with Birds of Tokyo, White Witch, the title of the track, from the CD Universe and that's our great feature album. A great feature album, The Birds of Tokyo. Well, I've loved them for years and now they're getting starting to get the really good recognition that they deserved. In the middle we had Hot Chip from the UK, Out of Pictures, Made in Dark, the title of the CD, and finally The Fratellis, Slash, Frasatis and Shameless. All that on The Life on Triple J! You've washed the car and the weather's moving in. Bloody hell, what do you do? Did you know that each and every garment from the Look of Laura knitwear range is guaranteed to cover most popular makes of car? From the Toyota Hi-Ace to the Jeep Cherokee. And remember, the Look of Laura never loses its figure-hugging shape. Phone freaks? Tired of the usual boring ringtones? You know... Dull? Well, as a tribute to the legend of Shane Warne and in association with the Shane Warne Foundation, Cooey Cobber Ringtones is proud to present... <laughs> That's right. It's Shane's last appeal, recorded in Sydney in January 2007. 
Hello. Is your granddad shorting out upstairs? You know, repeating himself all the time and can't remember a thing about what he watched on television last night? Well, here is an opportunity to let him go out a winner. Pfizer, F1 ace Michael Schumacher and Australia's own CSIRO have combined forces to create It's Me Memory Replacement Therapy. It's Me MRT replaces the dud wiring in the brain with brand new linkages that allow new memories to replace the old gobbledygook. How would you like your granddad to see his days out as New South Wales super quick Michael Clarke or Australian supermodel Megan Gale? Sound far-fetched? Not anymore. With It's Me, Memory Replacement Therapy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, Roy, you mentioned that Ralph DeBell was our last Mm. gold medalist. Mm. Uh, Look, here, you know... Here's another story. You know, track and field's one thing, obviously, and here we are with boxing. Mm-hmm. Boxing. I don't think. Well, I don't know when the last gold medal was. In fact, I can tell you that uh, Tony Madigan. Well, I don't know. I don't know t- if he got gold. Well, look, Australia's first Olympic boxing silver medal was won by Reg Snowy Baker mm. in uh, 1908. Oh, yeah. 1908. Snowy Baker. What an incredible athlete! And uh, Graham Spike Cheney took silver at Seoul in 1988. That's, That's all we've won. <clears throat> That's all we've won. Is that yeah. right? Didn't uh, Jeff Fennick get uh, bronze or something? Oh, that, what a good question! What a good question. Would it be 84 in Los Angeles? It would when be Fennick if he did. Out? Yeah. Okay, let me set that aside for a minute. But mm. uh, here's a. This is a very sobering article. You know, you read these things and you think, oh lord. You know, you don't realise how bad it is. Uh, Will the Swanton, crisis. The crisis. The crisis in yeah. Australian boxing. Oh. Will Swanton got this uh, for the uh, Fairfax mm. people. Mm. Uh, our horrendous uh, boxing record has been blamed on the governing body's refusal to consider elite fighters aligned with a rebel organisation. You know, so there's two organisations. I didn't realise this was going on. I thought we were all on the same page, pushing forward together, shoulders We've to the got wheel. To have someone bang heads. Yeah. Oh, no, we got wheels. We need Dell to step in and appeal for common sense. Mm. Okay, the Australian Amateur Boxing League has run in opposition to Boxing Australia for the past 20 years. I'll mm. give you those terms again. Bloody the hell. Australian Amateur Boxing League and mm. Boxing Australia. The you know, AAB Le- BL. Yeah, and the BA. And Boxing Australia. Yeah, nicknamed Braith and Astor. You can get where I'm going with it. Yeah, I do. But well, why were those bodies, why did they separate to begin I with? I don't know, Roy. It would be uh, sort of a sort of a tiff yeah. of some sort, size of the ring, weight of gloves, uh, divisions. You know, we don't want to have bantams, straw or oh, feather. Okay. You know, so it's, got, it's a philosophical problem. A philosophical di- dispute, I would say, mm. and personalities. Now, mm. Mm. the league secretary, Dennis Magne, claims Olympic standard fighters, this is the amateur, Australian Amateur Boxing League, mm. uh, Dennis Magne, whose work I've always loved in and out of the ring, mm. uh, claims Olympic standard fighters are abandoning their games aspirations on principle to protest against BA's running of the sport. Magne's beef is with BA's controversial figure... Arthur Tunstall. Mm-hmm. Well, he no, wouldn't be alone there, AT, would he? No. AT's not still there, is he? He is. He is. Is he still in charge of BA? He is. He's still the BA boss. No way. You know, you forget that it was in... It was 1994 that Tunstall took our team to... Where was it? Vancouver mm. or Victoria for the Commonwealth, uh, Commonwealth Games in those scandalous pictures there. Mm. They live seared into my memory of, mm. you know, him at work. Now, Magne said a gerrymandered constitution allows BA officials and the 86-year-old Tunstall, who has been the czar of Australian boxing for 60 years, to re-elect themselves. Ah, oh, is that how it works? Yeah. So it's sort of Mugabe, Mugabe style, is oh, it? very Mugabe style. Yeah, most of the opponents were beaten to a pulp. <laughs> Uh, Boxing Australia is out of control, Magne told, uh, obviously, Will Swanton. Mm. Tunstall skites about being around for 60 years, but he's uh, he's made sure he cannot be moved. The bone of contention for us is the Constitution. Very unfairly, it lets them all all keep re-electing themselves. Mm. Magne is demanding BA changes policy so league boxers, including national champions like uh, Broby Martin, Flyweight, who Magne rates as a better amateur at 18 than Jeff Fennick. How about that? That's a big call. Well, I've heard that. I've heard that, Brody. Bro. Now, can Brody... Uh... We can't because he's not in the right division to go to the Olympics. Aye, 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 aye. And heavyweight Adam Jones... Well, he's great. Now, can prove themselves before 2010 Commonwealth Games after being overlooked for Beijing. I reckon it's not too late to get Martin and Jones to Beijing. I think that would be... Well, that's what, well that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Is it, can we get them there? Well, no, in short. 
It's a very sick situation. We have boxers who feel strongly enough to stay with us. We have the majority of boxers in the country as well as referees, trainers, mm-hmm. fighters. Tunstall says no league boxer will ever represent Australia at the Commonwealth uh, or uh, Olympic Games. The problem is we don't have enough money to take them to court. For our boxers, is denial of natural justice. If there was the same situation in another Olympic sport, there'd be an outrage. Tunstall says if any boxer out there wants to come and join us, they can. If they're good enough, they would. They're free to come over and they would if they believed in themselves enough and honestly thought they were good enough. Australia's first, uh, and then I mentioned that, it's clearly not the best possible Australian team going to the Olympics, says Magnay. BA doesn't exist in a lot of areas. We do. This is the league does. Mm-hmm. BA doesn't exist in places like North Queensland where if a kid doesn't fight with us, he doesn't uh, get to fight at all. They want a, a 16-year-old to move away from home to Brisbane uh, just so he's fighting with them. Mm-hmm. We think all boxers should be allowed to train in their own areas and then in Commonwealth, Olympic Commonwealth Games years, everyone should be able to participate in the Australian Trials and Championships and see who's best. It seems like well, that sounds like common, common sense. sense. Cry to me. Know. It does. Well, Did isn't you it up know to? Isn't it going it, on no, no, I had no idea. No idea. Neither did I. I knew there was a problem. Yeah, I, 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 I knew problem. there was a fire right. burning somewhere in Australian boxing administration, but I didn't know where the fire was. And I tell you why, because often you and I look over a fence and see a couple of light heavies going out in the backyard and thinking, "Bloody hell, they're well class, those mm. kids." Mm. And when you question them, mm. they haven't got a clue why they're not being selected for the Olympic Games. Now we know. Now we know they don't get the nod from Tunstall. Mm. Let's not forget that Tunstall has been renovating his house for a hundred years. For a hundred years, using mm. the labour. Mm-hmm. And the grunt and the poke and punching in nails mm. from his own boxers, who he then rewards with a carrot of going maybe to the commie games, you know, or the Olympics mm. if you're good enough. Yeah, that's right. But I don't. I Isn't it up to Coates to step in well, here? I, somebody has to. Could Gosper get involved? I mean, Gosper does all as nearly as I can tell. Swans around the world declaring peace. Mm. You know, in harmony. Mm. He should get involved in his own backyard and sort out some of these problems. Mm. Coach should lay down the law. Mm. I mean, I'm not sure entirely that Coach is elected either, is he? I don't know if who I don't know who elects Coach. Would Kieran Perkins have a vote in electing Coach? Well, what about Phil Coles? Does he Phil have any Coles? sway anymore? I mean, well, I'd love to think he did. I'd love to think he could pull strings. Mm. Look, what uh, I tell you, what does disturb me about this mm. is that this has been going on. Since 1908. Well, yeah, but but under the watch of our great Minister for Sport. I know, you wouldn't have been aware of it, I'm sure. I'm sure he was, wasn't aware of it. You mean Rod Kemp? Yes. The uh, 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 man. Yeah. Not an uh, about it. Why wasn't about Kemp brought up to speed with this? I, I blame the advisers, obviously. I mean, surely these guys get government money to punch each other in the head. They do. Tunstall gets money, certainly. The uh, BA, I think, it does get grants. Well, they I, I, I don't know about the AABL. Well, surely to think that the Democratic you know, mm. country that we live in should sort this out. Yeah. And if not, why don't they put up their best fighter in the various categories? I mean, they could retain their own fiefdoms if they must. Mm-hmm. But surely when it comes to a selection trials for the Olympics, not one authority can have it and not the other. Mm. This strikes me as very like Taekwondo. Remember yeah, the Taekwondo? Everybody had to join it the stank. one. It stank. It stank, stank to the high heaven of it corruption. Did. It did. And the Olympics allowed it. They did. Turn a blind eye. No surprises Might there. have even elevated the clown who was in charge of the oh, governing body. VP. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, no. This is a No, this isn't good enough. And and there are a lot of people who have been asking me over the years, you know, we're such a great fighting country, mm-hmm. why has now greatness trans- translated into medals? Mm. And I, that's a question I've never been able to answer. Well, now you know. I've had to say to them, look, I don't know. No. no. I don't know. Uh. Well, now we're starting to get to the truth of the matter, aren't we? Uh. Well, it stinks, doesn't it? You know, because let's face Tunstall. Mm. I mean, I don't mean to knock the bloke, but surely at some time he's got to retire. He should have retired by now mm. and handed it over to a junior person. Yeah. It seems to me he's, as though he's, you know, I don't know, just lost all sense of reason. Lost all sense of reason, yeah. Well, isn't it up to the new sports minister then, say, is Kate, it Ellis. Kate, Kate Ellis? Yeah, to step in. To step into the ring here. Mm. Ah, very good, Roy. And get him to yes. see sense. Yes. Every word. Now, I just hope that can be sorted out, that boxing thing, by the way, before the Olympics. Yeah, well, that's, uh, yeah. Because I think it's suggested that our <laughs> boxers are going over there without a bloody hope. Mm. This is the... Yeah, well, see, this is the sort of boxes. thing that uh, really the Rudd government should step in. Yeah, this is the out. sort of blockage in the pipe uh. in terms of infrastructure that we've been... Begging for... Yes. ...removal. For a long time. Mm. Now... <clears throat> it's a very sad story, and, and, and look, I don't mean to bag Australian football, 
uh, you know, Harry and all them, because I'm one of their great supporters, but uh, Fozzie... Oh, this is Australian soccer. Australian soccer. Yeah, Craig, sorry. Craig Foster. Oh, Fozzie. Yeah, yeah Fozzie. Mm. Thanks, Fozzie. Uh, look, um, he wrote an article this week concerning Spain winning. It was a great mm. display by Spain to win Euro 2008. The headline is in the uh, Fairfax paper, Spain's Euro 2008 lesson, technique wins over physique, mm. and the sooner we learn that, the better. Now, you can already re- realise why my hackles bristled. Mm. <laughs> bristled. <laughs> now, we yeah, hit, get right. to the guts of the article. Spain's glorious win last week was not only a crowning moment for pure football, but mm. holds many lessons for Australia. I almost stopped reading there. <laughs> I thought it... Why right. got it wrong? Their modern short passing and highly accomplished football proved again, as have Barcelona and AC Milan at club level in recent years, that the quality play based on possession is not only beautiful but successful. We still... I dis- hate... Can I just say I hate that sort of play, know, that short, yeah. short passing I rubbish? I know. It reminds me so much mm. of things like Australia's, you know, next top model. I don't know why. Mm. It just does. Okay. Uh, he goes on. We still labour under the misguided argument about results over style... Even when Spain again proved that style is substance. <laughs> oh, that is just nonsense. Those coaches who wish to justify their defensive long balls, unsophisticated football, can I describe that as that's the Australian way? Mm. The long ball, root one, unsophisticated football mm. as being the corollary of the results business obviously can't produce anything better. They would do our game a service by moving aside. What are we going to do with big dukes? <laughs> We put him up the front there. He sucks in three or four defenders. And a long ball from, say, Marco Bresciano mm. or uh, Brett Emerton mm. is the way forward. And when I mean long, mm. I mean 70 metres. Mm. I'm not talking about a long ball off the you know side of 10 metres out. Mm. I'm talking a long, high ball yeah. that gives Dukes a big chance to get up there and whack it in the back of the net with his head. Mm. It's easy to understand. And the physicality. I love the Australian physicality. Really. So do I. So remember, this got us into the world's top 16. Mm-hmm. Not so long Not ago. so long ago. In fact, at the last World Cup. At the last World Cup, we threatened. Mm. We threatened. It was only because of that clown... Um, Hiddink. Oh, Hiddink, yeah. Well, apart from him, mm. who tried to put that Euro polish, that faux Euro exactly. polish... With exactly. With the bar and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the short passing you know, Rubbish. bullshit that... Um, he tried to instill in, which mercifully we disregarded. Mm. No, the I mean, in the end, at the end of the day, it was always one big dukes right up front and everyone feeding from as far away as they could. Uh, and that that's what got us there. Uh, 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 Maserati, I think it was the name, or that mightn't be quite, though, the bloke who took the dive, oh, yeah. apart from the, him. The, 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 the Italian. Italian. We would have been in the final. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> then Fozzie, Fozzie oh, goes Fozzie. on. Why, well, here is the second lesson, that Spain's football mirrors that of La Liga and indeed can only spring from it, highlighting the vital importance of a football as a country, mm-hmm. uh, of the football a country plays in its domestic league mm-hmm. in the same way as the EPL has held back the progression of English team from a tactical perspective. La Liga's technical stand and style of passing football permeates club development and has produced numerous youth titles at the European and world level. Same applies to Italy, Germany, Brazil. If you were to assess from which league World Cup winnies, winning players hail, you'd find these four countries dominating the list. So then he, he, this is a theme Fozzie has developed before. We require coaches, modern vision of football and the capability expressed through the team in order to develop players capable of adapting to the international demands. For most coaches, the A-League is too late, which is why the next generation of youth league coming through is so important. I mean, this is terrible news. Mm. I mean, we've got to wait another 20 years before we're going back to the World Cup. Mm. It's just a scandal. When we've got a style, mm. which is our own... It's very much our own. Which is hard for others to duplicate. Yeah, and they hate it. They hate it. They yeah, hate they it. They don't know how to defuse it. Yeah, and they, it, they have no idea about defuse because they see it so seldom. I know, it's very... And, you know, you t- speak to any of those teams, you know, if you've got Australia coming at you, you ask them, what are you worried about? They say, well, we don't understand this style. We're no, just, physical, sure. Yeah, we get they're that very bit. physical. They're physical. Yeah, and they boot it a long way mm. and get the big dukes up the front. Do you know, can I say, Fozzie's absolutely wrong. What we should be is doing is having a talent identification program to find the next big dukes. Mm. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Precisely. And perhaps the next Harry to feed him. Yeah, well, that's true. Because we need feeders. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, yeah, you know, Big Dukes. I have no doubt that we'll find another Big Dukes. Mm-hmm. It's the feeders I worry yeah, about. Yeah, true. Someone true. capable of delivering what I call so- long ball. <laughs> Breaking 
Lee from Sweden, from Sweden, part of that explosion. We're going on and on about, I'm good, I'm gone from youth novels. And uh, Roy, you were asking about uh, Shane Warne and poker off air a minute ago. Yeah, I was, just idly, wondering how he was getting on. Well, the um, obviously has, has been well recorded, the Shane Warne has uh, adopted, uh, adopted new sport. Mm-hmm. It's World Championship Poker or World Series Poker. Uh, <clears throat> the greatest leg spinner of all time will be turning over the cards... World Series poker, the 38-year-old believes the tactical now he displayed on the cricket field, obviously with the wrist, will be an asset when the chips are down at the poker table. Definitely both take a lot of patience, poker and spin bowling, and it's all about reading the player. But I'm sure I won't be, uh, I won't make the final uh, table on my debut. Warner's been getting tips from uh, Joe Hatcham, the Aussie who cleaned up at the 2005 World Series. He's teaching me about bluffing and when to fold or raise. He's almost like a mentor. What's he like with cards? Any tricks? You know, he's got the mm. dead man's hand there. Mm. Aces and eights. Mm. Looks around the table. Mm. Sees Joe and a couple of heady hitters from Vegas. Mm. You know, how does he play it? You know. So. Yeah. I'd suggest he have a look at that uh, Kenny Rogers film, The The Gambler. The Gambler, yes. Remember that great song? Oh, that song. Mm. Hold him, fold him. No when to walk away, no when to run. Mm. Well, that was made into a very fine film. Mm-hmm. Can you remember who was in it? Kenny Rogers. Kenny played himself. Yeah, he, played, oh, the he, singer. he played the gambler. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. The only one I always remember is, uh, I think it's called Casino. Mm. And I just hope Shane doesn't, you know, get it up to any tricks because they'll stick his head in a vice if they do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Oh, oh right. If he starts counting cards. You counting know. cards. Or Aren't you know. allowed to count cards? You know, I thought that was the skill. You had to count cards. I think 21's the game where they worry about counting cards, isn't it? In oh, poker, right. it might be permissible. I, I, Just I mean, Texas Hold'em. Texas Hold'em. Are you allowed to... Uh, is he allowed to have a little pad and make notes as you go along? <laughs> like, uh, there's an ace. Write it down. Mm. Ace. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> can you do that? I'm pretty sure As a can. means of keeping, you know... Because you know, if you know all the aces are out... I tell you what's wrong. He sometimes gets in uh, one of his mates, you know, like uh, oh, I don't know, you know, KP. Mm. KP has the mirrored sunglasses, and he'll oh. stand behind a player, and you know, God, you know around. all the ch- oh, all the heaps tricks, of, yeah, heaps of tricks. Wow, tricks. Oh, you know. Well, and if Warnie gets up to that, you're right. It'll be head in a vice, yeah, won't it, will. it? It will. And I saw his hands off. Sure, as certain. <laughs> And uh, I've got to say, I've got to say, he's, he does look the part here, though. I oh, he's got the glasses. Yeah, the sunnies on. The glasses are too. And you can't read his face, can I you? I know you can't read his face, or whether he's got a dead man's hand or a royal flush, mm. or maybe four of a kind. Yeah, something up the sleeve to make a five of a kind. You know that sort of thing. I'm not <laughs> put that past warning <laughs> and texting people for help. Yeah. Have a look at my hand. Shows it to the phone. Should I hold it? Should I fold it? Uh, should I walk away? Yeah, when the yeah. game is done. Mm. Uh, when should I start counting the winnings? Look, do you think those wow. cards and bowling are similar? I mean, you know, obviously... Well, no, they're not, are they, really? No. They're not. They're not. They're not. But, you know, Shane always bowl with a poker face. I mean, you can yeah. never tell from the look of his face whether he's going to bowl a wrong and or... Just right. Or, yeah. Yeah, a flipper. Flip. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you never knew. Or the mystery ball. Or the mystery ball. That no-one ever saw. Yeah. I mean, you never knew. You could never pick from his face what, he was what ball he was going to put and send up. down. Yeah. yeah. Now, speaking of that, just leaving that there, the Cricket Australia boss, James Sutherland, has mm. conceded the modern game is producing matches which are virtually meaningless. I vomited when I said that. <laughs> Honestly. Every match has meaning. Of course it does. It's only in the eye of the beholder. Uh, he says... Uh, Australia... what, mate, is he talking about any matches in particular? Well, he didn't list it. I said, give me your top ten meaningless matches, James. <laughs> I mean, I'll match them. <laughs> now, but uh, the Australian chief executive has uh, also called for an end uh, to, of talk that the 50-over game could be threatened by the glo- what's described here in the, uh, mm. in the Fairfax media from Dubai as the global 2020 juggernaut. Mm. Uh, Sutherland was speaking at the International Cricket Council meeting in Dubai where a radical overhaul of the game's future tours program was proposed. Let's face it, generally speaking, the FTP is currently a hodgepodge of bilateral tour arrangements given current volume of international cricket producers matching that's no longer ling in the memory or have lasting meaning. Mm. Lord, I mean, what planet does he come from? Exactly. Planet cricket. Exactly. So I mean, just take that match the other day. The, we, we, you know, we, we won by one run. I know. Against the West Indies. I'll that never forget incre- that match, that and I didn't incredible. see it. 
I know, that was incredible. But I'm never going to forget it. You're never going to forget it. You know, it was, it was Watson bowling that last over. You know, they needed two that runs. They needed two runs off the last ball. They only got one. I know, that was I mean, Watto held his, held his nerve. In trying circumstances. Yeah. I know, and I think... Yeah, Puffs, I'll never forget that. And Puff's just captained us to a win. I know. Hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Bloody hell, it's just incredible. They're yeah. just two that yeah, we yeah, can yeah, remember yeah, really yeah. clearly. Yep. Oh, no, I think he's dead wrong. Mm. Cricket, you know, as long as people are putting up the furniture and having a go, I'm interested. Uh, Sutherland said the one-day game could live in harmony with 2020. Unfortunately, in my view, there is currently too much talk of an ODI, mm. uh, cricket as the problem child or the ugly duckling. I haven't heard those two things put together. Heard. What, the ODI, the, the, the one-day international, is, is the ugly child of whom? Well, the problem child of the, of the world game. Oh, sorry, the game of cricket, should I say. The financial success of modern game is to be built on ODI cricket. Look, I, where's this going? I mean, we can't stop playing. What? Because just because this... James Sutherland finds him meaningless. Well, can I suggest he's been there too long? Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah. They need to get somebody in who understands they need, who, With a little bit of passion. Mm. Who can remember cricket games they've seen. Mm. <laughs> Quite. I'll tell you one, somebody who might be able to do something. Bobby good. Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, man, she, Strangers from V, the CD, playing Splendour. New album out, August 9, and also playing Park Life. They're going to be busy, busy, busy. Time for a fact. And now on This Sporting Life, it's time for the second fact of the afternoon. The second fact is brought to you this week by the look of Laura Knitwear, Alan Bond's business masterclass, and Happy Jack's Tata Packs. Uh, look, the prize, King, as you'd expect, is an absolute cracker. Uh, the Bible, uh, the current issue of the Bible, this week's issue of the Bible, featuring a terrific centre poster of the Coachwood Myrtle, mm. the rabbits, mm. who are back from the dead and, uh, you know, now really are on the yeah. move. Yeah, I'm just disappointed they've given away their black shorts. Yeah, they always look winners in them. Yeah. And listen, those white shorts they just, just don't look threatening enough, do they? No, they don't. And can I just say, it's good to see them out of their Armani suits and yeah. in, the, in the gear that's made them famous, the Coachwood Myrtle, in mm. the butcher's stripes too. Mm. Mm. Uh, and there's some great articles in here, apart from that wonderful, wonderful poster. Uh, there's uh, just, uh, well, the next mini. I didn't realise we were looking for a new mini cello. Mm, well, his back's gone. He might be out forever, you know. I know. Mm, I so know. maybe it is time to look for a new mini. And a lovely thing here, welcome to June E, Tidy Town Entrance C, mm. and uh, with a picture of Laurie Daly on the town Oh, side. the New South Wales selector. Yeah, June E Diesel, so that was great. Mm. And uh, lots of interesting things in the Bible. Mm. Uh, now, there's an interesting article, Wake Up Boys, Heidi's Rocket for Complacent Eels. Sadly, the eels have gone completely to sleep today. They've seemed to have gone into reverse because at the 60th minute, mm. beep, 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 score coming, Panthers 22, eels 12. Now, and so we've got the Bible plus the CD, Ghost Mountain. We've got a terrific one here, Grand Volume, Send Me a Champion. We've got also the one I have to look on the side here, Fiji Collective or Fuji Collective Live at the Mac, mm. plus Times New Viking and Dawn Lands and Fireproof. So it's a great lineup of. Uh, isn't it ever? Prize. Mm, there's, for a whole, some, there's a week's entertainment in that, isn't A week's there? entertainment in that. With, uh, for some lucky listener who can answer the following question. Yeah, the question for all comers is as follows. What will happen to Shane should he get caught looking at other players' cards in KP's mirrored glasses? Yeah. What will happen to Shane should he get caught looking at other players' cards in KP's mirrored glasses? And that number is 1300 555 All comers. Phone now. Oh, all that I'm hearing is white noise. You've been listening to a bit of white noise from the living end, from the CD, white noise. They're playing their white noise and splintering grass. Who are we talking to, Roy? Uh, we're joined by Steve, who's joining us from uh, Aitken Vale in Queensland. How are you there, Steve? Oh, I'm pretty good, Roy. Yourself? Yeah, very good. Now, Steve, last Wednesday night, now, you would have watched the game. Indeed, I did, mate. It must have been a very proud moment for you. Uh, very happy night. Very happy. Very happy. Now, did you watch the game with a few mates? Oh, I did, mate. I did. Had a few quiet ones at home, eh? Yeah. And you would have kicked on after uh, full time, I dare say, uh, just basking in the glow of the wind. <laughs> definitely, definitely. A lot of sore heads on Thursday, right? Well, but so what? What's that? But so what? 
Oh, exactly, exactly. Well worth it. Well worth it. Yeah. No, it was a tremendous game of rugby league. More and uh, Steve, uh, you know, were you nervous at any stage, quietly confident throughout the whole night? Or when uh, JT got that pass away to Billy Slater, you know, obviously that was the time when you thought, bloody hell, we've got this in the bag. Take us through your thoughts. Well, mate, ne- never worried, never worried. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's well, pretty good. Uh, uh, good good to see a cowboy uh, finally uh, yeah, break do through something yeah. worth watching, mate, for the year. Yeah, now well, are you, is the uh, is the um, are the Cowboys your team? Uh, they are, mate. Born and bred up here. Yeah. Well, look from your perspective on the ground there. What's, what's gone going? wrong? What's what's the problem? Because we we were we are cowboy fans, but we're too far away. Yeah. Well. From my perspective, boys, uh, you really can't ask all your coach at the start of the year. You can't. No, that's can't. true. You <laughs> can't. You, you can't. You can't. It's and Murray, a and Mar- Murray's a good coach. Oh, he's a great bloke. For a he, he's, a tr- he's a great bloke. Tremendous bloke. So who gave him the... Who bumped Not. him off? Well, I don't know. We, we might have to blame Parry. I don't know. Well, that's where your you problem know. starts then, the, isn't the it? The board members, boys. The, the board, board members, board. yes. Yes. Always the way. And are you looking good? For, have you got anything uh, sort of ready for next year, if you know what I mean? Have they, have they signed a couple of players or what's going uh, to... Haven't, haven't heard too much talk, no. no. We've, uh, we're, we're probably concentrating on getting our, all our injured players going, Back. I guess. Yes. Uh, paying, paying for a lot of people to stand on the sideline at the moment. Oh. Yeah, well, that happens, I, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Gee, it must have been... Those two matches against Souths must have been heartbreakers too. Uh, the yeah. one down here, but more so the one up there, or, you know, at your yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. Has, ne- hasn't been good uh, any week, really. Yeah. No. Look, you may not know this. We're, we're not privy to this. How's the team going at f- in Fleg? <laughs> <laughs> Have uh, you got any... we've, we've actually we've got two feeder clubs, boys. Eh? We've got the we've got the Northern Pride and the Mackay Cutters. Eh? Mm. And, and uh, how are they going? Well, Northern Pride are going well. The, mm. the Cutters uh, not so well. Right. Um, the under twenties shit house. Oh, okay. Well, Gee. that's an authoritative report I'll... there. Yeah, I think they've uh, I think they've won one all year, so they're Whoa. on par with the seniors. Yeah, oh, Woo. good. Well, I tell you what, the key boys. Consistency. Consistency, that's yeah. right. Well, it sounds like you've got, you know, root and branch problems up there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Steve, let Roy set out the question and have a swing at it. Righto. Uh, now, Steve, uh, what will happen to Shane should he get caught, caught looking at uh, other players' cards in KP's mirrored glasses? Well, they'll probably have to grab KP as well, boys. But, uh, yeah, a uh, couple of heads in vices and cut some hands off, I think. That's Beautifully it. summed up, Steve. So the Rugby League Week, the current issue, and that whole pack of CDs featuring the uh, the Dawn Lounge one, uh, they will get them in the mail to you. And they'll be there, hopefully, in time for the next Cowboys win. In yeah, the meantime, on, thanks very much for being part of this sporting life. No worries. Thank See you. ya. Thanks, Bye. Steve. Yes, three on the trot there. We start off with Catalyst. All you've got from the CD, What's Happening? And then we've got the Red Sun Band, the Eagle, and from the CD, the Shirley. The Eagle, the Shirley. And Dukes of Windsor from Melbourne and uh, No Disguise from the CD Minus and a new CD from them uh, in August. And you heard them all on This Sporting Life on Triple J, the home of the Pope. Stress, mortgage, interest rates, council rates, bills, 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 pressure from the family, need of a new car, new house, school fees, food, it's endless. You need a bit of me time. Crystal Spa Gardens is a haven for those trapped in the mad maze of modern mayhem. Think how pleasant it would be to check in and lie back with the following treatments available 24-7. A lime wash enema, a hot rock workout, a cucumber-cooled liquefied half-mud face pack, a fish-chilled lead blanket that can reduce stress levels to zero, a hot olive oil hose to replenish nervous energy, and finally... Share a pyramid with a genuine American Indian chief in full regalia where you sit in the silence of eternity, broken only by the Comanche drums of harvest. Crystal Spa Gardens, a place to forget where you're up to your neck in debt. G'day. Remember that dress they made especially for me? The one that fitted like a glove. Remember it looked just like DJ's wrapping paper. Nah, but I'd better push off. I've got a shoot this afternoon for an Italian swimsuit catalogue. Cheerio. 
Dad is so much happier since he became Megan Gale. Happiness, that's the real benefit of It's Me Memory Replacement Therapy. It's Me Memory Replacement Therapy. Australia needs laws protecting the flag, but have our politicians gone far enough in protecting those little things Australians value the most? How often have you seen someone pissed in a green and gold rugby league jumper? How often have you seen someone you know is Australian wearing an Arsenal shirt? How often have you seen someone shopping at Woolworths in a Singapore slingers singlet? Well, enough is enough. Support the Australian Players Association draft legislation that will outlaw these activities and enshrine common sense by protecting all Australian sporting uniforms. Visit our website at www.enoughisenough forward slash njumperabusetoday.com Roy, uh, look, we haven't had a chance to catch up with Aaron Baddeley uh, recently and oh. uh, Aaron's in the news again and I, I'm just wondering if it's too late to get a golf day with the Pope together while he's here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure whether the uh, boss in Rome plays the great game of, uh, you know, the I, Royal and Ancient. I have no evidence that he has. No, but it would be a <coughs> terrific, that he does. terrific thing to do. Mm. Uh, because I'd for, rather him bless a game of rugby league. Oh, no, no, that goes without saying. I mean, that is absolutely right See, up there. See, I would like, and we might have mentioned this before, I'm sure we have, and that is to announce our Catholic team of the century. Led by Father, Father John, John Coots, Coots, Captain. Mm, mm. Now, listen, I'm not against that, and I thought that was well And have them presented... Oh, as part of one of these as ceremonies. As part of one of the... Uh, absolutely. Mm. Look, can I just say that the reason why I mentioned this mm. is that Aaron Baddeley mm. has... Uh, well, some people have suggested he... Well, he's very close to the man above, isn't The man he? above. He always uh, thanks he, the man above he does. when he wins. Very good. Oh. Badly, no. Some people hate the mention of his religious beliefs in victory speeches. Oh. His most famous remark is, this one's for you, Jesus, at the Ver- Verizon Heritage Tournament in 2006. The oh. reason why I thank him, according to Aaron, is because if it wasn't for him in being in my life, I probably wouldn't even be playing golf. Uh, he says, and I just released book, The Prize. God has told me that golf is specifically what he wants me to do, so mm-hmm. I'll keep playing golf till he tells me otherwise. Now, without... Okay. I just use that as a way of introducing mm. a topic. Mm. Golf and World Youth Day. Mm. I'm not sure that, you know, we we shouldn't be uh, removing the fact that a golf course would be a great thing for some sort of blessing because mm. lots of people can get there. Mm. You've got plenty of... And, and to see some luminaries like, I don't know, maybe an ecumenical game of golf with the Pope and a shotgun start. He mightn't have to play. It might be demeaning for him to play. But he could just pull the trigger on the shotgun. Mm. to get it underway. You know, might have people from the Anglican Church. Oh, the in, Jensen's. The Jensen's representing George Pell. You might be able to... It might be multi... Oh, multi might be multi, able to game uh, a four-ball. Four-ball, yeah. Or, you know, let's say the Dalai Lama was breezing through, as he often does. Maybe ah. he could coincide mm. over the... You know, it's not too late for him to rearrange his travel itinerary. Well, it puts a lot of pressure on the Pope to win because should the Dalai... Oh, I wouldn't see that necessarily as... Uh, look, obviously, if I could describe bragging rights, mm. would be a big part of this. <laughs> but I wouldn't... Oh, no, that could turn ugly. Well, exactly. Because what happens if... Exactly. Let's say uh, Moctada El Sada mm. says, well, why can't I come? Well, of course you can, Moctada. What do you play off? Oh, I play off a three. Yeah, OK, yeah. You know, do you know Yeah, I know, I know. I know. I'm not sure whether Moctada El Sada... Well, is well, well, how about the yeah. Mufti? Local Mufti? Yeah. <laughs> yes, OK. Okay, oh, I don't know. Enough. I've never seen him on a golf course. I know Kaiser Chad had obviously He's hold the, the bag for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, he'd be caddy. That's right. Well, Pell Pel would caddy the Pope. I suppose so, yeah. And one gentleman... And the Dalai, uh, I don't know who He could caddy. get Brett Kirk from the uh, Swans to walk around holding the bag for him because he's uh, kind of a, oh. the, uh, one of our leading Buddhists. I didn't and know that. Could one right. Jensen carry the bag for the other Jensen? Yeah. And then, of course, yeah. I bet you... And so would it be an Ambrose? I, I think so, yes. And, and I, I mean, I... Mm. You know, do you see what well, I mean? Well, yeah, but... Yeah, there's wait, time wait, to oh, talk. Hang on, but what we're... There's what time we're, to talk. What we're there's missing, t- missing here is the badly input. Well, I just chose that as a way of introducing the topic because golf and religion... Yeah, but so I, know, mean, I know, but this is... But sorry, this is more badly. to do with, 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 with Jesus' relationship with Aaron Badley, isn't it, than anything else? Well, I mean, it's not as if... You know, oh. our, our Lord has blessed Nico Hearn, for example. No, or he the, might have known. We don't know. Or the forgotten man of Australian or golf. Or Mark Hansby. <laughs> He's punishing him, you know. <laughs> I might lower him down to 224 this week. Oh, no! 
No, I, I understand what you're saying. It's more what, to do I mean, with the special relationship. Can I now, say... He, he spoke to Aaron. Mm. Well, well, I don't know why he didn't speak to them all. Well, like well, Rob, well that's... Rob Pembley, separate issue. Mystery, can I, yeah, mystery mysterious itself. way. Yeah. Yeah. Now, look, can I just say, I wasn't thinking so much from the point of view of, you know, can you give me a leg up with this shot sort of, you know, mm. I mean, conversation. Right. Because that's what seems to me Aaron's got a lot of that in his conversation with the bloke upstairs. Mm. What I was trying to get to was interfaith dialogue. There's nothing better for interfaith dialogue <laughs> oh. than around a golf. Well, that's true. Because you can talk about something that you all agree yes. on, like, i.e., great shot, Pope! You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Jensen, come on, you bludger, give it a whack! You know, that yeah. sort of stuff. Yes. You know, now, let's talk about, well, in Jensen's case, homosexuality in the church. Uh, Pope, oh, you stand? think that's the reason for the split? <laughs> 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 but, I thought they go, were playing down that aspect. Yeah, oh, OK. Well, let's go I don't back. know what the reason for the split is. No, no. You know, you know I have no special intelli- intelligence. No. There can't be a split as nearly as I can tell because it'll bugger the economics of the church, but be that as it may, that's a separate issue. Well, I don't think they can split, otherwise who owns the church? Well, exactly. It's, exactly. Real, it's a real estate issue. <laughs> real estate issue, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, now, look, what I'd like to get to is the idea that uh, oh. the Mufti, the Pope, Mm. One of the Jensen's with the other Jensen carrying the bag, mm. and uh, let's say uh, Dalai Lama and Brett Kirk mm. could get together and discuss why what they have in common rather than their differences. Oh, you're going to say transubs- you. transubstantiation. No, 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 men of peace. Men of peace. That's right. So how can we? Work how can on we peace? advance the concept of peace? And I'm happy if they mm. play eighteen holes to have nine where they're antagonistic and the other nine, so as they sort out the argy bargy between mm. them. You know, we like this, you like that, and, and there's the some other... edict in the nineteenth. What a fantastic idea! The encyclical from Royal Lakes. <laughs> from the nineteenth hole. <laughs> Yes. How yes. the four great faiths have come world, together yes, and agree on these and agree things. on these principles. There's more to the joins us than divides us. Thank you. That's a lovely start. Mm-hmm. That's a lovely start. And the blues captaincy. <laughs> yes. Where do we think? <laughs> Where, you know, yeah, they might have an right. attitude towards that. No, they certainly would have. Uh, yeah. Sponsorship with Jason Crump. Or, um, or, or the two young lovers. The two young Can lovers. They kick on? Yeah. Australian boxing. <laughs> oh, solve the A, A, B, L and the B, A problem. <laughs> That's right. What other things have we discussed? Oh, Warney, can he win the poker Warnie, tournament? Warney, yes. Yeah, could the, could the glasses some of them... a good look? Yeah, are the glasses a good Is look? Is cheeky, being cheeky, having fun and How about having Hackett? swimming goals enough in common for How, yes. Rice and Sullivan? Yeah. Hackett's uh, misses. Oh. Should they get more on the job together? Would this help Beijing? You know, obviously there's so many issues. Mm. I reckon yeah. that I reckon there's something in it, because I don't. I think that what happens with the with the church uh, and we with the, with the pilgrims following them around. The pilgrims, the p- pilgrims. You got so much space. In the gallery. That, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. You got so much space on the course. You can have hundreds of thousands of people there easily. Mm. And sure, it might be great to get on the ninth, where the argy bargy turns into from the first nine holes turns into that'd be the moment. Mm. Turns into you know reconciliation, reconciliation. and moving forward together. Mm. To play the back nine <laughs> <laughs> and the encyclical in the 19th. I've got no problems with, it, with any of that. No. Any of that. But is it too late? What about the bloke in the box? Is he going to be dragged around as well? Prasad, he's got to be there. Uh, I'd, love, I'd love to think that, you know, they could build something, oh. I don't know, a, an archway with Frasati on top. So has everybody walked under the dead and <laughs> on the way in? I mean, I don't think you can get more, you know, macabre enough. I mean, you know how in the Mexican, yeah. uh, I don't I mean religious affairs, but in Mexican art there's a lot of skulls and roses? Yeah. I think I know the roses might be hard to get out at this time, but I'm sure the green keepers out at uh, Oh, you get them Royal from Lakes, up north. Up north. Yeah. So you'd have a great thing of roses with a bit of skull and frasati up the top. I would think it'd be great. Well, I haven't got any problems with that. And maybe a final resting place for him, say, on the 9th. Wow! I don't know. No, 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 no. Look, I think it's all possible and we'll leave that until next week uh, because it's almost time to pack up, pack up the pulpit pilgrims and move on. So uh, there'll be more uh, World Youth Day updates uh, for the next, uh, on next Sunday for three hours between two and five. And until then, we leave you with the, with the, with the real reminder that Triple J is sport. Bye now. Triple J! Triple J! This is a download from Triple J Radio. For more music, current affairs, comedy and culture, triplej.net.au. And now... 
Hello world, pants off Australia. The whips are cracking, the surf's up, the doctor is in. It's just another afternoon when too much sport is barely enough. And now here's the team who can open the batting and take the new ball up the hill into the wind. Who can turn defence into attack in the twinkling of an eye. Who've enjoyed the highs and learnt from the lows. Who are all the better for recent racing and in the wash-up at the end of the day win a lot more than they lose. It's the team of H.G. Nelson and Ram Paging Roy Slaven and the dominant backline of this sporting life. H.G. Uh, yes, uh, thanks very much uh, indeed. King Wally Otto in the soundproof booth and that T-shirt King, I don't think anybody would find that annoying. A very stylish cut and uh, certainly the slogan, while suggestive, is I think well within the bounds of uh, acceptability in these unusual times we live in. And, uh, well, Sarah House, she's done it again. Another brilliant display at the youth headquarters on the station that smothers the nation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, shareholders and school kids. And a very big howdy doody to pilgrims, saints and lovers of old-fashioned annoying miracles. The Pope is on his way. I understand touchdown is just now 58 minutes away. 58 minutes away, the pontiff will be with us. And welcome, you lot, to uh, Triple J, another time. Don't even too much, boys, barely enough. And I've got to say, Pilgrims, welcome to Sydney. Welcome to your YWD network, Triple J. Uh, look, it's just a thrill. I know this is unofficial. We were going to take over when the man behind the golden microphone gave up at keeping the dream alive, but we put that on hold for a couple of weeks while we be the WYD official station. We can be heard all over Australia, wherever you are, if you're in Melbourne for the DID, uh, and then moving up to Sydney for the big one at Randwick, uh, where I understand 2.7 million people can see the Pope uh, when he, uh, I don't know, declares the field away in the third. Uh, it's just going to be a terrific week in Sydney. So easy to get around, so, so easy to spot the pilgrims, uh, moving as they are in little bubbles of uh, enlightenment uh, up and down the footpaths of where uh, a lot of people in Australia live. And look, uh, I know, uh, look, can I just say how annoying public transport is sometimes in Sydney? I mean, I've been up there during the week and sampled of buses and trains, pilgrims. You're just going to have to get used to a slower speed and a slower pace. Maybe walking would be the best solution, especially if you're at Homebush. Don't be put off by the step to Randwick, for those who know the city of Sydney. It'll only take you about 20 minutes to do it, so set off with confidence. And uh, look, uh, God's sake, pilgrims, be generous when that plate is passed around. I mean, we're a busted ass country here. We've got bugger all going on for us, except for a bit of natural gas. And we really do need a lot of help because, let's face it, you've cost us a lot to put on this show. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here. You're most welcome to come here. Just pay your way. Uh, now, uh, speaking of stars, and I can I just say I think of all pilgrims as stars. Uh, I just love the fact that they've taken time out of their normal work. They might be school students or here with a scout group uh, from their area of the world. It's just great that you're all here and uh, stars. Other stars have turned up this week, including Pamela Anderson, uh, look, I expected a longer stay in the house. I don't know quite what Roy might have expected, but uh, mm. she was here this week. Mm. And I, I, I missed her appearance in the house, but apparently it was very professional. <laughs> Completely professional. And apart from the Pope, and obviously he'll be here in about 58 minutes, I don't think there's a bigger star on the planet than Pam. Mm. I've got Pam and Pope. Is she Kate. still in Australia? Is she? I don't think so. I think she's done it and uh. dashed off. Would have been great to get those two together. Well, that's what I was going to say. But how long was, was she in the house? Oh, only over. I don't think she actually stayed overnight. Oh. She popped in to give advice and then came out. So she was evicted. Ooh, half an think. hour. Or? Oh, look, you're going to. I'm going to oh, struggle right. here. I've got. And honestly, I don't mm, know. No, you don't know. But it was great. It was. Yeah, oh, without doubt, it was great. Mm. Uh, look, uh, it, it, Pope and Pam. It does put into perspective what we've been saying on this show for years: that international stars love Australia and can simply not stay away. The question that I had: Would Pam shower in the nude? Uh, must have been obviously asked by her people when they talked to our houses people, and I've no idea what how the conversation went. I tuned in uh, with that in mind and was curiously left dissatisfied. I, d I felt as though the question wasn't answered. But no sooner did Pam bob up locally than she bags the show's sponsor, KFC. Don't know quite how this worked, but uh, I would say KFC got a fair bit of publicity by the simple fact that uh, Pam showed up with the letter. Uh, it looked an exciting event, well covered on the media, and uh, I, I, I haven't noticed any discernible change in KFC's policy, but I'm sure that's just not that far away now. Still with our big stars, Olivia Newton, John marries again. Tremendous do, not quite as good as the Sharks, but still great. 
Mm. All the stars were there. Incidentally, what did happen to the last bloke she was involved with? No, I think this is one of your great mysteries. Patrick McDermott, he just appeared to disappear... He from a boat, see, wasn't he? From a boat. He went off fishing, trying to snare a snook off the Californian coast and was never seen again. Mm. Somebody must know something. Well, mm. was, I uh, but, was he declared dead? I don't think so. For, so Livy could marry again? I mean, I she didn't have to divorce married. him, did she? No, she didn't because they weren't married. Oh, they weren't married. No, they were just a long-term oh. live-in lover right. arrangement until he went fishing. I mean, do other people find these things odd? Uh, or it may happen all the time, and it's just oh. one of those things that's underreported in modern living. You well, know, didn't, uh, isn't couple. there a show on television about there missing is. persons? Missing persons, and there's another one called something like Unsolved Mysteries, which Unsolved I'd rate this mysteries. as. Yeah. Um, missing persons. And what about our Nicole? And speaking of those. Uh, mysteries. Mm. Our Nicole, what a fantastic result. And the, as I understand, when the doctor held young Sunday up to the light last Monday morning, mm. there was not only a hint of green and gold, but how about this? A hint of coach wooden myrtle as well. So I don't know what that says about the prospects for the nipper, uh, Sunday Rose. And we begin the week as we did uh, last week. Weber, Mark Weber, did you see the bloke go around? He started number two on the pole. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's the the fastest one, and then he's the second fastest. He spent most of the races, nearly as I can tell, going backwards and came in 10th in a brilliant display of, you know, reverse pedal to the metal mm. axe minster action. Yeah, I mean, he spun out on the first corner. <laughs> it was brilliant. I know, where did he get was these just, I don't know, I don't know. I didn't expect it that early. I, I mean, I knew it would be early. But within 100 metres of go, go suddenly you... the web was going backwards <laughs> across a bit of gravel. It was, it was fantastic. Amazing. It was, un it was sort of unfair because the highlights, mm. he appeared to have a camera in his car. You did. And all the highlights mm. were in, of him going, going backwards. Reverse. Brilliant. Mm. Uh, look, AFL and what is going on with Barry or in Barry's top paddock? I mean, I thought they pulled the needle from the haystack and given him the all clear, clear after the staker stout. Sadly, it now seems a lot more... Work has to be done bonsai on Barry before the bloke is cleared to play. This, I've got to say, this is the first time I've ever heard of this happening. It may have happened before where a club says, no, you can't play. There's no reason why you can't play, i.e. the AFL haven't outed you or the tribunal haven't said you sit down. They just don't want him to play because they think it's not in, I assume, other players' best interests that Barry play or in Barry's best interest that he's, you know. And can I put to rest for once and for all the furphy about Barry wanting to be remembered for his football? Sadly, in the AFL, if you knock someone out, even if you kick 100 goals every game from now until you retire, you're always going to be remembered for the, for the item or the moment when you knock someone out. It just doesn't happen that often. Um, so, Barry, you know, forget about that. You'll be remembered forever for the bloke who punched Staker in the head. Is he still considered the spearhead? Or? <laughs> I'd, I'd have to say... Spearhead, yes. I, look, I think he might have dropped down the rankings a bit and just become the go-to man. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Spearhead's fairly up there. Oh, I know. I'd say... I know. Uh, well, at the moment, they're out there playing without a spearhead. spearhead. I know. They haven't got a hope, have they? Not a hope in Hades. No. I know he's not part of what we'd call the leadership group anymore. In, no, that's right. So the leadership group have got together and decided they don't need a spearhead. Is that... That's how I'm seeing it. Yes, they think we can do better without, without a spearhead. S head. S head up front. Mm. And the, the weirdest thing, though, I've never heard of a club... Mm. Somehow more worried about what the opposition will feel about turning out with Barry mm. than if Barry, there's no reason why he can't play except the club feel as though it's better that he not. Mm. Anyway, have you ever heard of that in rugby league? Never, never, never. No, no. even if you, lizard it is. If you've got a, no, if you've got a spear, <laughs> you've, got to fly you've got to attach it to the end of the spear, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a, a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, now, look, I did see some cruel editorials this week uh, suggesting Barry had now become the Belinda Neal of football. Uh, look, that's way out of line. Uh, and, and incidentally, who is going to put his, put his hand up and say, yes, he can play? I mean, and, he, and comes unstuck again. How goosey will that person look? I mean, if it was me, you know, they, HG said he could play. Oh, Lloyd, you'd never live it down. Incidentally, the Sydney Swans ruckman, Spider Everett, says Barry actually now wants to box... And he's frustrated that he can't get his hands on the big lolly on offer for Decta to pull on the gloves and the fat shorts. I mean, there seems to be some wisdom in that, doesn't there? Mm. Well, Spider would know, because those two... Spider would know. <laughs> those two would talk. <laughs> That's true. Spider would be the first to get That's together true. with S-Head <laughs> socially, wouldn't he? He would. 
You were big blokes mm. gathering together, mm. chewing the fat. Mm. Cricket, and just when you thought it was all clear to start planning another subcontinental tour, Sri Lanka unearthed a new mystery spinner in the Murathaya mould. It's amazing, you know, the busted arm, all that, you know, the WA University, the declarations that he is a cucker. Uh, the new bloke makes Murley's efforts, incidentally, look like a, uh, look like a cheap and pathetic joke. Uh, Ajantha Mendes is unpickable, unreadable and unplayable. Uh, the big A squeezes the ball out of the fist. He doesn't flick it out. He squashes the pill forward at the point of delivery. Full bag of tricks, obviously. The Dusra, the flipper, the one goes straight on, the date ball and the mystery ball. He claws the Gleason that no one's got a clue about. Mendes took uh, the incredible haul of six for a 13. Six for 13, that's right. When Sri Lanka knocked over India by 100 runs in Karachi. And India are no easy beach at that level. Did the little master face him? No. 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 Okay. Uh, no, that, that's what everybody's <laughs> looking their lips for, but sadly it slipped away. Olympic news, and as widely reported, our top track medal hope, Yana Rawlinson, breaks down on the eve of the Games with a recurring busted toe. But I, look, can I just put people's minds at rest? Pilgrims, listen, put the ear closer to the radio. I've not ruled her out. It will only be when the women come out for the track, onto the track, for the 400 metres hurdles... And Yana is not there that I'll believe it. I mean, remember the previous dramas? Remember Athens? She threw away the crutches. I can still picture them. On the, uh, she came out of the hospital hobbling and then threw them away. It was a miracle. It was unbelievable. A miracle. And she ran so well, she ended up, you know, with the busted leg and the groin shot and the dicky ticker and the busted rib and the cracked bonds, she still came fifth. It was incredible. And I... I'm not completely persuaded that the winner of that event was entirely free. You know what I mean, from. I don't know what Roy thinks. There were a lot of unsightly pimples. The first four, I think. Dead. (laughs) Yes, the first four were on it. Uh, However, the good news is if Yana isn't there, Nathan Deeks heads up our track and field tilt in Beijing. Uh, Nathan, I'm not quite sure what he's down for. 20 kilometre, 50 kilometre walks, maybe, or just one of them. And I've got to say, you know, Sullivan's back worries me. The bloke appears to be ricking his back every time he dives in the water and has to swim the 50 or the 100 in complete agony. And what has tab- happened to our top diver, our silver medalist from Athens, uh, the 10 metre platform star and spearheading our dive team, Matthew Helm? Um, I've always seen him as the last clippage of the springboard, incidentally, but he's now down with about a vertigo. Mm. Not a good place to be. I know how puzzling these ailments can be. I, you know, these, I don't know what you'd call these sort of ailments, mm. vertigo, claustrophobia and all that sort of stuff, but I know how difficult and puzzling they well, can the be. psychological. Psychological ailments, yes. Mm. Maybe it's his body saying, Phobias. I don't want to be doing this. Phobias. Phobias, that's mm. right, phobias. Mm. All our thoughts and prayers are going out to Matt today and we hope the AOC quacks can prescribe a treatment to fix the bloke up in time for the big drops in Beijing. Skydiving, I would suggest. Sky- <laughs> mm. You're a great believer in the curative power of skydiving, aren't you? <laughs> Especially for geriatric complaints. <laughs> Rugby League and the Rabbits are now the form team of the competition with another great win against the hopeless Eels last night. Oh, it's just leaves me breathless, this rabbit side. Uh, what has happened out there, uh, incidentally, in the centre of Sydney? It's, uh, the, the Eels are a team chock-a-block full of stars and they go forward. And this Rabbits excitement machine, which is now won five on the trot, including a stunning comeback against uh, a Monday night against the hapless Bulldogs, who now appear like a bunch of water buffs stuck in the mud waiting for the safari to arrive with a shotgun to put them out of their misery. I mean, I, they talk about what's happened to the Eels and what's happened to the Bulldogs. I mean, the, in equal reverse to what's going on at the Rabbits. Uh, I did see today that the man they call Gus, Phil Gould, in a provocative think piece, suggested that the dogs should get into the room and mirrors out back of the Bullmore Kennel and have, had, have a good hard look at themselves, and he suggests they won't like what they see. I didn't get a crowd figure at the girl on Monday night, but I had it up round counting off the television stills, which is a fairly reliable way of doing it. I had it at the 70,000 mark at a quick count, and... Uh, that was a terrific result for, uh, you know, obviously everybody concerned with rugby league and the growth of the game and all that sort of stuff. And after the match, uh, Russell Crowe said the television rights of the game are worth a lot more than $500 million. Not sure what he based the figure on or where he's going with this figure. But uh, hopefully Russell will spearhead up the negotiations next time uh, that the uh, rights come up for grabs. He'd bring a wealth of Hollywood experience to the table. I'm sure he'd bring a gun along and put that down first thing, you know. OK, have a look at that. 
Speaking of Monday night, oh, by the way, uh, for those who make notes about these things, at Rabbit's training this week, the fairy tale will be Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Uh, not a lot of people go along to uh, the training. Originally it was the Book of Feuds. That didn't work. Russell's now back with the fairy tale. Five wins on the trot. Could they make the eight? Well, weirder things have happened. It's a fairy tale. It's an old-fashioned fairy tale out there at the Hutch. And this week, the fairy tale is if you go along Tuesday night, you'll get Russell reading Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It's a terrific story for those who don't know it. Uh, you know, obviously, there's Mama Bear, Papa Bear and Baby Bear. There's, you know, steaming porridge. Uh, there's seats that get broken, there's beds to lie in, you know, do you know what I mean? You've got the story. But that'll be read Monday night. Speaking of Monday night football, what a great promotion this is. You know, you think the Rugby League's done it all, but they haven't. Monday night, it's going to be an old-fashioned Tommy Radonikus look-alike competition <laughs> to draw people into Campbelltown for Brett Hodgson's last game. I'm not sure why they chose on Tommy, the Tommy Radonikus look-alike competition. Look, I'll be going. Not that I look anything like Tommy, but I just want to find out who could win it. I mean, it's a fairly a select group. Yes, you, you need, you know, a lineup of people with one testicle. And probably people who have more beanies than teeth. And wasn't that great promotion? Did you see it of Tommy on the back of the uh, ute? Going like, come on out, see that Brad Hunter's last game? Because it reprised. Oh, around, around Campbelltown. Remember 10 years ago when mm, they first I remember. moved out there? No mm. one went. He did that regularly with the megaphone. Mm. Going out to see the boys play yeah. last time, Brittany Hodges mm. and all that sort of stuff. Mm. It was great. Mm. And the lookalike thrown in. Mm. How must the club have felt when they got the phone call, took the phone call? Who was it, Tommy? Why don't we put on a lookalike competition? We can have a lookalike competition on. We'll have a mate. What a great idea. And a little bit of ding-dong news. Uh, titanium head sadly dropped from the St George Illawarra Dragons because the bitch is back. Turned out for the Burley Bears in the Queensland Cup yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> now, the Bears were playing the Ipswich Jets, incidentally coached by former origin great Quincy Walters. No scores sadly coming through yet from that match. It was on yesterday. Speaking of uh, events, the Parrot returns to the sideline coaching the Barbarians uh, this afternoon. Keep your eyes on out for that one. Mm. Golf. And I think Roy might have this one. At last, the great Bob Charles has been inducted into the Golfing uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, incredible, isn't it? Best great best news, best. isn't it? Ah, uh, you'll be the best left-hander ever to play indeed. the game. He's the first player from the Shaky Isles, and yeah. I didn't know this, the first left-hander in the hall. Yeah. It's just amazing. You, yeah. you know, obviously, I understand the New Zealand problem. They didn't have many golfers, but left-handers, you'd think mm. there'd be plenty of them. Mm. I mean, it was a scandal that he wasn't in. I, I believe it stained the Hall's credibility and reputation in the game generally. Yeah. I understand that it's been a prayer. A prayer was, uh, for many, many years, has been every uh, Sunday about, <clears throat> well, about 9 o'clock, Aaron Baddeley would get down on his knees and have a little prayer, and Aaron's our finest golfing pilgrim, uh, about Charles's omission, and finally that prayer has been answered. And I did uh, speak with Bads.com. I couldn't say I actually spoke with him. I sent him an email and he, uh, you know, well, let's face it, the Royal Telephone Linesman has been pretty busy recently. And uh, he, I just suggested to him that if he had room in his prayers, could he ask for uh, a game or get the game going between the Big Four, the Pope, the Jensen's, the Mufti and the Dalai Lama, while the Pontiff is down under. Remember, he's, we'll be here in about 42 minutes. Uh, I haven't had any news back from badges.com people, but, you know... We're just hopeful that these things can be arranged at the last minute. Bads uh, believes a four-brawl Ambrose could be the ticket for an ecumenical common sense. Incidentally, Ding Dong Del Sailor agrees as well. And listen, just a little bit of uh, news, late news. The Australian Ollie Roos finished off their uh, their final hit out uh, to go up to Beijing with a 3-2 win against New Zealand. Wasn't very convincing, though. I think the scores ran 1-0, one all. 2-1 to Australia, then 2-all, and then finally Milligan did the right thing to get the win, 3-2. And the Matildas, who I don't think are Beijing-bound, was 1-0 against the New Zealanders. And uh, look, just a little bit of great news is, that, and I know Roy will be thrilled to bits with this, when Ryan Laus created history by becoming the first Australian bodybuilder to win the Mr World title. Mm. Uh, you and I have followed the mm. Mr. World for many, many years. We always mm. loved Chris Cormier, the real mm. deal, the real when he deal, was participating. Yeah. Uh, Laos took out the gold medal in the under-19 kilograms division and was rated overall natural champion. 
at last month's tournament in Canada. Fellow Australian Murray Graham, Laos's training partner, finished third. So that's a great result there. A natural champion. Mm. So they have drug assisted. Yeah. Natural. I think natural. it's a perfectly elegant way of dealing with the problem. And this morning, how about this? This morning, Lara Dundavik or Dundavich was hoping to follow in the footsteps of Jennifer Hawkins and become Miss Universe. Mm. Sadly, no result through there. Um, she said, I'd love to win, but the competition is very tough. That's beautiful. Mm. So we I, don't know what the result is yet. Well, I don't know the result there, but we do know that Ryan Laos did win. And in quotes, uh, remember a while ago, I mean, maybe 10 years ago, mm. I think... Uh, the Bozo, you know, obviously, mm. Bob Fulton, we mm. call him Bozo because he's a clown, uh, suggested he'd drive over, you know, Bill Harrigan with a cement truck if he ever saw him on the road. Mm. Well, now, uh, I think recently Bill Harrigan wrote a column about, you well, know... The, the, the stink being back at State of Origin. Great. Very good. Mm. Very good. Now, Fulton has returned serve after Harrigan made uh, comments about him in a column that Bose viewed very dimly. Mm. He said, this is, remember the cement truck... I'm not in the practice of putting a 303 bullet into a carcass, but in Bill's case, I'll make an exception. Wow. Bill Harrigan is a highly played employee from the NRL, and for him to come out and say what he said in relation to the Biff is highly irresponsible. He's not accountable, he's a loose cannon, and needs to have his coat pulled by David Gallup. Wow. But I like the opening bit. Yeah. I'm not in the practice of putting a 303 bullet into a carcass, but in Bill's case, I'll make an exception. Wow. It's good, isn't it? Bozo doesn't hold back, does he? <laughs> Bang. And with those ideas getting the agenda underway, it's time to let the dogs out. And we can do that simply by asking Rampaging Roy Slavin, got anything up the back of the kennel you want to unleash this week's spot? Thanks, HG. Look, um, just to begin with, with the Ollie Roos and their success against New Zealand last yeah. night, which I think is fantastic news, yeah. I just don't know what is going on between SBS commentators, you know, Fozzie and co. Fozzie. And Graham Arnold. Something's going on. Something's going on there. They won't leave the bloke alone. They're just bagging him all the time. They've bagged his selection process for the Oli Roos. They've questioned the philosophy of the team. You know, the, the Arnold... The Arnold's there to win a medal for Australia. Mm. Well, Fozzie and co think the team should be assembled with a view to helping the Socceroos. I know. Not, not going for a medal. I mean, I just don't get it. I don't get it. But it's not good, and I hate seeing it when... I hate seeing media and those at the coalface not with their shoulders to the same wheel, not no, singing from the same hom- song sheet. I understand. Song sheet. I hate that. Mm. I hate that. I think we all should be supporting Especially our, our Ollie, Ollie Roos, Roos as much as we, we can well, and say, you know, good luck, Graham. Mm-hmm. Good luck with the team. Wise selections. Love your choices. Mm-hmm. Pity mm-hmm. Harry and Dukes yeah. couldn't Big be there, Dukes, but... Yeah. We do the best you can. Do the best you can and bring us back something. And we'll put in a word for the Pope and hopefully get a blessing for the whole lot before they jump. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Now, Michael Voss has turned his nose up at the Gold Coast franchise. Apparently, this franchise, which I don't think has a name yet. The Stink. The Gold Coast Stink. The Gold Coast Stink, is it? Well, Mm. that's fine. I don't mind that. And there's talk of a... uh, uh, a, a Celtics or a Celtics team I saw in that. Sydney. What did you make of that? I, I, it's just lunacy to me. I don't mm. get it. Why would you have an Irish team in Sydney? I, I don't know. I mean, sponsorship speaks for itself. PJ O'Rourke's, obviously. Mm-hmm. Or, <laughs> or Guinness. Or Guinness, absolutely. Or one of their Irish whiskies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, well, uh, what's that Irish fruitcake you can get in a tin? It's a Molly Rourke's or something like that? Something like that. Green comes mm. in a green and mm. white tin. Mm. No, I, I, I just think. Look, I just think it's quite flying. I think I it's know it's publicity. Quite I know, I know. But, we, but this stink franchise is up and running. And uh, Voss was only offered twelve months. He wanted five years. It's a bit. It's a ludicrous offering. How could he get a team going in, in 12, twelve months? You couldn't. You wouldn't so need he's about off five to be. Years. He's off to be the number two at uh, uh, Johnny Walsfold. In, 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 and don't don't tell me that probably yeah. Walsfold won't see the wisdom of moving on in a year or so. Well, and he'll Voss, probably... you'll become the number one coach. Well, I, yeah, that's right. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if Walsfold takes over the Gold Coast franchise uh, twelve months down the track, oh, and Vossy steps up, take over the Eagles. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. you know who knows? Who, who knows? knows? I mean, it's it's a game of chess, isn't it? Really, it is. Now, the Gold Coast, speaking of the Gold Coast, 
the Titans, yeah, Titans, I think one of the most successful rugby league franchises in modern history, Ever. they've created history again with their first win at the Australian Football Stadium when they beat uh, the Eastern Suburbs. Is that right? Yeah. The first time they've ever won there? Mm, this is Friday night. Would yeah, that be arguably time. their best win I think it's their win greatest win, yeah. Ever? Yeah, Cardi reckons it was. Right. Yeah, Cardi, Cardi is quite, coach, quite, coach a, quite, emotion, quite emotional. Quite emotional. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's just so proud, quote unquote. Um... Now, Rafa takes out Roger in what is regarded as the best oh, men's singles finally, yeah, final in Wimbledon history. I oh, know, it's incredible. Look, I think, personally speaking, the rafter Ivana Vizovic. That was game great, was, was much better. Mm. There was no rain delay. No. Went the five sets, was start to finish, non-stop, mm -hmm. whereas you had that four-hour gap I know, anything with the Roger Rafa affair. Can I suggest... Which strained me. I couldn't wait. No. I, I had to go to bed. In the yeah. end, I went to bed at 2 o'clock. Yeah, and you swapped over and watched the British Grand Prix. Yeah, I did. Through. I did. Now, listen, uh, can I suggest two other names? Bungett mm, and Newcomb. And Newcomb, that was a 68. Mm. Mm. 67 or 68? Oh, look, one of those one, two. Yeah, just brilliant. But that was a brilliant match. Yeah. I agree with you. I mean, we saw the best of Vilmel Bungett that day and it just wasn't good enough for, for the Nuke. best of Nuke. Right. Yeah. That was that was a great Wimbledon. Mm. Oh, it was fantastic. Mm. Now uh, the British Open looms as the first major tournament not to have had the men they call Tucker Tucker Woods yes, in the field for ten years. That's amazing. Ten years. Now uh, I am not alone in seeing this as a great opportunity for the big O Nico Hearn. <laughs> I think this year will be the year of O'Hearn. And seeing here, I think he's without doubt the best lefty in the world at the moment. And the year Bob Charles oh, wouldn't gets be great. In, taken into the Hall of Fame wouldn't be to great. see the big O there at the, at the uh, you know, on the final day, on the final hole of the British Open. That it, look, I see this With as a, a real... Jug. It's a It's a real chance to ambush Mickelson. <laughs> to get yeah. Mickelson in an Aussie ambush. To Two questions. How yeah. many have we got starting? Oh, look, I don't or know. Or how many are don't... eyeing it off? How many are eyeing it off? And the second thing is... You passed me that bit of paper I gave you this morning. Oh, OK. Earlier. Yeah, hang on, hang on. Uh, I think there might be a list there of, uh, of uh, Aussies who uh, are threatening. And it is... I'm glad you drew attention to this because... Can I ask also, where is it being played? Oh, look, I've got a feeling it'll probably be Karnisti. Uh, Karnisti, yeah, my favourite. Yes, yeah, Karnisti. There's two Might and be St Andrews, though. Oh, St Andrews, the Royal yeah, the, and Ancient. The, the Royal and the Ancient, home the home of. Mm -hmm. OK, we have threatening on the uh, this uh, Mickelson ambush. Adventure. Yeah, we've got Scott, Adam uh, Scott, Jeff Ogilvy, the big o. Aaron Badley, mm -hmm. Robert Allenby, <whistles> Stuart Appleby, Appleby and Allenby. Rod Pampling. Oh, the pamp, yeah. Nick O'Hearn. <laughs> Richard Green, oh. Brendan Jones, Scott Strange, whose work I'm totally unfamiliar with, Craig Parry, Popeye, of course, he's still there about, isn't he? I know. He, he might be there about still on the final day. No, he off Popeye. No, he'll he'll be playing Popeye. weekend golf. He'll be in for mm. weekend golf. Yeah. Mm. Ewan Porter. Now, this is where it gets a little Well, I'm outlandish. waiting for one name, Outland though. I know, and that name is not here. Oh, uh, what? Even though he's ranked above Ewan Porter... Peter Fowler, Andrew Tampion, Greg Norman, whom I don't know if he's put his hand up yet, Brad Lamb and Rowan Blizzard. Oh, Blizzard, yeah. Now, but, so that, but that's not a bad list. No. Now, it's at Royal Birkdale, HG, oh, which Royal is Birkdale, in Southport, yeah. I think, from memory. I think it's it might a heap be of about. Rubbish. I think it's about 7,013 yards. Is that right? 7,013 mm. yards. Mm. Ooh, it'll be a challenge. It's a challenging field. Well, when you think about it, they're, they're walking 7,000 yards and more four times in a row. I know. That's, in, that's an effort in itself. But any news of... Well, there will be. Oh, OK, great. Now, and, what I add to this mm -hmm. is, you know, Duffner. people are talking, you know, Mickelson, 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 Mickelson. And I, fear, I think Duffner. that's fair enough. I'm just wondering if um, the big easy, Ernie Els, oh. has he lost his mojo? That's that's the question are, that are the, you the, the pros person are talking. Asking no, no, I'm sure no. the pros are yeah. asking themselves about it. And not to forget uh, VJ. Yeah, no. You well, know, the big VG. And, mm -hmm. I mean, his mojo hasn't been all that big no. of late either. No. And the Spanish boys, they, oh, they well, right well, you can never write off the Spaniards. No, no, they're always... Sergio Garcia. Yeah, I don't know about Jose Miguel. 
No, he might still he's be still there. Playing. Oh, he's still playing yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if good old Seve, oh! by his <laughs> was to uh, One, two, three. come out of retirement. Yeah. Well, when it's a, 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 a Mickelson ambush. Oh, I know. Everyone wants there. to get involved. All hands in the wheel. All, yeah. all, yeah, man, and without the Tiger there, uh, yeah, well, that's, right. well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Aye, aye. So it's only Mickelson. It's an ambush for Mickelson. <laughs> yeah. But if the Aussies can play as one. Yeah. Team golf. Uh, now, in other good, great golf news, Adam Scott and the man they call Jeff Ogilvy. <laughs> Why do they call him Jeff Ogilvy? Because his name's Jeff Ogilvy. Uh, will appear in the Australian Open. They've confirmed. What? They've confirmed for the Australian Open this year. Oh, isn't that great? Gee, that yeah. goes from strength to strength, doesn't it? Sure, it's disappearing down the gurgler, mm. but it's getting bigger. Well, it's... Paul McNamee, he, you know, know, since he's taken it over. Well, I mean, the big names come. Remember that McNamee's gone back to I know that. I know, but he's but he... laid the foundation, the yep. beer hole, the mm. bands on course, the That's twilight it. hit off, That's everything. It. That's McNamee. it. That's it. The, the, the moving 19th, the so moving you can get a beer any time you like. Yeah. It's all good. Anyway, Ogilvy will be there, uh, but no word yet from uh, Pampling or Hensby. Now, and this worries me. And uh, I just, I haven't heard from the big O yet either, Nico Hearn, vis-a-vis his plans and the intersection of those plans with the Australian Open. Wouldn't it be great if that man I know, Hensby was here? I know. <laughs> Little Alicia Monarch is confident of a medal in Beijing, and this is good news. She got the wild card. You may remember last week to appear in Beijing as part of our Australian tennis. And the Australian tennis team is actually looking pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she's there with Renee Stubbs. Renee Stubbs. And Sam Stosa. Correct. And mm. Little. And Little Leighton, of course. For the blokes, and there's a few others there. Yeah, there are. Yeah. Mm. Yep, yep, there are. Now it's looking very strong. Uh, now, Andrew Simons has ruled himself out of any tour to Pakistan at all. He just doesn't think the security is going to be up to the mark. Pup, on the other hand, is urging caution. Uh-huh. Oh, that's good. Pup is saying, well, look, let's see what the advice is coming from, from DFAT uh, prior to the tour. And I think that's... No, that's know, very sensible. God, hasn't yeah. he matured, Pup? Oh, yes, he's incredible. It's hard hasn't to think... he matured? It's hard to think he got so, used to get so pissed that people would bash him on the head and I know. Didn't remember a thing about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Now he's urging now caution. Now he's urging caution. Urging caution. His words are mine. I'm urging caution, he said, and I, I, I stood up and bowed. Uh, Andrew Bogart, mm-hmm. speaking of great Australians, great Australian. he's signed a $76 million five-year contract and officially now can talk to the boomers. Oh, right. So oh, he phoned Chris Anstey, uh-huh. Chris Anstey immediately afterwards, and Brian Gurdjian, um, and <laughs> let, let him know that, yeah, he's in. He's, he's, oh, he's, so he's part of our... Yeah, well, we'll build the team around Bogut. Yeah, you would. You'd be mad not to. You know, Bogut will be centre and we'll pick the team. But it takes a bit of pressure off Anstey, <laughs> you, you know, the man who's been known as the big man of Australian basketball for now the last for, 20 for, years. for the last 20 years. Well, yeah. it takes a bit of pressure off him. And our spearhead. Well, it looks I like Bogut will be the spearhead. spearhead. Yeah, well, no, but but, but <laughs> I see it as win-win because now we have two spearheads, don't we? We do. We have Bogut. And <laughs> in any person's language, in any team in the world, he's a spearhead. So is Anstey. Uh, now, V8 Supercars honcho Tony Cochrane has vowed Eastern Creek will be off limits for any future V8 event forever. Now, what? I don't know what I don't know what's going on there. I don't know, but uh, someone out at Eastern Creek has upset Tony Cochrane, and he's not a man to upset. He is Mr. V8. He is Mr. V8 Supercars. supercars. Now, now. This is, I, I've always felt Eastern Creek is the logical home, the the, the natural home. For V8 it's it's purpose-built. Purpose-built. Unlike Homebush, yeah. which was built for the Olympics. I know, I know. No motorsport I know. component I know. in it at all. I know. I mean, although, you know, Dawn, Fraser, Drive Her Belly, a Boulevard and all those things, I mean, yeah. it'd be great to see them draw, roaring down there. Yeah, but, it would. But, on the other hand, but Eastern, Eastern, Creek, Creek, and, Eastern Creek, as you there. say, it's purpose-built. Mm. We don't have to spend a cent. It's ready to go. Mm, they could have it there tomorrow. It's the finest V8 uh, supercar track in the world. Yeah. Is that you talking? Or that's that... No, that's me talking, but, I, you know, we've driven it together. We and I said to you when we went around, I said, it doesn't get better. I know. It doesn't get better than this, I think, were your words. Them were. Now, Mark Hensby, uh-huh. you might recall, he dropped a couple of places last week to be at 224th. Well, <sighs> I don't think he's taken a club out of the bag, but he's dropped another two places this week. What? He's now 226th. 
226 in the world. Now, we've seen him in the last month go from 218, no, 209. Yeah, 209. Then to 218, to 224, to 226. Mm. So I don't know how he can... I'd, I'd be, I'm calling this a slide. Oh, uh, yeah? A slump. He needs to arrest a form slump? Well, if he doesn't, he's, he going, to, to... he's going to be forgotten. <laughs> Uh, that's the mighty MGMT from New York City, Electric Feel, and from the CD Oracular Spectacular on the WYD Network Triple J. Six dramatic lithographs make up one magic over of great areas from super spinner Brad Hogg in the second test versus India at the famous Sydney Cricket Ground. Great Areas George includes a piece of Brad's shirt worn during the over and a microchipped call of each ball by Tubby, Heels and Slats, which springs into life whenever anyone walks within three metres of the panel. Great Areas George is limited to an edition of 812 units and is officially licensed by Cricket Australia, authentication by Price Waterhouse Coopers, and available now at www.officialmemorabilia.com.au. The cost, just $812 plus postage and handling. Call now or miss out. Australians, have you ever wanted to live with your storage? Why not have a holiday with your valuable heirlooms, knickknacks and sporting superannuation memorabilia? At Webke Park in the top end, you can move into one of our 15,027 on-site caravans. Just dial 1-800-WEBKEY and stay as long as you like. If you're an Australian proudly committed to finishing off at Gallipoli what our boys couldn't all those years ago, then you may be interested in the Enough is Enough Desert Crusade. For just $5 a week, direct debit from your bank account, you can join the crusade and receive the gum leaf, the Enough is Enough annual featuring a full colour spread, a list of the top 10 Australian plants for the backyard and a kids' activity page highlighting the joys of model making not tying and how to spot teachers with non-Christian tendencies. And kids, you can win an Australian-made Shanghai every month and go into the draw for a high-powered slug gun made in America and a handsome pair of night vision goggles. To become a Crusade member, you need 100 points of identification, a reference from a Justice of the Peace and an introductory certificate from your Desert Crusade Regional Commander. Send away today and get the gum leaf annual with Simpson and his donkey on the cover. Roy, look, we mentioned a couple of problems of our Olympic team. Uh, obviously, Matty Helm's problem with vertigo and, you know, the well-documented Jan Rawlinson's problems. Mm. And now, you know, Bettina Hoy mm. was ruled out of Beijing Olympics on Thursday after a horse, Ringwood Cockatoo. Now, that name reminds me of a horse that uh, might have been in Athens, Ringwood Cockatoo. Mm failed to recover from injury. An infringement denied the 45-year-old individual and the team gold in 2004. Australia's Andrew Hoyes, Hoyes, Bettina Husband, Mm. and the Trimple Olympic team champion missed selection for Beijing. So one's missed selection. One of the Hoyes is out due to problems with selection. Mm. And the other one, Ringwood Cockatoo, uh, has come down injured and can't go, failed to recover from an injury. I mean, it's devastating, isn't it? I mean, we're going to have hardly anybody there for the opening night. And the other thing is... is God, it's gone pear-shaped for the Hoys, hasn't it? <laughs> completely pear-shaped. They must have been on top of the world in Athens thinking it's only a matter of getting to the starting line in Beijing and we should meddle. Because mm. we saw Andrew quite extensively in Athens. We did. We did. We obviously... And he was... I mean, he had years left in him. I mean, he couldn't wait for Beijing, I remember? Know. I know. It was incredible. It was incredible. Now, mm. <clears throat> obviously, uh, can I suggest a name... Mm. And I have no... I don't know whether he would be match fit. Mm. I don't know whether he's prepared to do the hard work in jumping. I don't know whether he's prepared to have the spurs dug into him and all that sort of stuff. Kaiba TikTok. Mm. Uh, he would be... Let's say he, at the time of the Sydney Olympics, he might have been, say, a six-year-old. Oh. He'd now be rising 14, yeah. still young, mm. still with something to offer, and still prepared, I think, to make the hard yards, given mm. uh, that the hoy... One of the Hoys doesn't have a horse mm. and probably would be able to get on fairly well, learn the routines from uh, Ringwood Cockatoo mm. at fairly short notice. Mm. Well, if anyone could do it, the TikTok could, couldn't he? He could. Especially he could. under the tutelage of Hoy, who knows how to 
let's say, bash horses into shape. <laughs> hmm. I think I that's mean, if that's, if that's the way. Yeah, it's that's done. The only way to look at it. Fair. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I agree. Well, I mean, he's he's a maestro, isn't he? he? I mean, he's absolute maestro. He's the best we've had. Look, I, had you marked down the hoys as gold medals? Yeah, I had. Yeah, I put them down for three. Yeah, well, certainly the teams, the individual, team, the, in the individual. Yeah, and then you know, so I mean, that's a big loss. Because the hoys, they when the hoys arrive, they, I mean, they're t- medal each. I know there's a buzz about it, isn't it? Yeah. When the hoys are there, mm. and can I also put down? You know, people have taken these bets with the with the TOBs and so on. You bet for a, you think the number of medals will be between mm. such and such and such and such. Mm. Well, you know, I think between five and eight gold is now looking more re- realistically without the hoys being there mm. than to say the 8 to 13 mark or the 8 to 11 mark. Who will me- who? Mm, no, you're right. Well, has 8 to 13 been mentioned in official circles? I, mean, I don't think so. You mean Coates? Coates has said oh, anything I've about I've heard no update from Coates or downgrade of our medal tally from Coates. Well, it's, it's got all plunged. I've got to say, wouldn't it be better to be talking it down a bit and then be surprised? Yeah, like, yeah, bloody yeah, yeah. hell, we've done oh, fantastically yeah. well. We've got three. yeah. Three goals. Yeah, well, the, well, See, are you well, the ca- two certain ones we had with the Hoys, they're gone. I know. And were you counting Mollick as a medal in your... Yeah, I was. You was. Yeah, yeah well, I, I haven't ruled out Mollick as a medal. I mean, she's saying she can bring back a medal. Well, I... No, no, I, I, I have no reason to, 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 to disbelieve her. Yeah, to doubt her. Look, just on bashing horses into shape, uh, look, uh, Bobby Alyssa, jockey Bobby Alyssa, mm. uh, <clears throat> a fortnight or so ago was fined by stewards after kicking his horse... Uh, Alyssa dismounted from Mythical King behind the barriers uh, in a recent race and kicked him. Mm. Alyssa was asked by acting steward, mm. John Hackett, did you kick the horse? Mm. Yeah, I gave it a good one too. It belted me in the head. It head butted me square in the face. The horse this is a common oh, yeah. problem. Well, that can happen, yeah. Hackett told where did he kick it, did he say? Oh, well, Hackett told Alyssa there was no justification of his action. Yes, there was, Bobby said. It got me fair and square. Hackett asked Alyssa, did you lose your temper? Yes, I did. I like the animal, but I just lost my temper and it got what it deserves. It got what it needed. Mm. Alyssa pleaded guilty, misconduct and fined $500 and was charged a further 250 for challenging the uh, clerk, clerk of the scales. Now, mm. I just set that there by way of introduction to another story. Mm. Uh, leading Sydney trainer Tim Martin called it the worst act of animal cruelty I've seen. Oh. The worst act of animal cruelty I've seen. Is and this now a separate ra- incident or is this... Completely is separate this incident. Is the kick or... No, no a new one. Mm. And now racing New South Wales stewards have acted, banning a track work jockey for three months for excessive use of the whip. Mm. Uh, the horse in question... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Indian race jockey Raul Talukda. Mm. Raul Talukda. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, Miss Purdy was the name of the horse. Happened on June the 27th. The little horse had giant welts on both hind quarters and cut up a cut to the head, mm. where she reared up and tumbled over on the concrete at the end of a fierce track gallop. Uh, the jockey said he'd only whipped the horses three to five times. Mm. Miss Purdy was the last horse to work that morning to uh, to be worked, and she came back flogged in a stressed state. The trainer Tim Martin said, "I didn't get back from holidays until that night." But when I saw the horse, the welts were still visible. Raul has been working with me for about 10 months, but I don't think blokes like this should be working with animals. I've grown up with rodeos and showgrounds, and I've seen over the years cruel things happen to horses, but never anything like this. I had to turn the horse out because of mental distress, and when she comes back, we're we'll f- forced to take it very slowly to bring her along. You know, obviously put her out yeah, for a spell. Yeah. Miss Purdy, uh, a quarter of a million purchased from the Magic Millions, was highly strung, said Martin but did not need the severe treatment she came under. Mm. But uh, Talukda, who's been in Australia for the past three years, mm. appealed for a fair go, a fair go, mm. claiming he had done nothing wrong and that he'd been unfairly punished. I've been riding for 11 years, and prior to that I was in dressage and show jumping, mm. but not once have I been charged with excessive use of the whip. Back home in India, you're only allowed to hit the horse uh, in a race eight times. If you hit the horse a ninth and tenth time, you get fined. I don't deny whipping the horse, but there was no malice, and I was only using the whip for correctional measures. I would have whipped her three to five times. I've whipped her as many times in half an hour while a jockey in the race would have whipped her, you know, obviously 30 times, just coming down the home straight. Mm. Uh, to Lukda, who now cannot work because he, he's on a visa that prevents him from securing work outside the racing industry, 
said the welts could often appear on sensitive horses with the slightest uh, of slaps. Mm. Such was his passion for racing. He gave up a career in business management to pursue, a, you know, obviously a career in the pigskin. Mm. Chief uh, Steward Bray Murray, he said, uh, anything to do with the rules of protecting a horse are taken very seriously. Horses are the starting point in the industry. Murray added New South Wales, uh, you know, obviously will continue to work with jockeys, union to explore the option of using the whips with extra padding. Only last week a barrier attendant in England was hauled over before the racing official explained why he had slapped the horse on the nose and then we've got the Bobby Lisa case. Loads are coming from uh, reports in the Murdoch press this week. Roy, you saw the horse, you were devastated. Mm. Um, well, I what was do you devastated. Think com- I was com- devastated. Mm. Because but the horse is a bugger, no, isn't it? Well, well, hang on. I, I mean, this it's been getting on my wick and up my nose now for years and I've seen this creeping into the racing industry and creeping into dressage and creeping into equestrian. And that is that you cannot allow the horses to take over. I know. I mean, I know. It's, I mean it's, it's how... It's out of control. It's out of control. I know. I mean, I know. humans first. Animal second. I mean, that's got to be your, your first... That's got to be your overarching philosophical principle, isn't it? it does. And let's face it, you know, if a horse isn't happy, it's not going to run. No. You know, if a horse isn't happy, it's not going to go the clippity-clop, clippity-clop, you know, mm. four legs to the left, four mm. legs to the right sort oh, of thing that, you know, that, that your Roycroft's champion mm. and that uh, the Hoys are masters mm. of. I mean, that's not going to happen if the horse isn't happy. Mm. But the horse needs discipline. Mm. And this bloody horse... You know, Miss Bloody Purdy or whoever it was. He's going to see what happened, you know, to, to young Raoul, to Lupna, and think, well, I can get away with blue murder now. I know. You know? I know. They're well, not stupid, you won't be able are to they? Look at them. They're, They're not, not stupid. stupid. They know no. what's going on. And I'll tell you this for a fact. I've had a look at some vision. I haven't looked mm. him in flesh. Ringwood cockatoo. There's nothing wrong with the horse. No. It's just banging it on. Yes. Honestly. Yes. I mean, it's ready to go. Mm. The hoys just don't know how to discipline it. They don't know how to get well, the best Well, the hoys would if they, if they were out, out of the fishbowl. I oh, know. Out of the fishbowl. Out of the fishbowl. Yeah. Yeah. See, the fishbowl's finished. Mm. You know, the equestrian as we know it. Mm. You know, people see the you know the horses and the wonderful things they do. You know, when I had rooting King, King tr- climbing trees, mm-hmm. people thought he did it because he wanted to. <laughs> no, you sent him up there. I sent him up there. Yeah, to get his head right on the job. <laughs> Absolutely. When did you notice the rot setting in, Roy? I mean, did you you know Kaibar TikTok? Would you say he was a benchmark of a horse who was told what to do and did it well? Mm. Yeah, well, you know, octagonal. Yeah. By the time octagonal retires, the game's up and the horses have taken over. Mm. I mean, I see horses refusing to run, taking dives, going for runs where there's not, you know, every day of the week now. Well, probably the the rot started to set in when Laurie Connell was caught. <laughs> right, that far back. Yeah, God, that's when been, the rot set in. It's been a slippery slope since yeah. Connell. Yeah, mm. yeah. You remember the famous incident? Star racer, the star racer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had to lug it back to the. Well, they had to shoot it, didn't I th- they? I think they did in the end. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, the, here's your problem. Well, I mean, I think the horse had to be shot, obviously. <laughs> he did. Because you know, just... but, 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 but the race that horse put in, I mean, there are many there, I wasn't there to see it, but there are many who were there who did see it, who said it was the most remarkable race they'd ever seen. I mean, let's face it's about entertainment, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is. It's, yes, it is. Yeah, you don't want to see horses bludgeon. Mm. And I can, tell, can I tell you this is that I'm not sure how entertaining the clippity-clop, clippity-clop gear is because mm. that doesn't seem to pull a big crowd. I'll be interested to see how many people in China, they'll be forced to go, of course, millions mm. of them will be forced at, you know, knife point question, and shotgun yeah. to go and sit in the stands and applaud. Yes. Yeah, they won't Do know we know if your question's at. far out of town? No, no, no idea. I haven't, got, I haven't got, got a mental map no, in my no, mind nor yet. Nor have I. Nor have I. Uh, nor it's I. probably a bit early for me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. look, I... I, I Is it going to incorporate parts of the wall, though? I, I, I'd love I to think so. I'd love to think so. How about jumping over the wall? That'd be a great jump. The final jump is over the wall. It would be a bit of a jump, but... Remember, oh, no, no, no. But remember, those steps mm-hmm. and the width of the wall is built is built to be horse compliant. It is, so as the horses can run up yeah. and down to parts of the kingdom yes. that were in trouble. Yes, yeah. So it seems to me, it seemed to me that that would be the ideal place to get it to, to have a bit of equestrian going there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you'd put some stuff in the way, you know, the things they've got to jump over and you know whatever things they do, you know. The bars and the poles. And yeah. The, they always have those things like um, they'll probably have a, a little mock-up of the Forbidden City that they've got to oh, jump over. Jump you know, over yeah. All that sort of rubbish. Mm. You know, mm. and if they had the Entomb Warriors, you know. Yeah, the yeah, yeah well, Warriors absolutely. Sort of stuff, yeah, yeah. Entomb Warriors say in a bit of water that you've got to leap over. <laughs> that sort of thing. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, if that was incorporated into the wall, I just think it'd, the pictures would look fantastic. Pictures would be fantastic. And the sound effect. Oh, yeah, the clump uh, mm. on the bricks. Mm. The clickety click, beep, beep. Mm. Oh, well, it'd be mm. very good. Mm. And, of course, you wouldn't, you, you know, because let's face it, I think it's fair to say that, uh, you know, sensibilities in China are slightly different to our own, mm. and horses would know that when they landed. See, I think once Ringwood Cockatoo got there, yeah. you think, man, no, it's the sort of place where if I don't put in, they might do the worst. Well, that's I'm true. Not well, that's that. true. But they might be overwhelmed too by the friendliness, Fri- friendliness oh, too. True. You know, as soon as those horses arrive, the first they're going to be offered is a smoke. <laughs> uh, argumentative? No, that's not right. Arctic monkeys. I'll get it right in a minute. Marty Bum and uh, whatever people say I am, uh, that's what I'm not. On the life on Triple J, Roy. This big win by uh, Ryan Laus. Uh, overnight, it's just revolutionised. I think people's understanding of the, of the what I describe as the world title, Mister Universe title. Mm. Uh, somebody told Ryan that no other Australian had done it, so it's great to be part of history. Mm. It's made me even more motivated to improve and do even better next time. The uh, Fairfax paper got this. Thirty-three-year-old Sydney man said he never envisaged he would become world champion when he started pumping iron at high school. Mm. I remember all the college movies when I was younger, the guys with trim bodies were getting all the girls and that's why I started. Yeah, good. So uh, he had a motive. Some of the blokes at school used to give me a bit of stick about training instead of smoking and drinking like them. Oh, yeah. But then a really good girl, looking girl, so simple a story but so true, a yeah. really good looking girl noticed me. Yes. One I'd liked for years. I popped up on the blocks at a swimming carnival yeah. and years and... Years later, she said to me that when that was when she noticed me yeah, on the swimming well, right. right. mm. She was the right. prettiest girl in school, and uh, that are, quite are they together each right year? Have they gone on together? <clears throat> I'm not sure. I'm, I'm hoping to find out as I get oh, okay. to the point. Yeah, mm. the, unravel the story here. This is a fantastic story. He's a plasterer by trade, Roy. Mm. A plasterer, mm. and Lau squeezes in uh, works. You know, obviously in the Meadowbank gym between his work commitments, and he insists his physique is is the result of uh, hard work and strict diet, not roids, steroids. Mm. If someone accuses me, I tell them I don't. Yeah. Whether they believe me or not is up to them. I thank them for their compliment because they're telling me I've done something that can't be done without drugs. I've done it with uh, I've done it without drugs, so to so to me it's a compliment. Mm. People naturally assume that if you're a bodybuilder with some size, you've taken steroids. I know it's a cliche, but I've proven to myself and to others, yeah. that if you put in the hard work, anything is possible. So that's yeah, fantastic it news. Great and story. no, And th- he just leaves that story about his girlfriend or the girlfriend who noticed but him the up thing, on the But the thing, the important thing is he, he, he got the girl that oh, he no. was going for. Whether mm. he stayed with her or not, it doesn't, matter. doesn't matter. He no. got her. Yeah, he impressed her. And that's the lesson there. Mm, you know, you, you might think, oh, well, hmm. honestly, if you start lifting weights... <laughs> people are going to notice. People are going to notice you, especially when you get on a swimming box. And that's true. That's, That's right. true. And, and you know, chicks love blokes who pump iron. It's as simple as that, don't they? They do. They do. They do. Well, they, well, they, they can't ignore you. Well, look, I, I think it's a great sport. And that yeah. you can have natural... It's a great sport because it allows people who like taking drugs and getting big and getting roided up and, you know, really, you know, going yeah. for it to participate in your yeah. non-natural section. Yes. And in your natural section, you can have the Ryan Lowe story. That's right. Which is a Both stories are great. I oh, know. Both stories are great. Yeah, and both have their place and in a the lot of bodybuilding. You know, and a lot of kids might think, oh, well, mm, you know, I, I'd love... I'd love to have a really big mirror in my room, uh-huh. but I can't really justify it. <laughs> Well, now you can. Well, now you can. Uh, Get yourself some weights. Get yourself... And and honestly, that that mirror starts to look better and better the more you stand in front of it. I know, and the posing. Yes. I don't know what it's called, but there are obviously techniques Mm. and names for Mm. everything. They've got to push the... Pumping yourself up. Yeah, it's just incredible. And Mm. I I just think it's a tremendous result. It's a pity that the the Ryan Lau story isn't more widely Mm. known. Mm. Well, presumably Uh, it will be now. Yeah, you'd think he'd get on a current The sponsors would be queuing up, wouldn't they? Well... Yeah, but where, 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 where do you feel as though bodybuilding stands at the moment? It comes and goes a bit, doesn't it? Does, it? I it suppose does. you need a world But if he's champion. a natural, mm. you know, well, I don't know who does. There might be a, a plasterer manufacturer who's thinking, well, hang on. Ryan Lowe. Ryan could be the man for us to get... Chip rock. Well, 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 any of those really good products, <laughs> you know, might give him the edge. Might give him the edge, that's right. What a great idea. Mm. You know, Ryan Laus, mm. 
some sort of... Sort Ryan of, Laus, Australia's bodybuilding world, world champion, champion, uses... CSR or whatever it is. Whatever it is, when Plaster. he's patching joints. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, well, that'd work. People and then like he just turns around and says, oh, he gives me the edge. <laughs> Uh, Little Red, Little Red, it's all right from, listen to Little Red, Little Red out of Melbourne. Now, we mentioned earlier that uh, we might mention again about uh, Tommy's, you know, great effort. Oh, the Tommy Lookalike competition. The Tommy look-alike. What day is it on? It's Monday night. So Let if there's anyone here. listening who thinks they know someone or in or fact look like Tommy themselves... Get on out. Get on out. Is it at Campbelltown? It's Campbelltown. And what we've got here is uh, he'll be honoured, uh, obviously, part of the night is that uh, Tom's going to be honoured for his services to the Magpies before the Tiger Storm match mm. at Campbelltown tomorrow night. Mm. Uh, they want a special cheer for Brett Hodgson, who's leaving, obviously, the club. It's He's... a great pity. It's a crime they can't keep him. It is. Isn't An it? absolute crime. Uh, he's a junior, Campbelltown junior. I, know. I think when he came to them, they said, "Oh, you're too small, too small, mm. too little." Uh, now, Rodonikas said he expressed his frustration that former New South Wales fullback was among the exodus of Aussie stars bound for England. Mm. Hodgson has plenty of years left in him, according to Tommy. I can't believe he can't be kept exempt from the so- salary cap after all the years of service to West. The NRL needs to entice players like him to stay here. How will we fill the void he leaves? I feel sorry for the supporters because they miss out. I mean, that's so true. That's so true. People in years to come who have never been exposed to the Hodgson magic will be the ones who are worse for it. They will be. No matter who plays there. Yeah, I know. You know, no yeah. who to plays there. Yeah. I they mean, there is, there is a case for, you know... Playing him there forever. Yeah. So as everybody can enjoy the match. Yeah, 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 old yeah. And slow, But, but, but the salary cap shouldn't apply to local juniors who kick on and stay with the same team. No, give me that again. Salary cap shouldn't apply to local juniors who kick on in the same team. Yeah. They should be able to earn as much as they like. What mm. a great incentive to mm. stay there. Mm. Mm. Would, you have to, would you put a year's of service on that, Roy? Like after four years of service, that's enough? They can have. Well, I think I think ten years is what you'd call a lifetime service, wouldn't you? Ten years. Ten years. So let's say ten over, years. No, well, well, let's say you start. Well, it depends where you started. You know, your ten years. You don't want your ten years to start at the age of six, so that at sixteen. Uh, sixteen, you're. A, yeah, no, it's it's got to be once you start at first grade. Mm-hmm. If you're a local junior and you stay with your local club, let's say you you live in Parramatta, you like play Jared your junior Hayne. football in Parramatta, you play with Parramatta. Then 10 years of first grade, exempt from salary cap. You can earn as much money as you like for the rest of your career. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Rather than have this exodus every year to the United Kingdom and from these days to France to, France to play I mean, rugby. I know. Well, look, I, I mean, I, I take his point entirely. How do you fill the void he leaves? I feel sorry for the supporters because mm. they miss out. I mean... They do. They do. And isn't the game here for the supporters? I mean, isn't that why we created the game? Fans. For the fans. fans. They're the lifeblood of the code. Yeah. Hodgson fans, and a lot of be you know, being born today who won't get interested in rugby league mm. for another 12 years, well, they won't they won't be able to see no. Hodgson go round. No. Now, uh, Rodonicus returned to Campbelltown on Thursday to reenact the innovative campaign, the innovative one-man 1990s campaign. It was a beauty too, wasn't it? Oh. Just driving around with the megaphone. Come on, everyone. Come to the end of the game. So he's reenacting it, actually. He's reenacted it, yeah. He, on Friday. Wow. It was just incredible. Yeah, they get the same car and the same bloody stupid loudspeaker he was using mm. and all of that. I was think the a, megaphone could be original. A, right, OK. So yeah. it was a, a faithful reenactment. Uh, yeah, uh, that's right. That's right. The Sadly, the ute appears to have a bit more what they call modern-day bunting on it, <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, now, anyway, the what had happened is... Um, well, obviously they're playing the star-studded storm, so it could be a long night at the office for Brett. Mm. Being on the back of the track this week brought back a lot of great memories and a pleased to see me so many people on the street. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> he, the former halfback, obviously, league hadn't progressed far since he farewelled at Campbelltown. It was the end of his coaching run in 1990. I don't think it's come a long way. The game has changed a lot, probably too much, because I don't want to see any more changes. There's a lot to be said about referee, uh, sorry, referees, clubs that are struggling financially, and a lot needs to be looked at. There's some good games, but there are plenty of not so good ones as well. So it's mm. philosophical yeah, about it, really. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's what Brett would say too. You Would'd know, good too, games and yeah. not so good games. Yeah. Referees, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah. But that's Tommy, isn't it? I mean, Tommy's honest. He is. 
He's honest, that's right. You know, he, he doesn't gild the lily, he doesn't put sugar coating on the pill. You know, if you've it's got to just... swallow the pill, you've got to swallow it, haven't you? <laughs> that's right. Now, obviously, we'll be going out. It'll be... You oh, miss it, I would you? miss it for quids. <laughs> Uh, Dawn Lands and Bodyguard from the... It might be Dawn Landers, according to my notes here. Mm-hmm. Bodyguard and Fireproof, the title of the CD. Dawn comes from New York City. Oh, she's really? great. It's great. This typical sound of New York, I would have thought. Mm. Uh, Roy, uh, look, can I just say something here? And The game's best thinker... No, I'm talking about rugby league here. I'm not talking about Gus Gould either. I'm talking about uh, the angry ant, Sticky Stewart... Mm. Um, he's look. I need to put this out here first before addressing it. He says it's an old cliche in life, but also fits in football. The children are our future. Oh, oh God, that's that's sticky, isn't it? So now we backtrack. Children, the children are our future. Mm, it's, that's it's, the thesis. Yeah, that's the thesis. Mm. You wouldn't say that was stating the bleeding obvious. Not when it comes from sticky. No, not when it comes from sticky. I want to hear how he gets to that. What the. How he fleshes this yeah. thesis out. Well, this is his uh, thing uh, in the paper today. He says, proof that... Now, I should explain also that the NRL mm. took a revolutionary step mm. in getting rid of the seconds or the reserve grade, reserve grade yes. and re- and introducing something called the Toyota Cup. Well, I'd call it SG Ball. <laughs> SG Ball. Now, the Toyota Cup slash SG Ball mm. is a game... It was a version of the game for 20-year-olds or yeah, under-20s. Under-20s, yeah. You know, so Brett Hodgson can't play because he's too old. Uh, but there's a lot of players who could. Mm. Uh, and so you come into the main competition through now the SG ball slash Toyota Cup. People criticised it and they weren't sure it would turn out OK. But anyway, this is Sticky's opinion. Remember, we're only halfway through the season. Mm. Proof that the Toyota Cup is already success this season is in the st- Staggering list of 36 under 20 players used in the NRL so they don't stay long in the Toyota Cup before they get booted upstairs. Mm, from th- ball, you mean, from SG ball. Sorry, from SG ball mm. to, to play in the main game. Mm. My feeling is if you sign on for the Toyota Cup, you should stay there. For SG ball. Mm. You're sorry, SG ball. Mm. Yeah, you should stay there. Mm. Now, we watch names such as Chris Sando, Wade Graham, a uh, number of unpronounceable, Talima Tautai, Tony Williams become regular first graders. Uh-huh. I also think it's been a big hit because I enjoy going to watch the younger brigade before the NRL. And that's my best indicator of success, no matter what level of sport or code. If I like something, I'll watch it. Yeah. That's, Simple bloke. That's sticky, isn't it? Mm, sticky all over. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I wonder uh, if Sticky went to many Kings matches. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no, or whether he's been to uh, equestrian, say, watch the hoys go round. Mm, probably not. Mm. Uh, with uh, SG Ball manager, so I've got to write that time, mm. Michael Butner tipping during the week that a total number of under 20s play, players used in the NRL could increase from 32 to more than 60. Bloody what God. are we doing with the 60 we're bumping out of the main game, though? Are they all well, injured? Injured. Mm. injured. Mm. Oh, it's a terrible mm. toll, isn't mm. it? Uh, <clears throat> I can't see why the NRL, NSWRL and QRL, this is his, his sort of uh, the nub of where he's going, these three org- organisations can't put their heads together and form a state of origin for ball. An SG ball state of origin It's concept. incredible. It's just a revolution in thinking. It's going to revolutionise the game. It would, be wow. fantastic. it would be a fantastic initiative and one that would only enhance the rising standard of the game. Mm. I wouldn't expect an entire series. Sadly, he's throwing that out there, and then he sort of sucks it back in. Mm. He says he wouldn't expect an entire series to be played between the two states. Mm. The impact on players still developing bodies would be too much to ask. But that doesn't prevent teenagers playing State of Origin. It's a stupid argument. Half mm. the players are... So and if 60 of them are going from ball to, to first the main grade... grade. Mm. Mm. A one-off Origin match would be ideal, according to the Ant. Imagine if it was played ahead of the recent decider in Sydney in front of 75,000 people... Uh, at Homebush or the girl. The experience alone would expose these players to a lesson in rugby league rarely shared at such a young age. And provide these younger players with... Well, now can I go back and say Mitchell Pearce? I think he's 18. Mm. Anyway, it would provide these younger players with an early understanding of playing under the intense pressure in front of a passionate crowd. If it's a crowd that already has the relationship with these young players, it comes from watching them before the NRL game each week. 
to have such an intense and meaningful game on the resumes of these young men would also take away the seeds of doubt that selectors and coaches sometimes muddle over a head of big matches. Tossing a player into the deep end of, say, a final series or grand final suddenly becomes pre- less precarious mm. because they've got origin ball experience. Yeah, origin ball, yeah. Coaches like to know, for example, how Sando, etc., Graham, and so far have already tested themselves in front of intense environment and on the stage that requires mental and physical toughness. Mm. In a period where NSW Mentor is pondering his own future with the Blues, my plan for the SG Ball Origin match could also unearth the next coach capable of putting his hand up for the real deal. Ah, what a good idea. I'm sure the likes of, uh, you know, obviously Cardi, Johnny Cartwright, Tim yeah. Sheens could afford time away from their respective clubs, so why not offer their coaching positions to the best, uh, you know, the coaching positions to the best ball coaches? Yes. Several of the current cup coaches include Steve Jordalis, Alan Wilson, Matt Cameron, mm. uh, I'm sure would jump at the chance to coach at a representative level. Yes. Be a, you know, obviously ball. Yeah. Then I come to the cliché. In life, it's an old cliché, but it also fits in football. The children are our future. Let's give them something extra to strive for. It's the what beautiful a article. No wonder he's the game for this thing. Wonderful idea. Mm. Have you heard of it before, Roy? No, I haven't. No. No, I haven't. But in idle moments, I've shared a similar dream, <laughs> I'd have to say. Uh, mm-hmm. And that is, you know, I, I love SG Ball, mm-hmm. like Sticky. You know, if the product's good, I'll go and watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a good product. Mm. You know, ball is going through the roof. roof. In fact, I've seen people go to watch ball and then leave leave before the first grade game. No, well, I Yeah, obviously. Mm. Yeah, because the ball is just so good. Mm. Look, I would like to see, you know, an origin game at at ball level, for sure, at ball age. But I'd like to see as well origin, say, for under 10s. I know. Under 12s. I know. know. Under 14s. Under 16s. Can I Under 18s. Under 20s. Yes. And then your main game. So you're getting six. You're getting actually seven games of rugby league at oh, origin level. level. Yeah, nice. You know, so it becomes a day spectacular, mm-hmm. and people will come. Mm-hmm. You're going to have seventy five thousand people arriving there. Let's say at Stadium Australia at about eight thirty oh, in the morning. Yeah, what a terrific your first idea. game say at nine thirty mm-hmm. with your under tens. Mm. And the experience those kids would get in front of seventy five thousand in front people. of seventy five thousand people oh, live to air, incredible. you know, right across the country. Mm. There would be a network that wouldn't take it mm. live. Roy, are you also concerned about the problem where I know this we haven't addressed mm. this recently, but over the period of this show, we have addressed it many, many times mm. about age v weight mm. in determining. Yeah. Well, know, I I came up through the under. You know, four stone sevens, your six stone sevens, your eight mm. stone sevens, your seven mm. stone sevens, your five stone sevens, mm-hmm. your ten stone sevens. Uh, I, I, I could live with that. You know, that that was fine. Uh, but, but, but I think age has got it. I mean, but, but coaches aren't going to be silly about it. You know, uh, you, you, your Brett Hodgson's got a Hodgson's. You have know, to get a start. Got somewhere to start somewhere. Yeah, no, I agree. And there's always going to be a little kid who's quick. Yeah. And there's always going to be a big kid, kid who's slow, slow, who can put on the hammer. Yeah. That's right. That's and right. crowds love that. I know. They, you know, you often hear him shout, give it to the big kid just to see what he can do. Yeah. You know, and you see the big bloke, yeah. you know, lumber up and takes 20 kids to put him down. Nothing funnier. No, no that's right. That's right. Well, can I just say, though, that, uh, you know, I always felt sad on those weigh-in days. Most of all, I never had to go through the tyranny yeah. of being a, a thin kid mm. and all of a sudden being 16 and yet still playing in the four zone twos. Oh, yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Well, that happened with us with Des Curry. You know, he was 18 and playing four stone sevens. Mm. It's silly, isn't it? He was a great player, though. Mm. <laughs> He held yeah. the sky tr- uh, the try scoring record. Well, he did point scoring and so well, he, on. Well, he just well, tore him apart. He played really. four stone sevens for for the best part of fifteen years. <laughs> oh, Vampire Weekend, the title of them, and it's called Cape Cod Kawasa Kawasa. Hope that's correct. Uh, they they're coming though. They're coming for Splendour and Grass, and they'll be playing that. Maybe you could hold up a sign: Play Cape Cod Kawasa Kawasa. Uh, Vampire Weekend from the CD Vampire Weekend and that neatly introduces as we do every week after we've played the vampire the first fat of the afternoon And now on This Sporting Life it's time for the first fat of the afternoon The fat is as Australian as Barbara Streisand as new as cats as wild as Johnny Oakey What are Australians fighting for this week? HG? Well, it's 
It's a terrific prize, as you'd expect. Anchored, of course, by the Bible. No surprises there, Pilgrims. Uh, The Rugby League Week, Australia's most read sporting magazine. Uh, This is uh, NRL Round 18, the current issue. And it highlights... The Brotherhood, which is identical twins who are playing in the Rugby League. Mm-hmm. And there's three sets at the Dragons. There's Morris and John Kennedy, mm-hmm. Brett and Josh Morris, who have... And Kennedy and Kenny ability, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, fill it in yourself at mm-hmm. your leisure. Yeah. And Joss and Reese Cochran. And they would all have this uncanny ability, they each would. of those sets of twins. They would. Wouldn't that be great? And a it... first grade team, three sets of identical twins. I know, you wouldn't know where to look. You think? <laughs> well, the play would be unreadable because they'd all have the uncanny the ability. ability to know where each other was. Uh. Mm. Anyway, now this article is written by Tony Adams and Josh Rackick, who are mm. both identical twins as well, and then goes on to highlight uh, mm. twins who in Premiership Rugby League football, Chris and Paul Dawson. Oh, God, they could play. Those Dawson twins. They always knew where the other one was. Yeah, Kevin and Kerrod Walters. Well, we know what they were like. The mm. Then you've got Brett and Joshy Morris, and also Peter and Jared Raper. Yeah. Newtown seem to have a lot of them. Yeah. I suppose mm. they come in fits and starts in spurts, don't they? They do. They do. What about the AFL? Do we have many uh, sets of identical, identical twins? twins? Very few identical twins. Isn't that there would funny? Be, Isn't that uh, funny? It is. It is. Rugby League seems to pull them. Mm. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so it's a great read. They're fascinating. A lot of re- more research has to be done on that topic. Uh, okay. Also, we've got some CDs. We've got uh, Hills Songs, Hymns in the Key of 666. We've got the Kel Stoner CD again. Now, it was very successful a couple of weeks ago when we gave it away. It was, and this, of course, is Casey's sister, Kel Stoner, not yeah. an identical twin. Have I got that right? Yeah. Casey's sister. Yeah. And Casey, hasn't he turned his season oh, around? Oh, he's back on top. I think he's pole tonight for tonight's uh, MotoGP. And what I love is they seem to come off at enormous speeds and just get back up and get back yeah, on. that's what people love about it. I know. It's, mm. They're indestructible. Oh, they're not totally. I mean, oh, the Mick injuries to Mighty Mick. Yeah, broke every bone every in his body. Every his body twice. But... Because that's what somebody said he should do. Mm. Wasn't it Jack Brabham who said he should do it? Did he? People won't, you know, I think it's a G up. All right. Mick took him seriously. Oh, all right. Well, that's Mick. Uh, yeah, now, mighty Ke- Mick. I mean, they broke the mould, didn't they? <laughs> well, they broke every bone. They tried it again and then yeah. broke every bone in the new one's body. Yeah. Gave it away after that. Kath Bloom and a CD called Terror. Mm. I'm not sure of the Kath Bloom story. Then we've got Sh- Lamplight and the Shipwrecked, plus the Bible. So it's quite a big pack. Mm. And we'd love to hear from a pilgrim. Yeah, we would. Because the Pope's here. Yeah. He's been here for 20 minutes. He's been here for 20 minutes. He Just arrived at Richmond uh, RAF base. Two uh, past, RAF base, yeah. Uh, three minutes, hang on, two minutes past three yep. local time. He did. Now, the question is, for women only... For women only, yeah. Uh, what's the first thing competing horses will be offered once they arrive in Beijing for the Games? What's the first thing competing horses will be offered once they arrive in Beijing for the Games? And that number is 1300 555 Women only. Phone now. Uh, that's you and my Jake Classic Berlin chair from the CD Sound as ever. Who are we talking to, Roy? Yes, we're joined by uh, Stacey, who's joining us from East Bentley in Victoria. How are you there, Stacey? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very well indeed. Now, you're not making your way up to Sydney for the uh, World Youth Day at all? No, not at all. <laughs> no. mm, Have you no. noticed around Melbourne, I think they've got a very separate celebration in Melbourne this weekend, DID, I think it is, mm. DID 08. Have you noticed there's people around who look as though they might be headed up for the World Youth Day after they've been in Melbourne? Uh, maybe. You never know. I haven't seen anyone in Oh, OK. They haven't been out as far as your area, knocking no, on doors. No, unfortunately not. No. And what's the DID about, AC? Oh, it's something called, like, Days in the Diocesis. Oh, uh, OK. It's a sort of a yeah, pre... Yeah, yeah. A yeah. pre you Good. know, World Youth Day event. Good. Good. And there's something else to do. Gets people the, involved. Yeah, another city and so on. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, Stacey, just uh, do you support a football team? Um, no, I don't. You don't? Oh. But I should support Essendon because that's what my boyfriend goes for. And how's he coping with the season so far? They had a big win last night against the Lions. Would he have gone along to see that match? No, no. <laughs> he didn't. And uh, would he be happy with the season so far, or think that there's it's a work in progress and maybe better next year? Or how does he? How does, What's his philosophical position on the Bombers? Uh, I think he knows they're not that great. <laughs> when they win, they win. If they don't, he no big matter. loss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you can good. only imagine what they'd be doing if Sheeds was still there. True. <laughs> was he? Was he keen? Did he ring up and say, "You beauty, Sheeds is gone," or did he ring up and say, "Oh, bad news, Sheeds is gone"? Was there any reporting of an opinion about Sheeds? 
Not that I know of. No, that's fair enough. What about the Melbourne Storm, Stacey? Do they talk to you at all, you or your, your boyfriend? Uh, no, not about the Storm. We don't really follow rugby. rugby league. No, no, I understand. Yeah. Well, what about, uh, what about uh, you know, the Wallabies? What about the Rugby Union? You must... No, the Wallabies are loved either. in Melbourne. <laughs> Now, look, speaking of uh, footy, have you or your boyfriend got any memorabilia? Have you got a sign? Maybe you might have a pair of shorts signed by Matthew Lloyd or... No, we no? don't get along to the footy very often. No, no you don't think you can get... Well, you can buy those things over the phone. <laughs> yeah, or just from, you know, collect them if yeah. you're interested. Or on the internet, eBay. Internet, eBay, you know, somebody will have a pair of shorts signed by Matthew Lloyd. Mm. Uh, some sort of explanation where they got yeah. them from, you know, the left, you know, by the raised side, say, out near Vanilla, yeah. mm. cast upon them. Mm. Like to get rid of them to a Bombers fan, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So what, what are you doing with your weekend, Stacey? Yeah. Uh, not too much. Just staying inside. It's a bit too cold to go out. I bet it is. Now, what about last night? Was it a big night last night? Went to the cinema. What did I you see? see. What did Hancock. You see? Hancock? Yes. How did you get on with it? I liked it. Oh, good. Yeah. And is he very super hero-y? He is very super hero -y. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> and did you, did, you, did your boyfriend go as well? Yes, he did. So it was a night out. Did you go for tea beforehand, anywhere? I just had pizzas. Pizzas? pizzas. What, yep. what, in your hand in the cinema or...? <laughs> no, just at home before we left. Now, oh. did you have a choice of movies, a discussion of movies or...? Oh, no, we both decided to go see it. So. Right, very right. good. Right. Yeah. Is the cinema on... <laughs> far from where you live? Did you have to get public transport or drive? Oh, we just drove to Chadston. Oh, oh Okay. Yeah. Oh, very, very good. Very good. Very, so what time were you home last night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, at about 11. Ah, 11, oh, good. Perfect night. Mm, yeah. Pictures, a picture. Uh, back by 11. Mm. Yeah. And to the news that the Bombers had won while you'd been in the movies. Exactly. Couldn't get any better than that. Now, <laughs> Stacey, let Roy set out the question and have a swing <laughs> at it. Okay. Mm, now, Stacey, what's the first thing competing horses will be offered once they arrive in Beijing for the Games. A smoke. A smoke. Absolutely right. right. Now, the Rugby League Week, which could start a collection of, and you know, spark an interest in Rugby League for you, Stacey. True. And the CDs by Shipwrecked, uh, Lamplight, Kath Bloom, Kel Stoner, Casey's uh, sister, and Hell Songs, Hymns in the Key of Life. We'll get them in the mail to you before you set off to the pictures with your boyfriend again. Thank you. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much for being part of this Sporting Life. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Oh, three on the trot there on the life on Triple J. We had <clears throat> Gyroscope getting us underway. All in all in on one from Breed Obsession. They're playing Splinter and Grass. No surprises there. Uh, then in the uh, the second one was Fleet Foxes uh, from Seattle. He doesn't know why the title of the track from the CD called Fleet Foxes. And the third one was the Black Keys, Strange Times, Attack and Release. New album produced by D Mouse. Uh, Keys from Akron, Ohio, where the rubber meets the road. So we had Gyroscope, Fleet Foxes and the Black Keys. Three on the trot on this sporting life. G'day, listeners. It's your old mate Frosty here with a very serious message for all older men. Now, as you know, I sell cars and offer free routes. But lately, I'm finding a lot of blokes can't perform, even though they'd like to. Why? Because they have trouble cracking a fat. Well, this came as a bit of a shock to me because I'm always tracking a fat. Heck, isn't everyone? But seriously, though, there is a solution. It's a kiddies drink called Aussie Fuzzy Fruit. Just pour a little on your tossle and you'll have the old bugger back on the bark in no time. That's Aussie Fuzzy Fruit. Take my advice and always keep a bottle handy in the glove box. I needed that is a lithograph that records Chris Rogers' first drinks break wearing the baggy green. This lithograph, personally signed by Chris, features the whole Australian team gathered round the drinks cart with umpire Billy Bowden on the second day of the famous Perth third test won by India. Chris stands completely at ease between Phil Jacques and Sean Tate. I needed that. He's limited to an edition of 812 units and is officially licensed by Cricket Australia. Authentication by PricewaterhouseCoopers and available now at www.officialmemorabilia.com.au. The cost? Just $812 plus postage and handling. Many commentators say there's nothing funnier than a footballer's fart. Now you can be the judge. I Stanger South Australia and the PM's Cricket Fund are proud to announce the much-awaited release of Farts of the Famous Volume 1. 
Hear history in the making from Alf Langer and the Cauldron during State of Origin 3 2001. Catch Jason Stevens letting one go last weekend at Shark Park. Wrap your ears around Jason Sinclair filling space at the wheel of the Parrot's car. And then hang on to your trousers when the Parramatta Eels celebrate victory in the tub with a rib-tickling rendition of tequila. That's far to the famous Volume 1. Out now on Ice Tanger. Roy, look, sadly, the mighty team from Sydney have gone down to the happy team from Hawthorne. Mm. Uh, 15-16, I think, to 10-15 yeah. is the final score. A loss of about 30 points, which makes it two on the trot now for mm. the Sydney Swans. Mm. Uh, one team they had the spearhead in and the other team they didn't. I think it's got to go back to the spearhead. It's got to go back to the spearhead. I'd be sacking the leadership group. And saying, spearhead, and come on back. Spearhead in, pick your team. Who do you want with your head? <laughs> Build a team around the head. Yeah. That'd be, now, look, can I just point out a couple of things here? Mm. Firstly, we have uh, Anthony Mundine, who, look, when he talks, I start listening. He's urged Barry Hall, the spearhead, mm. to quit the Sydney Swans and take up boxing. Mm. Mundine interrupted his preparation for his July 30 bout against Crazy Kim. Now, this bout snuck under the radar, hasn't, hasn't it? Hasn't it ever? Crazy Kim. Crazy I like Kim. the sound of Crazy Kim. I think he's Japanese, mm. Crazy Kim. Mm hmm. And uh, to offer Barry the following advice. So he's down the gloves and said, Barry, you've done it all in the AFL and mm. the club is now starting to forget that... Y- forget that. Sorry, you've done it mm. all. But the club's now starting to forget that you've done it all. Is, the, the is there any evidence the club is forgetting that? Is Tony <coughs> right there? Is Anthony right there? Well, I, I just let that sit yeah, there. Yeah, OK. Well, it's a matter, a matter of opinion. A matter of opinion. You should walk away and give an internationally recognised sport a crack. Mm. My boxing, rather than the AFL. No, which is not internationally recognised, mm. even though talk of the Sydney Celtics. The Sydney Celtics has got a ring to it, hasn't it? Oh. <laughs> Combined so many things. OK, now, uh, you should walk away and give an internationally recognised sport a crack. You have the best weapon in, in, in the sport, a one-punch knockout. Well, wow. sadly, the one-punch knockout happened to a completely defenceless AFL Who player. Wasn't expecting he, I know he, he had no time to prepare. I'm not saying Barry hasn't, but the jury'd have to be out yeah. on whether he could reproduce that sort of footwork. Well, he'd have to lull the whoever he was fighting. Let's say it's Crazy Kim's bigger brother. <laughs> yeah, Big Kim. He'd have to approach him with his back to him, and then and yeah. then swivel. <laughs> An odd manoeuvre. And a very odd manoeuvre. Like crazy Kim's brother. He's not going to be expecting a bloke coming at him backwards. Indeed. Hitting the advantage line bum on, mm. so to speak. Yeah. I tell you what, I bet you crazy Kim's older brother, Big Kim, has seen the video, though. Oh, he would have done. Mm. Now, and liked what he saw. <laughs> now, the one-punch knockout, and you have the name. Mm. Oh, he's got he's the a... name, Barry Hall. <laughs> Is that what he means? I assume so. Barry Deck the Hall. Mm. Now, uh, so he's got a lot of things going. The intro, he's got uh, the, you've got the best weapon in the sport, knockout mm. punch. You have the name, mm. the interest factor, and the fitness, and the reason to get out and try something else. Mm. Barry, you'd be a smash hit. Hall is fuming about his treatment. I, well, I've got no evidence. Danny weedler has got this, and yeah. it says here uh, Hall is fuming about his treatment by the Swans. I'm not convinced that he is. He seems to be trying to do his best to... Well, he turned up for training when he didn't have to. I know. It was good. It was, Which good. was great. It was good. And he was looked good. to have a bit of a laugh with the boys, and the boys looked as if they... Enjoyed including... having the spearhead there. Yes, including some of the leadership group. I, I, I saw that. Yeah. Anyway, Hall was filming about his treatment this, uh, by the Swans and is convinced the club... Is, and he's convinced the club wants him gone after knocking back an extension to his contract at the start of the year. Oh. Well, that's the weed looking at it you know, with the reverse of rose-coloured glasses, seeing it half empty. He doesn't, want, he doesn't understand why the Swans wanted to be the intimidator, but now uh, that he has landed in hot water, they are painting him as an extra in, wait for it, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Now, you'd have to be fairly getting on in years to remember one flew over the cuckoo's well, nest. That's true. I think it was a Ken Kesey book originally turned into a film with Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. As playing, Murphy. Well done, as Murphy, the mm. sane one. Yeah. Who tried to get the others in the asylum. And eventually the chief put him out of his misery. That's right. Mm. That's right. Beautiful film. What's weird is, is I've never seen the swans as the inmates of an asylum. I've always seen them as a footy team. Mm. 
Who's is this? Is this uh, Weedler talking, or is this? No, uh, that's the weed. That's not Barry. Not, Barry's not saying. No, I know he's, Barry's not saying he's yeah. part of. Uh, you know, yeah, one flew over the Or it it's the Swan. Mundine might have. Oh no, no, no! Mundine stopped around the point of Barry. You'd be a smash. You'd be hit. a smash hit, right? Mm. Now, look. Just leave all that on pause for a minute while I clear up a couple of other things. Mm. Johnny Elias has been given leave by the parole board to attend Brisbane South's Team of the Century dinner this Saturday. Oh, Isn't this terrific news? That's what a refreshing bit of manoeuvring that is by the, the various authorities. judicial authorities. In jurisdictions. Yes. yes. I'm not sure why he's not allowed to travel, but be that as it may, I don't want to know. Mm. He's been given permission to go. Mm-hmm. Elias was man of the match in the 1985 grand final against Wynnum Manley, mm. the, cons- the side that contained six internationals, including Wally Lewis. Mm. So the team of the century is going to be a pretty impressive team. Uh, Gee, Johnny Elias... It hasn't been announced yet, has No, it? next Saturday night. Dinner, sitting down, you know, with the king. Oh, you know, obviously... What would you pay to get a ticket to that event? Mm, it would be incredible. Uh, well, Johnny Elias has got one. He said, I might not make the side, oh. but I hope to be considered in the best import category. Oh, fair enough. Mm, okay. Best New South Wales player. Yeah. Now, remember a little while ago, and before I've got to come back to Barry in a minute, but I just mm. want to clear this up. Mm. Remember a little while ago... We talked about uh, attracting people to the game and I think we re- remembered that this week Tommy Radonikus reenacted, going etc, etc, etc. Brad Fittler has thrown down the challenge to the Roosters to get 20,000 people mm. for each of their next two Sunday home games against Manly and Parramatta. Oh, OK. That's the, an interesting call, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The club has created See Your Sunday message to promote the games... Mm. And major sponsor Samsung will help promote the game against Manly as a family day. Samsung will shout kids free entry to the game. Oh, well, now, I'm liking the sound of this. I know, it's incredible, isn't it? It's incredible. I mean, you would think, God, hadn't these things been tried in the past? Well, obviously not this one. I don't know if Samsung's ever been involved before, but Samsung yes. Sunday, is that... It's called See Your Sunday. See it's Your got, Sunday. It's got Samsung See Your Sun- Sunday, Samsung Sunday. It's, it's, getting, it's, it's, it's getting, getting there, isn't it? Yeah. And free to kids, free entry free to for kids. kids. Look, I tell you, I, I've been stewing on this all week, and mm. I think if if with you, when you buy your rugby league ticket to any venue, yeah, any venue, any venue, yeah, it must be possible to get four cents off a litre with your petrol if they can do some oh, deal with either Ampol or. Shell, Shell or BP Caltex or one of those. Yeah, yes. what a brilliant idea! There, there, there's your, well, why not five cents? Oh, undercut coals. Yes. Now, look, can I also say what I'd like to see? I thought you were going to go in a different direction. I know you did, but I hope I haven't upset you. <laughs> no, you certainly direction. haven't. I'm, I, I haven't thought of that. It's a terrific idea. Yeah, as an incentive. Just, because, you know, okay. Because let's face it, the impost of Bowser Price raises preventing people from thinking Sunday afternoon is rugby league time. It's not. It's stay at home and save money petrol-wise It's time. affecting working families. It, working families. Absolutely right. Bowser rage is affecting working families. It is. No. I thought you were going to go in a different direction. Mm. Uh, sometimes, uh, I think this is like a place like the Royal Show, mm. you can buy a ticket mm-hmm. that allows you to do a number of different things. So I have a ride in the giant mouse or go on the, uh, you know, the shooting yes. dodge em cars or stuff like that. Mm. What I'd like to see is an admission ticket. That would be the first bit torn off. Yeah. Bucket of hot chips, second bit torn off. Oh, okay. A beer or a Coke, third thing tech. Uh-huh. You know, you might have to tack on, say, a dollar to the price, but you get $25 worth of value to be spent inside the ground. What a great idea. The, I tell you what... Samsung, I'd love to get involved in well, that. Well, they would, but and I tell you And have a lucky what, door prize, Well, too. I'm telling you now, with the Royal Easter Show, I, I love going to the Royal Easter Show, I know, as you know, and the only reason I go is to get what used to be sample bags. A show rugby bag, league sample a bag. A rugby league show bag wow. that you can buy... In club-specific things? Well, you, well, you might be able to... At, at, at any ground, there'll be all manner of show bags available. Mm-hmm. You know, your Team of the Century show bags, uh, your Catholic Team of the Century show bags, your, ro- police. your police Team Century of the show... Your South Century Brisbane show Team. Bag. South Brisbane Team of the Century show wow. bags, your, your now, Eastern Suburbs show bags. Which obviously, a box of licorice, all sorts. Yes. You'd have a poster of the player of your choice. You might yes. have, say, three or four different ones. You can well, no, it's, it's Lucky Dip. Whatever you, oh, lucky you might think. Oh, you beauty. I got Willie Mason. Oh, I got Johnny Lyce. Yes, or Johnny Lyce. Even Lies. though you bought the rabbit show. Yes. Man. Right. You don't think kids would feel a bit cheated well, by I'll that? Well, i buy another one. Oh, on the off chance they get... form a collection. And then do swaps oh, with other people. Posters, yeah. Now, would you You get... know, you might be sitting there with a couple of John Elias's and you might see someone with a Willie Mason. You think, oh, well, how about two Johnny Elias for your Willie Mason there, mate? Sure. Uh, 
families get involved. All of a sudden, you've got connections being People made. coming. Yeah. So you got your, 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 you'd have maybe a musk stick in there. Oh. Wow. Lifesavers in club colours. Lifesavers. So if you've got the eels, they'd be blue yes. and yellow. And obviously. if it's Samsung, there might be a remote control or something. A little mock remote control for kids to play with. Right. Or a number of tickets mm. in a raffle drawn at the game for a television set. Now you're talking. Plus a copy of or the Bible. Or a Digibox. A Digibox. A Digibox, yeah. Uh, or I don't know if Samsung do Digiboxes. No, but, but I'll have to one day. Yeah, or a rugby league game to play on your PlayStation. Or a, 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 a Is there a, a rugby league game for oh, your PlayStation? Be bound to be. Well, bound to be, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, there'd be an update every year on that. Yeah. Uh, or how about this, a subscription to the Bible in your better bags? <sighs> Well, I can tell you. And I tell you what, Peter Wynn's score, places like that, they'd want to plug in. They would. They would. Into your sample bag caper. Mm-hmm. But those bags, those, oh, sorry, show bags, we call them now. Mm-hmm. But show, kids love them. They do. The only they reason do. they go to the Royal Easter the show, show is not, is not to have a look at your chooks no. or your, 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 your alpacas or, or your, your steeds. You, but or we've got to face facts. They yeah, don't. Right. <laughs> they don't. It's they go for the show bag. Fairy floss. It, they go for the show bags and maybe the fairy floss. All yeah. right, well, what's the lesson to be learned? Mm. People aren't going to watch rugby league. No. But they go for the show bags and the fairy floss. Uh-huh. Have you put this to and, gallop? And your, 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 your voucher that gives you five cents off a litre from your petrol. Now, have you put this to gallop? Have been. you put no. this to Russell Crowe? No, he seems I... to be the go-to man, the spearhead, if I like, in any sort of marketing I mentioned campaign. it to Ricky Stewart and he said he'd think about it, but he liked the idea of it. Right, the game's greatest thinker. Yeah. I think I think it's a terrific idea. I mean, it amazes me that the sample, sorry, show bag mm. hasn't been thought of yeah. before. Mm. Because once you put those things into the kids' mind, yes. and at the start of the season, uh-huh. in the guide, you yeah. lift out guide, you have show all bags. the show bags would be available there. S- some available at some grounds. Some so you've got to spread yourself around yeah. a bit. And how about this? The collector of the year as part of the Dally M's. Uh, well, listen, if you get if you get a complete set of mm. say, I don't know. Kangaroos SG ball or SG ball captains. captains who've played first grade. Yeah, that'll do. Anything you like. I yeah, don't mind. Yeah. Then you win a car. Well, why not? <laughs> Our morning news from nowhere from Dig Lazarus Dig, the Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and uh, Nick and the Seeds have been nominated for a 2008 J Award. Mm. And you heard that on the home of WD, WYD information. Welcome, Pilgrims. Uh, that home is Triple J. I thought it might have been a Pride of Australia award, that might have been. Uh, they're coming up soon, aren't they? They are. They are. And and you've got me thinking because of my nominations. I haven't put my nominations in. Haven't you? Yeah, we see... What I get mozzed by is all the categories, and I I mm. can't nominate. This isn't what I'm doing, by the way. So don't, you know, don't write in. Mm. This is what I'm do- not doing. I'm not nominating Belinda, Neil, and Johnny Elias in every category. No, okay. Uh, so I'm stuck. Mm, okay. Because I can't sort of get past them mm-hmm. at the moment. Mm-hmm. And you know, John Elias for courage, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm, you know. Oh, without doubt. Mm. 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 And uh, so I'm just stuck there for a minute. And, of course, now I feel as I've got to go back and cross out and include Barry Hall in something. Oh, well, Barry done a bit. He's done a lot. He you can't ask the bloke to do any more than he's done. Now, uh, as you pointed out, now the Fairfax Papers got this this week. Uh, Barry Hall was at the Swans Fan Day on the SCG on Wednesday. Mm. Um, look, can I just say, I thought there were some unsavoury aspects of this when Barry turned out with the boxing gloves on. Mm. And started teaching kids how to do it. Mm-hmm. I thought that. I just thought that sent a very bad message. Well, it did, especially approaching the kids, you know, <laughs> bum, on. bum on and swinging around to <laughs> scare them. And, you know, I saw a couple of kids. I put it this way: faint mm. with fright. Yeah, because they thought. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, and no. I thought I saw parents wondering if they should say something or yeah, to officials. Mm. Or, mm. Anyway, uh, after that, uh, he did that for about half an hour. Mm. And then he signed autographs, hug grannies and uh, posed for photos with giggling teenagers mm. and, uh, you know, answered youngsters' questions about what that tattoo means. Mm. Now, look, what happens is um, many others sort of in the football industry, and I use that widely in the football industry, mm. um, including Rugby League International Mark Geyer. Mm-hmm. Now, the tap... You know, he's a professional commentator, sure, and he does have a particular, what would I call it, point of view. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he said that, um, he said he was shocked, really, 
and he spoke on behalf of any Sydney side are reared on league, mm. and they wanted to ask this question. Why wasn't Shane Wakeland penalised for taking a dive, for making out he was knocked into yesterday by a hall, a hall blow mm. in the Swans Collingwood blockbuster? Fair question. That was the first thing I thought of when I saw that bit of footage. I thought, Barry's blameless here. Look at the other clown. I know. I know. Mm. Wakeland implied after the game there had been some contact... Oh, really? But in an admission several have interpreted as an attempt to help Barry at the judiciary, he conceded he staged for a free kick. Mm. Wakeland's teammate, Dale Thomas, defended his colleague, oh. obviously uh, Shane, uh, saying he was within his rights to milk the incident for as much as he could. Others disagreed. AFL Players Association Chief Brendan Gale said Chade staging was not the same as cheating, but he, while he termed it gamesmanship, Gale suggested it might be time to penalise dives. Oh, the poor old umpire had never stopped blowing up. Mm. Freeze. It's very hard to judge, isn't it? It is. Mm. I thought it was piss-weak effort by Wakeland, said Gaia. Mm. who could cons- consider Hall a kindred spirit, such as the volatile nature of his own career. If a league player did that, took a dive, the stigma would be too much to live with. The reaction from other players would be worse than any suspension. And can I put that? Can I put my, you know, agreement, my total agreement, mm. with the tap on this matter? Mm. If Barry had taken a dive, mm. t- let's say he takes a dive between now and the end of his playing career, mm. he'll be remembered more for that dive than the punch that knocked out Brent Staker. He would dive and Barry. They'll call him. They would, and they'll write it on his car with a two, you know, twenty cent piece every time he parks it. Mm. They just hate it, they diving. Hate people hate it. They hate divers. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's why, that's why we have very little respect for Italian football. <laughs> Don't we? <laughs> that's right. Now, the fallout, this is uh, the tap, the fallout mm. to stand, hauled down, was incredible. I've never seen such an overreaction to anything. The Swans are kidding. He brings so much to their team. He doesn't use the word spearhead, but he might as well. Because that's what he means, though, yeah. isn't it? He's intimidating. He has presence. Barry Hall has brought so much to the club. And when they drop him because a boat bloke dived, when I read somewhere that Wakeland said he feared for Barry's future, I thought that by taking a dive he hadn't done too much to help it. Mm, well, that's true, too. Mm. Um, Wakeland returned the Sunday dot, 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 mm. guy's view. It's understood he despises the notion he's been branded a diver. Mm. This Wakeland. However, insiders at the Swans suggest a number of players were seething that Hall's career had been jeopardised because of a dive. Mm. I suppose so. Gee, yeah. Guy's the voice of common sense. It is. He? He's the, what I consider the ding dong dell mm. mm, of rugby league yes. when it comes to talking when it comes about to AFL. Common sense, mm. yeah. The AFL's head of umpiring, Jeff Geeshan, has acknowledged there have been an increase in play acting. Oh. Play acting, for that read, diving. Yeah. yeah, as law interpretations are growing more complex, especially in the in the area of marking. Mm. Oh, God. Rugby league players Jared Hayne and Paul Gallon, predictably Gallon, to be involved. Oh, Gallon, in this, yeah, it's his guy. Were outraged when they re- when accused of diving by Neil. But Neil Cordy, a former Swan player and now respected Channel Ten sports journalist, explained the idea of taking a dive or milking a penalty was not viewed as a serious matter in AFL circles. I think that's a fair comment too. People mm. don't care about it because they think you're just a clown and move on. Mm. Whereas, of course, you know if. Gallon, well, well, but, but but would they feel that about Wakeland? About, would they just move on? They're not worried that Wakeland's actions ah, well, may jeopardise Barry's... No one thought when he took the dive mm. that what would happen would be, oh, well, the Swans aren't going to play him because they think he's got a you know rabbit in the a top problem. paddock. Mm. Mm. And they're fearful of other people. Mm. It's seen as the business of conning the umpire. Diving is not seen in a good light, but the ramifications aren't as serious as, say, in soccer, where the penalty from the dive could win them a game. Now... If you said to me, would I rather be known as a biter than a diver, you know which one I'd pick? Well, you'd go with a biter, you of would. course. You you'd would. have to. You'd have to. For a bit of self-respect and pride. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> you would. You'd you couldn't to. be known as a diver. No. You know I mean? That's just terrible. No, the, I mean, no a diver is sick. <laughs> yeah, sick. And unhinged. Unhinged. And, you know, you and I call a lot of rugby league. We go to a lot of rugby league. Mm. And we see surrender tackles creeping into the game. We have. We've and noticed this markedly in the last 18 months. The, mm. And often you'll say, I've had enough of it. I've mm. had enough of it. And I'll know what you mean. You're mm-hmm. setting off because you just can't stand watching it. Mm-hmm. You know, the well, it's a blight on the game. You, you see a great game. You see a great game. But if there's one surrender tackle in it, that's all you remember from that game. I know. I know. It, it's, just, it's just too much, isn't it, really? Um, well, and by the way, I, I, you may have no intelligence about this at all, but does anyone know what the psychologist at the Swans uh, have made 
Of uh, Barry. Uh, so uh, Barry's far. pretty. Is it anything to do with his girlfriend? Is, is it girlfriend issues? Is it. Look, I'd love to be able to help. No, I know. Yeah. I just thought see, there um, might have been something in the look, ether that I missed out. What worries me is who's going to okay that Barry's ready to go back on? I mean, I know this is widely canvassed in the media. Mm. Mm. There's a shrink at the club called Gerald Brecht, I think his name is. But mm. you know, would he be a, a you know enough of a well, what's his track record like? Is well, he has, ever, he, has he ever he worked th- with pathological people, or or well, he's never okayed another person to go back on? And has that person broken down? You know, I, I use that mm. word in its broadest context. Yes, uh, lost touch with reason. You know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Become a, uh, you know, obviously a beset nuisance. by the heebie jeebies. <laughs> you, know, mm. you know, a dribbling wreck. Yeah. Punching anything. But I would have thought professional football is like in my day. You separated your private life from your. I know. I don't understand this at from all. The, from the game. I mean, I the know. game was like a, was an island of it's sanity. sanity. Mm. And understanding. Yeah. And common you sense. You knew the rules. Yeah. You, you know, there, there were no complications. There you were know? no grey areas of no. should I go out with Kylie or should no. I stick with Tracy? No, or? you forgot all that. It was the, here's the ball, I'm going to run it up. Yeah. Or kick a goal. Yeah. Or be a spearhead. Yes. Mm. Oh, yes. No, I, I agree with you. Yes, and, and if you weren't thinking that, you were thinking, who's got the ball because I want to hit him. <laughs> ah, the size of the soul. Muff and platonic. Uh, new album from them on July the 19th, and that's taken from And Then Came Tomorrow. Muff and Platonic, Size of the Soul on the Life on Triple J. Might be time for a third. And now on This Sporting Life, it's time for the second fat of the afternoon. The second fat is brought to you each and every week by Mad Dads, The Woody's Float, Actar Technology and Chunky Chains, the rolled gold links that have your head coming out better. What's on the chopping block this time, HG? Well, uh, first up there's uh, a JMAG. A JMAG might be the current issue of the JMAG. Oh, no, last month's issue of the JMAG uh, with Living End, the Living End on the cover. Plus these CDs. We've got uh, Morgan Page, Elevate. We've got the, uh, the Fuji Collective, Live at the Mac. We've also got a number of uh, other ones. Peregrine, Stay, uh, Stay Inside and Misbehave. <laughs> the Hoosiers and the Trick to Life, Rocket Science, A Sinful Cowboy, the radio edit, uh, Dirt River Radio, and P Boy, The Devil and for Sympathy. So it's quite an elaborate set of CDs there. Mm-hmm. All comers who can answer the following question. Yes, it is all comers, HG. And can I just say, this I think would be our first two part question. Wow! Mm. Mm. Wow! Mm. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's good news. History here in the making. Now, part A. Where is the natural home of the V8 supercars? And B, how many cents per litre should working families be given for their rugby league petrol vouchers? OK. Part A, natural home for the V8 supercars, where is it? And B, how many cents per litre should working families be given for their rugby league petrol vouchers? You'll have to get two parts right, though, Roy. Oh, bloody oath. Yeah, OK. OK, one 300 36 Phone now, all comers. <laughs> OK, that's Sons and Daughters from Scotland and Darling, the title of the track, this gift, the title of the CD. Who are we talking to? Roy. Yes, uh, let me see. We're joined by Daniel, who's joining us from Albury, uh, right on the border there with New, Sa- New South Wales. How are you, uh, Daniel? Oh, I'm quite well, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, mate, we can. We can. Now, Daniel, do you get over to Wodonga very often? Uh, y- yes, on occasions I do. Yes, that's correct. What it's takes you across to Wodonga? Sorry, what was that? What, what takes you across uh, the river to Wodonga? I have to go and see uh, my parents, and I have a few medical issues that must be sorted over that way. Oh, okay. 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 So were you born in Wodonga? Really, you're a, you're a Wodongaran rather than an Aubreyite. Well, no. Actually, I moved here um, in my teenage years, so technically I wasn't born here at all. Oh, okay. What, the family moved to Wodonga when you were a teenager? Yeah. Gee, that must have been a shock. Um, well, yeah, you could call it that, yes. <laughs> where did they move from? Uh, we lived in a uh, small town just outside of a place called Shepparton in central Victoria. Oh, yeah, uh, Shepparton, yes. And were you thrilled to bits when the news came home? Uh, ha- hang on, my mobile's actually ringing. Well... So not, no one ever calls me, but here we go. Yeah, uh, well, I wouldn't get to your mobile now. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you should Daniel, answer the question uh, and then do that. Let's get to the question I'm first. I'm them, so continue on, Jen. Yeah, listen, okay. mate, have you got your radio on? Yes, I have. Yeah, could you turn it down? And don't not answer the mobile while you do it? I can barely hear you. 
Yeah, well, I know we can barely radio, hear you. That's because your radio's on. Turn your well, radio on. that's one on. problem. Okay. Now, is that any better? Well, he's, he's off to turn the oh, radio on. Oh, it's gone on. off. Oh, well. He's, he's, I don't know, the radio might be 200 and bloody metres away. It might be in Wodonga. <laughs> the radio's in Wodonga. Yeah. Really no. Yes. Oh, yeah. mm. Now, no, Daniel, because... Of... Properly, this phone's... Oh, OK, no, maybe we should set out the question and okay. have a swing I'm going to have to turn the radio back up to hear what you No, saying. well, hang on, mate. <laughs> now, well, where's the natural home of the V8 supercars, part one? Oh. <laughs> Why did we ever get into this two-part it's question? Country, here for what can I tell you? Sorry? Country, what can I tell you? No, that's right. No, no, that's right. Well, problem. what's part A? Your answer. Uh, well, the home of uh, motor racing for the V8 supercars would be Eastern Creek. Correct. Uh, and part B? Uh, the uh, few fuel vouchers for rugby league would be five cents. Absolutely Perfect, right. Daniel. That's very good. Never mind the uh, the problems. We heard you loud and clear. Uh, Daniel, look, the J Mag is on its way. Plus. Uh, Morgan Page, the uh, Fuji Collective. We've got the Hoosiers and the Trick to Life. We've got Rocket Science. We've got Dirt River Radio, the P-Boy, plus Peregrine Stay Inside and Misbehave. I'm sure you'll be doing that when you get all these, Daniel. In the meantime, thanks very much for being part of this Sporting Life and good luck with the telephone in the future. Bye now. Thanks, Daniel. Oh, yes, sir. Rebob, regurgitator and blood and spunk from Love and Paranoia. But they were the third slice of action. We start off with Operator, please. Just a song about ping pong from Yes, Yes, Vindictive, playing the Splendour in Grass. No surprises there. Future Heads in the Middle. This is not the world. This is not the world, the title of the CD. And finally, as mentioned, The Gurge and Blood and Spunk. Three on the trot on Triple J. You've washed the car and the weather's moving in. Bloody hell, what do you do? Did you know that each and every garment from the Look of Laura knitwear range is guaranteed to cover most popular makes of car? From the Toyota Hi-Ace to the Jeep Cherokee. And remember, the Look of Laura never loses its figure-hugging shape. Battlers with wheels, how often do you use the back seat? If the answer is not often, why not install a back seat bob, an in-car companion for the Warragamba in the boot? A well-fitted back seat bob could hold 500 litres, meaning that your car could extinguish a sizable spot fire should the campfire go silly accidentally. As an added feature, the bob is now available in the shape of two fully armed SAS troops to give you the feel-good factor when driving alone at night. Thanks, Gumley. Still putting Aussies at the head of the queue. Chris Rogers will always be remembered as one of Western Australia's most explosive opening batsmen. Now you have the ideal opportunity to celebrate the illustrious beginning of what promises to be a memorable career for the Aussie champ affectionately known as Chris Rogers. The Chris Rogers Legside Tickle Lithograph provides a lasting memento of this awesome opener. Personally signed and featuring a section of Chris's bat, this stunning presentation can be yours to own now. Legside Tickle features a piece of willow personally signed. It's officially licensed by Cricket Australia with authentication by PricewaterhouseCoopers and limited to 612. The cost? Just $812 plus postage and handling. Our staff are waiting for your call now. Uh, Roy, listen, one thing that disappointed me, this is just in passing, is well, I think last week we gave a very big thumbs up to the new Ian Thorpe look mm. as revealed as Australia's next top model. Mm. Uh, they had a do to, you mm. may remember that Jodie Mears got stage fright and couldn't come and That's Charlotte right. Dawson at the last moment. I hope Jodie's OK. Look, I've, I've been mm. saying a quiet prayer with the help mm. of Bads.com. He wrote me a little bit of a prayer that I mm. say every day for, obviously... You know, Jodie and Hutch get over get, a stage get, get fright. Get confidence back because that, confidence. that top model show she had on uh, cable, I only got to, got to see when yeah, I was around your place. Australia's, yeah, Australia's well, next top model. Well, that was fantastic. It was fantastic. And she, mm. no one did it better. No one hosted it better. No, no one set out the prizes better. No one no said... One what, ga- no, no. It was the, the instruction she gave to those oh, no. saying, you know... You didn't You'll re- be doing this? You didn't reveal enough of yourself. I uh, want to see more of you yeah. when you come out. When you come out to strut... I want to see you strutting. Yeah, not some not, half-baked clown yeah. who you think might be you. Yeah. I want to see the real you. That's it. Yeah, no, I thought that was terrific. Mm. And let's not forget that 
right on the money in most of those cases. I think Demelza was the winner. Mm-hmm. She was the one who showed me more of you, her rather, yes, as than in any you, of the others did. Yeah, than the others. That's exactly The others right. were hiding as they might as well they have been were... wearing burkas. Yes. The way they came out yes. and wandered about. They had no you in them at all. No. And anyway, no, be no. this as may, the you in Jody said, I can't do, mm. you know, the final. Well, that was honesty on behalf of I know, it's incredible. Behalf. And she said, I think it's fair to say, so I don't mind doing it in front of two or three people, mm. but there were two or three hundred people there. No way. There were. Yeah, but she's not, Jodie's not going to do it. No, I no, take Jody, the point of No it. way, she's not going to do it. She's not going to do that. No, it's too hard. Too hard. Uh, anyway, Charlotte Dawson stepped in at the last minute and did a they terrific did a very job. professional job. Professional job. job. Now, mm. that's all a sidebar to the fact that Ian Thorpe turned up. Mm. Well, well, I he, thought he looked terrific. A million sort of, dollars, I put I said yeah, to you, I nudged you on the way in. Have a look at a million dollars coming down. I know you said that. And you were right. Both of you, it was Thorpey. Incredible. Incredible. Was that sort of gabardine overcoat look, wasn't it? It was the gabardine overcoat look with the thumb hooked into the pockets that was stretching out the leather material. Mm. Now, he's obviously sp- poolside at the Australian Grand Prix meeting last week, but was, uh, you know, obviously at the Australia's Next Top Model. Mm. It's not the first time he's drawn attention to his unusual attire. That's very unfair. We've tracked down photos over him, including the leather pants, boots and white jacket. So, uh, you know, and he, they describe it here as fashion disasters. Fashion disasters, that's rubbish. Who can forget Absurish. his uh, George the Second coat that he wore in Paris with oh, the boots? It was just unbelievable, with the leather trousers. And yeah. Boots. It was incredible. I thought it was, oh, out there. Out there, right out there. I thought it was Ian revealing... His real you? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah. There's no doubt that Ian, when he turns the corner and starts strutting, mm-hmm. million dollars and you yes. are the two words that come exactly. to mind. Mm. Exactly. I know, I was very, very disappointed. And look, can I just say, mm. the number of our rug, top rugby league players are going to uh, Europe mm-hmm. because they're sick and tired of the life in the fishbowl here, in, especially okay. Sydney, but yes. in Australia in general. Yes. I'd hate to think, Ian, we would lose Ian. Oh, we're not going to lose con- Ian. We're not going to lose Ian, no. Is that for sure? I'm pretty sure we're not going to lose Ian. No, Mm -hmm. no, no. no. What, he's going to disappear overseas somewhere? I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so, no. No, good. No. Okay, well, I just raised. No, you're that. talking about the Gasnier problem. Which well, the Gasnier's problem, later, yeah. but also mm-hmm. Luke Rooney, who's now. Oh, taken Luke Rooney, yeah. $1.2 million deal to play rugby in France. Mm-hmm. He originally went over there on a kangaroo tour only four years ago and said none of us liked it. There on the tour, there was nothing to do. There were hardly any pubs, no TABs. I'd rather be in Penrith. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, he's a bloke who's got his head screwed on. He mm. knows what he wants. He wants to be in Penrith where they've got pubs and TABs. Plenty of pubs in Penrith, oh, plenty that, of TABs. And don't forget the Panthers there, HC. World of that. Entertainment. That's yeah. what it's called. A world of entertainment. They've got about it's, 40 restaurants. It's also got a pub and a TAB. Yeah. Right in it. Right in it. We've been there. We have. As, as well as that Aqua Golf. Oh, the Aqua Golf and the cable skiing. I don't know whether Oki Health and Safety have let them carry have on. The cable with that. I don't know. I don't know. That's a bit of a mystery. Anyway, he said, uh, he said uh, I think I'd like to go now. I've grown up a bit and I don't mind taking in the scenery and checking it all out. And he's heard Toulon, where he's going to play, is a beautiful place. Mm. I wonder what his contact with Toulon is. Maybe the Tour of France every year goes mm. through Toulon. Probably enough to give you but an idea of what it's like. Ten minutes in too long would do you, though, wouldn't it? I mean, Sadly. I've often said ten minutes too long in too long. <laughs> give me that again, Roy. Ten minutes too long in too long. Ah, the Mighty White Stripes from Detroit City. Uh, my doorbell, when you're going to ring it? My doorbell, when you're going to ring it? Get behind me, Satan. The title of the CD. And look, people talk of a round of upsets in rugby league mm. or in football, but this is a genuine old-fashioned round of upsets we're witnessing here. Mm. Uh, now, we started off about, seems like, three weeks ago when Newcastle played Penrith. Mm. Everybody thought Penrith would win. The score was 30-18. to 18. Then the Gold Coast uh, got on top of the Sydney Roosters, 32 12. Creating history. Yeah, creating history. You forget that. At the mm. first time it was. The SFS. Football. SFS. Mm. Then the one sort of glimmer of sanity was the uh, Warriors over uh, the Cows, 24 mm. 14. Uh, Maybe it, most people thought Manly had beat the Cronulla, and that's how it worked out. Then you had the, mm. the South, the Bunnies over the Eels, 32 20. Then today, Canberra have beaten the St. George Illawarra Dragons for the mm. first time at. Wollongong Stadium in about 30 years mm. and the final match today is the big one in Brisbane where it appears that the uh, Bulldogs, the Kennelmeisters mm. have beaten the horses uh, about 26-18 mm. so it's an old fashioned oh, round of upsets, you mean, wouldn't pick that would you? I mean who'd bet on rugby league? You I know, be. you'd be mad, absolutely mad uh, now look uh Roy, going back to the thing that we dropped before we heard the white stripes was the Gaznia problem this is the fire up bitch mm. Uh, Champion Centre, uh, 
is poised, this is the bitch, mm. is poised to turn his back on NRL this week and take a million dollar contract in, to play rugby union in France. Mm. He'll join Penrith winner Luke Rooney and former Panthers Craig Gower mm-hmm. uh, playing with Toulon. So it looks like uh, both uh, Lewis and the bitch are going to Toulon. They're all going to be in Toulon. One of the NRL's best players, Gazny, is disillusioned with rugby league. This is not good. Oh, I hate people becoming disillusioned with rugby league. I mean, you might as well be disillusioned with life. Exactly. I mean, we've got the Toyota Cup going through a, a golden age. Sorry. Yes, you ball. Thanks. Thru, going through a golden age of interest mm. because people love what they see like Sticky. Like Sticky. And they sit there and watch it. And if they love it, they'll watch it. They will. Okay, so he's uh, disillusioned with rugby league. Mm. I don't know what he's disillusioned about rugby league. It's I just going know. better than ever. Look at those scores. Look at the unpredictability of the I competition. Know, know. It's a round of upsets yeah, this it's week. It's the hundredth year. Hundredth year. Hundred years of hate. He's decided to take up a, a, a lucrative offer with Stade France <coughs> because of the lifestyle in France. I mean, now, all what does that, he mean? Does, does he elaborate well, on what he means by well, lifestyle? What speaking a funny language and I suppose so. Look, what eating means, croissants and a lot of croissants and cafe au lait and, and cheese, absinthe and cheese and that wine they make over there terribly overrated. Mm. He was going to link up with former Rorotar coach Ewan McKenzie. Uh, the Murdoch Press uh, first revealed Gaznia's frustrations in April when he became annoyed that the Dragons had failed to pay him a million dollars in third-party sponsorship, which we covered at the time. Mm. That was that third-party sponsorship? Third-party sponsorship. Who was that going to come from? Well, I don't know. There was sort of like... I'm not sure. You know, we talked about the uh, earlier today, Ryan Laus and his sponsorship in the plastering. Mm. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, he turned the camera with a clenches his muscle yeah. and says, you know, yeah. when I'm filling in the cracks, I, I use, use, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, mm-hmm. polyfiller. Mm-hmm. Well, I think something like that was organised, was going to be organised by the powers that be for the bitch. And it didn't happen. Didn't happen. No. Mm. Didn't happen. The International Centre is... Has uh, he ever done a Lowe's ad? Has he ever been part of the Lowe's team? No, I don't think so. I don't think he has. It would be a good thing. Hello, yeah. everyone, you know, mm. at Lowe's. Yeah. I can see him do that. Yeah, I can too. You know, tees, tops and tanks at Lowe's. Yeah, I can see him doing that. Mm, so can I. I think he'd be great at it. He'd be great. And I'll tell you what, with Ciro, Ciro an old hand helping yes. him through it. Yes. And maybe Bill Harrigan blowing the whistle. That's right. And doing the funny business with Ciro so the bitch doesn't have to do too much. Mm-hmm. He can I, be the straight man while they can... pull focus upstaging him with their hilarious <laughs> antics. <laughs> yeah, trousers up, trousers down, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Mm. That's what Harrow and uh, Bill Harrigan and, uh, you know, mm. Ciro... Or Ray do. Hadley, too. Well, Ray Hadley... He's funny. Yeah, Ray. Very funny. Mm. Very funny. Mm. Often arriving late with yeah. trousers on fire, mm. drawing attention neatly to the product yeah. they were advertising. Yeah. Uh, sorry, he's got a two-year deal. Mm. The news comes as a number of players, including Rooney, continue to explore the option of walking away from rugby league in Australia because the money on offer in Europe is coupled with, in, with, a, with a less intrusive lifestyle. Mm. Gasney has not closed the door on a return to rugby league, but for now sees the opportunity of playing in France as easier prospect to living in Australia. I mean, this is devastating. What is An that? easier prospect than living in Australia. Hang on, this is the best country in the world. I know. In the world, oh, no, he'll he'll. I, I don't know if he's ever been to France, has he? Well, is there any evidence he's been to France? No. Is he, any, is he a francophile? Does he speak French? Does he watch world movies and only watch the French ones and SBS and all that sort of stuff? Mm. Look, it's mm. understood the Dragons captain has become frustrated with what he sees as the fishbowl existence in Sydney. Mm. Fishbowl existence. I mean, it does really... that mean he can't go out with, without people seeing him? Is that what he means? I think that's what it means. And he's got that glass house. You know, where he's, <laughs> it's sort of a silly idea. Yeah, the yeah, architect without curtains. Up, without curtains, mm. the architect came up with. Mm. So a lot of people know that he gets up about 8 o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. there he is. Yeah. Have a look at him. Gaz is taking a dump. He's taking a dump, look. <laughs> is that what it's like? <laughs> I suppose so. French Rugby Union contracts must be re- registered by July the 14th. That's their special day. Mm. Well, that's coming that up have... soon. That's coming up soon. I know. Well, I think we're up to the... What are we up to today? 10th, the 13th? Like that. 13th today. So he's got till tomorrow to register. Tomorrow to register. You know, Bastille Day. Mm. Uh, Bastille Day. Right. Now... He's going to hate it there, can I tell you? He's going to hate Rugby Union for a start because they're going to kick the shit out of him. And he won't be able to get used to it not stopping. Mm. got to play all the time. Yeah. And they'll just the really set make pieces it. will drive him berserk. Oh, will we will look at what it did to Wendell Saylor. Yeah, it ruined him. It ruined him. He taught him a new manoeuvre, the chesting the ball. Mm. You know, it yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that people like that, but mm. I don't think the gas. I don't think the bitch has got hit that in him. 
And that shimmy whoosh is going to work once. It's going to work once, and then mm. the move will shock a number of leading NRL players. Well, I'm shocked. Well, no, it's, it's, Gasney was considered a future. Wait for it, NSW and Australian captain. Get out! No, he wasn't, surely. Well, how about the new face? New face, surely. New yeah. face, it'd have to be a miles hit. in front of him. Yeah, the fire up bitch. Mm. Uh, he's also face of Australia's World Cup advertising and marketing campaign for this year. I didn't know that. I I've never seen that. Why haven't you seen any of the ads? It puts well, the ARL in an embarrassing position for the showpieces event and the codes and tenny, dot, dot, dot. Australian coach Sticky mm. last week said Gaznia was the prime candidate to lead the Blue State of Origin campaign in 2009. That's rubbish, Sticky. You're not even in the coach. No. Bellamy's the coach. As if you'd made Gaznia the coach. Yeah, the, 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 the captain. But you I mean, who you would? Who would? Yesterday, Stewart said Gaznia anticipated uh, anticipated decision was a massive blow to both the ARL and the NRL, who had poured time and energy into grooming him as a future leader. I've been a big supporter of Gaz, and that will always be the case, Stewart said. God, he went out on a limb, didn't he? A big supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while to think about yeah. that, the game's greatest thinker. And he said, but what a waste and a shame in regards to the development of him becoming an integral member of the representative fixtures. I'm not neglecting the right of any player to make the most out of the game as possible. Mm. But with Danny Baderas' departure to UK mm. and as Lockyer comes towards the back end of his career, Gaz is sitting on the cusp of a real opportunity. And then it gets down to he can't handle the fishbowl. Nothing to do with rugby league. Nothing mm. to do with, you know, rule changes that have meant that I can't practice what I do. Mm. But the fishbowl existence in Sydney, what does that mean? He can't go up the Sapphire Lounge and and get pissed without people picking on him. Mm. I guess that's what it means. But look, can I, I, look, I, I was shocked about this. And, I, and, and at first I was alarmed and then a little bit disappointed. And then I thought, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, Roy. And I don't often talk to myself in the third person, but on this occasion I did. I said, Roy, sit down. I did. I did. I said, think this through. So I did. Mm-hmm. And I said, I said to myself, what is my attitude to the shimmy whoosh merchant? Mm. Well, A, I think he's rubbish. Mm. B, he can't play very well. No. Can I do C, that? all shimmy, no whoosh, or all whoosh and no shimmy. Yeah, has been D, for some time. not going to be able to captain anything. No. He's certainly not going to be contributing to the Blues or to the Australian Rugby League team. No. no. Nor does he do much for St George. No. Better off without him. I know. Yeah. Go to France, has yeah. been my yeah. feeling. And, and on... why aren't you there now? Indeed. Get on the first plane. Thank you. Now, listen, in his position, the centres, mm. we're well blessed with centres. Oh, we've got more centres. I mean, we're isn't Justin centers, Hodges? Every... Yeah, he's our gun centre. He's our gun centre. And he's got a better chance of captaining New South Wales than Gasney has, and he's and... a Queenslander. I know. And look at those boys in Melbourne. They've seemed to have got centres yeah, coming centers out of their everywhere. ass. Yeah, yeah. Inglis. Inglis and uh, the other bloke on yeah. the other side. Mm. Oh, he might be a winger, the bloke on the other yeah. Don't tell me he won't be playing centre soon. Mm. I mean, I, I just think this... Uh, Falau, path. you mean. Falau. Israel Falau, Falau yeah. yeah. The youngest kitty to play... Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Right. The person who was missing from there was the bitch. Mm. No, 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 no. Surely that's mm. the generation you've got to look to to take us forward. Mm. With the face, obviously the face. Mm. We'll do it for a few years. Mm-hmm. I mean, he might be 30 now. The face will probably get us through to about 2013. Yes. And then Inglis and them will take us. Yeah, of course over. they will. The sooner, oh, no, the sooner the bitch goes to yeah, the Exactly. Better. Exactly. Who are we talking about? Forgotten him already. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Terrible thing. But obviously he'll be back because, let's face it, in France they love a fishbowl existence as well. Well, they do. They do. But it just reminds me of what a great player Reg was. Mm, His uncle. Mm. And on that uh, positive note, look, uh, next week, of course, World Youth Day. It's with us. We'll be, you know, obviously on air from two to five with a full coverage of the big day. Everything will be obviously taking the papes. Big uh, call from Randwick. Mm -hmm. And, uh, look, it's just going to be great. Pilgrims, enjoy your week here. And uh, we'll leave you with a simple reminder that Triple J is sport. Bye now. Triple J. This is a download from Triple J. For more music, current affairs, comedy and culture, triplej.net.au. And now... Triple J's Hip Hop Show. Hello world, pants off Australia. The whips are cracking, the surf's up, the doctor is in. It's just another afternoon when too much sport is barely enough. And now here's the team who can open the batting and take the new ball up the hill into the wind, who can turn defence into attack in the twinkling of an eye, who've enjoyed the highs and learnt from the lows, who are all the better for recent racing and in the wash-up at the end of the day win a lot more than they lose. It's the team of H.G. Nelson and Ram. 
paging Roy Slaven and the dominant backline of this sporting life. HC. Yes, thanks very much, Monsignor King Wally Otto in the soundproof booth, and thanks very much to Brendan McLean Nelson uh, for four hours of super sound here on World Youth Day. Right from the Youth Day headquarters on the station that rules the nation, Triple J. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and pilgrims. Pilgrims, welcome to Triple J. Another time, we won't do much more, just barely enough. And, well, <laughs> we have to go to the big thing, don't we? Uh, the nation turned its gaze to racing headquarters at Randwick uh, today for the final blast of Y... Should I say WYD 08... Uh, this morning, fantastic. The audio of service, no surprises to see it kick off around about 4.30 with My Island Home with Christine Anu. Tremendous version. Then out came Hey True Blue, the Hey True Blue man, Mr John Williamson, tremendous. Uh, then a surprise for me, the Hootie Gurus did the Royal Telephone song. Great tune, great tune. Telephone to glory, he's always available, etc., etc. And then I was rocked when Guy Sebastian turned up with the Reformed Angels and saying, that's the way I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. It was just a terrific, a terrific, lively opening to a fantastic climax uh, to World Youth Day for 2008. And, of course, the event featured scores and updates from all AFL and Rugby League fixtures with a special uh, blessing of the Demons, that is the Melbourne Football Club, at 10.30am. And uh, that was because, obviously, the Demons, you know, being the ice smell burning football team and having a disastrous year and hopefully with the blessing they can go on to bigger and brighter things this year. I think they're taking on the Fremantle Dockers this afternoon. I've got no scores from that particular match because it doesn't get underway till 4.40pm Eastern. But with the blessing in the bag, I can see the uh, Demons turning their season around starting at Subi this afternoon. Uh, Look, I need to draw a few threads for the week uh, together here uh, on the Youth Network. And remember, we were the official station of uh, WYD 08. Uh, And uh, look, I'm hoping with these few threads to create a little bit of closure for pilgrims who will be even now filling buses on their way to the airport after a deliriously happy week and wending their home, a deliriously happy week harbourside. They'll be wending their way home via bus, train and aeroplane over the next couple of days and take a tip from someone, Pilgrim, should I say, take a tip from someone who has seen a few big big religious stinks in his time. Uh, There's a tremendous high while the event is on, followed by a gnawing empty low when you come down off the main line and go cold turkey a couple of days later. It's great while it's on, fantastic while it's on, but sadly it quickly fades. And, uh, you know, can I just say... I see the pilgrims who have turned up over the last week or so and uh, celebrated their faith with Sydney Siders as heroes. Is that too much? Australian heroes, green and gold heroes. They're Australian heroes who I believe deserve a medal. Is it too late for a gold medal? I just put this out there hoping that somebody, I'm not sure which department in the federal government would take this. Maybe uh, Martin Ferguson, who's a great minister of tourism should get involved with this even at this late stage and run up a gold medal to be handed out to all bona fide pilgrims as they depart uh, over the next few days from Sydney Airport and other airports around Australia. I, I see the WD08, uh, WYD08 medal being called the Pell, uh, featuring a simple inscription, I came in 08, I served, I saw the Pope, I walked the bridge, I was and will always be a pilgrim. Sure, it's a fair bit to cram onto something no bigger than a 20-cent piece, but that's up to the designers that Ferguson will rope in this afternoon, this evening, to get it together. The Pell would become, as I see it, the first of many collectible medals traded at the next WYD and WYDs in the future. I think the next WYD, incidentally, is in 2011. And speaking with people connected with the Vatican this morning, and I didn't get this officially, it does appear that uh, Madrid may get the nod mm. slightly ahead of Cromer, which was my favourite spot. I don't know if many people would know Cromer, that marvellous jewel in East Anglia uh, on the North Sea there. It would mm. be a terrific place for a World Youth Day. But it does appear that Madrid has got the nod. Now, 
Can we go back to the Stations of the Cross experience with Sydney as a backdrop? It was a fantastic contribution to a modern understanding of the Bible. Seeing the New Testament drama climax in the religious setting of Sydney with the bridge, the Opera House, George Street, Harry Cafe's De Wheels and Myers, my store as the backdrop was a dream come true for all lovers of a great day out of the theatre. Can I just say that was great? But as a performance, I thought it led a little bit to be desired. I, I thought Pilot uh, was poorly cast. I picked him as a pillow right from the top and when push came to shove, I thought that the Roman soldiers were out of their depth. Uh, there was far too much fruit in their performance. I was not convinced by the costumes. I didn't see the whipping. I mean, I saw the whipping, but I didn't see it. I didn't see the pain inflicted on our saviour. As many listeners of the Youth Network know, I love a good flogging. I wanted to see it, but I couldn't. I mean, I saw it, but it didn't speak to me as being important. And this, to me, has always been the climactic point of the yarn, as I see it. A good flogging before being strung up. That's what I thought that the... You know, that's what I consider suffering, if you put it that way, before, obviously, redemption and rolling the rock away on the third day. Where was that? I missed all of that if that happened. Now, finally, the real disappointment for me was the midweek biblical commandment by some clown in the new, from the New South Wales Parliament who came out, I think it might have been Tuesday, and said, the Pope wants to see you and not your car. This ruined my, the mood of the week for me. It was a real bummer. I thought it was unchristian. I thought I was un-Australian. How dare they? It was a once-in-a-lifetime of opportunity for the Pope to see my car. I thought it's too good to miss. I just thought it was a real old-fashioned downer. The Pope doesn't know what I drive. How did this WYD 08 Heavy know the Pope would not like to see my car? Everyone know the bloke is a rev head? Fact! And I am driving at the moment, wait for this, this will surprise a lot of people, a real old-fashioned blinged-up Tirana XU1. <coughs> Chock a block full of religious references. Sure, I've got the Christopher Medal. I've got the Jesus that lights up when I put the brakes on in the back window. All that sort of stuff. It's there. The Tirana is a genuine Australian mark that the Pope, I believe, would be unfamiliar with. It'd need to be a real rev head to know about the XU1 too. It was resprayed only last month in preparation for WYD08 in Pontiff Purple and Vatican Violet and lowered especially for His Holiness. Incidentally, you know, putting my interests aside, I had hoped that the combined Holden Car Clubs of Australia would have been given a special papal WYD dispensation by Rome to put on a carefully orchestrated display of restored Holdens parked on the foreshore around Lady Macquarie's chair where the midweek boatercade could have paused, waved, you know, um, taken in the benediction and the wave from the, uh, the bridge where the Pope could have blessed the assembled Holdens. I mean, this is a simple but effective, you know, gesture towards the Australian car industry with, by the point of which is in crisis at the moment. Don't tell me that the Pontiff or any other of those blow-ins of Rome from Rome would have not appreciated the local effort, knowing that every Holden from 1948, if I've got the date right, the FX, all the way through to the current model that Barry Hall's driving around in, the Malu Ute, would have been lined up for his inspection and benediction. It would have made his trip. Fact. And sometimes with politicians, I've said this before and I'll say it again, they only think of themselves, their own comfort, and can I paraphrase the Bible, there are none so blind as those who re simply refuse to see. Apart from that glitch and the, uh, the cavalcade of whingers, which, uh, look, I've got to say, which any event like this will inevitably attract, the whole show seems to have gone off with a terrific bang. And the final button, uh, you know, obviously, as the pilgrims traipsed across the bridge yesterday, was it was declared a miracle by many. My only disappointment, if I have one, about the public appearances and the whole thing, there were not enough appearances by the stiff Frasati. Uh, look, I would have loved to have seen him dragged around as part of the Stations of the Cross do. Just lying about in the box hardly justifies the expense, for my mind, but then that's the Vatican's decision, not mine. I mean, sure, I've been putting into the plate, hoping to see Frasati towed about the streets of Sydney for years now. Sadly, it hasn't come. It'll just have to wait for another time. And so do the Sporting Week uh, and Rugby League. And with the fire-up bitch man Paris bound for a million large, how many more will step onto the plane and seek greener pastures once the pilgrims have moved on midweek? Uh, apparently Mark has already learned French and it took him about uh, 40 minutes 
mastered uh, the language completely. A lot of it's literature, including Moliere and Balzac and, uh, you know, Pr- some of the... Proust. Uh, pardon. Proust. <laughs> Proust, yes, he got through Proust <laughs> all in the last week. And he's mastered also the art of chowing down on frogs' legs and snails. Can I just say I've never liked the bloke? Uh, <clears throat> now, still with Rugby League, and the man they call Gus, Phil Gould, returned to Channel 9's top-rating Sunday roast with a bag full of the toughest questions in the league. The roast today celebrated 100 shows with cake and balloons and uh, none of the carry-on with the hooters, I must say, or the funny stuff to mean rugby league in any way. It was a great uh, re-emergence of Phil Gould from a self-imposed retreat away from rugby league and the roast in particular. Meanwhile, the media battle rages on whether the great game that is rugby league celebrating 100 years of hate got what it was really worth in a recent pay television deal. Uh, speaking of uh, wars, which we weren't, but can, the AFL and Rugby League are locked in an old-fashioned winner-take-all turf war. This is erupted in Western Sydney with plans for the new team, the Western Sydney Date Fingers unveiled this week. Kids armed with slug guns and Shanghai's representing the youth of the AFL and Rugby League are engaged in a battle street by street out in the western suburbs of Sydney, corner by corner for the hearts and minds of future footy heads across that terrific part of Sydney. Still with the AFL... And uh, Dr Dean Solomon had a shocker last week when he ploughed into his surfing and drinking buddy, Geelong cat ding a and put Cameron, Cameron into orbit around the planet Coosbay. And I think uh, this may be a record. Dean managed to uh, inflict four fractures on Cameron's head uh, with one blow of the, uh, the elbow. Dean uh, has been asked by the AFL to take eight weeks off and have a think about his future in the game. Eight weeks, doesn't it make uh, Barry's suspension look... Uh, hmm? Very, very on the soft side. I think Barry got seven. Now, sure, it is disappointing for Dean the Dockers and Dean's family, but what about Solomon fans who have followed his and loved his niggly, unsociable uh, career over the years and loved Dean's approach to uh, the caper, which has uh, has the aforementioned Barry Hall plastered all over it. I think Dean played many, many years with the Bombers, and a lot of fans followed him across from the Bombers to Subiaco Oval or to Fremantle and uh, will sadly miss him not turning out against uh, the Demons today who have been recently blessed by the Pope. Uh, tennis and Little Leighton has said, Beijing, never mind the buggered hip, count me in, which is terrific news. And I think it's only 19 days to go before, the, before uh, obviously, the opening ceremony in Beijing. Golf, I know Royal want to highlight this one, but can I be the first on... W-Y-D to bellow, Shucky! Yes, the great white. Uh, sank his teeth into the British Open at Birkdale and, of course, of course, hasn't recovered and is still whimpering. Cricket and the Sheffield Shield is back in a big way. Look, I'm in two minds about this. While I like the tradition of the Sheffield Shield, I also love the idea that cricket was linked officially with the serious milk products uh, of Australia and it disappoints me that one of our very fine dairy industries could to- not take up the slack and sponsor the world's greatest competition. That's his domestic cricket competition. I, of course, had hoped it might become uh, the sponsorship vehicle of uh, Bigger Cheese. Racing, and it was Grafton this week, and a terrific carnival turned on again by the GRC. The big one, the cup, was taken out by the Jackal for the second year on the trot. I think it's uh, the Jackal's only the second horse in history to take uh, the Grafton, uh, you know, obviously in consecutive years. So it's a great feather in the cap of the whole Jackal camp. And it had uh, the Jackal had the services of Robert Thompson on board uh, doing the belting. And Tomo today may be about to break the record for all-time number of winners booted home. He's certainly on the cusp, and if he gets a couple of winners up today at Grafton, I think he'll be able to push past the previous. I think it might be Jack Thompson who holds the record at the moment. No relation. Uh, And uh, with those ideas uh, getting the agenda of knowledge underway uh, this week, it's time to ask what the Monsignor has tucked under his cassock. And we can do that simply by asking rampaging Roy Slavin, have you got anything up the back of the pulpit you want to unleash on the congregation this week, Reverend? Yes, thanks very much, H.G. Uh, Nelson. What a marvellous week. And, and uh, terrific to have the pilgrims uh, amongst us. I mean, they've... I mean, they're, they're so full of joy, aren't they? Joy, that's the word. Yeah, yeah they, I, I mean, they, they really are a, a, a terrific injection of uh, <laughs> high-spiritedness in the community. I, I, I just think it's been great. I, I'll be sad when they go. Injection, yeah. I think you're absolutely yeah. right. And, yeah. uh, you know, I thought they'd be a bit glum 
No, they weren't glum at all. No, they, they were on their skateboards yeah, and banging away all hours up, of a day. Yeah. Kumbaya, Kumbaya. Know, it was just fantastic. Uh-huh. And, I know. You know, every time it turned around. smiles on their faces. I know, there was Guy Sebastian. I know. And, uh, That's the way I like it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, it's just it's fantastic. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's wonderful. the word. That's the word. Wonderful. And, <clears throat> and what a bloody opportunity lost for the rugby league. I mean... I went to Fortress Brookie on Friday night thinking, well, this will be great. We'll, it'll be full of pilgrims, you know, to, to sample no, no. rugby league. The best. Right? The best. Man, Manly v. Parra. I, I mean, it's tradition. It's great. You've got two foundation clubs. and I, mm-hmm. I, I Use that word any, advisedly. Yeah, any pilgrims I spoke to mm-hmm. uh, in the city when I was, you know, going about my business, you know, welcome to Sydney. What, what are you up to? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Have a great time. What are you doing Friday night? Mm. I said, as a leading question. Mm. Oh, we've got this and this, you know, benediction and blah, 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 blah. I said, what about rugby league? And they looked at me blankly. Oh, huh? no. What? Rugby Who? league. What? Yeah. And in the hundredth year, I would have thought that there would have been, you know... Free say, admission? Yes. Buses there, laid there, on? There's, there's, there's maybe, you know, Brett and Glenn Stewart in full kitted out and maybe Nathan Hindmarsh and Young Finch. Young Finchy. You know... Dressed up in their in their clobber, giving out some free tickets, uh, yeah, for people to go. I, I just thought it was a great opportunity to spread the word. Spread the word. Now the stations <laughs> of the cross, Roy. That was the big event, apart from Friday night's rugby yeah. league. How did yeah. you see it? Did you did it speak to you as something that you know worked out? Yeah, you know, in the in your mind, obviously mm. you've thought about it for many years. What mm. it would be like in the great yes, and yes, stuff like that. L- look, like you, I-, I was really taken by the backdrop. It really sold the story. Uh, it put the story in this the Australian context, didn't mm. it? It did, a- and and tremendous resonances as, as a result of that. I, I think it-, it it got a lot of people thinking. Well, there is a story there, and uh, you know, I want to know more. Mm-hmm. It it uh, it left more questions than provided answers, and I think great theatre does that. Mm-hmm. Very good. I mean, nobody Very leaves. Good. If you leave the theatre, you know, with the book closed, it hasn't worked, <laughs> has it? No. Well, certainly the book yeah. was right open. Mm-hmm. I I didn't realise mm-hmm. that you know there may have been Aboriginal dancers. At, I had at no the, idea. Well, I had no idea there was free. a smoking ceremony. No. I had no, no idea. No. I mean, no. it was a revelation. See that. That created in my mind, mm. maybe we've got the story really wrong, mm. you know, and don't ask me to flesh it out because it would require a new book, a yeah. couple of new books yeah. about how the people obviously had some form of transport yeah. to move from Australia to there. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, yes. the Lord moves in mysterious ways. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I had no idea that there were eucalypts in the Middle East at that stage. No. I didn't know that. No, no. I do now. Yes. Like you, I was a bit mm. shy of my knowledge. Mm. Mm. No, I thought it was fantastic, fantastic. like that. Fantastic. Mm. You know, and it just makes you want to say, well, what else don't I know? <laughs> eh? Doesn't it? <laughs> I couldn't have put it better. I couldn't have put it better. <clears throat> now, like you, I was excited by the Sheffield Chill being back, but I want to know what's happened to the sponsors. Yeah. yeah is no one putting their hand up? Right. Suddenly it all just looks a bit bare, doesn't it? Sheffield it does. Shield looks like a loser without a sponsor. It does. You know, I know, I understand individual teams like the New South Wales Speed Speed Blitz Blues may still be the Speed Blitz Blues. Yeah, I assume. I, I don't know if they're just the Blues anymore. Have we heard anything? Of Speed no, Blitz I think individual teams are still being sponsored okay. by the various. You know, I don't know who the Redbacks are sponsored no. by. Ooh. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, the Bush Rangers no. are they? Are they the something Bush Rangers? They the Bigger be. Cheese Bush Rangers or something? I, I don't so. know. That's what I suggested, was that we thought originally that mm. the cheese and dairy industry should take the whole thing on yeah. board. So you might have the bigger cheese Speed Blitz Blues, or, mm. you know, they might have to drop the Speed Blitz. Mm. And in Victoria might be the dairy farmers. Yeah. Uh, while Pura Milk held the banner sponsorship of the whole event. Mm. Uh, farmers Union in South Australia. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. probably there'd be a Milk West yeah, organisation. Mm. Mm. Yes, a great opportunity lost, really, hasn't it been... And it looked so good there for a couple of years. Didn't did. I, I mean, I was just get, getting used to living without Sheffield Shield. I know. I know. I don't know if I can get used to it again. I'll try. I'll try. No, I'll certainly give I'll, it a so go. I'll give it a go. Mm. Mm. Now, who should own the name The Spirit? <clears throat> now, oh. <clears throat> oh. the new AFL franchise, you know, that's... Mm. Or the Bendigo women's basketball team. Wait, 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 wait. Or our gold medal yeah. softball team. Oh, yes, that's right. Aussie Spirit. Spirit. Aussie Spirit, that's right. I've got a story about them. Yeah, OK. Well, we'll get to that a little later then because, because I, th- I... I mean, come up with your own name. 
Ah, very good. That's that's. Very good. I mean, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but that would be my basic position. I Is the name Frasati taken? Not to my knowledge. No, there you go. Not to my knowledge. The Sydney Frasatis, something to that. Now, <clears throat> the ARL is forced to change the ad for the World Cup. Yeah, because? Because of the fire-up bitch man's defection oh, no. to French Rugby Union. Oh, no. I mean, he, I mean, I've seen the ad, it's great, but it's all fire-up. I oh, know. It's all the bitch man, it's all shimmy and... You know, a little bit of old, a little bit of whoosh when they accidentally had a camera there when it, there was a bit of whoosh happening. Twelve years ago. Twelve years ago, yes. Um, but anyway, wow. who's hmm. taken his place? Is there any suggestion that, say, Frank Pritchard or maybe uh, Young oh, Finch? Look, or, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, Young Finch might what, step in. Look, I, I'm, I'm assuming the Morris twins. Oh, the Morris twins, yes, Brett and Josh. Yeah, Brett and Josh. Mm. And I know, uh, you know, I think it might be Brett who's upset because. St George could keep him now, keep the twins together because they've got the money now that Fire Up's gone. <sighs> but he said he's, but going, he to said he's going to the dogs. But he said he's going to the dogs and he didn't because want they, to go to the dogs. He pushed, hates the dogs. They pushed him out of the... And now the know, twins are split up. I know. It's just not right. I know. It's just so cruel. Mm. I mean, surely that's got to be addressed. It's got to be addressed. If it's got to be addressed. Ca- I know. The deal should be off if... The so deal should be off room. between... Between, say, Brett Morris and the Canterbury Bulldogs. Yeah. Unless both twins go. It's a package. Yeah, it's a package, yeah. Now, the Australians are in, in incredibly well-placed in the British Open. Now, of course, Shark is a stroke, might even be two strokes ahead at the moment. And who would have thought Chris Everett Lloyd could have turned him around like that? Well, she has. Man. She has. She's taught him at last how to win. I hope. It would just be one... Uh, I mean... The, the dream HG and I, myself have lived with for many years is Shark v Tiger. That's what I want to see. And that's, oh. you know, the old shark, the old gnarl, that's so much experience in that shark package up against the man they call Tiger, mm. Tiger Woods. God, you oh, know, I mean, it's, it's tantalising, isn't it? I know. And punters have had a field day, you know. I know. They, and they're just queued up and got on. And I know. Okay, now while the shark is there, you know, he's got the points on the board, he's at the front of the... He's there and he's been there before the British Open, twice twice before, remember. Not far behind is the big O, Nico Hearn. The big O's still there. Hmm. Uh, Ro- news, Robert Allenby's still hmm. there. And just because Aussies are better when they hunt as a pack. And I get the feeling that shark and the big O... And Rod Pampling, to a lesser extent, but certainly Alan me, are hunting as a pack. Mm. Tell you one name that'd flesh out that pack. Appleby. Not bad. How about the Forgotten Man? Oh, we'll we'll get to the Forgotten Man in a minute. Now, as predicted, though, last week, the big easy, Ernie Hills, Mojo, none. He's gone. I mean, (laughs) he's gone. No one's talking easy anymore. Isn't that funny? I mean, years ago, you would have thought, you know, when when the, the big three, when the big three were uh, the elk, the easy and the shark. Mm -hmm. Remember those days? I do. Who would have thought? Here we are, 2008. I know. World Youth Day and we're talking shark. Shark again. You know? Mm. No surprise there's no elk or uh, easy being discussed. Now, Cadell Evans still holding on. Uh, I don't know if you've watched many of the stages lately, but um, he's staying with the peloton and, and and he's being well looked after by his teammates. He is. He is. Well supported. He wasn't supported all that well the night before last, but last year, last night he was. Yeah. Good to see yeah. that uh, that uh, an Aussie is still... I'm worried about the, the uh, Schleck, against... though. Yeah, I know. You know, yeah. Schleck looks to me as though he could be... Just yes. waiting to <coughs> explode. do something. Explode. Mm. Explode, yeah. yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And if an explosion's going to take place, it may well take place now as the climb begins. Yes, correct. Yeah. Now, uh, marquee A-League signing, and that could only mean one person, John Aloisi, <laughs> uh, injured during the filming of a television advertisement. I mean, I don't know who was the safety officer with this shoot but uh, I just don't think this is good enough. And uh, I, how can you insure against such a thing? I, I think your marquee players shouldn't have to do ads at all. Just get a bit of cut footage from their from them doing I, their work. I, know. I mean, that's what sells it. 
I mean, bit of Aloisi magic. And don't tell me we, we haven't got some... There mustn't be some Aloisi magic in there in the can somewhere. Well, that uh, penalty he took... Yeah, I know. Got us into Incredible. the World Cup. got us into the World Cup. Now, have I seen Aloisi doing uh, something like an underpant commercial? I haven't seen it, but it wouldn't surprise me. Well, if they could use some of that. Yes, they could. Mm. That wasn't the shoot he was injured on, was he? I don't think so. No, 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 no taking it no, off. No, I think it was an A-League ad, which we haven't seen yet, obviously, because... Uh, I don't know whether the filming was completed as a result of the injury to uh, John Aloisi. I don't know. Now, Formula One ace Lewis Hamilton, and this is a refreshing, refreshing insight, mm -hmm. says he's modelling his attitude to driving on Rafael Nadal. What? <laughs> now, I, I, you know, didn't need to translate. He speaks English. It wasn't if something was lost in translation. Ma. And that's what he said. And uh, I don't know what... I didn't realise Rafael Nadal was a great driver. I had no idea. Right. Certainly he'd be good at taking, say, right turns with that huge left arm. I don't know. <laughs> Might be a, a right turn specialist. Who now, knows? Tonight, of course, I think it's, uh, you know, another... I think we might be in Hockenheim tonight. Hockenheim, Weber, oh. sadly... I don't know where we're He slipped off the front, sadly. I don't know oh. quite why, but he's a fair way down. I think it's oh. going to be a hell of a drive. Well, he's more comfortable there, I Yeah, think. I think that's right. I think he, when the pressure's not... I mean, Mark doesn't react. He's a bit like Jody Mears in that regard. You know, he, he doesn't like... He doesn't like the big... No. The big audience. No, the big audience, you yeah. know. He, he likes to mm, hide, hide the light under there. the bushel. No, fair enough. <clears throat> so if he's at the back of the pack, he's comfy. Uh, now... Boomer's centre, Andrew Bogut. And he's a great oh, being able to say, Boomer's centre, Andrew Bogut. Yep. You know, uh, I'm not talking down Chris Anstey at all. I mean, he's a great centre. Mm -hmm. But if you've got Bogut, use him. Mm -hmm. And we have and we are. Boomer's centre, Andrew Bogut, uh, says he expects to be heavily targeted in Beijing. Is that right? God, he thinks about his game, God doesn't God he? How, who winkled that out of I him? don't know. Somebody he on the volunteered it. He, he just arrived on his website. On his website, expects to be heavily target. targeted. Invasion. And I say, well, that's great. Fine, target Bogut. We've still got Anstey. Now, just finally, no real Mark Hensby news, except that his ranking seems to have dropped a few places again. Mm -hmm. He's gone this week from two twenty six to two thirty one in the world, but not forgotten. Oh, is, should I say, open bracket, is, close bracket. Cult Romance is the title of the track, and there are unearthed high winners here at Triple J uh, from McDonald Secondary College in Strathfield. Is Cult Romance on Triple J's This Sporting Life. Roy and HG have substantial contacts with people managers in Papua and New Guinea, Tuvalu, the Solomons and Bougainville. These well-placed senior government accredited human resources experts allow your firm access to any number of semi-qualified but highly motivated labourers who understand only two words of English. Start and now. These 457 compliant tradesmen are guaranteed disease-free and will have a go at anything. Plus Plumbing, electrical, excavation, welding, stone masonry, and should you want to go native, these willing workers are fully conversant with the latest techniques in vine lashing, bamboo construction, and blow piping. As Australia's leading contemporary architect, Glenn Merkett, said at a recent international conference, honestly, what these blokes can do shocked me. And it's certainly refreshing in the building game to have labour cheaper than nails. If you want labour short on skills, but big on grunt. Contact the 457 specialists on 123 457 and chat about your needs. Holiday makers stuck for somewhere to take the caravan this Christmas? The kids had enough of Dreamworld and Wet n Wild on the Gold Coast? You want somewhere familiar and cheap, yet entirely different and close to home. That's why this year you'll be making a beeline for new old Melbourne town in Bexley. This award-winning theme park is set on 47 hectares and has everything you love about Victoria. See Ned Kelly robbing Glen Rowan Bank. See Peter Lalo 
Taylor raise the Southern Cross at the Eureka Stockade and see the Ballarat Gold Rush every hour. And when you've had enough of the sights, you can eat yourself silly for $500 at Federation Square House. Opposite the full-scale replica of Flinders Street Station. Then when the little ones are sick of walking, hop on a tram and watch Rod Laver Arena whiz by. That's new old Melbourne town Bexley, Australia's newest theme park. It's more real than the real thing. Australia needs laws protecting the flag, but have our politicians gone far enough in protecting those little things Australians value the most? How often have you seen someone pissed in a green and gold rugby league jumper? How often have you seen someone you know is Australian wearing an Arsenal shirt? How often have you seen someone shopping at Woolworths in a Singapore Slingers singlet. Well, enough is enough. Support the Australian Players Association draft legislation that will outlaw these activities and enshrine common sense by protecting all Australian sporting uniforms. Visit our website at www.enoughisenough forward slash njumperabusetoday.com. Uh, look, just to tidy up one thing in the yeah, Roy is absolutely right. Hockenheim, the uh, circuit for the German F1. Grand Prix, I tell you, who'd be right at home there is Max Mosley. Oh, uh, would he know that? Uh, he'd know every centimetre of that circuit. He would. He would. He's crawled flogged, all over it, flogged, flogged around, around it many, there. many times. Absolutely. By uh, people in stilettos mm-hmm. and fishnet stockings. Now, mm-hmm. <clears throat> look, uh, in or the... POW <laughs> uniforms. <laughs> right. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And he'd be talking German all the way around as mm-hmm. well, you know, mm-hmm. the local lingo, because mm-hmm. he plays the part very well. He does. He does. Uh, now, look... In the German F1 Grand Prix, the first session was in the wet, Mm -hmm. and our Mark, he ran 14th Mm -hmm. in the wet. But then in the dry, he came in fifth in the Red Bull. And I'm not sure where this puts him in the uh, final lineup because I can't do the maths quickly enough. Mm. But uh, so it was a mixed bag of, uh, you know, success and failure, or should I say failure and success, uh, Mark Webber was fifth ahead of two-time world champions, uh, Spaniard Fernando Alonso and German Nicky, Nico Rosberg and oh. Paul uh, Robert Kubica. Mm. So he's done well there. He's done very well, hasn't he? Mm. Uh, just remarkable. Now, well, let's hope it's dry tonight then. So do Hockenheim. I. Oh, Hockenheim. With, with, uh, the trouble is, is that Max, if he goes around beforehand, will live a fair bit of what I call night soil mm. uh, on the track, and it could be rather, you know, sticky Yeah. Uh, by the time the boys get out there and uh, lay rubber. Now, <clears throat> Roy, uh, I'm just wondering if we could uh, maybe pick up an idea from World Youth Day, mm. and we broke this story a little while ago concerning rugby league supporters being buried in coffins, mm. bearing the, what would I call it, the colours and images of their team. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now comes from a Sydney company, Life Art, who mm-hmm. decorates its ego, eco-friendly uh, cardboard coffins in the colours of the National Rugby League. Mm-hmm. It can't do the same if those who have dropped off the twig are fans of, say, the Sydney AFL club, the Sydney Swans. Uh, the AFL said it was not comfortable giving the fans permission to use official team colours on coffins. Why not? Well, wait a minute. The NRL has been fantastic from the start, Life Art founder and director Natalie Verdon said. Mm. They have, the AFL just say they're not interested. I'm not sure what their problem is. Now, Brett Cashman of Lake Illawarra was the first rugby league fan to have an NRL approved funeral. <clears throat> be interesting to know what the. When was that? Order because... of service, 2006. <clears throat> oh, no, 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 no. no. There were, we've had rugby league funerals in Lithgow ever since so I can You can remember? remember? Ever since I can remember. Can you just take us through the order of service? You know, obviously the mm-hmm. career details read out, the theme song played, mm-hmm. a cha- chant go up, you know, go you mighty shamrocks mm-hmm. as the grave was, sorry, as the coffin was taken from the church, those sort of things, are they part of it? That's all part of it, HG, and uh, you'd have a guard of honour, obviously, of mm-hmm. current first, or the, what was then current first grade players mm-hmm. forming a guard of honour. In jumpers and shorts. In jumpers and shorts, obviously, and the pallbearers. Uh, In jumpers and shorts. Well... They usually were captains or former captains, all in jumpers and shorts. Wow. Uh, They would uh, carry out the coffin through the Guard of Honour and then uh, you would drive in convoy, obviously, uh, to uh, the graveyard uh, where a couple of players would dig the hole then and there. A couple of the bigger players Mm -hmm. and fitter players uh, would dig the grave and uh, then 
the burial would take, take place, place. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the you know the club songs would be sung, mm-hmm. and uh, the results of Shamrock's games for the past twelve months read out. Uh, as the prayer, so to speak. Right. And would uh, highlights of the player's career, which may be some time ago, let's say... You didn't have to be a player. This was Ah, either a fan... right, Eddie. Yes, anyone who was a fan, yeah, or supporter... Right. ...could ask for a (laughs) Shamrock funeral. Right. Isn't that great? Mm. That's very, very progressive. Yes. Because this, uh, the uh, Brett Cashman of Lake Illawarra, Mm. as mentioned, the first rugby league fan to have an NRL-approved funeral, Mm -hmm. he was buried in the West... Tigers colours in 2006, age 40. Okay, well, okay, that's <coughs> the NRL. Well, see, the NRL is a recent creation. True. But I suggest there'd be many IRL uh, burials right, and New okay. South Wales RL yeah, burials right, for going, going back, back to, right to 1908. Yeah. yeah. Gee, wouldn't that make a faci- fascinating PhD study? Or a know, great documentary. A great documentary. Yeah. Yes. The mm. p- first person buried is a Glebe Fritterer. Yes. Or, you know, the Cherry Pickers or mm. something like that. That would be fantastic. Mm. Mm. The Australian story. What a great Australian story yes, that would be. I don't your know. Your Bell Name the, the first The first Bottolo buried. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yes. What a story. And maybe dig them up and see if they, they, in those days they wouldn't have had cardboard coffins. No. I don't think, uh, you know, Dick Pratt's mob would have cornered that no, particular they didn't, part they didn't, of it. So no, some no, of these coffins. Maybe timber. Timber. I know that would have rotted away, but some of the fittings may have. Oh, the brass fittings. The brass right. fittings. Yeah. And some of the. It may be a plaque. There would be. Which said, you know, here lies, I don't know, yeah. you know, Stumpy, yep. uh, Stumpy Holder. Yep. yep. Uh, and maybe the gimlets from the boots would still be there. They would. And the studs would they probably would. still be. They would. Still be there. Mm. Uh, look, uh, Father Dennis Cashman mm. chimed in. He said, uh, God bless him. He was a passionate Balmain supporter. This is of Brett. Mm. Uh, oddly enough, uh, Brett Cashman. It sounds as though his father, as in Dennis, you know, God bless him, was a passionate Balmain supporter. Mm. He knew he was going to die and he planned his own funeral. The casket looked absolutely fantastic. It was the biggest loss of our lives, but we knew the funeral was exactly what he wanted. Mm. Uh, The funeral arrangements were made by Barbara Cook. For him to know what the coffin would look like was wonderful. I always have a soft spot for the NRL for what they did. Do you see yeah. what I, do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I do. NRL media director John Brady said, uh, and Simon mm. Webster got this for the Herald, uh, the, for the Fairfax people. Mm. We allow it. Uh, Tim Lowe goes on co- on a case by case basis. Oh. You know, you might have to say, you know, get an endorsement from a local priest or you know, membership of the club. Yeah. You know, stats going well, you back. Don't want on people abusing having ex- access to these facilities if they're not genuine supporters. I, they, I, I couldn't have put it better because that just. Cheapens. Cheapens it for those who are buried and genuine supporters. Yeah, and rugby league as well. Mm. You know, it's mm. it's like, a you know, I mean, as I was saying today earlier, the roast mm. uh, with the return of Phil Gould. Yeah. You know, none of the antics cheapen rugby league. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> there are people for whom rugby league has genuinely been a part of their lives and this is part of their goodbye. Mm. Rather than, how about this for the NRL? And I, I, I'm just wondering if his eminence being here is knows about this. Rather than pay a licensing fee to the NRL, Life Art makes a donation to one of the NRL's charities. So they don't oh, charge. No. Isn't that great? It's not something we try and profit from. But the AFL won't give permission of its club colours to be used. We've had a couple of approaches from people wanting to use club colours and logos on their coffins. Mm. AFL media manager Patrick Keane said, it's not an area we want to head into. We're not comfortable doing it. Why couldn't they be well, comfortable? Passionate Sydney Swan supporter Rick Joyce of Wollongong again was amazed by the AFL's attitude. I'd love to be buried in a Swan's coffin. Mm. The person who's about to pass away doesn't care about trademarks. They're thinking about the club mm. they have a passion for. The fact that the AFL doesn't allow it makes me want to do it even more. Mm. Good I, on him. I'll tell you what, there'll be a lot of... Could they be sued it. if they did appropriate, say, you know, your Essendon coloured colours and and were buried in an Essendon coloured coffin? Well, would the could the club sue the deceased? Well, for what, part of the estate. What a fascinating question! You know, intellectual property is a very tricky area. Mm. I'd love to see the court case where it was argued that it, copyright was infringed. <laughs> exactly. He painted his coffin in black and red. Yes. I mean, it would be un, a very unkind judge who sided with the bombers well, in this But way. the law is the law. I know, right? I accept this. Now, I if the law... I mean, I mean, it might take a test case a like test that case. to draw attention to it. Mm. And it would be most unseemly and unsightly to see the, the coffin dug up... I know. And burnt. And burnt. With the body inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, the body taken out and put into another casket. Mm. I know. A well, new fool casket. Pinewood box. Mm. Oh, no. It and looked... the other box taken and seized by the law. I know. 
I know. To be used as evidence because it has to be presented in court. You, know, you might have to. You might have to do it without any media attention. No, oh, that would be in the problem. Camera, have it in, in camera. In camera, no photos taken, no nothing. Just there, people know he's in the bomber box. Mm. And uh, maybe if Kevin Sheedy could come and say a few words, or you know, say James Hurd or one of the mm. current players mm-hmm. could come along, may ease the way forward. Them mm. giving their blessing. Yes. Okay, I was only there in official club capacity, which I thought the club had obviously okayed. Yeah. Um, now, look, Lifeheart has made about a dozen coffins for fans of Sydney Roosters, South Sydney Rabbitohs, West Tigers, Parramatta Eels, with the Roosters the most popular club colours to be buried in. Isn't that interesting? The closest Lifeheart has uh, come to using an AFL logo was when uh, two girls lost their mum uh, and wanted to be buried in a Swans coffin. The AFL refused permission, but we made do with red and, red and white stripes on the co- coffin. We didn't want to say no to the kids. Which is fair enough. I think that's right. Mm, it's very insensitive on behalf of the uh, AFL. They don't though, look good. It? No. Can I ask you about Frasati? Right. Mm. Oh, Frasati. Yeah, we're, just we're... he's in a coffin. Mm. Would you like to see him, even at this late stage, maybe return to Rome yeah. in uh, a coffin bearing? Well, I don't colours? know. I, well, hang on. When did he die? Nineteen twenty-three or something. Twenty-five, I think. So he may well have been a fan. Of one of the rugby league he clubs. almost certainly would have been a fan. Well, almost of certainly may have been a green fruiter, say. Yes? Yeah, he could easily be a fruiterer. <laughs> well, I wouldn't... I'd have no objection. No objection at all to him being buried in the... I don't know what the fruiterer's colours well, were. I, for some reason, I thought it was some sort of purple slash mauvey sort of colour. Oh, was it? I might be wrong about oh, that. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that could be reason. right. That could be right. Mm. Uh, mm. Well, I, I would have no objection to that at all. I, I mean... Uh, I remember Reg Cassidy, um, oh, in, Reg Cassidy. In, uh, in Lithgow when he uh, died. Um, he was cremated, of course, HG, mm-hmm. uh, which was not a terribly popular thing at the time. But he wanted his ashes uh, a little bit peppered into the underpants of every shamrock in the first grade team uh, when they played... The following Saturday, so a bit could leak out on the ground yes. as they ran up and down. Yes, Whew, yes. So what they a terrific put a lot of thing. pressure on them, of course, because they felt. And the the priest, Father uh, might have been Father Kane, mm-hmm. uh, Smiley Kane, tremendous uh, Irish fellow. Uh, he came down with the urn and uh, peppered the um, the ashes into each of the players' underpants in situ as they stood there before pulling up their shorts. It was a lovely ceremony. Really, I mean, it was tasteful. It mightn't sound very tasteful, but it was. It, it was beautifully done. And it's the way he wanted a, to go. Then the team blessed, and the and the uh, you know the 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 uh, the um, final uh, moments of the requiem ritual done before the players ran out. Did they and win? They did win. Mm-hmm. Yes, they blitzed them. They uh, I think they were mm-hmm. playing Orange Sims. That mm-hmm. day. Orange Sims could easily be. And I think they won thirteen eleven. It was a great game. Get. And last chance on the life on Triple J. Uh, Roy, just going to that uh, story about the Aussie spirit. Uh, the softball team. This is a story of some intrigue, I realise, mm. because the, uh, just to background this, uh, softball, which has only been an Olympic sport, I think, since Atlanta, mm. is going to get dumped after the Beijing Olympics. Is it really? Yes, uh, Peter Munro got this for the Fairfax people again. Kylie Cronk mm. uh, has dreamed of playing softball for Australia since she took up T-ball in Toowoomba 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. On August the 12th at Beijing's Feng Tai Stadium, Cronk will be part of the team that takes on Japan before an already sold-out crowd. Mm. It will be an euphoric moment, but bittersweet Any one. Any relation to Cooper Cronk? Would be, yeah. yeah mm. Would be a sister or, yeah. you know, cousin maybe. Mm. Softball has been axed as Olympic sport. Uh, Kronk, t- uh, 24, is one of five Olympic debutants in the team, mm. has mixed emotions about a first appearance. It's in the back of my mind when the team was being selected that it p- could potentially be my one and only chance to participate in the Olympics. Mm. Uh, obviously, you know, the Olympic competition is being altered all the time, but p- uh, according to Peter Munro, power, politics and ego play a part in the selection and gland-handing helps too in the selection of sports. For instance, uh, beach volleyball successfully pushed before the 96 Atlanta Games. Mm. They uh, flew International Olympic Committee members uh, to first class, you know, first class to a tournament in Rio de Janeiro, putting them up in luxury hotels, sort of duchessing them to get their votes. There's always been mutterings about professional sports such as tennis being included and synchronised swimming, uh, where makeup and costumes are assessed along with athleticism, so they've got to look good. Mm. 
Softball is already fighting to be re-admitted under, uh, in a, with a campaign underway featuring IOC president, the former eminent Juan Antonio Samaranch. Oh, His Excellency. His Excellency. He's pro-softball. Mm, very pro-softball. Mm, mm. And a marketing office near the IOC Swiss headquarters in Lausanne. This seems... I mean, I know it's the modern world and I hold a very old-fashioned view, but this seems to me mm. a bit... Can I use the word rich? Mm. Uh, the decision to drop softball uh, came as an absolute shock, according to Softball Australia Vice President Daryl Clow. Mm. Uh, it defied logic when the IOC were talking about involving more women in the Olympics yeah. and they discarded women's team sport, which has been successful by nearly every category the IOC looked at for inside and outside the Olympic competition. Aussie spirit. Mm. Uh, can I, for the rest of the article, before we come to what should they be called, just use the term golden nuggets? To it because I think Aussie spirit is terribly weak and part of the problem. It seems to have no attitude, you know, it seems to be a bit borrowed because we've already got, as you point out, several spirits wandering around. Yeah, but these uh, other spirits have come in the wake. Oh, is that right? The, of, of the Aussie I spirit? Think the Aussie spirit, that, they're, they're the originals. They're the originals. They're the original spirits. Yeah. Right, I didn't know that. Okay. Okay, well, anyway... I, so the, if anyone deserves the term to well, keep the word spirit, spirit associated with their our, tilt... Yeah, our Australian softball, women's softball it's team. It's the women's softball team. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah, they've yeah. won medals in each of the sport's three Olympic appearances, mm. silver in Athens, bronze in 2004 in Sydney. Mm. Uh, they are, there are more than 35,000 registered softballers, mm -hmm. but interest has slid since the decision to dump the games in 2005. So no. people saw it as a way of getting there. Most observers say softball got caught in a bitter row between the IOC and baseball, which is also competing for the last time in Beijing. Baseball's IOC, going as well. Yes, IOC President Jacques Rog mm. said it lacked universal appeal. Despite having 126 national federations, more than baseball, hockey, uh, sailing, rowing, triathlon and modern pentathlon, this is softball. Mm. Softball also scored more hours on primetime television than fencing, wrestling, rowing, archery, canoeing and sailing. Mr. Clare, do you know what? I think I'm going to become very pro-softball. I am pro softball. I always you know, have been. You know, if they... I think it talks to kids more than, say, Greco-Roman does. Yeah, or fencing. Or fencing. Do you see kids at school? No, I'd ban fencing. Would you? I would. Do you see kids with broomsticks or... No. Uh, no. Emulating uh, their... Heroes. Heroes, no. Well, name me your top five Australian fences. Well, I, I couldn't. Can't. I couldn't. I can't. The only one I can think of is that bloke who got done for caffeine all those years ago. Alex Watson. I think he was a pentathlete and he had to fence. Mm. He's the only one. He was only a part-time fencer, though. I know, a fifth-time fencer. Yeah. <laughs> he was shooting and riding horses, etc., and running and swimming, etc. Mm. Clout mm. said softball was a casualty of the war between IOC and Major League Baseball about the league's refusal to make its top players available mid-season to the Olympics mm. or to adopt the WADA, a Dick Pound anti-doping code. Mm. We were perceived by some IOC members as having links with baseball, and baseball wasn't flavour of the month. Mm. Softball's demise can be traced back further to the end of His Excellency's reign in 2001. Mm. Under his helmanship, the games grew at a great rate with softball, tennis, table tennis, badminton, baseball, triathlon, taekwondo added to the roster. He went silly. Mm. Juan Antonio. The Olympics blew out to 10,651 athletes, 28 sports. Rog, His Excellency's successor, warned of the threat of gigantism uh, diluting the success of the Olympics, and in 2002, the 100 plus IOC agreed to cap future Summer Olympics at 28 sports with 10,500 athletes. Mm. Now, at 2005 meeting in Singapore, each sport was evaluated on criteria such as TV ratings, spectator attendance. Well, TV ratings, when was the last time you sat down and saw a good game of fencing on, mm. or a good world uh, mm. title of fencing on television, mm. or shooting for that matter? Then TV ratings, spectator attendance figures. Well, no one goes to the fencing or Greco-Roman wrestling. Fact, media interest, anti-doping policies, gender equality and global development. Mm. Members voted secretly on which sports should remain for 2012 London Games. Baseball and softball missed out. They missed out. Now, mm. <clears throat> our first lord of the Olympics, Kevin, mm -hmm. Kevin Gosper said it was nonsense not to have either sport at the Olympics. I was disappointed because softball is a very good female sport, very successful, mm. with a good following. Baseball... Well, wasn't that a bit of common sense from Kevin? It Refreshing is. common sense. Yeah, amazing. And down to earth. A moment of clarity. Not much fruit around it. He didn't gild the lily. He appealed for <laughs> calm and harmony. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, baseball wasn't established in sufficient countries across mm. the world and they were going to, through, I think, a difficult problem with their drug initiatives, dot, 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 softball got caught up in the way. 
New York sports business columnist uh, Evan Weiner said it's all about egos and greed and money and Major League Baseball felt they were bigger than the IC and so was punished because mm. the Americans won so many of softball tournaments. The IC said, well, we'll shut down softball as well. Australian IC member Philly Carls mm. suggests there was a silent push against softball and baseball from within the IOC's executive board. A silent push? Mm. A silent push. It wasn't said mm. softball. It wasn't said softball wasn't universal enough. It was said softball wasn't mm. universal enough. They didn't have enough countries playing it, but I could name a number of sports with the same problem. Mm. How modern pentathlon survived, I'll never know. Oh, well, there you go. Yes. I'll never know. Well, <clears throat> decision to drop softball and baseball left two free spots on the Olympics program, but the IOC decided not to add more sports, despite pushes from rugby, golf, squash, karate and roller sports. Mm -hmm. Then Aussie Spirits pitcher Melanie Roche... Missing out hurts. You love the sport and dedicate so much time to it and then the top television is taken away from you. Mm. It's a terrible story, isn't it? No, it's very disappointing. It's, in fact, it's shocking. Look, I couldn't give a bugger about baseball. No. I get rid of that. Mm. But softball is terrific. Mm. Mm. You know, the Aussie spirit have done so much for not only Australian softball, but world, world softball. softball. Well, let's not forget the medalists yeah. at the last three games. That's right. Atlanta, Sydney, and Athens. And Athens, yeah. I mean, they're world champ, world, world top well, of the tree. Well, they're, they're the cream of the crop, aren't they? Cream of the when crop. When it comes to world, bar, world softball, mm -hmm. they're right up there. Mm. I don't know what we do about this. You know, it's a protest. I mean, we've well, got to do some more duchessing, obviously. And 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 you know, when His Excellency, when you had a duchess here, mm -hmm. he was easy. You know, he, was, he could just give him yeah. a soccer ball, and he was happy with that. Mm -hmm. Well, Rog looks to be a much more difficult nut to crack. Uh, yeah, very old school, Rog. Mm. I, I we might have to present him with, like, the new Holden or something. A Malu Ute? Well, no, this new 427. Oh, 427. Yeah, the seven-cylinder beast. Seven-cylinder? Yeah, that the generals punch out. it out. Yeah. Look, can I just say that in... Uh, in, in It's quite a changing thing, the... Mm relationship of sports in the Olympics. For instance, hockey was added in 1908, mm -hmm. badminton and baseball in 1992, softball 1996, and then taekwondo and triathlon in Sydney, mm -hmm. and out uh, recently. I mean, they hardly throw anything out. Polo went in 36 because mm -hmm. well, Hitler hated it. What a shame, what a shame know, that was. I know, Hitler hated it. Mm -hmm. uh, rugby, of course, uh, went in uh, 24. I think the Americans won gold. Yeah, I think they did. And then Beijing, there was a big, they just included things, and now they've chucked out in 2008 softball and baseball. It makes no real sense, does it? makes no it? sense at all. If anything, I would like to see more sports included. Exactly. You know, I'd love to see a rugby league. Wouldn't that be as fantastic? As part of the Olympics. I think we could put that down as a goal. We could. We could, and it'd be yeah. a great opportunity for Samoa to get, say, silver. Oh, Samoa, is that how you sing the word? Or maybe t Tonga. Tonga, yeah, well, Tonga's got very lively side mm -hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, It'd be great for, for your island nations to get them involved in the Olympics. It's very difficult for the, for the island nations to compete in it. I mean, their softball's pretty ordinary. Yeah, but they provide the basis now that everybody's moving offshore mm. at the upper levels of rugby league and the it's been replaced by island nations. Mm -hmm. I think Tonga and Samoa would feel pretty good sides based on their representation in the New South... Well, in the Australian well, rugby league. Well, they would, and New Guinea... New Guinea? Well, New Guinea love their rugby league. I oh, know, they'd be there. They, they'd be there, pray proudly. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many Olympians, New Guinean Olympians are going this year to Beijing. No, what an interesting question. Mm. That is an interesting <laughs> question. Yeah, I, and what sports? There? I, I mean, are there any New the, Guinean fences? No, sh no, there are probably a couple of boxers. Yeah. Um, I don't think they've got a softball team. No. I'm pretty sure they haven't got a softball team. No. I don't but, know how the shooters are. They? No, the shooting, probably if it was bow and arrow, they might have a chance. Mm. And I'm not talking archery here. I'm talking old-fashioned bow and arrow. I yeah. think archery is part of the Olympics at the moment. Mm. Uh, yeah, and, of course, chopping isn't... Chopping. <laughs> no. <laughs> isn't, strictly it's, speaking, a sport, is it? No. No. <laughs> No, uh, no, that's right. But on the other hand, it mm. is uh, it is disappointing. And the Aussie spirit, I mean, maybe they need to merchandise somehow. Uh -huh. The name Aussie yes. spirit. You know, people bag the Matildas, mm -hmm. but they've done a lot. They they have. Have, uh, you well, know, the, the nude calendar. Nude calendar, yes. Well, perhaps the spirit, that's the direction they've got to go in. Much more commercial approach. They've yes. got the numbers there, obviously. Yeah, well, obviously, yes. But uh, maybe a um, couple of nude shots. Get get that. Uh, who, who's that? Uh, who's our famous nude artist? In who, trouble with the uh, trouble younger with the set. Ah, yeah. uh, Bill Henson. Bill Henson. Yeah. Well, he'd do some charming shots of, of the, the Aussie spirit. Mm, the Aussie he? spirit. He would. He'd he make would. them look like Titians or Raphaels. 
you know, he gets what that light to work. I know, and that might be just enough to sway your hard-headed Europeans. Well, I'm thinking if we, we got a series of Newton shots mm-hmm. uh, and sent them to Jacques Rogge. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, bliss and esso. Uh, with samples from Angus and Julia Stone, I Have the Storm, Flying Colours, the title of the... Sorry, the title of the CD, the title of the track, I Have the Storm, on the life on Triple J on World Youth Day 08. Now, on the other side of the coin, though, there's mm. very good news from no less an authority uh, than Ian Thorpe. Good. Uh, about our <clears throat> uh, swimming success. Does, does our swimming team days. have a name? Yes, they, I think they're called the Telstra Dolphins, but don't... Oh, the don't, Dolphins, are Yeah, they? I don't know. Mm. You know, that may have changed with Telstra. I'm not sure they were there in... You know, whether they're yeah, sponsoring them still yeah, right, or whether... okay. I think the Telstra Dolphins was their name. Mm-hmm. Now, in the uh, Murdoch Press this morning, mm-hmm. Ian Thorpe mm-hmm. predicts Australia's swimmer will win a similar number of medals in Beijing as they won in Athens, but warned against expectations of world record blitz. Mm. Now, that's Gee, the nub of the thing. They're refreshing thoughts, aren't they? They are. They are. Good now, news. Let me, get, let me get this right. We can expect a similar number of medals mm-hmm. as we did to the last Olympics, Athens. but mm. don't expect any world records. Yeah. Mm. He then goes on to say, of course, Thorpey, who broke 22 world records, said the mm. change due, the change to a morning format would detract mm. from consistently fast times. Right. I'm not sure exactly. Well, swimmers don't like swimming in the morning. It does appear that way. Wow. Or well, they don't put in or something like that. The body may not be warmed up enough. And remember, these finals are on in the morning mm. to help with American television. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. I, I understand just, uh, that. I know you did. I was just yeah. explaining this to the audience. Yes. In case they're scratching their heads. Why Wondering they why they would have it of a morning. Yeah. yeah 5.30 yeah. in the morning. But surely the athletes can organise their circadian rhythms so that they sleep, you know, in mid-afternoon and maybe get up at, oh, I don't know, midnight. <laughs> And then eight hours later, and then, dive in the pool and crack off a beauty. Yes. No, look, I think you're absolutely right. Mm. Uh, look, I think, uh, remember, of course, most training appears to be done in the morning, so they're not... Mm. Yeah, they're they're no st- look, they're not, they're, they're they're not no total slouches. strangers to, to water witness, of a morning. No, just <laughs> in the morning. Uh, <clears throat> he says um, the change may detract from consistently fast time. Of course it's going to have an effect. It's different to what people are used to. Mm. Everyone's committing under the same rules, so I think it will, allow, it, it will be fair... Mm. But I don't think it allows for absolutely best to come out. Now, Australians, if you need to be told, won 15 medals in Athens, seven gold, five silver and three bronze. In Sydney, they won five gold medals. Uh, Thorpe said Australia was, you know, able to match the hauls we've made. They were in good shape, he said. Mm -hmm. I think they have similar results to Sydney and Athens. Mm -hmm. Those two Olympics have been our most successful, but it's going to be tough. Competition around the world is incredible at the moment. No, it's going to be tough. Yeah, tough. Mm -hmm. And incredible competition. Mm -hmm. Now, uh... He says... Um, God, they're interesting thoughts. They are. They? And they, they take a bit of use to getting, you know, getting a bit your of water, your head yeah. around, yeah. Mm. He said, I'm hoping that uh, they won't see any drug problems. I don't think we'll see it at the Olympics. It oh, may, that's a relief that Ian thinks it, that. It may happen, mm. and it's something that, it, it, that does happen from time to time in our sport, but we hope the Olympics will be clean as it can be, and I think it will be. Oh, isn't that good to yeah. know? I was worried it might I was you worried know, go it silly, yeah. especially in Beijing. Mm. Because let's not forget, and I think we're talking about this off air. The um, their last go <clears throat> with uh, exotics was the fungus that grew on rabbit poo, mm. which seemed to produce incredible stamina when inve- ingested a volume. Mm-hmm. Uh, did appear. What to be- became of that technology? I don't know. Do we know. I don't know. I would have thought it'd be useful for the army or something like that. You know, or space. You know, for, for, for astronauts. Yeah. yeah. No, I. I've lost all track. Mm, I must Google mm, it up and mm. have a look when I get home tonight. Mm. Thorpe is heading to Beijing uh, by himself. Is he really? Mm, to experience his first games as a spectator. Mm. I'm looking forward to being in a fairly unique position. Mm-hmm. I suppose it would be unique. That I'm going to be able to watch those who I swim in, with and against. It's probably my last opportunity to see my peers compete in the sport, given possible retirements. So I'm looking forward to that, and I've never been to an Olympics where I haven't competed. So it'll be a new thing for me, hmm. particularly clean, keen to watch, obviously, Grant go round, oh, yeah, attempt to get the, yeah, at the 1500 freestyle. Uh-huh. I hope he goes out on a high. Oh, I don't well, think that's that good can, to know. I don't think that's right, though, is it? <laughs> Does high. he mean that? I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, any talk of Amanda Beard getting together no. with Amanda yes, Beard? Yes, no, there is certainly a hook-up with the Beard. Mm. Uh, a bit of Beard news in a minute. Mm-hmm. And let's not forget they were a big item throughout the a Athens. huge item in yeah. Athens. It was all the talk. You couldn't get away oh, from oh, them, could oh, no. you? Oh, no. Wherever you went, there they were, mm. clogging up the foyer. I uh, hope he goes down. I think he can... I, I think... 
Well, I think he can. I'd like to think he'll be able to. Half the team, uh, half of the team that uh, competes in Beijing will probably be half of the team for London. One of the things that we're very fortunate to have at the moment are some really good young swimmers mm-hmm. who'll be able to carry the the team to London. So that is, isn't terrific. that refreshing it thoughts? Is. Refreshing honesty there from Ian. Mm. 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 And and sort of you can see yeah, nothing earth, earth shattering. No, but uh, uh, but uh, sort of cor- steady. a cautionary tale. A in steady, a yeah, steady, steady issue. Yeah. <clears throat> now the good news is that Thorpe's girlfriend Amanda Beard, mm. uh, she's appeared in Playboy, the Athens yes. game, line up alongside Michael Phelps and Dana Torres in the star-studded American team. Remember, Dana, of course, is the forty-one-year-old who's competing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She started her Olympic career at fourteen at the Atlanta Games, mm-hmm. a world record holder. Two thousand and four experts uh, tipped her to miss out on Beijing, but she completed an unlikely comeback to finish second at the U.S. Trials in the two hundred metres breaststroke and qualify for a fourth Olympic team. Amazing. I suspect mm-hmm. because she knew Thorpe was going, mm-hmm. and it gives them a chance. Because obviously it's a long distance romance, but it gives them a chance for two weeks in a town mm-hmm. where they're. Probably they don't have the same profile as they might in, say, Australia or America to get together. That's true. So they can slip off to the Mongolian club, terrific yes, spot. Easily, and not be uh, not draw, draw too much attention to themselves. No, indeed, indeed. They might walk the wall together. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And what did you make of the mm. decision of the organisers to ban all signs, like if Thorpey went to the swimming and held up a sign... Saying, go to bed. Oh, well, I wasn't thinking anything as bold mm. as that. Mm. Will you marry me, Amanda... That'd be confiscated. Oh, really? Yeah, it's very strict. You're allowed apparently to wave. Well, aren't they more concerned about the view of the person sitting either beside or behind Ian? Should he? Oh, is that right? They're yes. very like that. They don't yes. want umbrellas up at no. events because people couldn't see and that's stuff it. like that. That's it. Right? Is that the reason? I think that's the reason. I understand yeah. flags. Some boxing kangaroo flags have been smuggled in via Tibet, mm-hmm. and hopefully we'll get away. Yeah. Look, I think if Ian wore a T-shirt, for example, that said "Amanda, will you marry me?" That's okay. That's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a trial Kennedy from Melbourne and Caladay Tours from a New Maniac Art on WYD World Youth Day 08. The station, the official station of WYD, Triple J. Now, Roy, uh, look, can I just ask, I've got a couple of questions here that's more specific. There seems to be a turmoil in rugby league at the moment, mm. uh, not only about the problems of what the game's worth, that was sparked by Russell Crowe's comments saying that uh, the pay TV deal in particular yeah, didn't well, value the game. Well, it's, I mean, talk about conflict of interest. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got News Limited charging News Limited for the game. I know. Well, obviously, they're not going to charge much, are they? <laughs> no, why would they? Why would they? He'd be, be an idiot. The, the head office in New York could shoot him. Yes. Now, uh, and yet, I think Roy Masters revealed out of the 40 top programs watching the last... All of them are rugby league. Yeah, all of them are rugby league. The top 40 shows. Yeah, a rugby league. A rugby league. Mm. People cannot get enough... The only reason people buy cable is to watch their rugby league. Indeed. Now, look, there seems to be an avalanche of interest in changing the rules again. Of rugby league? Of rugby league. Now, they're to do with the idea of... I think the two main ones are... <clears throat> Scoring a try off a bomb mm. to be considered less, All right. then the finessing of that, if the kick was made at the halfway point or inside your own half mm. and you scored a try off a bomb, I think that had altered the way the game was played quite mm. substantially, then it should be allowed four points or full points. All right, OK. Mm. I'm not sure quite why they've got a hump about scoring tries off bombs. Ooh, people love bombs. I oh, know, I love it too. I mean, that in the state of origin, the yes. last state of origin. Yeah. I mean, that is easily one of the best tries I've ever seen Indeed. scored ever. Indeed. Off a bomb was was one. Was fantastic. Oh, people love bombs. Yeah. People love bombs. Okay. Yeah. So that's one thing. Now the other thing seems to be, mm. if anything, we should encourage. The, I mean, if a try is scored from a bomb, it should be worth more than a try that's scored, from, you know, through the hands. What a lovely idea! Mm. What a lovely well, it's idea! It's going to send a message, isn't it? It certainly is. Get in the Get air. Get the kids bombing. <laughs> now, the other thing is, there seems to be a sort of interest in trying to equalise mm. if somebody gets their head taken off. Oh, yes. You know, that that's a sort of penalty, which is the same as, mm. you know, much lesser penalties like an incorrect play the ball. Oh, yes. I might have the wrong rule. No, no, there, no, but, no, 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 no. You know, so they get exactly the same and they're trying to grade that. So mm. as maybe an incorrect play the ball. Uh, might not, be you, worth 10 metres. Yeah, good on you. Yeah, something like Whereas that. Whereas taking someone's head off yeah, is, worth is worth a shot at goal. A shot at goal. From dead in front. Yeah. Okay. All right. I have no objection with that at all. No. You know. I think there's Mind a... you, I don't want to encourage sloppy play the balls. 
No. There's nothing more than no, a no, blight on the game than a sloppy play the ball. Or incorrect markers. That's a blight on oh. the game too now. Should be snapped Not squaring out. up. Yeah. Not squaring up. Mm. 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 Oh, you know, you would, uh, if a player didn't square up in his career... They should be sent off. Sent off and refused a rugby league coloured or <laughs> flavoured funeral. Well, that's right. If you've been pinged, say, more than 10 times in a 12-year rugby league career for incorrect play the ball, you are denied a rugby league funeral. Give me that again. <laughs> 10 or 12 times in incorrect play the ball, you're denied a rugby league funeral. Now, look, just on that... On that you yeah. know, you described the rugby league funeral of, you know, the Lithgow... Like, oh, yeah. Uh, Reg... Uh, yeah, Reg Cassidy. Reg Cassidy. Uh, you know, and St George. Mm. Can you see the players as mm. part of their payment mm. or as a top-up of their payment being funeral duties? Do you see what I mean? Oh, uh, as, you a, know, as a way of... Augmenting. Sweetening the pie. Sweetening the pie, that's right. Maybe mm. if you did ten funerals a year, mm. you'd be able to get an extra half a million on your contract not uh i'm not sure where the money had come from but it oh from... i thought i thought the angle you were going to take is that if say you are uh, in your contract say with with st george that you would get your payment plus two or three funerals thrown in for family members what <laughs> that is great but then funeral Which duties. Which you could trade off. Trade off. Trade yeah, off. Good. So if you're going to Canterbury, oh, yeah, all right, well, I've already got three funerals. How many are you offering? And <laughs> selling off your funerals on eBay. Yes, easily. Yeah. So the Morris twins yes. might put up their six. Their six, as a job absolutely. To a family yes. of, say, mad dragon supporters when one of them moves up and they break up that magical pairing who have an uncanny ability to know where each other is at all times. Exactly. Even in the grave. Exactly, exactly. So if you've got a large family who, with a number of people who are teetering... That could be a godsend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But my only counsel here, HG, is I don't want people just getting cheap St George funerals if they're not St George fans. And speculating that other people mm. might like a St George funeral. Do you know what I mean? Sitting on Oh, scalpers. Scalpers. <laughs> funeral scalpers. You'd have to outlaw them. Use them or lose them, I say. <laughs> now, coming to the matters here, mm. there's this... Most authoritative fan survey published in the Murdoch Press this week. Mm. It's got some terrific questions. Uh, <clears throat> should it players who are leaving the NRL for overseas teams at the end of the season be allowed to play representative games? No. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yes, no, don't, no. It's easy. Please rate the following statements in regard to NRL issues. A. Off field incidents involving NRL players are becoming a less of a problem. Agree, disagree, don't know. Yeah, I agree. Uh huh. They're becoming less of a less problem. of a problem. Mm-hmm. B. The time clock should be stopped between tries and conversion attempts. Now, uh, yes. this is a, yes. this is a thorn in the side, isn't mm. it? Because a lot of time can be lost, mm. especially if you've got a kicker. Oh, if it's a windy day and your windy ball gets day. blown off yeah. the the mound, <laughs> <laughs> then you can lose. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can. Look, I remember a test match between. Uh, well, it wasn't a test match when country rugby league played France mm-hmm. many years ago. Mm. Representative game. Representative game, yeah. Oh, in parks. Mm. That blowing. Twenty minutes was lost at kickoff. At kickoff, I know. <laughs> because the ball just kept blowing off. Mm. We but lost it, twenty minutes. I know. And then the one try that was scored, the and conversion took fifteen took, minutes exactly. Mm. Because every just a bit of blue tack would have solved the problem. I suppose. Well, it hadn't been invented. No, true. <laughs> The video referee should be involved in more refereeing decisions. Agree, disagree, don't know. No, oh, disagree. Yeah, disagree. They're, they're too involved as it is. Yeah. The majority of NRL players are more interested in money than club loyalty. True. Okay. Yeah, okay. The player transfer system is unfair to players and fans and needs to be overhauled. True. Yeah, how would we do it though? True. Well, I think yeah. if you play, if you've beca- if you're a junior at a club, mm. you're allowed to play for that club for the rest of your life, and it's not part of your. Well, ah, very good. You encourage loyalty then. Yeah. And the funeral package starts to be, make sense. It does. It does. You know, because it just doesn't look right. If, say, let's say Jamie Soward, for example, who was a... Who was a uh, lively young... A lively young rabbit. Yeah, now... Got axed, yeah. goes to St George. Oh, what do you do for Let's him? say he puts in 12 years at St George and then gets a, you know, as a lifeline at the end of his career. He gets to play for Manly for one season and gets a funeral thrown in. Well, well, you'd be mad not to take it. 
Well, of course he's got to he's got to take it. But there might be a lot of, lot of soured freaks who'd be pissed who'd be off. Boy, boy, got a funeral. <laughs> Because if he's because if he's, he should be buried a saint. There'd know. be a lot of manly oh. manly people turning up going, Boo! I know. Oh, I... You, son! Now look, he could get a special dispensation from St George to say he's prepared oh. to go over there, get the funeral as part of the deal, <laughs> but he's allowed to be buried in Saint's colours. Yeah, but they Do you might... know, special yeah. dispensation. There'd be a Who lot of... from, though? Yeah, I know. Who from? Yeah. Well, can I just say... You know, it's a manly package, yeah. part of the deal. Manly funeral. Yeah, take it or leave it. So you're St George Use Funeral Directors. They're not going to take that one. No. OK, can I just point out that somebody who hadn't thought about for a long time bobbed up out of the woodwork this year. We, in fact, probably a lot of people thought he was dead. I'm talking about Ken Arthurson. Oh, yeah. Now, Ken Arthurson bobbed up in reference to Beaver being the best since Bozo, and we call him Bozo because he's a clown. Mm. I don't. I don't. Well, Beaver's go. been with Manly all his life. I know. He would. Well, de- he would. He would definitely get a funeral. He'd definitely get a Manly funeral. But now. he's going to go to Bradford. Oh no! At the end of this season. Know, see. Let's say he plays a season at Bradford, and then you know, with heart, that- heart, you know, thumper, 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 stop, beep, flat line. Suddenly, Beaver. What's happened? Look, Beaver's gone quiet. Hello, he's dead. Eeyore, eeyore, eeyore. Bradford funerals. Yeah. On the line. On the line. Has he got? Is he covered? Would be the first question. Has he got one? You know, Bradford funeral in the contract. They go through and say, "No, we've got to ship the body back to Manly." Well, who's going to pick up exactly. that? Exactly. Exactly. Big problem. Now, another big problem was what I was trying to get to. Well, was, well, maybe that's part of your deal. Okay, you ah! accept. You you've got to make sure you die within, let's say, five hundred kilometres of the district. Of the contract. That you play in. Or you build it into the contract yeah. saying saying yeah. the funeral mm. involves or is part of the funeral is the repatriation of the stiff. Yes. Now, look, can I just point out why I raised this was uh, Ken Arthurson, you know, I've always mm. liked his work. Mm. Uh, he could become an independent mm. authority, like much like the Reserve Bank. You know oh. how the Reserve Bank splits off, well, transparent? It's a, well, it's at arm's length, isn't it? At arm's length. Mm. You know, funerals, Arco's funerals. <laughs> I oh. can't recall that. But he would adjudicate on them. On, say, the Soward case. Yeah, the Soward case. <laughs> <laughs> it, would be, it would be a tricky job and I wouldn't well, want it. I well, wouldn't want well, it. No, no, well, no, well, you wouldn't. Let's say, let's say Jamie Soward did have a bunny funeral contract. Mm-hmm. Is it transferable? No, that's what Can I mean. Can he take that to St George with him? You know, strutting around there in the red and white, confident. Knowing when he goes, he's going to be buried a bunny. Now, does that affect Team Harmony? It does. It does. The only thing I could say is I think what's transferable mm. is the original contract to be buried in club colours where where his last club... Oh, I see. Before. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. Mm. So this is a an NRL franchise, not, say, a bunny franchise uh, or a my George franchise. That's why I think- but you've got to have competition there, actually. You know, a lot of people might it might be the difference. You know, well, I, I don't know whether I'm going to go to Souths or Saints, but bloody hell, Saints put on a great funeral. And they gave me four extras, yeah. which I'm giving to the family because my dad and my mum are a bit wobbly and I'm not sure about my brother how long yes. they'll be around. Yes, yes, yes. See what I mean? Oh, God, that is a ticklish one, isn't You're it? You're going to have to have competition here because, uh, you know, Manly otherwise. might think, oh, well, okay, he can All go right. back there. We're going to so give you. So it can go back there to Dragon's We're going to give you 30 funerals. 30 manly funerals where first grade, first grade representatives will be there, at least 10. Yeah. Paul Bearers yeah. from Fleg. Oh, now hang on. I want first grade Paul Bearers. Yeah, fair oh, enough. Well, Sticking point. Okay, yep, good. Sticking point. Yeah. Well, you, you get coming? George Mimis or one of your. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Silver Peters. You know, like in the coffin out. Clumpity clump, clumpity clump. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's mm. fraught with problems. Well, it is, it is, it is. But it's a good idea. You know, I oh, mean, well, we've got to think like I this I have often maintained, HG, that if, uh, you know, if if buddy, uh, if your Gaznia kitty had been, you know, promised a proper funeral, oh, exactly. he wouldn't have gone to France. <laughs> la, la. Yes, Young Knives, Young Knives, Rue the Days from a CD called Superabundance. And you heard it on the life on Triple J. Might be time for a fat. And now on this sporting life, 
It's time for the first fat of the afternoon. The fat is as Australian as Barbara Streisand, as new as cats, as wild as Johnny Oakey. What are Australians fighting for this week? HG? Ah, well, a terrific prize, as you'd expect, being World Youth Day 08. Sadly, no <clears throat> funerals or um, other knickknacks in rugby league colours available, but there is a copy of the latest J-Mag. This is described as the fattest J-Mag ever, which is great news, plus a bunch of CDs. DJ Brasco, Fill the Gap, a CD. Lowdown, Antidote, The Impossible Odds, and Jane Badler with, uh, with Sir, the one they all want, The Devil Has My Double and Mrs Henry Terminal Party. So it's a great lineup of CDs and a little bit of a read in the form of the JMAG for women only who can answer the following question. Right. Yes, the question is as follows. Uh, what was the final score when the Shamrocks played the Orange Sims as part of Reg Cassidy's funeral? You may recall they uh, peppered their underpants with his, uh, with his ashes. Now, what was the final score when the Shamrocks played the Orange Sims as part of Reg Cassidy's funeral? That number is one three hundred oh triple five three six. Women only. Phone now. Uh, it's the Hilltop Hoods and the Nosebleed section, the title of the track from the CD, The Calling. Hilltop Hoods, of course, uh, in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. The home of hip-hop. Who are we talking to, Roy? Yes, we're joined by Anne, who's joining us from Nambucca Heads in New South Wales. How are you there, Anne? I'm good, thanks. Now, Anne, are you on your way home to Nambucca Heads or are you yeah. heading out of the Heads? No, I'm home on the way home from Byron. Have you been there for some sort of Blues and Roots festival? Or? No, no, I went for my girlfriend's 50th. How oh. was that? It was very good. Did you have any music, live music, as part of the 50th? No, 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 just um, uh, computer CD music and a yes. dinner party. And was it at somebody's home or a, or a function centre of some sort? No, just at her home. At her home. And how many people lobbed in and rolled up, Anne? Oh, maybe 45. Wow. Oh, that's quite cool. a party. Was there a keg, a couple of kegs no, put on? No, 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 just a dinner party. And had you seen, uh, were there a lot of people there that you hadn't seen for ages is really a good way to put it. Oh, yes. Good. Yes. Good. And were there any arguments? Did it get... No, 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 no arguments. And speeches? Oh, yes, speeches. Right. Right, That's and what was the tenor of the speeches? That uh, most people were surprised that uh, the uh, the happy birthday person was still alive, or no, 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 they were quite nice. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. And what was the name of the person who was celebrating their fiftieth? Um, Janelle. Janelle. Yeah. And is Janelle happy living at? Does Janelle live there for at Byron Bay? Yeah, no, she lives there. Yeah. Right, and she's happy enough, is she? She's not oh, yes. disappointed with her life? <laughs> no, no, disappointed with her life, no. N- not run over by tourists every other weekend? Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, very good, very good. Now, look, we've been asking people all this year um, whether they have any collectibles, uh, memorabilia, sporting memorabilia. Mm. Have you got anything at your place, Anne? Maybe um, a souvenir yeah. of, uh, I think it's the Red Devils, the rugby league team in Byron Bay. Mm. Maybe a, a footy jumper Ooh. or something like that? No, uh, no footy jumpers. No spoons, no commemorative trophies of any sort? No, I think I've only got a rugby league um, jersey that my son owns. Right. For his team or <clears throat> generally? Yeah, no, it was um, Newcastle Knights. Oh, wow, yeah. that's got to be worth something if it's an old... <laughs> no, it's not that old. Mm, well, it'll age, though. <laughs> it'll increase in value. It's not going to go backwards. Not so a Newcastle think... Knights, Guernsey. So you think I should keep hold of it? I would. Yeah. I'd have it framed. Right. Okay. <laughs> now, and when you get home tonight, what will uh, what will the um, what would I call it? You know, be on the dinner menu. Maybe that's the best way to put it. Oh, what tonight, you... nothing much. I don't think. Right. You but, might pick um, up a uh, pick up some fish and chips on your way home. Oh no, maybe a stir fry or something. Oh, oh, stir fry. Yes, yeah, yes, yes that's idea. good. <laughs> and then uh, is a uh, you know the rugby league member of the family who owns the Knights jumper is it back to school for him tomorrow? No, no, he's um, down at the snow. Oh, right. Oh. He's, he's lucky. Uh, he's snowboard instructing. Oh, wow. oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. But won't the kids soon be going back? Oh, yeah, of course you'd have other customers well, coming he, in. by the sounds of things, he's left school yeah, and no, become an yeah. instructor. Yeah. 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 No, I've only got one that goes back to school on Tuesday. Oh, on Tuesday. Right. right. And uh, he or she interested in rugby league? No, she's a girl. No, no, no. She doesn't like rugby league at all. Doesn't she? Right. What, what about softball? Um, do you like softball? She plays t-ball. T-ball, that's T-ball. good. T-ball, yeah. oh, well. Now, we, was uh, the family disappointed that uh, you're... No, y- I'm, 
I'm disappointed about the softball because I yeah. used to play softball. Yeah, well, well we a... love softball. There's been yes, Australian softball has stood up. That's right. Well, and we could talk about this outrage exactly for a long time. But let Roy shout out the question, have a swing at it. Now, Anne, what was the final score when the Shamrocks played the Orange Sims as part of, um, uh, of uh, Reg Cassidy's funeral? 13-11. Uh, yes. Absolutely right, Anne. The J-Mag and the uh, five CDs will get them in the mail to you and they'll be there before the end of the first school week as it returns from its winter uh, holidays. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much for being part thanks. of this sporting life. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye. 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 Oh, yes, three on the trot. It was the shake-up finishing up there, and I might have started off with the Mystery Jets and British India. They were the three. <laughs> shake-up, Mystery Jets. We started off with Mystery Jets, uh, then British India and the shake-up, and you heard them all on uh, the WYD08 Network, Triple J. This sporting life takes this opportunity to acknowledge all those Australians who were told to get stuffed by Kerry Packer. Recent evidence suggests the following should be acknowledged. Neville Ran, Ita Buttrose, Mr Sparkle Carl Scully, Boxhead Lecky and Sky, Peter Reef, the very Reverend Dr Gordon Moyes, The Body, Elle McPherson, Tracy Grimshaw, The Dangerous Floater, Mark Philippousis, His Royal Highness, Prince Philip, Supermodel, Kate Moss, Maccabi Diva, Tennis Great, Pancho Gonzalez, Wendell Saylor, Tim Costello, and Singing Sensation, Taman Sursok. These great Australians are now all proud recipients of the Rene Rivkin Medal. And remember, all Rivkin medalists get a 3.5% discount at all home and away AFL football fixtures. Australians, if you feel you've been overlooked for this prestigious bauble and have felt the abrasive side of Kerry's tongue in the past, then get in touch with the Ruskin Committee, chaired by Sir Michael Jeffrey, VC. At New Old Melbourne Town, every second week is Bush Week. Come on out and hear Mally Mal's bicycle band thumping out cobbler classics like Diamond Peg. I was a salty bum boat boy. And their latest hit, Sad Med. See young George Gearside, the old smithy make a pound of nails in the twinkling of an eye, using the family forge that has not been turned off in 56 years. Eat fresh damper pulled from hot coals with lashings of homemade jam and wash it down with genuine billy tea that has been swung three times round Grandad Desi's head. Dance yourself senseless when legendary country caller Stumpy McGuinness, the man with the loose toe, barks the call for the butter beef jerky jig. That is all in Bush Week, every second week at New Old Melbourne Town, Bexley. It's better than the real thing. Homeless Australians, is the housing crisis getting you down? Are mortgage payments busting the budget? Are your kitties going without? Well, why not talk to Roy and HG, the space-saving solutions experts? The space specialists can show you how to cram 12 457 visa holders, each paying 250 per week into a spare room, and suddenly your mortgage crisis is history. How do Roy and HG do it? With the space-saving solution, the Miracle Bunk Bed Kitchen. The bunk bed kitchens arrive in a flat pack and can be operational in 45 minutes with 457 visa holders turning up on your doorstep as soon as the ship finishes at 6pm. But remember, these blokes are not here to sleep. Uh, Roy, just going back to some of these issues that are besetting the game of rugby league before I come to some general mm. comments. I think we got to the point where the majority of NRL players are more interested in money than club loyalty. Mm. Now, the player transfer system is unfair to players. Fans needs to be overhauled. Mm. Is it time for the salary cap to be raised? Yes, it is. I'd li- I'd li- I would have an unlimited salary cap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously there'd be winners and losers, but the winners, bloody hell, you'd get a good team. Get a team, team wouldn't you? Mm. Mm. Now, just uh, for those, uh, if I can put that on pause there for a minute, mm. the people following the AFL, uh, Carlton have lost to the Sydney Swans by two points. Mm. 18, 11, 119, 18, 13, 121. A very close game. That would have to be one of the closest <clears throat> games between those two clubs in oh, many years. Indeed. I think they uh, Sydney have had the wood on Carlton for many years. It mm. might have lost 10, 10 in a row Wow! by wild margins. But uh, that uh, must have been a great game of football. Mm. Uh, probably time to beat the Blues there. Now... Should uh, here's some in, more interesting question: Should there be an NRL team on the New South Wales Central Coast? 
Well, obviously, Graham yes, Park. Graham Park. Mm. Should South Sydney continue to call ANZ Stadium home? Well, no, I think Redfern Graham Oval Park. or Graham or Park. Graham Park should That'd be, be your choices. Mm. Uh, so they're just some of the questions that people will be answering this week. Now, right. Well, that's an important questionnaire, isn't it? it that's is. going to really that'll crystallise a lot of a public opinion, isn't it? it in, indeed, it is. And I mean, I've left off heaps of questions. Of course, you have. You yes, know, you like, can't cover everything. It's, it's a very comprehensive. Player. There, there appear to be four or five thousand questions right. there. That's going to take the best part of a week for families, Australian working families. Family. Oh yeah. To get that done, I know. Well, it's volunteerism, isn't it? They're not being paid to answer they're those not. questions, are no, they? No. no, they're not. Now, <clears throat> uh, according to the uh, Murdoch Press, mm. I think it might be yesterday, historic hybrid rugby league union match between the Manly Seagulls and the Manly Marlins mm. could be a reality next year with both hot clubs holding a preliminary discussions. Isn't that exciting? This is Manly, Marlins, yeah, the Marlins v, v, Seagulls. V, v, v the Seagulls. <clears throat> right. Uh, the Saturday Telegraph can reveal the game could be played at Fortress Brookie mm. under a set of combined rules drawn up by officials from both codes. This is like going right back to the beginning, Roy. Mm. Again, mm. in the 101st year of rugby league. Mm. It can't, if it comes to fruition... Gee, Fortress Brookie would be an interesting ground on which to play AFL. It's not a very big ground. No, but there's no suggestion of AFL and the rugby league getting together. No. This is the rugby union and the rugby league getting together. Oh, I see. I might have mi- misled yes, you. Yes, yes. Well, I thought that is a very exciting I, I, contract. <laughs> more exciting than this yes. proposition. Yeah. Mm. Now, well, that what a great idea with your mm. with your Western spirit, mm. say playing against the Bulldogs. Well, <laughs> Canterbury Bulldogs. That'd be great. Well, they've probably got an oval that that'd be able to be played mm-hmm. on. Now, this if uh, it comes to fruition, the match could pit Wallabies George Smith. And Cliff Falau against Manly forwards Anthony Watmo, oh. Brent Kite and Josh Perry. God, oh. wouldn't you travel to see well, yeah, that? Would, yeah, you'd, you'd tra- travel to the ends of the... I mean, people come mm. here for p- pilgrims. There'd be pilgrims coming from all around the world to, to see, see that. that. Marlins coach Phil Blake, a former rugby league star, that's oh, Phil Blake, you know, Souths, Manly, yeah. everywhere. Mm. He had a beer commercial, I think, one stage. Oh, it was just sure fantastic. Done, yeah. mm. uh, so spoken to Desi Hasler about it. Mm-hmm. We could play it at the end of the cricket season when people are getting a little tired of cricket. It, uh, I'm not sure that that's true, but be that as it may, it's anticipated the match would attract interest from television stations well, and would. some of the profits, some of the millions in profits, going to charity. Oh, lovely. Mm. Uh, well, haven't they thought now, now, well, that's pretty top level if uh, Blake's actually talking, talking to, to, Hasler. to Hasler about it. I mean, it doesn't get any higher level than that, does it? I don't think so. We're in your Marlin Seagull camps. Mm. Look, uh, can you see that as being a win oh, for both Oh, I coats? certainly can. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, for how long have we been, we've been crying out for a Wallabies v Kangaroos match? I know, I know. Won't you know, be played fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. I think they're talking about modifying the rules, but how would you move them back towards each other? You wouldn't bother. No, just, I'd just half, have a 50, one half, half of one, half, half of the, the other. other. Mm. Mm. That'd be fantastic. It would. It would. Uh, mm, the real problem is is uh, stopping and restarting all the time is the mm. real nub, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the well, rest of it. Refereeing. There's the issue. Refereeing. Yeah. Who would referee it? <laughs> would you give that? Uh, uh, well, you'd have to have an international referee, yeah. neutral referee, mm-hmm. probably from New Zealand, uh, to referee the first half of rugby union, and then get someone from the Premier League in England, England to referee the rugby league. Hey. You wouldn't think Shane Hayne could do it. Well, Shane Hayne could certainly do the, the rugby, rugby league, league half. Yeah, true. Yeah. Mm. And maybe they could get that South African bloke who's got yes. a stickler for the rules. Yeah, well, you'd want a stickler. <laughs> Somebody would come to blow. <laughs> now, look, back to the Olympics briefly, and little Leighton Hewitt is hell-bent mm. on leading Australia's Olympic Games tennis charge despite his uh, obviously plunge in the rankings. Mm-hmm. Now... It's a bit tricky here Do because... Do we know what's wrong with his hip? I mean, the no, hip's been going I, on for a long time. I know, and it? you pointed out that we can fix up... Uh, I forget who you always point to, you know, uh, well, Dell's head. Dell's head. Overnight. That was done in an hour. I know. And that yet we titanium can't... plate was in in an hour. I know, and we can't get... A bit of titanium to fit his hip. No. And look, you know, the other week we broke a story concerning the role of calves' blood. Mm. in the uh, problem, I think it might be the hamstring area or the mm. groin strains mm-hmm. of uh, AFL and rugby league players. And I think Des Hasler, again, was getting the boys on the juice mm-hmm. uh, to fix up their ailments. And they've got a few injury problems after the match against Parramatta the other night. Well, they certainly do, yeah. Now, why couldn't Leighton get on the on the gear? Uh, well, because... uh, well why, why not a pincer movement here, get the titanium in and top it up with calves' blood? 
Surely that can be well, done. See, look, this is the problem here. Hewitt withdrew Friday from the Rogers Cup Masters Series. Big blow to them. They would have been counting <sighs> on Hewitt. That Rogers Cup's been struggling for years. I know. It? It's in Canada from Monday because of the recurring hip. Mm. Growing likelihood the former world number one will pull out of the Western and Southern Financial Group Masters in Cincinnati. Oh, That's a no. blow there. I mean, the Western Group... Uh, the oh. Western Southern Financial Group, they're beset by subprime problems they as well. Are. They are. They need every all hands to the wheel. It's a double blow. Mm. Uh, there's a chance Hewitt's ranking could plummet to 60th in the world. God, we're talking Hensby territory, aren't I we? I know. We're talking forgotten man of Australian yes, tennis. Yes, we are. And he's our number one. Hopman Cup. Uh, and remember, you can ha- thank Casey Delacqua and all she's done this year for Australian tennis. Yeah, yeah. Look, how solid is the ink that's been written in? Because wow. Casey mightn't want to play with hip. Hippy little. Hippy little. <laughs> she Look, might prefer, I don't know, Big Gooch. <laughs> now, Hewitt's manager, David Drysdale. God, can he manage? He can. Yesterday, Claire Hewitt was on course for China after two weeks of intensive treatment. Mm. Leighton is hell bent on playing the Australia uh, at the Olympic. Uh, he's got a lot of treatment and he needs a lot of rest. We n- won't know exactly what he can play before the Olympics in the US Open next month until he gets back on the court and tests his hip. It's understood Hewitt has been consulting one of Australia's foremost hip experts. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, but don't About they need to get time. a on? I mean, he's been well, doing it all he, himself. Well, when did he approach the... Who is our Merv Cross of oh, hips? hips? I don't know. But you see that, uh, I want to say, is uh, Wilhelm Wolfarth. The German guy, mm. I think we should be talking to him about Leighton's hip, because mm. he seems he fixed up the Geelong player Max Rook. Did he have I, hip problems? I don't think so, but no, he may okay. have. Well, he might be able to apply the same principles. Exactly, <laughs> the same principles of the knee to the hip. Mm. Uh, well, Doctor Death's coming back, isn't he? Isn't yeah, he? he is. He's very hippy. Well, I thought hips was one of the areas where he was fairly okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it was more well, like be a goodwill gesture too. Wouldn't oh, it? I mean, imagine fantastic. being able to bring that in court. You know, day I one. Fixed. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, my, our first exhibit is Leighton Hewitt. Leighton, come on in with a gold medal. With a gold, gold medal. With a gold medal. Yeah. Now, Mr. Hewitt, you have with you a gold medal. When mm. did you get that gold medal? Oh, Beijing. And what period of time would this be, Mr. Hewitt? I oh, got it last week. <laughs> <laughs> and you were in some trouble, as I understand it. Couldn't walk. Couldn't walk, leading into the match, until you saw... Dr. Death. What exactly did Dr. Death Calves, do Calves, blood and titanium. <laughs> and did you feel better after this? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. It's just been unreal. <laughs> Ting Tings and Fruit Machine. We started nothing. We started nothing. The Ting Tings from the UK. Now... <clears throat> I uh, am interested in the severity of this problem of players like Fire Up Bitch mm. pissing off overseas to take the big money in mm. rugby union. Mm. Uh, mm. Look, the game's best thinker, Sticky, mm-hmm. uh, the angry ant, Sticky Stewart, it's about every, he writes in a column today that he would think a two year ban for every defector. All right. A two-year ban for every defector. So the Gaz can't come back here and play for two years. Well, he doesn't want to. He's getting paid a hell of a, a lot of play over there, isn't he? He won't get paid anything like it. It's about time everyone associated with rugby league decides if they care about the overseas exodus of NRL players. Mm-hmm. If we are happy to let the quality of our football and the quality of our depth fall away, then fine, let's just keep rolling on the way we are. But if the fact that more than 100 former NRL players will next year be playing overseas is a worry, then we have to make some hard decisions now. Let's get tough and set some rules to ensure that our younger players think twice about leaving the game that has spent so much time on, and money in their development. Mm. If they leave NRL for another club or code overseas, uh, overseas ban them for, from rejoining our competition for two years. So that means if they join... Uh, rugby union or in, even the English Super League, they're banned from returning to the NRL. I can hear the cries of hypocrite because Trent Barrett, mm. former Dragon, will return from the UK next year to play for the Sharks. Mm. But those are the rules that are currently in place, so we have to play. As a coach, I happily obey by the rules, I suggest, if it were for the greater good of the game. Now, obviously at the moment, the, all the talks about Craig Gower... Mm who went from Penrith Panthers to play in France. Mm-hmm. Luke Rooney's now following him, along with Mark Gasnier. 
Mm. Now, what happens, of course, is there's probably a lot of lesser players who do this all the time and no one particularly notices. It's only when marquee players go that Mm. it seems to bother people. I mean, Gower, uh, it seemed like a fairly good idea that he get out of the uh, fishbowl of where people would look at him taking a dump wherever they could and uh, take photographs of him in every nightclub that he appeared in. Um, Which is why Gasney is going, isn't it? Fish it bowl. is. Fishbowl. Yeah. yeah. And that glass house of his that isn't yeah. going so well. Mm. Uh, can I ask whether this helps anything? No, it doesn't. No, you know? it doesn't because, uh, I, I mean, let's say let's say uh, uh, Shimmy Woosh is going to whatever it is uh, for... He'll be a minimum of two years, won't he? Yeah. Easily. Yeah, he's a minimum of two years. He's only going to learn the game after the first 12 months and then... Give him a good cash season. It, give him a good season in the second game. What would be to stop him under Sticky's rules, saying, oh, all right, I'm going off to Perpignan now to play rugby union, uh, and apply immediately to come back to rugby league? And Sticky says, oh, no, you're banned for two years. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, you got me there, Stick. OK, see you in two years. No, see, it doesn't make sense, does it? No. Life ban. Yes, very good. Once Life they're gone, ban. Once they're gone, they're gone. Once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. Now, look, I'll tell you who's common. And good riddance to them. Yeah. Good riddance Stamped good riddance. Yeah, very good. I think Frog to... marched out of the country too yeah. with some ceremony at, say, at Mascot Airport or wherever the airport they're leaving for. With from. the page of their passport with their photo on ripped, ripped out. Ripped out and burnt. In front of them. In front of them. And can I also point out. And their families are punished in some way or other. Right. I hadn't thought of that. Mm. What, waterboarding? <laughs> <laughs> can I. Can I, I yeah. ask... Well, we're not after truth from them. Well, of um, course, I don't think waterboarding helps with the truth. No, it? no, well, you're right there. No, you're can well, I, why not a bit of bloody waterboarding? Can I ask? I thought Gordon Tallis made a very good point. I think he came mm. out in this paper and said simply au revoir, mm. meaning that the game goes on, there's mm. other fish to fry. i tell you whose thoughts I'd like to get, though. Ian uh, Thorpe's? Not bad, not bad, not a million miles from Ian <laughs> Thorpe. There'd be common sense coming from Ian with this Who's one. Who's the other common sense merchant that we have in the, writing in the papers here Del, regularly? Dell. Thanks, mm. a person who's known both sides of the street. Mm. and can see... Well, I'd like uh, Dell to set up some sort of tentative exploratory committee. A committee? Yeah, to look into it. The two-year ban or the yeah. life ban? well, what sort punishments. of punishments? Mm. Punishments. Mm. Carrots and sticks <laughs> when it comes to... <laughs> Would that be what the committee's called? Mm. The carrot and stick committee? Mm. Mm. Chaired with, by with regard to Wendell's rugby time. league traitors, yeah, because that's what they are. The traitors, yeah, they are traitors. Tra- traitors. Now look, a shimmy wush is a traitor, a complete traitor, a traitor who won't get a funeral. <laughs> that's off the table, indeed. That yeah, is right off coming. the table. I oh, know yeah. he can bury himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, born ruffians from Toronto, Canada. And a song called Hummingbird, and their CD is called Guess What? Red, Yellow, Blue. Mm. Now, look, I mentioned that battle in the western suburbs of uh, Sydney going on at the moment Mm -hmm. between the AFL and the Rugby League. Mm -hmm. And you would think, in a spirit of rapprochement, that a combined rules game of that would be of interest, wouldn't it? I'm not sure exactly how you'd do it. You'd have to have a committee, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, set up Mm -hmm. uh, with somebody to to explore the possibilities. Now, Steve Mortimer in the Herald today mm. has made an impassioned plea for the man who set up AFL's independent commission to be invited to do the same thing for the NRL. An independent commission. Mm. That's what Steve Mortimer's calling He's for. calling for. An independent commission. Mm. What a good idea. Mm. In terms of reference? Not bad. Mm. The renewed push for rugby league to streamline its archaic governing body after the appointment of a, of a game structure committee comprising of NRL bosses, wait for it, Dennis Fitzgerald from mm-hmm. Parramatta, Titan Michael Seal, mm-hmm. Steve Baraston, mm-hmm. Tony Zappier, Bruno Cullen might be a Bronco, Brian Waldron and Shane Richardson. Mm. The Sun-Herald, and Adrian Prezenko who got this, has obtained a copy of a two-page letter sent by Mortimer to committee members imploring them to invite David Crawford to be consulted about the establishing of a new independent governing body for rugby league. Mm-hmm. Mortimer wrote that the present structure doesn't stand up at all right. and it is not at all appropriate where the game is owned 50% by the publishing company News Limited, who undoubtedly have their own agenda in business, mm-hmm. but have brought much-needed business acumen to the administration operations, and the other 50% is owned by the ARL. So, obviously, for those who are unfamiliar with it, News Limit has owned uh, part of the rugby league for some years now. Mm-hmm. In, since for about 10 years, it would, yeah, it would be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, owned by the ARL. 
and where there have been some good people serving our game in the past, but the majority of stakeholders in this organisation for many, many years have shown signs of self-indulgence and self-interest in keeping their blazers, their beers and their pies and their funerals and seemingly showed no initiative at all in preparing and planning for the future of the game. You see, you know, they just sit around and think, oh, well, it's all going okay. We're getting paid, we're getting mm. acquitted, we've got a funeral, we're looked after, the health plan, all that sort of stuff. Mm. Short term, isn't it? Short term. Mm. Mortimer, who first went public with his concerns a year ago... That's right, he did too. ...is pushing for a commission... Oh, might have been on this show. Might have been, yeah, he did. Uh, ...for a commission to be established by 2010. A commission by 2010 is too late. Mm, the AFL late. will have taken Western Sydney by then. I know. He fears that any delay could give, you know, obviously a head start to the AFL. Mm. For every day that something isn't done, there's more kids kicking a Sharon instead of a Steeden. God, that's a scary thought, it isn't is. it? It is. More kids kicking a Sharon instead of a Steeden. Yeah. As a biz- business or, per- or even a soccer ball. Well, Don't forget. That's even worse. Yeah, soccer ball. Or a Gilbert. Oh, Lord, don't get me started now. As a business person, I can see the model of the AFL employing is growing the game and we need to address this. Before I pass this earth in a bulldog's coffin, and hopefully it will be a long time before I go, I'd like to see Rugby League on the same dais as AFL, maybe even higher. Oh, now he's talking. Oh, now you're talking. (laughs) On the top step of the podium. Mm. Yeah, well. Well, I'd get... Well, okay, yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe even higher. I'd love to see it dominate the dominant Australian code. I'm not trying to be a maverick. I think it's great we've got this com- committee, but I'm, a, I'm like a little bulldog, a f- little foxy terrier nipping at the heels. I want to see it happen soon. And so when I was writing to uh, the committee, Mortimer also penned a letter to Crawford, who is the director of National Foods and former chairman of KPMG, mm. as part of Crawford's response. Now, remember that bloke we roped in to help out Souths a few weeks ago from the Macquarie Bank? Mm. I think his name was Moss. Mm. He might be a, he might be a, a bloke who could starter. pull a boot on in this. Mm. Anyway, yeah, part of Crawford's response reads, read, mm. as you're aware, I'm firmly of the view that if the structure and governance of sport is appropriate, success will naturally follow. That's the Crawford view, and I'm sure it would be the Moss view as well. Mm. Mm. Mortimer named a list of potential board members. This is of this independent committee. Here they come. Mm. Obviously, Frosty LaHood, mm. uh, CEO Jeff Dixon, uh, the nudist Jeff Gerrard, NRL board member Katie Page, former Broncos forward Shane Webke, mm. Australian Olympic Committee Chairman John Coates, mm-hmm. former NAB boss Frank uh, Sisuto. Oh, yes. A, yeah. Suncorp mm. Chief Executive John uh, Mulcahy, mm-hmm. and retirement, retirement guru. Why would you want a retirement? Oh, sorry, recruitment guru. Recruitment, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Mm. Julia Moss. <coughs> he <laughs> said countless others had the business acumen to make the difference, but whoever was appointed, had to be truly independent and passionate about rugby league and obviously be prepared to be buried you know, mm. in their yeah, in the right club way, colours. Yeah. Mm. Things aren't being done in the professional manner while we have two divorced parents. Mm. Uh, the 52-year-old said some of the top priorities, the newly formed commission, and this, this is right against what we talked about before. You know, we were talking about the rule changes, mm. um, obviously, you know, too many bombs. Mm. Some people feel mm. try, dot, dot, dot. Mm. Okay, this, this, is the, this is the Mortimer view. Forget all that rubbish about the game. Maximising the value of the next television deal. Yes, that's important. The reintroduction and relocation of team... Oh, the reintroduction or relocation, what the Titans are going to go to, wait for it, Perth, mm. and the Cowboys are going to Adelaide to make rugby league a truly national game. Oh, wow, that's interesting. I thought he, for a start he was going to put, bring the Titans to Redfern. That's not bad. I don't mind that. I think if you said to me that Redfern is big enough for two rugby league clubs, I'd say Yes. Uh, exploring the revenue streams for struggling clubs after years of depending on poker streams. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Revenue streams. Mm. Mm. Like lucky envelopes on street corners well, and American drives. Well, They're good ideas. Yeah, well, they are. What's wrong with the National Lottery? It built the Opera House. A National Lottery. Mm. That's a very good idea. Uh, look, can I say that a few weeks ago, on your behalf, I wrote a letter to the RTA mm-hmm. suggesting they have a special lane mm-hmm. that allows you to speed past schools... <laughs> And offer, uh, if everybody wanted to use that lane, they paid $10, which went to Rugby League. Mm-hmm. So far, they haven't replied in the negative. No, so no. I am hopeful that that can get tipped into this, mm. you know, revenue streams. Mm-hmm. Have they thought about schools and speed limits? I bet mm. you they haven't. No, I bet they haven't. No, no. Uh, pumping resources in the country and grassroots Rugby League and following the AFL model of building club membership. Bit vague there. Well, you can do that by, uh, by law. Could you? If you make it... If you make it 
Tax deductible. Tax deductible. Uh, carrot club, and stick, obviously. But, club membership. But if you are not a member of a registered oh. rugby league club... No health rebate. No health rebate. And uh, after three warnings, go to jail. Jail people because they're not members of football clubs. Yes. Right. I tell you what, it's going to get results. It certainly is. It's a, get people we're talking thinking. A, I know we're talking a quiet revolution here. Yeah, perhaps not so quiet. Would you think that Talkback Radio would accept that? Just generally speaking, as an area of the community. Oh, look, local? it's going. Oh, look, it's going. Of course, it's going to generate a lot of argument. A lot of people saying, "Oh, nanny state," and you know, not allowed to do. You know, whatever you want. Yeah, mm-hmm. the denial of individual freedoms. Well, you're not. No, you're free to choose whichever rugby league club, club you want. Oh, beautifully put. If you, and there's no postcode. Fixation. No. That. If you live in a 2031, you can still support the cows. Look, you can live in, you know, North Perth. Yeah. And follow the bloody Redfin Titans, if you mm. like. Mm. That's very good. As long as you're committed. As long as you've paid your money. Uh-huh. Very good. Now, now membership, might, uh, what the cost is going to be, who knows? Well, it might be 25 bucks. A quarter. <laughs> a month. <laughs> Now, the former NSW halfback said the consequence was dire if the independent wasn't quickly com- convened. Mm. I see this steed in football. Mm. I-, I see this steed in football that is deflated and dead. That's mm. how he sees it. I see this steed in football, obviously metaphorically holding yeah, on to yeah, it, yeah. demonstrating the public before him, much as the Pope might with, what is it, uh, the blood and body of Christ. Mm-hmm. I mean, is that too long a bow to draw? Mm. Rugby league is a religion. I see this, this steed in football mm. that is deflated and dead. And I see these vultures picking at it, like News Limited, Channel 9 and 2GB. Mm. What I'm saying is they have picked what they wanted for their own benefit and when there is no carcass left, they will fly away. Fly away. Mm. I want to see the steed up high like a halo and everyone wanting to be part of the action. Gee. It's amazing, isn't it? it is I had amazing. no idea it was so stuffed. No. No, no, no. But I, I mean, think that's, I... that's one of the games. I mean, you can talk about Angry Ant. You know, the game's best thinker. This is the greatest thinker. This is the talking. greatest thinker. Yeah, Turvey, yeah. Prince well, of Darkness, Steve Mortimer. The game's first thinker, <laughs> maybe. Look, I think this idea of a game structure committee is really important. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't mind Ian Callahan, QC. Oh, he'd be part terrific. Of that. Maybe terrific. Rod, Roddy Marr, QC. Could, could you see, though. Uh, Ross Garno. He's, he's done wonders a with a lot it. of issues. He's solved the climate, climate change. change off his own bat. Mm-hmm. Now, look, could you see other sports plugging in like. I'm just wondering if Ian Thorpe could sit on this as well. Somebody yes. who brought, you know, obviously a common sense view about swimming common and sense. the medals and well, stuff like that. Absolutely. What about Dick Pratt? Dick Pratt would mm. be fantastic. Mm. The cardboard king. Yes. He'd be fantastic. Well, great knowledge of business. Great knowledge of business. Great knowledge of business. Yeah. You know. Could you see, say... Uh, Dick Smith. Dick Smith. The two Dicks. Together. The two Dicks. Dicks, Pratt. Both Dicks. And Smith. Trying to... Inflate mm-hmm. the Steeden. The Steeden. Be fantastic. And I'll tell you what, what, how about this? How about Kerry Stokes? Well, why not? Mm. Mm. Be why fantastic. Not? Why not Kerry Stokes? Big business operator. What about uh, Jodie Mears? No, she'd be great too. But I'd keep it small, the committee, if she was on it. I wouldn't go above 10. <laughs> oh, you don't want to get too nervous. No, you don't. She'd be, have to speak in public about, you know... Well, she uniforms. doesn't have to speak on public in public. Sorry, I mean in the in the committee room. Oh, in the committee room. She'd you know, have she'd to have to have an opinion about uniforms and whether they look good or spunky enough. Or, I mean, they're they're things that need to be addressed <laughs> as part of reflating the student. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I've got no problem with that. In Callahan, Roddy Marr, Ross Garno, the two dicks, <laughs> Pratt and Smith, Kerry Stokes, Jody Mears. Starting to look pretty good. How about somebody like who we know is... Oh, a sh- and you, you had Ian Thorpe in there, Ian I Thorpe, too. How about uh, Elle McPherson? You know, she's... Oh, uh, well, international experience. International, and she's and moving... how to, to present yourself. Exactly. How to, how to present the code. And she's moving, I think, into skin products as well. I'm sure she would be. Hmm. What about her sister, Mimi? She's been I quiet. I know, she's very good. But she's a whale watcher. So, <laughs> so she could bring those <laughs> acute Business. observational skills... Yeah. To, to rugby league, so it might have been. Who knows if she's been watching Wales? What she might have picked up that would be appropriate to rugby league. Is it getting a bit unwieldy now? I mean, who's going to chair this? You need somebody strong who can chair this committee. Mm. I mean, would you get? I mean, I, I was just wondering if some one of those, you know, loonies in the Labor Party, in New South Wales, might be able to wield the whip. Oh, I see. You know, like Richo or oh Graham Richardson. Mm. 
No, it's just picking a figure. You know, I mean, somebody, you know, Frank Sartor may be the person who's the right person for it. Mm. You know, can push through this agenda. I mean, it's a pretty thick agenda he's got, apart from the grooming and stuff, maximising the value of the next television deal, making sure all funerals are conducted in an appropriate manner, mm. the introduction or relocation of teams to Perth and Adelaide, make the national clothes, yeah. exploring the new streams of revenue, and apart yes. from funerals. Well, what about the former PM? What about John Howard? Oh, he loves his league. He loves his rugby Dragon league. Dragon mad. Yes. Okay, I'd pencil him down as the, as the... Well, you wouldn't get a higher authority. And he's probably got time on his hand. All he appears to be doing at the moment is walking. Mm. Well, it might give him something to do. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, he could chair the committee, perhaps. Mm. The Howard Committee. The Howard Committee. Yeah, for rugby league. Mm. Yeah. For the well, reflation that's... of rugby league. Mm. Well, could we suggest that Steve Mortimer sends out the invites... To, to these, those people to and these see who turns participants. up. Mm. Where would we have the meeting? Like, say, well, probably at the Balmain Leagues Club. Well, perfect. It's central, and they're going to be redeveloping. They're going to be booming. Mm. They're going to be demolishing it soon <laughs> to build another one. <laughs> to build a bigger one with uh, two hundred and forty-one units on top of it. I mean, if oh. that's not go ahead, yeah, rugby league stuff. Yeah, but they could maybe get a few of those units to house this committee. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't imagine it's going to sit in perpetuity, though, is it? I mean, no, 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 we no, want no to have, it's got to, We've got to have a sunset clause oh, on it. Oh, you'd have to. You'd have to, what, say, 15 years? I mean, a lot of these people... Well, won't be with us by the time. No, I mean, I don't know how old Ian Callanan they've got, is. But... Well, they've got a funeral. They've got a funeral in rugby league colours. That's certain. That's mm. the best we can do mm. at the moment. But then we might be able to get revenue streams going, like, as mentioned, passing the schools at a greater speed than 40 kilometres per hour, but a $10 impost going to rugby league or everybody's a club member. All of a sudden we're generating finance mm. which can float this thing. Don't tell me that people like plus Russell Crowe... Plus the lottery, Crow, plus the lottery. Plus the lottery and people like Russell Crowe and Peter Holmes of Court, they know how to spend money. Mm. Yes, true. And plus the the new law regulating that everyone must be a member. Yeah, I know. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, you haven't got freedom in Australia, you know, you're not allowed not to vote. Mm-hmm. Well, we live with that. I mean, we're quite happy we, to vote. We're incredibly happy. We, we, love, very, we love voting. As a we like to vote, meet yeah. the personality. Well, I see it in the same way. Sure. Uh, big, you know, you can pick any pick, club you like, but pick one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, being a citizen br- brings with it responsibilities. I think that's and what... one of them is joining a rugby league club. I think that's what the message Mal Bruff's been trying to get over. I oh, know he's not in mm. Parliament anymore, but... Mm. Mm. You know, that was the message he was trying to get over. Mm. Really? Well, I think he's he's now, isn't he head of the Queensland Liberal Party? Oh, it could easily be. Mm. Could, they changed a lot of things. Well, I know that. Quickly there. Yeah. But he's a sort of can-do bloke. Maybe we could rope him in, in as well. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because he... Maybe he could chair the meetings that Howard was away on a walking tour on. Well, he's got to get in the army involved, oh, he's which I like. Good. Yeah. And, and getting around to those people who are, you know, not being members, not putting in... You know, not he getting the army involved there. Oh yes, because can't rely on the police to do that. No, because the police no, are actually playing right. rugby league. You're right. Yes, there there would be certain outposts squad. where there'd be scallywags no, there'd be who scallywags weren't who trying it on. <laughs> it's a fascinating time to mm. if this committee gets up. Yes, well, this Mortimer committee, I like the look of it. <laughs> Oh, Ilzilla, uh, past an Earth winner on the uh, well on the uh, Triple J, the WYD network. Uh, Ilzilla there with cut feet and the CDs called Wasteland. Might be time for a fat. And now on this sporting life, it's time for the second fat of the afternoon. The second fat is brought to you this week by the Look of Laura Knitwear, Alan Bond's Business Masterclass, and Happy Jack's Tata Packs. Yes, sir, Bob. Look, uh, a very sim- similar prize to the earlier one, the J-Mag, the fattest J-Mag ever. We're giving that away, yeah. uh, the current issue. And these CDs, we've got a General Soreness. Uh, I don't know whether that's the name of the act or it might be General Soreness, and the title of the CD is D-O-M. Afterlife, Speck of Gold. We've got Radio Star, Here We Are. We've got a CD single, I think, by Nicky Bomber, Jar in the Moment. And finally, Songs from Last Century. This is a collection of uh, uh, tunes by uh, Grieg. 
the mm. soprano and uh, somebody banging away on the ivory. So it's a it's an eclectic mix. By the look, something uh, Rastafarian, something high brow, and a couple of other acts thrown in, plus the J Mag Roy. For all comers, you can answer the following question: Who would be Doctor Death's first witness? Who would be Doctor Death's first witness? That number, Roy. One three hundred oh triple five three six. All comers. So now. Oh, just when you think it's over, it kicks on again, doesn't it? The 1990s, and you're supposed to be my friend uh, from a CD called The Cookies, the 1990s part of the time work, but that is Scotland. Who are we talking to, Roy? Yes, we're joined by Duncan. HG is joining us from Newtown in New South Wales. How are you there, Duncan? Oh, I'm feeling fine today, Roy. Thank you very much. Yes, very good. Now, Duncan, are you behind this uh, Mortimer committee? To... Oh, I'm all for it, Roy. Yes. I think so. I think it's the way to go. Yes, yes. Are there any names we've overlooked uh, from your perspective, Duncan, uh, you know, who you might like to think should get on there? Do you think uh, it's a bit blokey? I mean, I think we've got oh, many well, in there. Ida would be an obvious choice. Say again, sorry. Ida Buttrose. Mr. Ida Buttrose. Surely, you know. Yeah, no, she's very... She's in the know. True, she's very well connected and has <laughs> enormous experience. Ida Buttrose has got true. Oh, she's, experience. you know, she adds a touch of glamour to the lineup. True. Well, listen, we've got True. Jody Mears as well there. And Mimi and, and, Mimi L and Elle and McPherson Ida. and Ida. Oh, yeah. well, Kate Blanchett, you know. Kate, Kate she's Blanchett yeah, is no, a she's, great You know, she's got you that international statue now. And she's been to the... Tw- <coughs> she's, indeed, and she's been to the 2020 Summit and taken her nipper along... Oh, yes, she's uh, got uh, the cred. She's yes, got the cred. And would be able to talk to politicians in a language they understand. Yes. <laughs> indeed. What about Senator Penny Wong? She appears to be across a lot of issues... Oh, well, yeah, I've heard varying opinions about that, Roy, but... <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> but, she, uh, yes, you know, we could try and try and be bipartisan with the selections. Yes, well, look, I, I have no idea what her attitude is to, towards rugby league. I've no idea. No, no, but... No, no, I'm not across that myself. No, but surely, to goodness, you know, a person interested in the environment would see the environmental implications mm. uh, associated with rugby league. Mm. I mean, the trouble with having teams in Perth and Adelaide, I know people are screaming already mm. about the carbon footprint of moving them around or moving people oh, around. Yeah, and remember, true. earlier this year, I think we broke the story about Air Bunny, mm. which is going to get several 747s and fly them backwards and forwards to the games That's in Perth, true, yes. should they come off. Mm. And so I'm not sure exactly, I've been for a long time, that if you couldn't walk or ride your push bike to a game, you should think again. Mm. But, of course, that cuts well, out well, many, many fans. Oh, well, that's true, but it is a television game and there's no reason why the Perth team couldn't be located in Redfern. Networking. You know, along with... Oh, no, with the rabbits Titans, and the cows. Titans, oh, sorry, the Titans. And, yes. and the rabbits. Yes, that's a very good idea. Mm. Because it could be uh, have an on- great online presence as yes, well. Yes, yes, oh, of course it would. Mm. Of With, course, you it know, would. profiles of players mm. and sort of funny things the fans are doing, and yes. you know, fan days and merchandise, and you know, oh. shopping. It there's so much to do. Well, we're probably a little new media shy when it comes to our committee. Perhaps uh, Jody Rich <laughs> might have a bit of time on his hands. Be willing to Rodney Adler. Rodney Adler, of course. Mm. Yeah, I've had Phil over from. from uh... The insurance company, Ray Williams. Oh, Ray oh, Williams. Oh, Ray yes. Williams. Hey, well, Ray. No, he'd be very good. Ray, Ray has good. got. They could. Use, they could put the Stephen in his briefcase. They could. The famous briefcase. That's, do you think the uh, image that uh, mm. you know uh, Steve? Uh, the Prince of Darkness, Turvey Mortimer, has of uh, mm. holding the student and it's deflated. <laughs> Is that an image that talks to you, Duncan? Oh, I can't say it communicates me, to me directly, uh, HG. No, no, I, you know, I, I think we need a bit more glamour than that mm. these yeah, no, days. You know. See, it's its 100th year. It's just had a wonderful series of mm. matches. I mean, can't they get Tina involved again? She's, you know, she's sort of... Oh, right. Tina Turner. Tina Turner. Give Turner. it a give, you know, the international mm. touch there. Well, I must say, I must say... The and now that Billy's passed on, sadly. Mm. Yes, look, uh, look, I must say that I'm slightly disappointed that some of the stars of yesteryear haven't been given more of a go in this the 100th year. Oh, J.P. White. J.P. White. Or I think the Hootie Gurus did a... Mm, a they a, did. ...with a theme song a for a long time. grand final. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, they, What's My yeah, Team, what's I think. What's My Team. Oh, yes. Well, they apparently that went down a storm at a festival over in England recently. Oh, that's tremendous. Well, Duncan, look, obviously all great ideas, but uh, Roy, set out the question yeah. and let Duncan have a swing at it. Now, Duncan, just before I give you the question, uh, obviously you'll be staying up to watch Mark Webber tonight. Uh, sadly not, Roy. I've, I've got to go back to work tomorrow, so I'll be Oh, even so, night. if you stayed up all night, you could take in, uh, say, Cadell Evans, 
uh, on the first oh, uh, real I, climb. I catch a bit of that, I think, yeah. Catch a bit of that, then over to watch Weber bring it home and then maybe stay to watch the shark for the rest of the night. Oh, well, I'll probably divert to watch Flight of the Concords on another network briefly, but apart from that, yeah, that sounds like a good plan, Roy. Well, uh, there's your night, isn't it? Fantastic. Fantastic night yeah. of Australian sport. Oh. Right, Give I'll, it to me it, again. Weber at Hockenheim. Weber at Hockenheim. Cadell Evans in the mountains for the first day. <laughs> yeah, tour, tour de France, And yeah. Shark. Shark bringing his, it home. Is it his third British Open? Yes. Really? His third British Open at Birthday. Oh, oh mighty. Oh, How about that at the TAB? Now, uh, yes, now the question here is uh, who would be Dr. Death's first uh, witness uh, here? Oh, that would be the fellow with the, the hip problem, little Leighton Hewitt. Absolutely, Absolutely right, right, Duncan. Don't. The J-Mag plus that collection of four CDs as the line just gets swamped by an aeroplane by the sounds. We'll get them in the mail to you and they'll be there as soon as they can. In the meantime, thanks very much for being part of this sporting life. Thank you very much, HD. See, See you, you Duncan. Bye. See you, See you Roy. From See you. a faraway From land. A faraway journey of a lifetime. Right, if you're going to have a bit of in the shower, just make sure we clean it up. Two men will change the world one silly song at a time. Just want to do something special for all the ladies Flight of the Concord, the, the BBC series that redefined comedy. There's a tendency to become pickpocketed. Here's my plan. I get your wallet and we're going to... Stick them to our chests. Next Sunday, 9 a.m. on Triple J. Troy, oh, hey, Utah Saints. Now, this is the Vanshee Tech remix. I'm not sure what Vanshee had in mind, but it's great. Uh, that's something good, W-I-D-08. Uh, the Vanshee Tech remix of the Utah Saints on the life on Triple J. Yahoo! Tribes of the Pacific! Bored, fit, and nothing to do at your place? Do you want to get a toehold in an expanding, exciting economy? Got the travel bug? Why not join the ranks of the 457 crew with the International Employment Permit Specialists Roy and HG and see the world? Roy and HG are the people managers who are turning labour supply on its head. Country Cousins, the first Saturday of every month at New Old Melbourne Town Vexley is your chance to hear the world's loudest man, Adrian Macca McTibbon, bellowing the time every 15 minutes. Macca's so loud, some say he's heard on the moon, so make sure to bring your earmuffs. As well as Macca McTibbon, see the world-famous Arnott's Biscuits Corn Cob pipe-smoking troupe under the baton of the head smoker Lonnie Barrett, the man with the longest beard in the Southern Hemisphere. For Mum, there's a fancy display featuring samplers with themes from as far back as the 1970s. And the surviving 1974 World Cup Socceroos will be special guests of the committee at the new exhibition building from 10.30am until 415 That's the first Saturday of every month at New Old Melbourne Town, Bexley. Art lovers, they said it could never happen, but it has. La Stupenda is back, bigger, brighter and heavier than ever. Joan Sutherland has always dreamed of reprising the role that put her on the international opera map as a sprightly 47-year-old. That role was her unforgettable Juliet in Verdi's smash Romeo and Juliet. But in Opera Australia's new production of this timeless tale of two houses torn apart by heavy petting, La Stupenda doubles up as Romeo, Mercutio, Tybalt, the nurse, and still has time to hold down the tricky title role of Juliet. And just before the long break, La Stupenda brings the house down with her performance of a recently discovered aria for the Arras, stage left, which was omitted from the original. Supporting Dane Joan on this night of nights are the stars of the Australian musical stage. Hugh Jackman, Anthony Warlow and Burt Newton as Mr Capulet's clock when duties at Channel 9 permit. Book today to secure a seat at one of only 12 January 9th performances. Yeah, so look, just a couple of scores coming in. <clears throat> uh, I mentioned earlier the Swans won by two points over Carlton in a nail biter. Mm. And uh, the form side of the rugby league, the Rabbits, have had a very exciting afternoon. Uh, a nip and tuck game at half time with Souths, the Rabbits, that is six, uh, West Tigers 12. But it's blown out now, sadly. The Rabbits never say die attitude got them to 12 points in the second half. But sadly, the 
Tigers, that is the West Tigers, uh, ran away with the game 36 points. So 12 oh, to 36. Wow. We're now up to the 79th minute. But so there is time the, the enough. streak's finished. Streak's over. And sadly, mm. the Never Say Die spirit, which was so evident the last mm. few weeks, seems to have gone for a Burton. Anyway, that's uh, rugby league. Boxing, and Danny Green is expected to call... Uh, is expected to make a call on whether or not he will fight Anthony Mundine by the end of the month. Good. Not, not, not meaning... Good. I hate this uncertainty. I know. Not meaning that he's going to bash him up by the end of the month, but that whether, no, 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 whether he's going to do it. Yeah, this uncertainty has been hanging around this bout now for how long? Well, several weeks. Yeah. Several weeks. Uh, Green wanted some changes to the deal offered. Ah, oh, okay. Just wondering if you want, thought about those. Mm. But the mail is we wanted a flexible date. Mundine Camp is still hopeful he will fight. Mm. Uh, those close to Green are casting doubt on the bout taking place. What will uh, be will be, said Chock, my, my focus is on my first fight at the lower weight division at the end of this month. Now... Mm. Uh, look, some changes to the deal. I thought it was $5 million. It was, but I'm suggesting the scripting problems may have gotten the road here. Mm. Uh, obviously, $5 million in a rugby league funeral in the club of his choice, in the mm. colour, club colours of his choice, it goes mm. without saying. Mm. Uh, and it was going to be Fort in Perth, wasn't Fort it? Fort in Perth. Mm. And I suspect that the script which came back looking as though Chock was going to win was unacceptable to the Mundine, sorry, to the... To uh, the Green uh, Camp. To the Green Camp. Now, the, the, uh, the, the, the problem is coming... Yes, yeah, the, it's... It, mm. It's scripting. I'd say it's a scripting problem. Mm. And I am pleased to say, although mm. I, I haven't got time to go into it now, but probably next week, is that the uh, it does look as though Mark Wahlberg has now agreed to play Kobe Abbott in the Bra Boys film, which is great news. Oh, isn't there. that good? Yeah, that is good news. And Roy, isn't that great it news? It is great news. Now, who's writing it? Do we know? I don't know. As I understand... Uh, Russell Crowe yeah. will be directing and he will play, be playing the part of the main baddie, which has now oh. been expanded to every scene. Uh, the main baddie, so I think okay, in every scene. Because we don't want the same problems that happened with Eucalyptus, well, remember that? I know. Russell I turned up day one. Yeah, expecting to be there. Everyone there. Yep. Mm. Camera's I, ready to turn over. I hardly had a line. I know. Shocking. A lot Shocking. of voiceover, maybe. There were, there were at least, <clears throat> pardon me, a dozen pages where Russell just wasn't in on it. Well, that's what they've corrected here, mm. is he's playing every scene. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, people say it's a bit, I think the character's name is Anthony Hines. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be the baddie. Mm -hmm. uh, they think it's a bit, you know, Anthony Hines-centric. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the Bra Boys have been squeezed to sort of more or less minor roles. Right. Uh, even though it's called My Brother's Keeper, which does indicate they might be, you know, centre of stage and up front. Mm -hmm. Now, look... Um, but to... that's only a, a working title. I know. It? it could be called Arthur's, you know, Arthur's, you know... Yeah. Just Arthur's Note. Yeah, sure. Sure, 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 sure. sure now, look... Sure. Uh, well, that is good news. Mm, it is. It's going to be It's going to be a cracker. People... Well, it is. And thank God, you know, I, I, we're going to get another good Australian film. I know out of this. You know, you're a bit disappointed, I know, with Australia. Well, I haven't with seen lip, Australia. With the lip work. Well, the lip, the, the lip The veranda. Me. I know, the veranda on Nicole, underneath mm. Nicole's nose worries me. Mm -hmm. It does. And I just hope it doesn't pull too much attention away from the film. Mm. Mm. Or people leave you know, laughing. With the, with the Japanese bombing and the, the you know, well, the cattle on the horses. And, yeah, I know, it's fantastic. And the tourism implications. I know. People coming out here wanting to find the people with the funny lips. You know, do you know what I mean? Like in Africa all those years ago. Mm. Uh, Roy, now finally today, we've got mm. some good news is that uh, during the, Olymp the Olympics, which are coming up starting on August the 8th opening ceremony, mm. uh, during the Olympics, you and I will be presenting a half-hour highlight show mm -hmm. uh, each day from the, let's see, 8th, 9th, 10th, Monday the 10th, mm -hmm. Monday the 10th, or it might be Monday the 11th, I forget which, Mm. Uh, the 8th, 9th, 10th, Sunday the 10th, the normal show, and then we're swinging into a, an Olympics show called the Golden Ring Show mm -hmm. uh, on the first Monday of the Olympic Games and is on every day until they end of the following Friday week. What time of day? 4.30 in oh, the sort afternoon. Of drive time. Drive time. Yeah, we're lucky. We're going to be part of Linda and Dool's experiment here at, uh, mm. on Triple J mm. on the uh, A WA. sort of drive time window, is it? A drive time window, Exactly, mm. with updates about the Olympics and whatever events are around oh, we'll be able to talk about and have fun. Fantastic. Yeah, it's good. Uh, the Golden Ring Show, Roy, um, yeah. you know, what would your expectations be? Just a lively yeah. interchange? Uh, 30 look, minutes on. It'll be 30 minutes of hard-hitting information uh, with, uh, I think, rugby league update, updates about every 30 seconds or so. Isn't that it, HG? That there, there, there'll be a certain amount of... <laughs> You've hit the nail on the head. There'll be a couple of sort of... 
Olympic stories. We've won yes. this many medals. Now, Roy, rugby league this yes, weekend. That's, that's, it. Right. that's it. <laughs> that's right. With previews of what's coming up on the weekend's rugby league fixtures. Starting on Monday. <laughs> Starting on Monday. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. And we'll be presenting, obviously, the regular Sunday show while the Olympics is on. So mm. if you feel as though you're dipping out on the Olympics, mm. then tune to Triple J, mm. uh, the Olympic station, mm. uh, for the duration of the Games. Oh, that's a and very exciting idea. It is. Now, how do you... You know, we're obviously a couple of weeks out this mm. Friday. All right. Well, I'm I'm a little bit disappointed by Ian Thorpe's position mm-hmm. of you know we're going to do as, good as well, as what we did before. maybe as good as what we did before. Not good mm. enough. No, no, no. Well, haven't we got to you know to borrow a, a line from uh, from John Newcomb? Haven't we got to raise the bar? <whistles> Give me that again. Ra- raise the bar. Raise the bar. He's not talking that... about movement in the trousers, is he? <laughs> <laughs> He's just. You know. I don't think so. No, I don't just... know. Well, in Nuke's case, you don't know. But no, I'm pretty sure what Nuke is about is raising the bar, raising the I, standard. I tell you who's lifting got... your game. I tell you what, our pole vaulters will do us proud. I, I think it's Markov it. and Burgess. I think of their names. I might be wrong about that, but they're just great. They're great pole vaulting. Mm. You know, softball. They're going to drop softball and keep pole vaulting. Not that I've got anything wrong against pole vaulting. No, pole vaulting. Australians are only interested in pole vaulting one day a year, and then only for a couple of hours. Fact. But that's enough. Mm-hmm. That's enough. By the by, have you ever thought about applying the Mortimer Committee principles to the Olympic Games? Mm-hmm. As in, you know, the, our Olympic you know, mm-hmm. component maybe should have an overseeing committee that's an independent authority, the Australian Olympic Commission? Mm-hmm. Well, while ever there's a sport that we're, not, that we're not competing in, yeah, no. you've got to have questions, a committee. Questions are, have to be asked. Yeah. I think European handball, I'm not sure if we made it. Well, I don't think we have, no. and nor have we ever meddled. In that particular no, event, we so we've haven't. got to look at all the events where we haven't meddled. Mm-hmm. Ask a question: Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> That's exactly right. Mm. That's exactly right. Why not? I, the one sobering thing about these Olympics, and I'll be very interested in this, is the sailing with this green algae bloom. Mm. Now, I've got to say, I must say, I've never seen an algae bloom quite like this no, one. No, it's, it's 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 full on, isn't it? It's fully it's blown bloom. <laughs> Are you at all worried? I am. I'm worried for, you know... You, Your smaller boats? Well, Lars Klippich, let's mm, face Klippich. it. I know Lars has done a little bit of work with uh, with Algal Bloom, but mm-hmm. nothing like this. He would never have seen Bloom like this. Yeah, but throwing a lot of, you know, lawn clippings into uh, mm. Botany Bay and sailing around on them mm. isn't... It's I don't not think the same. It, no. Not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Mm. So remember the Olympic show, uh, the Golden Ring show, here on Triple J, 4.30 every afternoon while the Games is on uh, during the weekday, and then the regular Sunday show, of course, covering the Olympics, plus rugby league updates throughout the whole uh, experience, uh, all on Triple J. We leave you with a reminder, of course, with that as a wrap-up, that Triple J is sport. See you next week. Bye now. Triple J is a national Qualitative music is the instake, and commercial is taboo. Triple J. <laughs> This is a download from Triple J. For more music, current affairs, comedy and culture, triplej.net.au. And now... Hello world, pants off Australia. The whips are cracking, the surf's up, the doctor is in. It's just another afternoon when too much sport is barely enough. And now here's the team who can open the batting and take the new ball up the hill into the wind. Who can turn defence into attack in the twinkling of an eye. Who've enjoyed the highs and learnt from the lows. Who are all the better for recent racing and in the wash-up at the end of the day win a lot more than they lose. It's the team of H.G. Nelson and rampaging Roy Slaven and the dominant backline of this sporting life. H.G. Uh, yes, uh, thanks very much indeed, King Willie Otto in the Soundproof Booth, and thanks to Sarah Howells for another fantastic 15 hours of Super Sounds here at the Youth Headquarters on the station that's Mother's the Nation. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, shareholders and school kids, and if there are any stray pilgrims, saints and lovers of old-fashioned miracles still lurking about after WID, stay tuned, this one's for you. And I haven't, I, I'm still on an absolute high. I don't know about you, Roy, but I've been buzzing all week because of WID. Yeah, it does it, doesn't it? Uh, it does it every time. I, I don't know how long these WIDs have been going. I think the next one's in Madrid. But I'm thinking of going um, because I, I've been swept up with uh, this, <clears throat> what's been described to me as a zeitgeist. Wow. A zeitgeist of love. 
Is that a meaningful phrase, zeitgeist of love? Well, it wasn't words? until uh, last week. Yeah, no, uh, true. And now I, I think I know what they're talking about. There's been this, what I called, tsunami of love. A tsunami of love. I'm with your buddy there, mm. bro. Now, look, what I like also is how inclusive WID is. I thought, you know, let's face it, I'm no, I'm no longer on the right side of 15. Mm. Uh, but we didn't thought, look odd. We didn't look no, weird. We did didn't we? look weird. And when the camera turned from the where we were, our part of the congregation, with flashing gang signs and all that sort of stuff, mm. all young, all with it, all fit, all mm. lively, and have turned around and photographed on the authority of the church sitting up there, all old codgers in skirts, mm. I, I just thought it was a marriage made in heaven, really. Yes. It was just yes. beautiful. It, when you saw the Pope and his lot, mm. they looked young as well. I know. A I know. zeitgeist I, I, of love. A zeitgeist of love. I, I honestly thought we'd look a little bit out of place. Yes. <laughs> But we didn't. No. You know, no. and, and I've met a lot of charming young people with big grins and and I love a, 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 a nicely strummed nylon acoustic guitar. I never tire of that sound. Have you compiled your top ten tracks you want to hear on the nylon acoustic guitar? I know there was a lot. I mean, mm. obviously, We Shall Overcome, Kumbaya, all overcome. those sort of... Yes, mm. I love that one. I love mm. that one. You never tire of it. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> no. And what I liked was on the nylon acoustic guitar, some people had to go at things like k San as well, which I thought was great. Oh. They were obviously swinging in Spanish. Mm. And did you meet any people you might be hooking up with in Madrid? I know you'll be yeah, obviously look, you'll I, all be four years old. Yeah, but... yeah, 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 yeah. I have. I've made a lot of very, very useful contacts and uh, we're certainly going to have somewhere to bill it. Uh, once we get to Madrid, mm-hmm. would you uh, think uh, uh, they might be? They might be expecting a couple of youngins, and they might be a little bit disappointed when you and I appear at the door. But I think if we grin up, yeah, flash yeah. a few gang signs, that's it. We'll be in. Now, listen. The other thing is, you know, I know there's four years of planning, and I don't want to put you on the spot here. Mm. It appeared to me that groups were a big thing. You know, that yes. people came from Ecuador as a group, or Honduras as a group. There was yeah. great Papua New Guinea as a group, Moresby as a group. Yep. Do you think we should go as a group? Yes. I mean, maybe take a triple J, I don't know, I was going to use the word consignment, but that's not what I mean. You know, well, tri- tri- look. Triple J touring party. Yeah, look, I've been in, look, it's only loose communication at this stage uh, with uh, with the Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs. Are uh, they interested? And the fan base there is very interested in making up a group. Um, I believe uh, some of the Gold Coast Titans are interested in making up a group as well. So, I, I look, I, and when, once, you know, the normal, once we get the normal bunny crowd involved, uh, I think we'll make up a useful group, um, largely Marching. rugby league centric, but that's all right. Uh, no, rug, rugby good. league and the church have uh, been uh, dancing uh, together for as long as I can remember. Oh, indeed. Since 1908, to be honest. Indeed. Now, listen, um, you know, you'd see it when you started off with the Bulldogs and so on. You would see it as a combined yes. a combined mission representing well, that's rugby right. le- Australian rugby league. That's right. People can wear, look, as far as I'm concerned, people can wear their particular club uh, Guernseys. Mm. You know, if the Bulldogs want to go with the Bulldogs, well, that's fine by me. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as there is just an, an Australian flag somewhere. At the front. Yes. Well, I'm I'm with you there all the way. And do you think we'd get a plane full? Yes, easily. You know, say a 747. I'm not talking about a Dash 8. I mean, I'm talking about a real plane here. Yeah. yeah Something yeah, that yeah. the side might fall out of. You yeah, know, well, I'm hoping to get sponsorship from uh, either Virgin Blue or Qantas. Right. Um, who will right. fly us over there just as, you know, as part of a sort of goodwill would, mission. Really. No, no, I understand that. Now, look, would Rugby League, um, I'm not sure who the patron saint of Rugby League is at the moment, mm. maybe a movable feast, but would you consider a miracle? Uh, could could a sport become beatified, if I've got the right word there, mm. and would we need to find a miracle so we could go with some demand on the church? Rather, That was the only thing I feel a bit, you know, given that we're not on the right side of 15 anymore, mm. you know, clogging up the thing for younger people to come through, but... Uh, what I was hoping was maybe that we could go with a bit of an agenda, not just obviously, uh, you know, go the bunnies, uh, never say die, you know, etc. Mm. And I'm not sure exactly what I've got in no, mind. No, here, no, no. But... Well, certainly I would love to, uh, well, how can I put this, have some tentative forays into into uh, perhaps uh, uh, nominating isolating, identifying mm-hmm. a potential rugby league saint. Is that Fantastic. what you're getting at? That's exactly what like I'm getting at. Father John Coots, for example. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's a miracle perfect. that he's kept that furniture warehouse going this long. Now, 
you know, and I, and I know, and I know, lots of sick people have bought wardrobes and what have you from Father John Coots's warehouse, uh, and have felt a lot better afterwards. Right now, now these are just whispers that you know it's all been rumour over the past thirty years or so about John Coots's warehouse and the and the effect of furniture on <clears throat> people who are who've got the flu or a bad cold or something like that. Um, but I'd like to formalise this a little bit more. And get people. There is a website, www.fatherjohncootesforsainthood.com.au, uh, that people can log on to with their testament mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as to uh, what the impact of a bit of a low boy or a, you know, mm-hmm. a three quarter bed or something like that has or had a- upon their families. Yeah, or a, even a, you know, just a, a, an occasional table. <laughs> Or a bookshelf. Or a bookshelf, exactly. Yeah, no, that's a terrific idea. And mm. I think that we could become... One thing that I liked about it, too, was that maybe we could become a little bit bulgy with it once we get to Madrid. Mm. Madrid's an unusual place because it's a very lively community there and they're no oh. strangers to, you know, uh, rowdy, sort of well-argued, you know, uh, what would I call you know, alternative views. No, well, that's true, but... I, what I had in mind, and I've, I'm just canvassing th- with this this with you now, yeah. uh, and that is that that uh, cathedral that hasn't been finished yet that might be in Barcelona. Ah, uh, yeah, that uh, Gaudi heap of the rubbish. Gaudi one. Yeah. yeah, I thought if we got our plane load of pilgrims to finish it once we arrive, well, I'll, I'll go one further. I reckon what we should do is have a parade of furniture which would mark our group out pretty much from anything else that turned up. Yes. And I would love to what, see... What, the, the John Coots Warehouse people uh, give us each a chair or something to take? Not bad, not bad, but... Chair, some occasional a, table, maybe... A tall boy tall between boy. two, you know, and it would be a parade of... <laughs> around the streets of Barcelona and then on to Madrid. And well, OK, to, well, if we dragged our furniture, for, say, from the airport to Gaudi's... Cathedral, yeah, County's Cathedral. Set up camp there, and <laughs> From, uh, begin mixing the cement. I mean, we'd have to or- obviously organise at that end. I mean, cement's pretty heavy. I assume we're going to need a fair bit to finish this off. Uh, it's just the candly bit, isn't it? The running wax effect it, uh, on a couple of the towers. That's all that needs oh, to be it's done. Very close. Yeah, the sand dripping. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all. That's all that needs. And to I've be done, done a bit of experimenting in the backyard, which you've seen. Oh, I think it'll work. And what wouldn't that be great? The cathedral finished. Yeah. Then we pack up the furniture and walk, carrying our furniture, <laughs> to Madrid yes. to arrive in time for, obviously, day yes. one. Day one, yes. With Father John Coots as a saint. We're marching behind that banner. Yes. All the way from Barcelona All to Madrid. All the way from Barcelona. Then we, we, we make a bonfire with our furniture, I suppose, and burn it. I don't oh, know. exactly. Or you wouldn't want it, to bring it home. Or give it to the poor. Oh. Give it to well, the e- poor of Madrid. Either idea is really good. Well, we can either burn it or give it away. Well, I think it'd be silly, though, to bring it back home. Now, fair enough. Now, look, what would be great is to not give it to the poor so much, but give it to the sick and then see if we can get more miracles happening with Coots-style furniture in, uh, you know, Madrid as part of World Youth Day. Okay. So we might be able to set up a a Oh, so we go straight to, say, Madrid Hospital. Not bad, but I was thinking of more difficult... Drag our furniture into there through the foyer... (laughs) Up the lifts and just distribute it willy nilly through the very sick. Not very, not bad. But how about this? An infertile couple mm. have a, you know, uh, get on the job on one of our beds from Father John Coots. Hey, presto, pregnant as part of World Youth Day. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds silly now, but in the context of Spain, in the context of finishing the Gaudi Cathedral, mm. the Father John Coots for Sainthood campaign, mm-hmm. the root on the bed, <laughs> hey, presto. It's a, it's a, it is a miracle, isn't it? It's an old-fashioned, it's the religious Christian, it's at its nub. It's the Christian story I'm talking about. Well, I know, but what I'm on, seeing, I'm not only seeing a pregnant couple, you know, grinning, I'm seeing, you know, people lugging their bit of furniture out, vac- you know, a, 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 like a, a massive evacuation from Madrid bloody General Hospital of sick people with drips, well, drips pulled out. Lugging a, you know, just holding a, a bloody occasional table above their head saying it's a miracle. <laughs> what great pictures for today, tonight. That'd be just fantastic. Well, look, that we've just workshopped that. That's taken us 10 minutes to put that together. Mm-hmm. I mean, we came to work today just with an idea, didn't we? Yep. I mean, I, I must say, you know, the only idea was that I was on the wrong side of 15 and would I be welcome at World Youth Day? Mm. That was the idea I had. Yeah. Now we've got a plane load of people. 
with their furniture representing rugby league and the Father John Coots is a saint yes. with the finishing off of the Gaudi Cathedral in Barcelona, Act 1. Yes. Walk to, uh, you know, obviously from Barcelona well, to Madrid. Drag the Act furniture. Two, the drag, drag the, the furniture. furniture. Pilgrim style. <laughs> Pilgrim style. Mm. <clears throat> They've got a terrific, uh, I want to say it's Camino del Rey or something like that. The station's, uh, no, it's not. It's a oh, Pilgrim's that's walk. right across the top. That goes oh, through no, France. That's, and too into, far, that's too big. That's too far. You're too big. Okay, confine it to Barcelona into Madrid, dragging the furniture. Yes. Straight into the hospital. Saving a couple for infertile couples, maybe set it up out the front of the Prado, mm-hmm. and uh, then wait back, you know, stand back and wait for someone to notice. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, Pell would be across this eventually, mm-hmm. uh, the Archbishop of Sydney, and mm-hmm. maybe he could say a couple of words for us on to His Holiness, saying what great things the Coots campaign are uh, doing. In the car park at the hospital. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's not bad. But, well, there's a bit of a plan emerging, but. We've just got to get the uh, the testimonies up on this side, side yeah. on our website. Mm. Sorry, mm. on the John Coots website. So here, in, you know, from Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, people yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, they, they've it's going to look a bit weak if we're going over there and we haven't got any testament. No, 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 I understand. And maybe we could forward some could of those. Could look harebrained if we're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> now, with all that, all that out of the road, a little bit of housekeeping to get us underway at the Table of Knowledge this week. From the uh, Father John Coots Emporium, uh, Table of Knowledge sells for about 1500 bucks. It's a beauty on special all this week. Uh, look, no, there will be no life next week, no This Sporting Life next week, due to Splendour. Uh, so we come off, but Splendour comes on. And I believe the 08, I mean, obviously people talk about this all the time wherever I go. My general impression is that the 2008 Splendour in the Grass is going to be the best ever. I mean, there's been a real buzz across Australia since the Pope left last Monday, and, you know, that was one pylon of the week. The other pylon was the arrival of Condoleezza Rice, who blew through Perth. And don't tell me there's something not going on between our foreign minister and their foreign minister. I mean, it all looks far too cosy. All they need is a cooch bed to get it on. I mean, I was devastated by that. I had no idea. Here's a woman, you know, with lots of people to, uh, you know, places to go and people to see, stops. And visitors, our Stephen Smith in Perth. Mm. Go figure. Mm. There must be some chemistry going on there to get a, a big name like Wright down here in Perth. I mean, she didn't go to the AFL or anything like that. Nope. I mean, it wasn't that sort of a, no. arrangement. No. It seemed no. to be very private, didn't it, it Roy? Incredibly private. Just uh, a barbecue for two in the backyard and before moving indoors <laughs> with a big question mark. What happened next? Don't know. But she's in Auckland now, I believe. I know. All we know is she's on her way to Auckland. Yeah. That's the weirdest where thing that's she's, Where she's talking to the Prime Minister, Helen Clark, mm-hmm. which is fair enough. No, no, well, that's what she should be that's doing. That's what she should be doing. But, uh, but she, she uh, had no truck with Rudd while she was here. It was all Smith, Smith, Smith. <laughs> now, well, certainly the Pope and Rice have left a, a real, what I've described in notes here, is a heady-ecky vibe across the nation. And that will be part of Splendour next weekend. And uh, just uh, looking slightly further ahead or slightly farther out, once Splendour is in the bag, it's on to Beijing. And from August the 11th, you and I, Roy, will be presenting the Golden Ring Show every weekday at the Gopher Gold headquarters, Triple J, as part of the drive time experience, every day at 4.30. We'll be ringing that bell. And uh, by golly, it looks... uh, going to be a terrific do, isn't it, uh, Beijing? I mean, I've been a bit standoffish about it, as you know, but... What they're getting together now with the banning of smoking and the cleaning up of the envi- you know the atmosphere, so I was, you know people will be able to run. And I noticed Grant Hackett is wearing a mask and not touching anything for the next month. Yeah, he's not even t- touching uh, you know the, the the balustrades on on, on the stairs or anything. I mean, he's, he's really very taking it very seriously. Yeah, it's just going to be fantastic. And once you see the uh, coverage, I mean, once once you get Bruce McAvaney into the stadium and they're oh, away, no, and Sandy and all of that. Sandy, oh, but uh, is Johnny Hill's got a role this time? You may not know this, HG, whether whether Johnny. Well, I know Eels Steve is... Waugh's going over. As oh, a sort he's going to uh, be the Johnny Hill's. Yeah, he? I think so. To put out so. the uh, the bushfires, bushfires yeah, the good. inevitable bushfires. Yeah. Uh, now, look, uh, if that's good news, and that is all good news, so that's no life next week, and then uh, from August the 11th, every day, uh, every weekday, should I say, plus the regular Sunday shows uh, on Triple J. Now, uh, and go to that website, that Father John Coots website, and you'll be able to find all all the times that we'll be on there prosecuting the Coots for Saint uh, campaign. Now, in an update on that story we broke last week about the Bra Boys biopic, 
Uh, remember, I think, and uh, I've got to apologise for this because uh, I was under the impression that Mark Wahlberg had already been inked to play Kobe and that Russell was going to direct and star as all-round bad dude Arthur Hines and the script had been rewritten and uh, expanded the part of Arthur to satisfy Russell's people and Nicole or Danny was going to pack down as the grandma. Now it appears that's all a fiction and none of it's going to happen. Apparently the people connected with the Bra Boys hadn't talked to the people connected with the Wahlbergs or the Crows and, uh, you know, the whole thing's powdered to dust and I just hope somebody, if I can mix metaphors here, can step in and, and, and flog a dead horse because this is something where, that's screaming out to be done. I just don't know how it's completely gone off the rails. And still with show, a bit of sad romantic news, and this is very sad, uh, that fantastic act, the Veronicas, who I can't get enough of, uh, always listen to them, try and track them down wherever I go. Well, Veronica Lisa has split with, a, with her intended uh, neighbour's dean, Devhode, is the only word I can describe my mood when this news broke. Apparently, uh, commitments between uh, Lisa and Dean left so little poke time that they just had to go their separate ways and give up. By golly, they were a fun couple, though, when they were on. They'd caught that WYD splendour vibe. And uh, sadly, they only managed a couple of dates in a hectic schedules. Sadly, they've had to set new goals and have moved on already. Meanwhile, and continuing with media news, and this shocked me, the Channel 9 footy show, well, the audience for the Channel 9 footy show out of Sydney, the Rugby League footy show, has collapsed. I'm not sure what league lovers are doing with their time on Thursday night, but this is very, very sad news, especially in the 100 years, Roy. It, it, it just seems unconscionable yeah. that yeah. people aren't looking. Mm. And can I just say, mm. look... I, uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on, and I, I'm almost forced to, to think that maybe we need some legislation... Um, to force people to watch it? Yeah. Well, can I just say that one thing that... It seems to be that suddenly the game has come, become a little more interesting than the antics of Fatty. Mm. Uh, I mean, I know I've, I've said this to you privately and I make no in other media commitments that the Sydney footy show have carried the game virtually on their own for about the last 70 years. Mm. Every Thursday night with the Nevilles and Blocker Roach, remember how great he was in the back of the yeah. cab? I mean, they used to go for months without mentioning rugby league, showing how much fun can be had in jet boats and sheepdog trials and weird eating contests, not forgetting Fatty falling out of the truck and stuff like that. Mm. As mentioned, never, often forgetting to mention league on for weeks on end. Yeah. But now, sadly, it appears that that great run of gold has come to an end and maybe it's time for Fatty to give it a rest because the ordinary Australians, I believe, Roy, have now found a great new love of rugby league. I mean, mm. the the bashings, the insane mindless drinking, the barking at women, mm. thanks very much, Raiders, mm. the grapple tackles, the fire-up bitch in France, no. the bullets. The urinating the new... on public, uh, you know, on patrons. You're, you're pissing on patrons. Yeah. The new face, of course, over in the eastern suburbs, Sonny Bill. Yeah. I mean, you know, having fun in the toilet cubicle, now taking that act to France. I mean, suddenly the game is gold. It's exploding. Genuinely it? gold. Yeah. Exciting, that's it's right. Exploding everywhere, yeah. It's far more interesting than anything nine can cough up on a, you know, Thursday night. Look, have you got any update on the Sonny Bill thing? I mean, has anybody cited him with a cross look, I, on I his believe, insane side? Yeah, look, I, I think he'll be landing in Paris very shortly, HG. Um because uh, he was due to be playing, I think, on Monday night. Well, he was. obviously that's not going to happen unless he can get a quick flight back, you know, should reason descend upon him uh, at a blinding speed. Even so, I just don't think it could be organised. Um, the uh, the lawyers with uh, the Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs Club seem pretty convinced he can't play any other sport while he's under contract for the next three years at half a million a year with the dogs. So uh, he they're, they're imagining that he's been given poor advice by his management people, whom I believe might be Coda NASA. Not sure about that, but I think so. Uh, so it's all looking very, very odd. Uh, I, I hope Sonny Bill hasn't lost touch with reality. Well, so do I. I mean, the last time... Because he was happened, an ornament to the game. Let's, oh, an ornament and, to and, the game, absolutely. And isn't it sad to be talking about uh, Sonny Bill in past tense? I know. I know. I never thought that had happened. No. Because he was like, an ornament to the game. Yeah. An ornament to the game. You're absolutely right. O... How does that work? <clears throat> O-T-G. O-T-G. Mm. Now, look, the last time this happened was when a player took uh, leave of reason and went you know, completely AWOL, was Solomon Omono. Yes. But he seemed to have... We had the pleasure romantic, machine waiting for him. pleasure machine waiting mm. for him on the other end of the flight, mm. which I could probably understand. And, well, of yeah. course, I th- 
think Chuck Mundine was sent on a mercy mission. He did. To go and get him back. Yeah. Do you think that that's the way to go here is we've got to get well, somebody... Well, isn't Chuck Mundine managed by... The same people? The same I think people? So. I think so. Look... Well, maybe Chuck's got to go over to France and bring Sonny Bill back. Yeah. It doesn't... It just seems to me there's an empty hole waiting over there for him. Uh, you well, know, he's what's he long... imagine he's going to do? Is he going to play rugby union with, with, uh, with Shimmy Woosh? Is that the plan? Well, he's uh, he's certainly in the same uh, you know what would you call it competition, but uh, mm. uh, but he's playing for Toulon. Oh, Toulon! I don't think Shimmy Woosh plays for no, Toulon. No, I'm sure he does. I think he plays somewhere in the south corner. Yeah, it'll come to me in about half an hour's time oh. where he's playing. But oh. then, in the papers today, I don't know if you've got across this is that it appears the new face was offered this same deal a couple of. Earlier this year, I was going to say a couple of months ago. Right. But earlier this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Big Willie, I, I mean, he would have understood that he was under contract. I know, I know, I know, I know. And, I know. and you, let's face it, you know, these contracts now they they they, they go beyond national borders. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a global. It's, it's a, a global, global marketplace. game. Global marketplace. Hmm. And um, look, I did you have any idea that this was on? I mean, no. did you come across Willie sort of with a French phrase book and maybe ringing up... Uh, no, no, uh, unlike Jimmy Woosh, who's been spotted, you know, he, for months now, learning, you know, yeah. French phrases, where he walks. avec moi. That sort of thing, right. yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And yeah. whatever fire-up bitch is in, uh, <laughs> in French, uh, he's been gobbing off that sort of stuff. And that, and that was a telltale sign, you know. It's yeah. very, oh, no. Yeah. You know, and, and the eating of the croissants and uh, the, the insistence on so much garlic in his food and 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 the use of terms like jus. In, pass me the tomato jus, you know? Yeah, madness. Madness, yeah, yeah. So so obviously it was there. But with Sonny Bill, no. I, I don't think he knows where France is. France is. No, that's fair enough. I do too. I, I bet you he doesn't know where Toulon is. I, I bet he doesn't. And I don't think he, he's got across the issue that, you know, in other parts of the world, often they don't use English. No, that's so he might be in for a really strange ride when he's trying to get away from the uh, the airport there, the Charles de Gaulle, which can be a nightmare to get out of. I know to get on a plane to, to get Toulon. on to get on a bus to go to Toulon. To Toulon. Yeah, that'd really stretch him. It will stretch him because he's going to go up to people and say, "Where's the bus?" <laughs> and they're just going to, you know, mm. unless they recognise him. Unless they recognise him. Well, I think that's unlikely. I know rugby yeah, no, league I know. has a massive, I mean, maybe a massive of penetration across the world, but right. I don't think in France, especially around Charles de Gaulle Airport, I've never I've been there for hours trying to get out myself, and my French isn't bad. Yeah. But bloody hell, I haven't seen much rugby league up on the, uh, the on no, the, the screens, you know, no, on, the, on the departure arrival screens. You just don't get rugby league there at all. <laughs> now... Look, can I say that uh, there's been a Sunny Bill fan support group because the fans are the ones I feel sorry for. Well, the no, fans are struggling. gutted. The fans are Gu- gutted. gutted. That's the word I'm looking for. Absolutely gutted. And not only here, Roy, but in New Zealand, mm. well, mercifully, the dogs, the kennel, have put up a Sunny Bill fan support group site. Jeff Kennett and the Beyond Blue people are involved, as is Turvey Steve Mortimer. Right. So there are a couple of big names there helping out people who feel gutted mm. today about Sonny's flip. Now well, this was it, well, well, sorry, just to, not, yeah, not, right. not to not to worry too much. But is this has he lost touch with sanity, with reality, Sonny Bill? Do we imagine? I, is this a cry for help? Does he just think, well, he can go wherever he likes, do whatever he wants, without you know honouring the responsibilities of you know to the fans, to the to the blue and white Guernsey, all of that? Mm. You know, I, I know he felt a bit you know on the shelf during the State of Origin series because he can't play State of Origin. No, no. And really, you know, I don't know how excited he'd be playing for, you know, the Kiwi Rugby League team. Ah, well, that's a big loss, the World Cup coming up. I mean, mm. they've lost the bitch bloke who was going to be the face and I'm pretty sure of the campaign yeah. to get people to go and I'm pretty sure Bill was going to be the, uh, the face, the of face the Kiwi. in New Zealand. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, Lord. Lord. It's unravelling, isn't it? Oh, it's very sad. I, and I don't know if David Gallup's got to go over and get him. I don't know. Well, Do Gallup would say... be a good person to send over. He would be a very well, good person. what about Mick Kilty? Shouldn't the federal police get involved? Shouldn't we just send what? the police over to, to arrest him Bust and bring him, him back? Bring him back. Well, do we have any uh, say, does Mick Kilty have any jurisdiction over New Zealand citizens? Oh, indeed, yes. You know, we might have Interpol. to go to Helen Clark. It's an Interpol thing, isn't it? An Interpol thing, yeah. I, I think it would have to go to Interpol. Uh, I mean, Russell Crowe mightn't be bad because he is, I, I understand he is from New Zealand. Mm. 
He may not hold a New Zealand passport at the moment, but he could be a useful go-between. Mm. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't I, know if The New story Zealand. seems so implausible, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. A player making good money here so fed up that he decides out of the blue one night to get on a plane to France. Yeah, without mm. telling anyone. Without telling anyone. Mm. But that support group will be great for the fans who feel devoted, obviously. Uh, still with Rugby League, and this week the Illawarra Dragons coach, Nathan Brown, says the only way to beat the Melbourne Storm is to bash them. And suddenly, how about this, suddenly everybody agrees. Yeah. Uh, I don't know quite. This is a bit of an odd story from the fallout from the uh, match the other night when the, um, the, the Dragons took on the Melbourne Storm Monday night. I think it was 26-0, the final score, so it was obviously very lopsided. But they sent uh, one of the props off, Riles, I think it might have been early, uh, for an innocuous attempt. Everybody, you know, blew up at that. And now the, the polishing Brown has come out and said, uh, you know, bash them. And uh, they're all going to be at it. Now, still with the Dragons, and the tea head is back tomorrow night. Uh, yes, this great love affair continues between Titanium Head and uh, Rugby League. And Ding Dong Dell is packed into the scrum tomorrow night uh, when the Dragons take on the uh, the Sunny Bill Luss Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Uh, that'll be worth the price of admission alone, seeing Dell part the buttocks and shove the Titanium Head up. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's on reserve for a second row berth, isn't he? He is. I think he's going to be used as what they describe as an impact player off the bench. Yes. Uh, oh, and how disappointing for Dell because he would have been hoping to match up against Sonny uh, Bill. He would have. He would have. That would have been exactly. Hmm. Now, and while the game, especially in the latter half of the season, is struggling to find any certainty in results, it's a tipster's mi- nightmare. As uh, we celebrate this 100th year of hate, can I acknowledge that Stanley the Steel Avenger is heading the Fairfax Tipping Competition on the Friday morning? Strikes me as an unlikely, uh, what would a late career blossoming for Stanley. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, no one has done more to keep the flickering flame of league alive over the last two decades than Stanley. And I have to say, at this point, in it's very hard to sum up Stanley's career as we head into the back half of 2008. But Stanley, the bloke with the big S in front of his head, uh, hats off, buddy, and I'd love to see your hat off, if you know what I mean. For those who know the image of Stanley, they'll know what I mean. And look, Roy, can I sum up the... Apart from all of that, can I sum up the uh, week in just two words? Shaki and Choker! How did you see that final magical 18 at Birkdale last weekend, oh, or last Monday? It, right? it took me back, actually. You know, I'd, I'd, I, I, I'd forgotten. You know, he, he did it all. He brought out all the old tricks, tricks. you know, the missing the, 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 the two-centimetre putt. Um, very hard to do, but... You know, Sharky could do it. The, the 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 poor choice of club. You know, when it called for a six iron, he went for the you know the big Bertha and blew the ball away and took him about eight shots to get back on course. You know, he had it all. You know, the brain explosion, the the wobbly <clears> hand, the wobbly hand, the shake of the hand, all of that, all of those old skills I'd forgotten about. They all came back. Mm. You know, I, I was transported back to that marvelous, you know, uh, Nick Faldo. Uh, U.S. Open that he blew when he was about uh, 400 shots in front in yeah. the morning and then lost by 10 or something. You know, just amazing what he could do. I mean, he really... And I can see where Mark Webber gets his ideas from. You know, I, I just hadn't struck me so clearly where the Mark Webber style came from. He's come from the shark. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible. It was a wonderful round. Mm. And uh, look, it was just that thing, as you point out, it took me back to, I think it might have been the Australian Open, and I want to say Huntingdale. Remember when he got the ball off the tee into the uh, the greenkeeper's shed? Yes. And decided instead of taking the penalty stroke, he'd try and play it out of the shed? Yes. I mean, that was just yeah. madness. Yes. Complete madness. Mm. Uh, look, it was lovely to see, because what would have been disappointing from my point of view was for him to win it. Mm. Uh, but to see him blow up, yeah. and have the brainy like he did was just fantastic. Yeah. And now he's taken that form to Troon where he's uh, had a wonderful uh, a wonderful couple of rounds. I think he, he uh, got par overnight and will be fl- playing on the final day. Oh. But the first two rounds at Troon just blew him away. Yeah. Speaking of uh, comebacks, Big Bad Barry was back last night uh, at the Sydney Swans. Tough Nut was back. And, and can I say he was in dire metal winning form last night at the SCG? Yeah. Uh, obviously, the Swans took on, that's the top four Swans took apart, uh, well, almost virtually took apart Adelaide. They missed by about 30 points. Uh, it was a battle of the birds, Crows v Swans, 
And the tune of the final hooter, Sydney 617. Good lot of points there, but not enough goals, sadly. Adelaide 11-11, and that makes 77. So it's 53 plus 77. Now, <clears throat> Barry had a blinder, and I don't often do this, but I think it's instructive to uh, have a look at Barry's, well, quarter-by-quarter quarter efforts. In the first quarter, he got one kick. In the second quarter, he got two kicks. Sadly, in the third quarter, where no, neither team was able to get a goal, he got no kicks. In the last quarter, he blossomed and brought back some memories, diametal winning memories. He got three kicks. So overall, he had six kicks. Uh, on the handballs, no handballs. He uh, had a couple of marks, three marks, I think it was. He kicked one, two. So he really did justify his inclusion in this in the team that uh, was uh, really, uh, you know, expected to win. And Barry's contribution was, well, let's face, say, on a par with, say, Playfair, who did even less than Barry. Mm. But, uh, look, I haven't written him off yet because obviously he's bound to get better. No one could do any worse. And uh, I had uh, Nathan Bock. I tell you what, there was a great little bit of... Um, uh, cat and mouse, uh, because I uh, thought that Nathan Bock, uh, the uh, crow centre half back, would be shitting himself all week, knowing he was going to be playing on Barry, and uh, he was just wondering. He knew it was going to happen. He knew when he, he was going to be stretched off. He just didn't know quite when. And I thought it was good that the TAB fielded on the Stoush. Uh, obviously, people were able to select the quarter that they thought Nathan would be stretched off. Uh, I think the first quarter was about, when I last looked before the uh, first bounce, was about $4 that Nathan would be stretched off. The second quarter was the most likely quarter, according to punters, about uh, $1.50. Third quarter, $3. Final quarter, about $7.20, I think, at the, uh, at the first bounce. But the Crows are cunning as shithouse rats. And they, after a while, they sent Bock forward and put Rutten on him. So Barry had prepared a um, you know left hook to take out uh, Bock. And then all of a sudden, Rutten, who's a you know, fish of an entirely different kettle, if I can coin a phrase. And uh, he was there and he blasted okay. Uh, Barry had no impact on the game. If he's not bashing, he's not putting in as far as I'm concerned. If the Swans think he's going to be great doing nothing, then they might as well not play him. Now, racing. And Robert Thompson. We've been on this, we've been all over this story like, the you know, a rash on the front end of the peloton all week. And he's struggling now to break this elusive record. We've we've built him up too much. I warned people against this, and now it's happening. Suddenly, the golden run of winners have dried up. He's stranded on three three thousand three hundred and twenty one all week. He was he's marooned, of course, one short of the great Jack Thompson's record. It was dry town at Tari on Tuesday where he went backwards. He did bugger all at Gosford. Went to Newcastle yesterday with high hopes of getting past old Jack Thompson's record who is really, Jack Thompson, you know, he's really putting up quite a fight to hang on to this record. And uh, he, let's see, uh, he got a second and a third. The rest were, you know, nothing's blots and don't argues. And, uh, you know, there was no WID miracle there for Thompson at Newcastle yesterday. And if only other jockeys had a little bit of Christian compassion. That's all I'm asking for from the racing industry today. A little bit of Christian compassion. They let the old bugger Tomo win a few to put us all out of our misery. I mean, obviously, Tomo in his heyday, when he was winning that some years ago now, is uh, arguably our Australia's finest jockey. Obviously, he's almost won as many as Jack Thompson. Uh, cycling and tonight, Cadell Evans will uh, attempt a pedal for victory along the Champs-Élysées in the Mayo Jaune. Uh, obviously, he's not in the Mayo Jaune, but to grasp the Mayo Jaune to become Australia's first winner of the Tour de France. That's how I'm seeing it anyway, at least. May not turn out that way, but this year's been a brilliant, a brilliant tour. Olympics, and on the eve of Beijing, on the eve of Beijing, remember August the 8th, why does drug policy is, you know, it's sixes and sevens. I mean, and it's hard to know what is going on with gear at the Olympics, ten, with the Olympics 10 days away. I mean, how can we be sure that the games in Beijing will not be as red hot as any of the other recent uh, Golden Rings blow-offs we've had? Now, still with the Olympics, and another one bites the dust. This time it's the mouth of the South, jo- mouth of the South John Stephenson. Remember those incredible silver bullets in Athens? Well, Stephenson was one of them. One of them. Our 4x400 metres uh, anchor leg runner, I think. I mean, he's the fastest man in the world. He's, he's bowed out of an Olympic dream. He's, he's pulled a hammy. He's trying to get a load of calves' blood into him in a desperate bid to be able to walk again. I mean, <clears throat> it's getting so bad, Roy, that I don't dare open the paper or listen to the news or go online on the off chance that another one of our stars is Cactus. Mm-hmm. 
And the other thing is, can I ask know it all like John Coates and the Thorpedo Ian Thorpe and the per- Karen Perkins to stop driving around in the fire truck hosing off our Beijing expectations? It's un Australian. Completely against the Olympic spirit, I would have thought. I've never heard I've even heard suggestions from those who should know that it could be slightly worse than Montreal in the medal tally. Oh, Lord. Slightly worse than Montreal. I think we won a silver and a bronze there, and that was all. I mean, that is complete rubbish. Remember, every one of those golds cost us fourteen million, so we want heaps of them. And I, I look, I my advice is get on the green and gold oi 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 train and ride it all the way to the top step of the podium in Nugget Town, Beijing. That's my only advice today. I mean, we've got to unearth stars that we've never heard of before and we'll never hear of again after August the 24th. Still with the big O's, David Carney is the final piece of the Ollie Roos jigsaw. Uh, the missing piece flew into Seoul uh, on Friday to become an Ollie Roo, and I think they lost. Uh, and the Olympic media coverage got an unexpected boost this week with uh, Nick Darcy saddling up as Hot FM's Beijing correspondent. Uh, Obviously, Nick will cover the boxing, and when time permits, he'll be updating the judo and the taekwondo. That is a very good news story, that a bloke who thought he'd be going is now going. Uh, Rugby union, and last night the Wallabies took on the All Blacks in the Bledisloe Clash. The tune at the death, Wallabies 34, New Zealand 19. No real surprises there. This new this new look Wallabies side, world beaters. And remember, this uh, there is a fi- final Bledisloe this year played in downtown Honkers. It would be fantastic to go and have a squiz of that. And motorsport, and a well-known insurance company has won the naming rights to the final V8 supercar hit out at Oran Park. I know Royal and I will be there living a lot of memories. Uh, the Oran Park Hoys is the last as the track's going to be flattened for housing in 2010. 2010. I mean, that's just a couple of years away, 18 months away. No more Oran Park. And uh, this week, very QT on the new Olympic Park V8 circuit. i uh, just got my hand, fingers crossed that it'll all be tickety-boo. And with those few ideas getting the agenda underway, let's ask Rampage and Roy Slavin, uh, what have you got uh, up the back of the pulpit you want to unleash on the congregation this week, Pope Roy? <coughs> yes, thanks very much, HG. Look, uh, just, a, just a few things. Uh, following up on the uh, Tour de France, I thought Cadell Evans was let down dreadfully by his team. I was. Um, uh, the, the, uh, he might be with the Lotto team. Well, I just thought they were hopeless. Uh, all the way through. All the way through. And CSC, what a great team they were with, with an Aussie on board showing the way in, in O'Grady. Uh, I don't think Cadell had a chance. Had a chance. So I'm very disappointed about the way that's gone and I think cadell has got to get, get himself a better team. Uh-huh. Uh, because he last night he was bruised and battered and buggered um, for that time trial and it was just sad to see a great... Australian hero, a hero. hero. Thank you, green and gold hero. Yes, taking on everyone by himself, including the 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 the, the, the Alps as well. Oh, Too no. hard. Yeah. No one could do it. Yeah, he needed a couple of domestiques up front. That's they right. He I mean, even Lance Armstrong had a yeah. team to help him. I know. I know. People forget that. And you see that uh, you know Cavendish's team. Yeah. Look at the way they work. Yes. Brilliant. 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 Oh, no, very exposed, very one out, mm. just him up there. Yep. He, I mean, he was doing the work for all of them. He was. He's not meant to. No, he's not meant to at all. No, no, no. I thought he was seriously dudded. And I don't know if there's a conspiracy there. I, I just don't know. I think there is conspiracy in France to deny Australia ever a gold mm-hmm. jersey. Mm-hmm. A yellow jersey, I should say. At the end of the race. At the end of the race. Mm. Uh, now, Roger has set his sights on Olympic gold in the US Open, which is good news. Uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, Roger, Roger Federer, is he still interested in winning? Yes, he is. Um, now, Nathan Brown's attack, which we've uh, sort of brushed upon, uh, this is the attack on the Melbourne Storm, has been described as irresponsible. Oh. Irresponsible. I'd, and uh, I think this might have legs, this one. Uh, now, the Shark has been invited to play the US PGA, um, despite, as we pointed out earlier showing us again how to lose from the front. Um, Now, Mitchell Johnson, the uh, left arm quick, has uh, left Queensland to join Western Australia. Wow. And I think that whacker deck is really going to suit Mitchell Johnson, who you may recall was described by that great West Australian, Dennis Lilly, as a uh, a a once-in-a-generation bowler. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mighty McDoohan has predicted more fireworks between Casey Stoner and Valentino Rossi on and off the bike. Why, Roy? 
well, they hate each other's guts, uh-huh. according to Mighty Mick. And Mighty Mick knows the sort of passion. I mean, Mighty Mick, a lot of people hated Mighty Mick. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of, you know, on and off the bike and on and off the paddock with Mighty Mick in his career. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people say, you know, what made Mighty Mick so great was that he was prepared to punch other people's heads in <laughs> off the bike. Mm-hmm. And I think this is what he said. This is what he's trying to indicate to, to uh, young Casey Stoner, who, between you and me, is the real deal, um, is to stiffen him up a bit. Mark Winterbottom, speaking of greats, mm-hmm. takes out the city of Ipswich four hundred, and the V eight supercars have been God Almighty. This has been, I think, I think the best year ever of V eight supercars. V eight supercars. I just yeah. think it's been extraordinary. I, I only have one more dream, and that is to get him back at Eastern Creek. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Anstey sees Andrew Bogut as a key to our right. Olympic medal hopes. A key. Right. And this is coming from Anstey. He'd know. He'd know. He'd, he'd know. I mean, he's seen a few locks in his time. He, w- <laughs> he knows when you need a key. Um, now, the firepower fallout is going to hit sport pretty hard, I'm led to believe. Uh, to it, the Sydney Kings. I mean, they're the first casualties of this firepower fiasco that's blown out of the West. Uh, Andrew Gay is appointed to oversee the merger between the NBA and Basketball Australia. I didn't know there was a Basketball Australia. What are they doing? I knew we had an NBA, but where's Basketball Australia been? Well, thankfully, Andrew Gay is going to harness the firepower in Basketball Australia... <clears throat> with a view to getting Australian basketball back where it belongs on Channel 9 during prime time. Now, despite the shark leaping 430 places this week, 430 places. I know. I know. The shark incredible. is now in the top 3,000. What? Yeah. Top 3,000? Yeah. Shark, he's there. A contender. Uh, anyway, Mark Hensby has retained the 231 position in the world, so uh, Hensby's done well this week. Mercy Arms from Sydney, new debut, well, obviously, if it's debut album or CD, it'll be new, uh, debut album out from them in September, and you heard that on The Life on Triple J. Is your granddad shorting out upstairs? You know, repeating himself all the time and can't remember a thing about what he watched on television last night? Well, here is an opportunity to let him go out a winner. Pfizer, F1 ace Michael Schumacher and Australia's own CSIRO have combined forces to create It's Me Memory Replacement Therapy. It's Me MRT replaces the dud wiring in the brain with brand new linkages that allow new memories to replace the old gobbledygook. How would you like your granddad to see his days out as New South Wales super quick Michael Clark or Australian supermodel Megan Gale? Sound far-fetched? Not anymore. With It's Me, memory replacement therapy. Aussies. Have you been letting the side down between the sheets? Has your libido slipped outside for a quick lie down? Have her coming back for a second helping when you introduce her to the miracle of blue light twitching love locks. You've seen them in action in the flesh pots of Stockholm, Amsterdam and Bangkok. And now, for the first time, the twitching love log is available in Australia. Don't be shy. Just see your local doctor and get the green light for the blue light. Holiday makers stuck for somewhere to take the caravan this Christmas? The kids had enough of Dreamworld and Wet n Wild on the Gold Coast? You want somewhere familiar and cheap, yet entirely different and close to home. That's why this year you'll be making a V-line for new old Melbourne town in Vexley. This award-winning theme park is set on 47 hectares and has everything you love about Victoria. See Ned Kelly robbing Glen Rowan Bank. See Peter Layla 
raise the Southern Cross at the Eureka Stockade and see the Ballarat Gold Rush every hour. And when you've had enough of the sights, you can eat yourself silly for $500 at Federation Square House. Opposite the full-scale replica of Flinders Street Station. Then when the little ones are sick of walking, hop on a tram and watch Rod Laver Arena whiz by. That's new old Melbourne Town Bexley, Australia's newest theme park. It's more real than the real thing. Uh, Roy, listen, you mentioned Firepower there, one of the great WA firms of recent years. Um, I'm not quite sure what they did, but they seemed to generate an awful amount of money, which they then... Uh, they promised a tablet that you put in your petrol tank and it increases your uh, your uh, your uh, performance. Was it sort of like an Alka-Seltzer for your fuel yeah, tank? I believe Or so. a Barocca? Something like that, yeah. Mm. yeah. Now they, I think that was the idea. Right. They seem to generate a hell of a lot of money with this technology. Bloody oath. Because they seem to sponsor everything. I don't think they got involved with the bunnies. And, uh, yeah, they did. And a whole heap of uh, mm. other, as you mentioned, the Kings. Should Basketball the Kings, was their yeah. go. Yeah. Well, look, oh, that's, uh, well, well, that's a sad story. Mm. Uh, well, I, I tw- hope it's not all. I hope it's true. I just hope they find this bloke whose name escapes from J- Johnston, his name might be. Tim Johnston. Tim Johnston, yeah. Mm. I just hope they find him. He's somewhere, he might be what? with Sonny Bill, I don't know. Sonny Bill. He might, well, okay. Sonny Bill what? might have gone to meet him. I don't know, but uh, but uh, but I hope they find him and and he can show us how the tablet works. Because no, I exactly tell you right. what, the world's screaming out. If it improves your 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 fuel efficiency, I think this is a brilliant idea. No, look, I'm entirely with you. It may be a system where they put more air into the petrol with the Alka Seltzer effect mm. earlier mm. than when it's combined. There may be some way of errating petrol. That oh, we look, don't no, know no I don't think it's like that. I think it expands the petrol itself, HG. So wow. let, let's imagine you've got a tank that takes, uh, let's say it takes eight uh, litres. 80, 80 litres. Oh, okay, 80 litres. 80 litres. Okay, you put half a litre in your tank if it's empty. Then you add the tablet and then the tank's full. It expands that half litre to, say, 70 or 80 litres. <laughs> it would be great if it worked I like that. I think it's brilliant. I mean, I, I read know. the prospectus and I just I thought, <laughs> God almighty. I, Why hasn't can... somebody thought of this earlier? Yes. How can and I that... get involved? Yeah. Have you tried it in your car? No, you... because I don't know where I can buy a no, tablet. That, uh... And what does do you have put do you every time you fill it up you put half a tank in chuck the tablet in and away you go No you don't put some... half a tank in you put only need to put half a liter in Wow and then add the tablet and then cl- you know close close it off and stand back because boom it expands suddenly you've right. got 90 liters Are you worried about there's some you know the that the how would I put it what? that the information the publicity mm. is not being borne out by the Practice of people sticking the well, you know tablet. No, in the no. I think in controlled situations they've done this, and now they're just waiting to get it ready for public consumption. Right, right. That's all. God, it's going to revolutionise how we drive, isn't well, it? It will. It will. Mm. And, no, man, and you, can you imagine the petrol companies are going to hate this? They are. They are. Hate Especially this. Especially with the price of petrol going down. I know. Like I know that. I know. So all you need is. And, and I, I don't know if they've tried it with, say, a quarter of a litre. <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, but well, just that's... imagine they could get the tablet, make the tablet slightly bigger, and you <laughs> add a quarter of a litre, and then kaboom, fills up your 80 litre can- tank again. It, it, it's fantastic. Now, look. The, and the then great... maybe down to maybe a sixth of a litre and with a really big tablet. Big tablet. Or just a drop out of an eyedropper. Mm. Oh, have... wow, yeah. And then. Well, yeah, I suppose so, logically. Yeah, well, obviously. Just a bigger... Or put two tablets in. I don't know if anyone's <laughs> thought... <laughs> now... But I like it. I Honestly, I'm sold. As soon no, as I uh, someone t- described it to me, I said, where do I get them? Mm, they mm, said, well, mm. you can't yet. Mm. Now, look, Firepower WA is mm. WA firm, I think, and there's now a little bit of sad news concerning the Richmond uh, Tigers Football Club who had a wonderful win over the Brisbane Lions last night. Mm. And now they're going to lose the Australian Finance Group, the AFG, as the major sponsor at the end of this year. Why? Uh, look, I'm not sure whether this is What's part of the subprime mortgage. Yes, that they were their number one sponsor for many, many years. Right. And the Australian Finance Group, the AFG, has 
sadly stop this. And I'm just going to see this idea with you, Roy. Could this be part of the subprime mortgage problems, you know, fallout that yeah, now be. no longer a great Australian firm like Australian Finance Group, yeah. who do have the word Australian in their firm, so they must be great, yeah. uh, are now unable to finance, you know, a great thing like that or a great organisation like the Richmond Tigers Football Club. That's shocking, isn't it? It is. Uh, Tigers is president shocking. Gary March said the bro- uh, mortgage broker was unable to continue its support due to changing financial climate. With yeah. respect to the fact that due to the changing nature of global economic markets, AFG are unable to continue with the sponsors. But AFG has been a terrific partner for the club. We wish them all the best in the future. And remember that uh, I think AFG stepped in uh, in 2004. They filled a breach because uh, left oh, it was a hole. It was a gaping hole over at the Richmond Tigers because the Transport Accident Commission had, uh, look, finished a 16-year association with the club because Jay Schultz became the second Richmond player in four years to be tested for drink driving. Mm-hmm. Maybe the TAC should now, that's the Transport Accident Commission, could, should think again and step back in mm. because it is very good. Either AFG or TAC as sponsors, I've got no problem with it at all. No, oh, no, I've got no problem with it. I'm just disappointed for AFG. Oh, so am I. That, that's a devastating Because that blow. sponsorship really flew the flag for them in a way I know. that... You know, I know. I can't imagine well, Often, you know, I'd be doing. stuck when people come to me and say... say uh, Who should know, I go to get a mortgage? Exactly. They say to me, I, I say, well, AFG. Or the Richmond Tigers football club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. can see you, right? Mm. Look, uh, still with um, football... But when's this subprime going to bloody end? I don't think it's ever going to end. Well, not in our lifetime. I mean, you know, your knock-ons are going to be raising... You know, the knock-on effect on a subprime mortgage, I mean, where could it possibly end? It affects everybody. And so prices will go up and the people will say, in 50 years' time, oh, that was part of the subprime mortgage problems. You know what business is like. Is, is subprime affecting our inflation rate, H? Yeah, I, I, I'm just putting the question out there. I mean, 4.1% in the last quarter. Well, that's a scary number. <laughs> now, has that come from subprime? I, I would say subprime... Underpins, if you know what I mean. Oh, a lot underpins, of that. yes. Mm, underpins a lot I of thought it might have underpinned it. Mm. Now, look, uh, Arden Street, we're the home of the North Melbourne Kangaroos. Mm. It's Let's face it, it's a football club, the North Melbourne Kangaroos, play in third world conditions. I know the United Nations went in there and just declared they just threw up their hands in horror. It's primitive. Mm. It's, uh, you know, ramshackle. It's just got, you know, just devastated, uh, blasted landscape. Mm. Out there, it's a wonder that anybody wants to play at Arden Street anymore. Anyway, there are now plans afoot that will transform the Arden Street from the uh, current ramshackle home of football for the North Melbourne Kangaroos into, a, wait for it, Roy, a modern community hub mm. at like Arden that. Street. I love now, that idea. There's the uh, exclusive designs that we've got here at This Sporting Life uh, indicate a $15 million headquarters, and it's going to include, wait for it, a multicultural centre for local youth and community groups. A multicultural learning centre wow. for local youth and community groups. Wow. These are plans that were submitted to the Melbourne uh, City Council. Isn't that great? They, they hope to get underway, if, if approved, the building should start in August. Uh-huh. And the North Melbourne has secured close to $13 million in, uh, in funding for the new facilities, which uh-huh. include the headquarters of this, as mentioned, multicultural learning and life centre. Wow. So, now, so if you if you had a say, um, uh, you know, a bunch of actors formed a collect a collective to put on a production, they could go there and get rehearsal space and that sort of thing. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Isn't that great? You know, if you wanted to say put on, I don't know, white with wire wheels. Yes. Uh, the great yeah. Jack Hibbard Jack play, Hibbard play that yeah. defined a generation. It did. You might be able to get space there, and you might probably have opened up with uh, root my boot and shag my shoe. That might have been the opening line. Now, can I just say, can I just say that you would be able to do a better production there of it mm. probably than anywhere else that's ever been staged. I just picked that as one play, mm. one forgotten play. Well, it's not forgotten; it's no, remembered by you or me. But what about uh, stretch of the imagination? <laughs> I'd love to see that. Mm. And stretch mm. of the imagination uh, could be you could probably play it there and charge people a mission to come and you see could. what you're doing with it. Yeah, are they happy with that at Arden Street? Well, uh, I, think you, I, I think... People would be able to charge at the door? Is that oh, okay? Oh, that it would have to be negotiated, mm. I think, as long as you made a contribution to, say, some aspect of the life, uh, the Learning and Life Centre. Yeah. Okay. Now, mm. before I go on, Roy, can I see the question with you, which I might like to get your comment. Obviously, you've been associated with the demise of uh, at least one famous football club in our yeah. area, yeah. the Lithgow Shamrocks. Shamrocks yeah. At any point, did the, and I don't want you to answer this now, just a question on notice while I set out a couple of other things. 
Uh, did you ever think of tunnelling back into the community, I suppose, with the Shamrocks? Um, I, I, I mean, I see this as a revolutionary idea from the North Melbourne Kangaroos. Is they, They're obviously homeless. They've got a perfectly good home, but it's just rubbish. They don't want to go to Monica Oval. They don't want to go to Gold Coast. They don't want to go wherever the AFL wants to send them, like Sydney or somewhere. They want to stay at North Melbourne. They want to stay at Arden Street. And the only thing they can think of doing is involving the community more. So when you look at their plans, uh, all Life and Learning Centre children aged 8 to 16 will be brought to Arden Street classrooms to be taught, wait for it, cutting-edge programs, not sure what they are, but as well as anti-racism and drug messages and literacy and numeracy skills. Now, what worries me about this idea is I've got no problem with Wayne Carey coming down and talking about the bad things about drugs. That's fine. You know, they says, my name's Wayne Carey. I used to kick a lot of goals for, you know, North Melbourne, but I was on the piss all the time and eventually my life fell apart. I can see how that works. But literacy and numeracy worry me. If you think the schools aren't doing a good job, would you send your kids along to the Arden Street Learning and Life Centre so as they could understand more about, say, I don't know, Simultaneous equations. Simultaneous equations. Simultaneous which... equations. I mean, I don't see Adam Simpson or Drew Petrie or, you know, I don't know, Harvey or, you know, Campbell or any of them, Hanson. I don't see North Melbourne players, great though they might be, of having time to come down, unlike the Parramatta Eels who have their own books now written, mm. read the Eels way. Well, they've, got their, they've got their own curriculum. Um, they've got their own curriculum. The Arden Street right. seems a little... Well, let's face it, they've got time to get ready, haven't they? They do have time to get ready. In 2010, Look, that's yeah, when it what? opens. Well, they'll have a curriculum by then, and they might drag in people, old fans, you know, rich, you know, sorry, uh, uh, North fans, Melbourne yeah. kangaroo fans mm-hmm. who may have in the past might have been teaching at some stage, you know what I mean, who are now retired, octogenarians, people with a bit of time on their hands who just don't want to sit and watch Huey's cooking adventures who get a little bit bored by that and <laughs> might want to get in front of the classroom again. With a piece of chalk with in hand. With a piece of chalk in hand, yes. But what's happening at schools, Roy? Mm. Surely there would be the North Melbourne Primary School, the Kensington Primary School, the or public school. There would be the such and such street public school, mm. the Errol Street public school in the North yeah. Melbourne area. Mm. I mean, what's going on there? They're not teaching them literacy or numeracy, and they're not, as nearly as I can tell, teaching them football either. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I, look, I, I, I don't want to get those schools offside because no, I'm sure... they're great schools. I'm sure they are great schools and I'm sure the teachers are trying very, very hard. And I don't know what the particular circumstances are there, but if, if kids are being left behind, HG, you know, I, I, I mean, the roller coaster moves so quickly with education these days that you've, you've only got to close your eyes and hop off for a second mm. and you can find yourself with the carousel passing that you've, you've just missed out. No, and understand. you're pushed up into the next class... Yeah. You know, let's say you go from kindergarten to first class Without and you still work. haven't learned how to tie your shoes. I know. Well, I'm that telling you happen. now, they're not going to teach you in first class. They're not. If you've missed out in kindergarten with a shoe tying, well, you're fucked. <laughs> we'll continue. Ransom. And fall back down from the city indestructible on uh, the life on Triple J. Roy, you're absolutely right. I mean... If you miss out tying shoelaces, and I did for many years, mm. I had to go back to special remedial classes when I was nine. Yeah, I know, but, but that becomes, you know, psychologically damaging. You know, I've seen, I've seen, you know, blokes who are in their mid-twenties, you know, going to shoe tying a tech. Now, it's an unedifying sight. Mm. If you walk into a, you know, a technical college... You know, after hours, people that have coming in to do their their uh, their plumbing, extra, their and plumbing and that sort of stuff, and then you get to shoe tying, shoe tying, mm. and and often in those plumbing and and you know poetry courses, you know, it, often I say I say to the lecturers, have you asked, have you asked people in your class whether they can tie their shoes or not? Have you noticed the number of people who are wearing those slip-ons that you don't have to tie up? That's your giveaway there. Thongs. Thongs and slip-ons. Mm. Th- those Can- sort of Italian slip on types. Oh, I, know, know that that I hate them. I hate them too. But people are feet. often forced to wear those because they, they're not game to admit that they can't tie a shoelace. Do you think it's uh, confining and isolating as a problem? Yes, you it know, is. You're afraid to go out of the house because you can't put your shoes on. Well, they're you afraid know, they'll be fearless. going to put into a situation where someone's going to say, oh, just help him tie a shoelace, will you, mate? 
then they're going to have to say, well, well, oh, sorry, I can't. What do you mean you can't? Well, Help learned. him tie his shoelace up. He's having trouble. Mm. Sorry, mate, I can't. Mm. What, you mean you won't? No, I can't. Then there's where your problem starts. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And for many years, I know, I believe that uh, people have felt less of themselves because of this problem. Mm-hmm. You know how these things, it's just a sort of like at the bottom of, the, you know, the princess and the pea problem? Yeah, I know. Right down the bottom? I know. And I, and I, yeah, I, I know, I know. But, but the number of people, the, the correlation, and I've looked at studies, the mm. correlation between people who can't tie their shoes and people who can't read is to astronomical. It's, uh, unbelievable. It is astronomical. It's unbelievable. And people who can't count to ten, let's not forget them. They're the forgotten group of Australians at the moment. Well, often they, they fall into the subgroup of people who can't tie their shoelaces. Now, look... Uh, the, uh, at Arden Street, the players and medical staff have been consulted so they can get the most out of the new training centre. They have to be taught how to use it. Mm. <laughs> Go figure about that. They have to be shown exactly what's in there so they can use it, i.e. where when they see a door with a red cross on it, they think, oh, I shouldn't go in there, even if I've got a busted hammy, mm. where well, in fact they should. They're breaking down barriers. Mm. The Learning and Life Centre will be used by Australian Model Cultural Foundation as an uh, after-hours for homework, uh, shoelace tying classes and migrant English classes. Well, that's all good. Commit- yeah, community groups in Melbourne, how they can really use the centre. We're doing something pretty unique in a football club. Uh, a third of our facility will be open up at literally no charge. Now, you ask about whether your stretch could uh, be staged there for no charge. I think it can. Mm. Coming to the question I seeded with you a little while ago, mm. the Shamrock's demise, one of the most tragic football sagas in Australian football history, yeah. did the club ever think of tunnelling back in the community to find new support? It hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. You know, the, the, the Shamrock Heart is still beating in Lithgow. It's just that there's no club, no clubhouse, no Guernseys, no players, no footballs. But, you know, while ever the heart's beating, I think there's life. And I think mm. we'll see a time, with this explosion of rugby league that's spreading all over the world, I've never seen so much hunger for rugby league players in the world. The fact that they wanted to play something else is a separate issue, but there's this hunger for rugby league players. I'm convinced, totally convinced, that the Shamrocks will come back. And I'm not alone. Would you like to see, you know, the Shamrocks, even at this stage, maybe begin application to the Lithgow Council, the state government, the federal government, mm. for something similar mm. to the in Arden, the Lithgow area? The Arden Street. It, look, I... The Arden Street, where you, somewhere where you could put on, say, stretch... Get your shoelace tying lessons happening. Maybe something more exotic like cocktail shaking lessons because a lot of people hate going out now because they can't make a cocktail. Yeah, yeah. They can only drink beer and that's not good enough anymore. Look, you know, that sort of thing. Things look, I think people... that something that could plug into the community, you're right, something that would give the community a little more confidence because I can tell you, if you've seen as I have, you know, a, a, a 25-year-old bloke, fit as buggery, who can't tie his shoelace. I know. He'll never play he rugby league. No, but once you've taught him how to do it... He will. The change in the personality. Yeah. I mean, the, the, to, to see that confidence, the smile, the, and suddenly everything mm. else falls into place. Uh, you know what he, I mean? He's prepared to take the ball up. Yes. Well, look, I, apropos of that, how about this, Roy? You know the good guys column. You know I love the good guys column. Mm, mm. Uh, Manly veteran mm. Steve Menzies, Beaver. Beaver, yeah. Beaver's yeah. off to England, sadly, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, is using his last season in the NRL to support his younger counterparts through an entrepreneurial award. Uh, he's one of the many faces behind the wait for it. This is your, this is your award. Mm. Mortgage Choice and Imminent Wealth Academy Entrepreneurial Player Award. Mortgage Choice. Imminent Wealth Academy Entrepreneurial Player Award. Which wow. encourages current NRL players to explore their life outside of football, i.e. going to shoelace tying classes. Because don't tell me that a number of manly players, Des has to do it for them. Mm. And they sort of take the boots into the room, tippy-toe into the room and come out with their boots on because mm. they can't do it. Mm. Now, this includes setting up their own franchises and business interests while playing, still playing. The winner of this year's award will be chosen from six finalists. I haven't got a list of the finalists. No. But Beaver, I'm sure if you rang him and asked him, he'd give it to you. He's not being secret about it. It's no. really important to realise that football is not forever. You never know what can happen. Mm. So it's uh, so important to establish yourself in other areas. And mm. I, as I was reading that, the person who came to my mind was Anthony Kuda Kudafides, yeah. who's now connected with the fabulous Sublaki Hut organisation. 
Oh. And I thought, what a role model Cooter has become. Obviously, a great role model on the paddock, catching yeah. the ball, kicking, booting goals, bashing mm. people, bumping into people, etc. Mm. And now, with his Suvlaki hut work, a way forward through mm. a bridge from playing football into the world of business. Look, is the Suvlaki hut a little bit like the Pizza Hut HG? Is that the idea? I suppose so. Not, maybe you, you not quite as You can go and big. order your takeaway souvlaki or cho- decide to eat it on the premises? I mean, are you given that sort of choice? You can, I'm pretty sure. Either decide to eat it on the premises or take it away with you. Mm. And is, but that, I just think, is there that demand for souvlaki in the community, HG? I mean, I... Well, you know, the trouble is being... Well, people would have thought that about pizza in days gone by. Oh, they would have. But, but, about... but now, honestly, people... I see young kids, you know, who can't go for a week without having pizza. No, no. Well, what is I'm not say... saying it's a bad thing. No. You know, I think it's great in many ways because, I mean, you can get any food of the world here now, can't you, in Australia? I mean, if, if you and me in our day had said, look, we might have pizza tonight, people would have put us in jail I know. for f- speaking a I foreign know. language. I know, I know. And now try and tie your shoes. Yes, now look, what and I was saying, Sue would have been the same. I know very much so. But now you can get drive out, drive in, take away Sue Is that right? You can. Well, that's fantastic. And what I was going to say, Roy, what's great about this is it doesn't matter. I don't think whether these things succeed, succeed or not, because let's face it: from the ashes of one enterprise, another one grows. And mm. you know, business—it's not a trip to the terminus on a bus that always pays you a, you know, to get on board every day. I mean, some people are winners and some people are losers. Well, that's true. But that, that's true. And do you, what, what are you suggesting that pizza might suffer because of the inroads Suvlaki. Suvlaki's going to make? I, I agree. I think you've hit the nail on the head. And Mortgage Choice and Intimum Wealth Academy Entrepreneurial Player Award mm. would be just a little step of encouragement to get out there and have a go, mm. even if you decided, oh, bloody hell, Suvlaki or pizza, what a challenge. Which one mm. do I get into? What? Oh, I see. So you're suggesting that Steve Beaver Menzies might serve as a role model as... Uh, in terms of accelerating the startup for someone who might have the idea of opening up a souvlaki takeout somewhere in the Manly area. Well, I think you're absolutely right. Beaver eats here. But um, is that Beaver's role to, well, to, to encourage kids to become entrepreneurial? Um, it does appear that way. Hmm. Uh, rugby, young rugby league players. He says it's really important to realise football is not forever. You never know uh, what can happen, so it's important to establish yourself in other areas. I don't know what the Beeves doing about this. I think he's off to England. Yes, he is. Uh, yeah. And no news, no Suvlaki hut news. I mean, I'm not saying... Well, no, I ha- look, I haven't seen any Suvlaki huts opened in the Manly area. That's not to say they're not there. They might be. I don't know. Mm. Can I say one thing that worries me about this, and, and this is another story, is Steve, you know, out doing this great work with the Mortgage Choice and Inman Wealth Academy Entrepreneurial Player Award. Mm. But then you go to the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs went, uh, they had a, well, a great day. They went beyond the call of duty, should I say, at a recent open training session in Queensland. They're obviously up there playing either the Cows or the Broncos or the Tights. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Brisbane-based fan Danny Hancock uh, told the Friday papers that the players were more than happy to sign autographs with very little fuss. Mm. You could tell they were happy to spend what he described, this is what Danny Hancock described, as quality time with their fans. Isn't that Not great? just a quick hello and a goodbye, but quality time. Quality time. You know, time. talking about the entrepreneurial medal, talking about the development of the Life Learning Centre at Arden Street, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Isn't he, that uh, fantastic? And maybe sharing a souvlaki. Well, if there was time, yeah, I'm sure. Just Not speaking just of which, could, do, you, do you get a Greek salad to take away with that souvlaki? You can if you no, want okay, in good. one of those containers. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay. He paid special tribute to Hazem El Masri mm. and, wait for it, Mr France, Sonny Bill Williams. Oh, really? Who kept the whole team waiting on the bus as they didn't want any of their eager fans to leave empty-handed. Oh, so they're they giving train, Roy. Right, they're, they're, they're giving stuff away as well as signing stuff. I think hats and, you know, not, not real big loot, but hats mm-hmm. and, you know... Canterbury Banks down, you know, food stuff and, oh, okay. you know, obviously invitations to the big night when they're going to announce the Mortgage Choice and Minimum Wealth Academy Entrepreneurial Player Award. Mm. You know, things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't that great news? And to that think Sonny Bill, news. now yeah. in France, was one of the players who was prepared to do that. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe Sonny Bill is being entrepreneurial. Maybe he's just got to duck over to France to, he might be opening some things over there. I don't know. A Suvlaki hut in France. Wow, well, that's a fantastic... Well, I don't know if Sonny Bill's the face of Suvlaki in Australia. I don't know. It might be a tapas bar or something. I don't know. Wow. No, yeah, no, he no, might be, it might be take, take away Metza plates. No, 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 I understand. <laughs> now, that's something I haven't seen. 
No, that is something I haven't seen. That's a very good idea. In a box with sections where each yes. gets in a different section. Yes. Because what I think holds back that idea is it all gets jumbled up in the car seat on the way home. <laughs> Do you know what no, I mean? It'd have to be a, um, say, a compartmentalised polystyrene case that your Correct. various nets are bits and pieces uh, could be slotted into. That'd be the way to go, wouldn't it? And and in a separate plastic bag or indeed a paper bag would be the various breads you would use. You would, perfect. And I like your correction there because the plastic would bugger up the environment where the it paper would. could be recycled. I, exactly. Now, my final good guy comment for the week is Paul Gallen, who's been in the... Uh, been in the wars, hasn't he? Yeah. I mean, I think he was cited again on Friday night. He was. He was. He's literally given the shirt off his back. To, there's no end to what Paul Gallen will do. I mean, oh. probably if he trained a little more, the team would get a bit more out of him, but be that as it may, oh. he's given the shirt off his back to raise money for the Cronulla Surf Lifesaving Club. Oh. The Sharks held a luncheon in the name of the club where Gallen donated way for his State of Origin jersey to be auctioned off. I'll be buggered. The jumper race. This is one that's been in heat of battle. I'll you know, it's bugging. not quite an aphrodisiac, i.e. maroon jumper, but it's no. close. It would have banged into a few maroon jumpers. Yeah. Um, raised two thousand dollars for the jumper that went went directly to the Cronulla SLSC. I'll be back. Gallon joined in a kick for kids at Toyota Clinic. Yep. Saw a hundred children join NRL players mm. in a bid to raise over thirty thousand for the Starlight Foundation. Along with Gallon went Brett Seymour, Luke Koval, uh, Brian Norrie, and Greg Bird. And they wow. delighted the fans with kicking contest all in the name of a good... Isn't that terrific? That is news? terrific. That, and if you... that is terrific. And for kids to see, you know, say your, your Greg Birds and your Gallons kicking a ball around, just fiddling with the ball, I mean, it is just, it honestly, it, it's the it dreams. stuff dreams are made of. It is. Because they can do so many things with the ball. <laughs> they can almost make the ball talk, can't they, these, they these can. professionals? Because they, they're fiddling with the ball all the time. So when you see them do the little things, you know, like they never drop it. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll spin it, they'll spin it in their fingers, they'll, they'll, they'll not look and pass it to each other and the ball disappears disappear up, up a jumper and, and then yeah. they have all sorts, you know, shove it up the date and it disappears and then pull it out again. And honestly, it's astounding some of the things they can do. And kids love it. That's a Roy, great story. It is. Now, Roy, can you see a life learning centre chain developing here? Mm. Something that, say, starts, just for the sake of the argument, so we've got it now, but Manly, mm. uh, Cronulla, mm. hooking up with the Arden Street complex and somehow the whole thing being coordinated, say, from a bit of free space in the Arden Street complex. Mm. Uh, so as Are kids you seeing would, this as a sort of parallel Department of Education? I am. Football education. Football education. Mm. Focusing on the basics. Numeracy, Focusing. literacy and tying up shoelaces. For, 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 for battlers who've fallen through the net. <laughs> or the cracks. Yeah. That's not bad, is it? No. Peace. <laughs> And Shifting Gears, the title of the track from Head Thrash, the CD, Rowdy, and uh, they'll be at Park Life 2008. <laughs> if only they were at Splendour, they could be here next week. That's Plump DJs. And now might be time for the first fat of the afternoon. And now on this sporting life, it's time for the first fat of the afternoon. The fat is as Australian as Barbara Streisand, as new as cats, as wild as Johnny Oakey. What are Australians fighting for this week? HG? Well, it's a tremendous prize, as you'd expect. Women only, the first fat of the afternoon. It uh, is anchored by a copy of the J-Mag, which is out this week. And uh, the J-Mag, you can't miss it. It's got the greats on the cover. Uh, so that's a fantastic uh, bottom rung. Then we've got two CDs, a bit of icing on top of that uh, plain cake. We've got Abby May, Howl and Moan, and Illzilla and Wasteland. So that's uh, Abby May and Illzilla uh, CDs. And then something for the back of the car, a Triple J sticker. So there's the mag, the two CDs, and a sticker for some lucky listener, women only, who can answer the following question. Roy! Yes, the question is as follows for women only. How much petrol do you need in your 80-litre tank before you add a firepower tablet? How much petrol do you need in your 80-litre tank 
before you add a firepower tablet. And Women that only. number, Roy? Yep, one three hundred oh triple five three six. Women only. Oh, now. Oh, the kooks there, and always where I need to be. And uh, that's from a CD called Conk. So the kooks and Conk, who are we talking to, Roy? Yes, we're joined by Helen, who's joining us from Salabanda Bay in New South Wales. How are you there, Helen? I'm very well, thanks, Roy. Now, Helen, did you stay up to watch, uh, you know, Brave Cadell's attempt last night? Oh, God, no. <laughs> no. Did you watch the uh, marvellous test between uh, New Zealand and, and uh, the Wallabies? No, sadly, I was actually at a trivia night. Oh, oh. <laughs> what would, can you recall any of the questions of the trivia night? What was the stumper um, that they set you? Oh dear, oh dear. Um, you know, how long's the Blue Nile? No, just to ask something off the there top. There was of head. one that actually set people right back. It was actually how many bags of wool are there in the nursery rhyme? Bar Six. bar black sheep. Six. <laughs> No, three. No. three. Three. Oh, it's three bags full. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. So that one had us all stumped for a mm. while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you no, didn't have but to I, recite I... the. You didn't have to recite the lyrics to Kaysan by any chance? No, no, I no, no, didn't have that. What was it raising money for, Helen? Yeah. No, it wasn't raising money. It's oh. just a bit of a... I think it's actually just to get people to the club sort of thing, you know. Oh. Wow. Have them, is that, have them spending money. Is that a popular thing in your area? I mean, would um, this be a first of or every Saturday night, this trivia down at the Salamander Bay RSL? No, no, it's actually the Fingal Bay Club. I better, oh, okay. I better, I better say where it was. Is it, is, what sort of club is it? Is it a bowling club? Or Sports a... and Rec. So the football and everything was on. Ah, oh, oh, right. Yes, yes. I all say all so there was televisions dedicated to every kind of sport. Screens you know. around, but you weren't interested. <laughs> yeah, I kind of was. Every time I went to the bar, I sort of had a bit of a look at the rugby oh. union. So once once I knew we had it covered, it was like, yeah, cool, no worries. Right. And, 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 and people. And, and, sorry, sorry. So you, you're suggesting that the, that the the facilities of the club aren't enough to get people along. You've got to have something else. The trivia <laughs> happened. Good question. Oh. Possibly, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's mainly sort of an older people's sort of area, and I guess they all sort of once you know six o'clock hits, they sort of all tend to go home back to their little retirement home. Can you get home. Can you get your dinner there, Helen? I yes, you can, and it's well, I think it's quite a good meal actually. Yes, all yes. you can eat for five dollars, that sort no, of thing. No, 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 just standard bistro fare, but yeah, pretty good. Pretty what good. Bay Marie's that you? Oh yeah, that type of thing. That's oh no, no, actually no. I think it's cooked fresh, made to order. But yeah, yep. So it's a la carte. No, 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 not no. not full on like that. But no. just you know your your steaks and your schnitzels and mm. and um, yeah. But as as you order, so it, you can get a it. good schnitzel and baked vegetables with a bit of broccoli if you. Oh, I could imagine so. I could imagine so. Yes. Well, at a very reasonable price too, I would imagine. Yes, yes, club price. And is there club kino you can play? Uh, there or... was actually there was on there last night, and a mm. um, couple of the oldies that were at another table at the trivia they won a few bit of money on there on the club kino. They did. Yeah. They and, did. And poker machines, did you have a go at those, Helen? No, no, I'm not that stupid. But were there people there playing? Yes, yes. And what about smokers? Were they al- welcomed at all or did they have to stand outside? There's outside areas for smokers, yes. And were there any there? Of, yes, yes. There were. There were not many, but, no. yeah, there were. You, you noticed that the, where the smokers were coming because you get a cold cold draft Blast, would yeah. come in, yeah. And yep. did you imagine uh, if, if, the, if people were allowed to smoke while they played their poker machines in their club Kino, that you'd have more patrons there, Helen? Well, maybe we mightn't have trivia nights, though, so it's a bit of a catch-22. Uh, <laughs> I don't now, know. Helen, could you imagine, say, a retro Saturday night uh, being as big as the trivia night, you know, people dress up, say... I'm not sure quite retro how, but maybe as far back as, say, mm, Saturday Night Fever. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or 70s Night, HGS, 70s, 70s Night. 70s Night. Well, that'd be just fantastic. They probably uh, do um, have them on the odd occasion around the area, around the Port Stevens right. area. Yeah, yeah, I think that gets people out through the winter time when the tourists aren't around. Yeah. Now, listen, the yep. trivia, how many nights, you know, you, obviously last night wasn't a one-off. Oh, was... um, they have it, I think, very sporadically. I think it's like once every couple of months and they, okay. you know, they have a little jackpot question, which um, yeah. which was very tricky. You had to get them both right. And one was about the, what was Tom Jones's real surname? And the other question was, who was the first Australian woman to win an equestrian gold medal at the Olympics. Mm. So you had to get them both right, and within 30 seconds, you would have won $500. Wow. Wow. Yeah, but no one got it because 
the other uh, uh, we said Vicky Roycroft, but it wasn't her. It was is it Gillian or Gillian Ralton or Walton? Yeah, yeah, said to be right, yeah. Gillian Ralton. Her yeah. and the, and Tom Jones's real surname is Woodward. Would you know that? Wow. So there you go. Why would you know that? Yeah. But I tell trivial. you, what, that's great <laughs> things to know. And do you get a, a? Is it a sort of semi-celebrity who reads the questions out, um, <laughs> like Lucky Star or someone like that that'll sing a song and then? Oh, we could only live in hope if you really knew who did it. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, not at all. No. No, that's all right. No, that's all right. And how many people were there for the trivia night well, last was night? Well, it was a pretty quiet one last night. Um, there was about five tables, probably about 30 people. 30 there, people. There and about. prizes, Helen. What was up for uh, offer? Well, a bottle of wine. Wine. Oh. Well, yeah. that's good. Yeah, mm. a couple of, like, for each person at the table. Yeah. So, and... Um, Shoelace tying lessons? No, no, no. <laughs> Well, you know, that sounds like... It's funny like... you should mention that because mm. we've got a, um, mm. a little boy and we've got a, about five years to teach him how to tie his shoelaces, mm. otherwise, you know, consequences will occur. Yeah, they will. <laughs> they, 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 they certainly will. Well, well this, doesn't that sound like a great night out then? <laughs> It was a bit of fun. It was just a bit that of a you go along, you can have a couple of beers. Yes, if that's what you want. You yeah. can play your club keno and maybe drop a couple of shillings into uh, the poker machine shillings, just, like just for that, fun. Really. <laughs> Look at the smokers standing out, huddled around out in the cold, <laughs> and uh, and get yourself a Vienna schnitzel uh, with vegetables and broccoli. And then you got your trivia night. That's right. That's right. And win a First bottle class. of wine. Come, come home yeah. with a bottle of wine. And come home with a bottle of wine. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, now, now, what time did you get in then, Helen? <laughs> Oh, uh, 11. Five minutes before <laughs> about 11 o'clock. Yeah. And you didn't turn on the television because Cadell was, you know, only oh, about an hour away well, from blasting off. No, I was, I was, I was pretty like plum tuckered by then. Yeah, well, you yeah. would be exhausted <laughs> well, with all of that. <laughs> Helen, we could talk all night by about the adventures in the Port Stephen area to while away time and money. But, Roy, set out the question. Yes, the question is as follows. How much petrol, Helen, do you need in your 80-litre tank before you add a firepower tablet? Half a litre. Yes. Half a litre. That's absolutely right, Helen. And so the new J-Mag with the greats on the cover, the two CDs, Abby May and Howl and Moan and Illzilla and Wasteland, and a Triple J sticker, we'll get them in the mail there, and uh, to you, and they'll be there before the next trivia night. Oh, at brilliant. The local, uh, at the local uh, Sporting and Rec Club. And in the meantime, Helen, thanks very much for being part of this sporting life. Thank you. Bye. 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 45. Ah, yes, Muffin Platonic there, finishing up three on the trot on Triple J's This Sporting Life. We began with Weezer and Pork and Beans from Weezer, open brackets, the Red Album, closed brackets. So that was Pork and Beans from Weezer. In the middle there we had Powderfinger and a live version of Rock and Rocks from Vulture Street. And finally, Muffin Platonic, number 45, is the title of that track. And it came from And Then Tomorrow Came. That's our feature album this week here on Triple J. G'day. Remember that dress they made especially for me? The one that fitted like a glove. Remember it looked just like DJ's wrapping paper. Nah, but I'd better push off. I've got to shoot this afternoon for an Italian swimsuit catalogue. Cheerio. Granddad is so much happier since he became Megan Gale. Happiness, that's the real benefit of It's Me Memory Replacement Therapy. It's Me Memory Replacement Therapy. Antique freaks. When archaeologists burst into the tomb at Helwyn outside Cairo in early 2002, they were shocked by what they found. Along with heaps of early Egyptian knickknacks, they unearthed three containers of Istanga art. These containers were lost in transit in 1941 when the Germans rapidly retreated from North Africa. The collection of art in stool has been perfectly preserved in the desert Sands. Featured are works by Rommel, Field Marshal Patton, Monty, King Farouk, and a very young Prince Philip. And subjects include Mae West's feet, Winston Churchill's chin, Stalin's penis, and a series of amusing caricatures of the Fuhrer, Eva, and household pets by Istanga Meister Hermann Goering. While yoga lovers will want to take part in this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to purchase their own piece of Istanga history through eBay, curators warn that these objects do smell. Owner Builders, that new house going up in your street. 
What is wrong with it? The design seems OK. The house-to-land ratio? Not a problem. The grey water mechanisms are state-of-the-art. So what the hell is wrong with it? One, the bricks are imported from New Zealand. Two, the toilet tiles come from Italy. Three, the copper pipe was extruded in South Africa. Four, the white goods are German. No wonder the place stinks. Ask yourself, would former ARU legend John Eels live in an eyesore like that? Uh, Roy, look, uh, the events at the All Bar Nun the other night, uh, look, it must have been a wild old time when (laughs) Todd Carney and uh, the rest of the gang turned up. Uh, I mean, you know, the All Bar Nun is a place that uh, really does pull the... uh, the attractive side of rugby league to its social life. Uh, they, well, the uh, Fingal Bay area could draw, a, take a, a leaf out of the All Bar Nun book, couldn't they? They certainly could. Now, as I understand it, Todd turned up with a utility back from the Raiders, Bronx Goodwin. Mm. Uh, now, and a mate uh, who had come down, I think it might have been a security guard at the bar where Carney was alleged to have urinated on a friend of the Raiders, Prop Dane. Tilts mm. yesterday accused the Canberra playmaker of a history of misbehaviour. Mm. Um, now, just taking the uh, the idea. Wasn't ideas Dane Tilts the bloke who burst into a? Um, it might have been in Bathurst, and it might have been a student's. Uh, oh, well done! Would he have been playing at Newcastle at the time? He might have been. And I think well, Dane just memory? decided to to uh, to pay a visit on some uh, you know some some young students who. Probably weren't thinking of rugby league at the time. No, they weren't. Or certainly weren't thinking of DT at the time. No, either. no. Uh, look, it's it's uh, really got uh, a terrific, what I'd call a, a terrific sense of, uh, this story has got a terrific sense of, you know, rugby league, mm. it's a game for people of all social persuasions. Mm. If you do like you know, wandering into the gents and instead of pointing the purse at the urinal, urinal pointing Percy at, say, somebody's trouser with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny. Anyway, uh, look... Um, that always some... works. It's, it's it very works. funny. Now, oh, look, no, it doesn't always work. You've got to pick your target. You've got to, you've got to have someone with a lively sense of humour. You do. There's no point going in and pissing on Bozo the Clown's leg. Well, no, uh, he's not going to find it funny. But no. that could be funny in itself. You know, often you do it so people don't find it funny. No, and get the shits with you, and then That's they right. chase you. That's it. Now, the security bar- guard who barred Carney last Sunday night claimed the Raiders star was uh, trashing the reputation of his side, the Canberra Raiders, mm. and has a long history of misbehaviour towards, uh, especially towards women. Mm. Breaking this is, uh, I think the Fairfax people got this. Oh. Breaking his silence uh, on the wild scenes of the All Bar Nun last Sunday night, mm. that led to a complaint levelled against Carney for allegedly urinating on a patron. Uh, the bouncer said Raiders management need to take urgent action. The rest of the players aren't a problem. It's Todd Carney. He's ruining the reputation of the team and he's been doing it for years. Jeez. It's just one little pisshead who can contr- can't control his grog. His attitude towards women is nothing short of disgraceful. Mm. He barks at women because he thinks they're dogs. This is the remember. This is the bouncer oh. talking. <laughs> I've seen it for many years. The Sunday night before, he had a, he had to be quietly asked to leave for barking at a girl. Right. He's a perfect example of someone who shouldn't drink. Mm. The other players are embarrassed by his action. Mm. Adrian Pertell called me Monday morning. Oh, it must have been Sunday night when the uh, mm. when the wildest night happened uh, to apologise for what happened. Tills who used to live with uh, Carney, is believed to be furious about being dragged into the incident between his teammate and a friend who has visited from interstate to watch him play against the Roosters that afternoon. Mm. Tilsa's friend alleged that Carney, you know, pissed on his leg. Mm. Mercifully, Sunday prevailed and, you know, he withdrew his complaint. Mm. Elsewhere, though, the night was... Um, Gee, that out. barking business must be funny, though. It, <laughs> well, just hold your horses <laughs> there, uh, buddy. <laughs> Uh, what happened is uh, the telly, the Murdoch people, said that uh, describing the violent fracas, oh. this is, um, I've got a backtrack here, uh, obviously they're worried about, yeah, according to witnesses of the hotel on Sunday night, Carney and Goodwin were described here as out of control on the pizzard. Before the instance, describing the violent fracas involving Goodwin that allegedly left a man with severe facial injuries and Carney's actions, uh, and Carney's actions, the witness told the Murdoch press Carney was barking at women and urinated on Tilsi's friend in the toilet. Mm. 
Mm. Tilsey's mate had come to watch from, you know, etc., etc. The guy was in the toilet and Carney turned up and pissed on his leg, <coughs> up and down his leg. Mm. Several other players tried to calm, attempt to calm the situation and apologise, but Carney and Goodwin, who allegedly hassed other patrons, were removed by security from the pub at about 10.30. Mm. The pair apparently went to the city centre, attempted to gain access to the casino. They refused. They were out of control, witnesses said. Around midnight, the pair returned to the northern suburbs bar, which was closed, and were told to leave the area by security people as people were waiting for taxis. Mm. Witnesses said Goodwin then lashed out at another reveller, mm. hitting him, allegedly hit him in five times in the face. The mm. guy he was hopping in the back of the cab and Goodwin smashed him. Mm. They were good hits. I felt sick in the guts. He copped a flogging. Mm. Bronx smashed someone for no reason. Carney was being held back by a few sponsors. The sponsors were feeding Carney drinks and the two players became drunk, the witnesses said. The neighbours said they heard barking in the street <laughs> for about 20 minutes before the brawl occurred. It was like a real dog, but you could tell it was human. <laughs> I doubt that. Anyway, a neighbour said, Carney was allegedly rejected with the same premises for barking at women, the witness said. Lord, 20 minutes of... Woof, 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 woof. Ah, rugby league, 100 years. <laughs> what a great game. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's just hygiene. I mean, it's rugby league players. I mean, that's why we love them. Well, can that's I say... Why, can, can I just yeah. say, you know, there's, there's so much talk about, you know, rugby league being, being sanitised and corporatised and, you know, I, what, what, what with, uh, you know, these... Dumbed things. down. Well, I don't know about dumbed down, but 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 but, but evened off in a way. Yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about that. Where, where are the personalities these days? You know, and 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 there's been, you know, you look at Steve Menzies, you look at Beaver. You know, you, you might have mentioned his, uh, you know, uh, uh, mortgage choice, award. an eminent wealthy academy entrepreneurial player award. <laughs> well, can I just say that it's a broad spectrum. You know, no, you're allowed to have those types. You're Steve Menz, you're Beaver types. But you need your Todd Carneys as well, don't you? To, well, you know, I... that, that, to, to give it that element of danger. Yeah. I mean, that's why yeah. people love rugby league. That's why people yeah. are over the moon if, say, a first-grade rugby league player's moving in next door. You think, oh, you beauty. It's I might have on. to watch television. No. Mm. No, mm. it's going to be fantastic. I mean, can you imagine how exciting it must be for someone out there who has Todd Carney living next door? <laughs> Look, as you know, I went to... Immediately, this story broke all by none. Drove to Canberra and got hold of the CCTV footage of the club. Mm. I wasn't looking for any anything lewd or unseemly or just to take the vicarious pleasure that I often do of seeing somebody pissing on somebody's pant leg. Mm. I was looking for the announcements, the announcements that alerted the patrons in the All Bar Nun Club that rugby league players were on the premises. There how no, often, how no. long on this program have mm. we recall, called mm. for legislation to be introduced yeah. that all club owners and mm. uh, operators of bars, of, uh, you know, things like the, what was it called, the Salamander Bay Sport and Rec Club, mm. as soon as a rugby league, a registered rugby league player, mm. suggests to the patrons on the public address system. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention? There is a rugby league player on the premises. You have been warned. Mm. You have been warned. If you don't want anything to happen, leave now. If you're offended by people barking at women or pissing on your leg, leave now. You have been warned. Mm. Legislation Mm. should be enacted in state parliaments and federally for this to be mandatory at all licensed premises. Mm. I think that would save a lot of problems. Well, it would. Now, well, it would. Would, would. would, yes. Now, Todd Carney... That's what I'd call a common sense. I know. I know. There was none of that at the All Bar None. Hmm. They tolerated the, having these rugby... So the All Bar None made no announcement that Todd Carney was on the premises. The premises. None at all. None at all. Or, they the Dean Til- or the Dane Tils was with him with his mate from interstate. <laughs> Who'd come to watch the uh, Who'd game? Who'd come to watch the game? Yeah, and obviously enjoy now, himself. Obviously, it was a big win, and people mm. have to celebrate. I accept that, mm. but they can do it in a forty-acre paddock and not cause that much, you know, problem for people. Mm. But here, they decided to do it in the close, conf- close confines of the All Bar Nun. Is the All Bar Nun in Canberra or Queanbeyan? Do we know? Oh no, good question. I couldn't give you the address because no. I know there'll be a rush. Oh, well, there would be uh, on it now. It'd probably it's uh, trading will have gone through the roof. Yes. Uh, look, I can't quite... No, that's all right. Yeah, It's just I, I haven't been there. I, I, I don't know it. I can imagine it, though. I'm, I'm sure it's a terrific place. Mm. 
Now look, Todd Carney. This is uh, the Fairfax. Back to the Fairfax people again. Todd Carney was Todd Carney was a last minute no show at a women in league dinner on Canberra on Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> they get it absolutely right every time, don't they? Rugby league. <laughs> what was the <laughs> idea of the women in league night? Well, I think uh, you know? Todd was going to be guest speaker. <laughs> Todd Carney was last minute no show at Women in League dinner at Canberra on Wednesday night mm. after his well documented <coughs> nighttime antics earlier in the week. Mm. Uh, the Raiders halfback who was stood down from the squad for his wild night was due to attend the function with mm. his mother Leanne. Oh, Leanne was going. Mm. Leanne Carney. <laughs> but organisers sent out a release just hours before the dinner after allegations against him come to light announcing that his uh, replacement, mm. replacement in the Canberra team for tomorrow's clash against Mark Herbert, would attend the event instead. Oh, you can you, you, God, you can hear the disappointment in the room now, oh, no. can't you? Mark oh, Herbert. Who? Who? Mark, who who's We're coming? here to see Todd Carney. Oh, no. We <laughs> want to see Carney. Todd. Give us Todd. Todd. <laughs> T-O-double-D. <laughs> T-O- the MC would have had a hands full, wouldn't he? Mm, Especially sure. when the questions came, you know, when he's, you know, mm. you know, from the floor. Yeah. You know, why are you here, Mark, and not Todd? Yeah, where's Todd? Um, now, this all by an toilet, though, HG. I mean... Uh, not big... No. And chronically under-equipped. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're... I can tell you this for a fact, having looked at it, because obviously I went uh, straight there, made a beeline for it, mm. and took some dimensions. If three people wanted to have a go at the same time, it would be, you know, You'd impossible. end up with something on your leg. You would. <laughs> now, the dinner was held as part... Wait for it. The dinner that Todd was going to be the guest speaker at mm. was held as part of a number of events to celebrate 100 years of women... Women's involvement in rugby league. Oh, well, what a great night, yes. A- and about and, time and the women were acknowledged, too. <laughs> Indeed. And can I just say that a lot of people <clears throat> mm-hmm. who live near the Orbar Nun Club mm-hmm. had gone along hoping to hear a bit more woof, woof <laughs> magic from Todd. Because he do, can do you know, oh, he he does, those dogs. He's great. Oh, he does a cocker spaniel. He, he does a great little Alsatian. More than that, he's he can fox bark son. Yeah. You know, you can do all that. You remember in the old days they used to have novelty records yep. where they'd get woof, 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 woof. That's right. All that sort of stuff. He can do it all. Yeah, I know. It's fantastic. But the barking is uncanny. It is uncanny. But look, yeah. I would like, I'm glad you've seen the Auburn Nun toilet because often with those toilets you do, I mean, the troughs can be that narrow that if you do have three blokes in need, it, it is often... You know, at that time of night, your direction is not as good as it might be. It's not, that's true. And And sometimes, you know, a pubic hair finds it down across the mouth, across the mouth of the the penis and can force the... The, 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 the weed to come out at odd angles. Oh, yeah. And look, and, and will inevitably go over someone's leg. I know. And often somebody comes in and says, hey, Todd, want another one? And you turn around what? and answer, and yeah. all of a sudden it's all over the bloke it's next door. It's all over the bloke next door, quite yeah. accidentally. And accidentally, and it's quite a stream often at that time of oh, night. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let's face it, D- D- Dane Tilsa's mate from interstate didn't press charges, did he? No. No. Mm. No, it's very good. It's very good. Now, look, just put that all that on pause because there's another great story, and this will involve one of your mm-hmm. favourite players. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I tell you what, too, j- just quietly, HG, mm-hmm. that often a bit of wee on your leg can be a bit of a chick magnet. Can it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. What? He's so eager he can't hold it in? That's well, sort no, of if, you, if you cut, cut an arc through a room... And you've got a wee stain down, say, the outside of your of your trouser. Mm. Often mm. that'll pull heads, you know. <laughs> but people will like, well, 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 ask questions, you know. Well, you I tell you what, the next time I piss myself... Love the myself, look. <laughs> the next time I piss myself, I'll make a do for the women in league <laughs> day and see how I go. Now... Mm. Just a week after being listed as one of the reasons that forced Mark Gasnier mm. to French rub- Rugby Union, I had no idea that this was going on. You yeah. know how we get those Tarzos mm. in our packets of chips? Yeah, he's described as shimmy whoosh. Yeah. Well, now, this is one of the reasons that he's on that. It forced him to France to play Rugby Union. Because of the Tarzo? Yeah. You know, the chips have been blunt. Now, <sighs> that Tarzo, I don't know. Why, I suppose he expected more money from it. Oh, I see. Was well, oh, this from... part of the third party stuff? The million yeah, dollars that didn't come happened. his way. Yeah. Anyway. Well, how many chips did he think they were going to sell on the basis of his bloody pathetic Tarzo? Well, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't know that you were going to get him. 
it was a one in a million probably chance that you'd get him. The fact that we jagged him three or four times in a row just, you know, meant that we got a lucky batch. Yeah, well, we did. We haven't got the Todd Carney. That's a pretty hard no, one. No, that's the one we wanted. Mm. Shimmy Piss, I think that's got written <laughs> on it. Now, how about this? Uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Now, the Tarzo football cards found in the chips have been blamed for exposing children to a hardcore porno on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, You Lord. couldn't make this stuff up, could you? Oh, how? What's the story? Okay. Smiths and the NRL were this week forced to launch an investigation <laughs> after complaints that kids Googling the website listed on the chip packets were inadvertently being directed to a porn site. Gemma Jamison's finest work, apparently. <laughs> As a result, the company uh, advised customers to go directly to www.smithsfooties.com.au and not use search engines to access the site. Obviously, it's got... I don't know how you make that Smith's footy. That must be some sort of code in the adult entertainment industry for some sort of weird action. Because All right, so... If, well, hang on. Are you suggesting if we just Google Tarzo... You go to a... Probably. Plus, plus Shimmy Whoosh. <laughs> you end up... Oh, Shimmy Whoosh might be it. Oh, sweet Shimmy Whoosh would certainly get me into trouble, wouldn't it? It would. Now, look, guessing your last week question how much money Smith's made, this a uh, crisp maker, mm. made out of his footy cards, while concerns have also been raised about children being encouraged to buy chips so they can collect Tarzos. I mean, honestly, how much money they made out of making Tarzos or the idea that people would buy chips because the Tarzos were in there. Mm. I mean, I haven't noticed much advertising for chips based on the idea that Tarzos are in them. Have you? No, I haven't. No. No, but I have noticed that that uh, packets that have Tarzos in them often don't have any chips at all. <laughs> I've noticed that too. You know, I think you'd, you'd be better off buying a packet of Tarzos on the off chance that you might get a fucking chip in it. Check me out. Ah, uh, Ben Queller. And I don't know why. Ben Queller, and I don't know why. And we're having a lot of fun with the smoothie, smithsfooty.com.au. It's so a shocker, actually. That's shocking. I know. I know. <laughs> but why, hasn't that that been, why hasn't that been fixed already? Well, I've got no idea of how that would work. I assume that the uh, site that you can access is outside Australia, whereas they wanted, the, mm. they wanted people to go to the Smith's Crisp, footy, Smith's Crisp site. Hmm. Not the, um, you know, the, the, the I, I've, got, I, I've got very little understanding of how some of these things are organised, except somebody didn't check. Mm. Um, well, by I the tell by, you what, it's, you get a serious bloody shock. It's yeah, well, it's, now. I know, I know. Mm. Uh, I was going to say there's a terrific bit of internet vision mm. up at the moment concerning the, uh, the downfall of the crows Oh, yes. uh, I use the word downfall as in it's a slab of uh, the downfall, the movie, you know, with Bruno Gantz and about the last days of Hitler. Oh, and yes, yes, that was a very fine film. Very fine film. Mm. Well, what's happened is is that some enterprising uh, people of, uh, uh, <clears throat> when Hitler goes obviously off the rails at the end, have imagined Hitler a Crows supporter being very disappointed with their um, with their season and have translated or put up subtitles which indicate what Hitler might be saying about the Crows. It's very entertaining. I bet it is. Yeah, very what good. a great idea. Yeah, very clever. Very clever. Mm. Very clever. Easily the best thing I've seen in ages. Mm. Now, uh, Roy, look, I'm. are you worried about this Mundine fight coming up? Look... Well, um, now, now, which one's this? The this Dan is Crazy the... Kim. Oh, Crazy Kim. Wednesday right. night, Newcastle. Oh, right, Newcastle. Uh, what, the International it... Sports Centre opened by the Queen in 1973? Is that where uh, it is? I think it is. An or, the broad man, or the broad Broadman had basketball stadium, perhaps. Look, what I've got here is he says uh, he thinks he's... Now Chuck thinks he's been fighting out of his weight for a long time. Oh, he thinks he's... he should be a lot lighter, is that it? Yeah, I think so. He's, he's mm. uh, on the eve of his first bout below super middleweight. Mm. Mundine says he's had no problem shedding the uh, four pounds required to make the 164-pound limit. Right. He said he could easily drop another four pounds into the middle weight. Wow. There's tiny variations, though, four pounds. Um, he said, um, 
But it's more than eight weeks since his last defence of the WA uh, middleweight and the mm. title relinquished. He wanted to go after Winky Wright and so on. Yeah. He says uh, Mundine wants to make the transition a gradual one, particularly as the Japanese opponent, Crazy Kim, mm. is a renowned big hitter. He's 28 and four. This is a very dangerous fight uh, for me because this guy can whack. Oh, I've wow. seen some tapes of him, and he's like George Foreman. He just loads up and lets it rip, especially wow. with the right hand. Okay. Well, he's, he's going to have to keep his eye out for that right then. If that's he does, the... you know, so I've got to make sure uh, I keep my left up and evade his big bombs because he's got a punch Oh, well, he's thought it through then. He's thought about it. He has. He's worked it through. Do we know why Kim's called Crazy Kim? No, no. Why? That would be the fascinate. as far as I'm concerned. Or is it one of those accidental things of language, like fighting Harada really had nothing to do with... No, I know. Being able I know. to fight or not? Yeah, it, his crazy real name was might, fighting. Yeah, like crazy. He, his real name might be C R A Z I or something. Yeah. No, fair enough. Mm. Uh, but it'd be great if he was crazy for genuine reasons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in a sort of Todd Carney way. I know. I know. I immediately thought of TC when you said it. <laughs> it's a good step for me, especially uh, going into this weight. And this guy fights from middle uh, weight to light heavy. Oh. So he knows he's going to be bigger man. He'll probably come in into the ring. I'll probably come in about 168 where he might come in at 180. He's coming in at 180. Crazy Fans. Kim. Crazy Kim. But I've done the hard work so I, and I've written the script. And I know what I'll, I'll be ready. It'll be like taking an axe to a mosquito. But I don't think he means that. Taking an axe to him. Have you ever tried to kill an axe, a mosquito with an axe? I have. I mean, you just do a lot of damage to your walls. <laughs> it usually takes more than one blow. <clears throat> well, yeah. Now he says, I want to be extraordinary. Uh, and well, He wants to be extraordinary. Yeah, and how is he going to be extraordinary? As Mundine has been training twice daily, mm. either in the gym sparring opponents or going on 10-kilometre runs. Wow. That uh, and to be extraordinary, you've got to push your body. I've been feeling great in the gym. Mm. At this weight, I've been uh, feeling lighter, feeling sharper, feeling faster. Mm. And I'm still holding my power, so hopefully another four pounds won't do much. I've never struggled to make the weight. Not ever. I, I've, I've never dieted mm. uh, before. And as you can see, I'm eating chocolates. I've been pretty much on the weight for the past uh, month, 164 pounds. So I know I can make the weight quite comfortably. And what is uh, the weight that he's got to make if Crazy's coming in at 180? Well, I don't understand this. I don't understand Or this can Crazy all. just blow up as much as he likes and nobody cares? I think Crazy, uh, the name goes with the territory sort of thing. Oh. He's a big, you know, obviously a big bloke. Well, if he, sees himself as, if he sees himself as George Foreman, he must be crazy. Well, given that he's only 180 pounds, 180 well, pounds. Well, yeah. I don't, I don't know where that goes. I don't understand that at all. Unless he means that when he gets in the ring, mm. he's going to be closer to, well, 168, 164, 180. Would they be allowed that much variation in a weight division? Well, I wouldn't have thought so. No. It, it all seems very odd to me. Look, we'll take a short break yeah. and come back with some derb disturbing news from the Olympics. <laughs> Oh, yes, the Ting Tings. Fruit Machine. And we started nothing on the Life on Triple J. Now, Roy, this Olympic drug scandal oh. bobbed up this week again. It's always lurking about, of course. Mm. Uh, it's described here in The Australian as an insidious ongoing doping culture in China. Mm. Uh, there's evidence of this has been published. Games 17 days away. Now, mm. a multinational investigation of the doping trade found... Mm. A, a hospital was willing to perform gene therapy on an Olympic athlete, an easily accessible black market uh, for human growth hormones, steroids and EPOs, a band coach who has returned to the national team, a former Chinese swimmer who has revealed how she was doped in the 80s. Now, these find findings were broadcast on a German television documentary titled Flying High in the Middle Kingdom. Mm. Some of the research was conducted by the uh, Times, that's the Times of London, swimming writer Craig Lord... And now, anti-doping agency Gen uh, director General David Howman described the revelations revelations as worse than my worst fears. Bloody hell. worse than my worst fears. The investigators filmed the head of a gene therapy department on the Chinese hospital agreeing to give a stem cell treatment to a fictitious American swimmer. And how about this? The quote: "We have no experience with sports people here, but the treatment is safe, and we can help you." The doctor told the American swimming coach it strengthens lung function and stem cells go into the bloodstream and reach organs. It takes two weeks. I recommend four intravenous injections, 40 million stem cells, or double that 
Mm-hmm. The more, the better. We also use human growth hormones, but uh, you have to be careful because they're on the doping list. Mm. Now, Toronto sports doctor uh, Mario Di Pasquale mm. told the documentary there was ongoing trade in China. And I have several incidents where athletes, and uh, this is from talking to coaches and other people that I've direct knowledge, that several professional athletes in sports such as soccer, football, and several amateur athletes, even on elite Olympic level, have gone to China and had gene doping performed. These doctors, I can't give their names, are involved in the university clinics, they're involved in hospital, they're also involved in personal clinics. Mm. The Howman, going back to, you know, remember he's the World Anti-Doping Agency director, said it made him sick in the stomach. Sick in the stomach that this was going on. Mm. Uh, Are stem cells illegal, HG? I mean, okay, we're allowed allowed to stem cell up, aren't we? How would you trace a stem cell insertion? Well, you couldn't. You couldn't, but, I, but, but is stem selling is, is stem selling someone is, is or stem selling a cell is, is that doping? Well, remember, of course, until about a fortnight ago, uh, the use of Viagra wasn't di- doping, and now it's become doping. It's become doping already, Viagra. Yeah, as I understand it, yes, yes, Viagra is on the banned list. Right. Now, uh, Howman says this is very distressing. Mm. It's scary that health professionals should have such a, a lack of ethics uh, and try what we know to be experimental on humans for vast amounts of money. It doesn't match up to the standards that we ordinarily require of doctors and other medical practitioners. Mm. This sounds like East Germany, doesn't it? It does. This is even more dreadful because what they're proposing to do is a total breach of prohibited list of standards we have implied to make sure that cheating through the use of gene doping or gene therapy is prohibited. Mm. And it's very distressing to see that it uh, perhaps has been used now or could be used in a country where the magnificent event, obviously the Olympic Games, soon. Mm. Now... A company called Gensai, Grid Supply EPO. The substance is, you know, obviously is a doping substance according to our government. That is why we are not supposed to sell this before the Olympics. But after the Games, business will be much easier again. Thank Christ for that in their terms. Mm. The documentary also p- explored the history of, uh, you know, obviously doping in China. Oh, well, well it goes a, back to... goes back several thousand years, doesn't it, it does. HG? It does. Mm. Are you at all worried about... Yes, doing... look, I am. I am. And I'm wondering if it's still possible to remove the games from Beijing. At this late stage? Mm. Have you got a city where they could go easily? Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> With the World Youth Day just having gone... We know everything's ready here in terms of public transport. Look, the big we, thing... We know the be... facilities are still there. I mean, Stadium Australia is still as magnificent as it was. And Ramwick is job-ready now because they, they haven't got rid of everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. What an interesting idea. Look, well, I thought you were going to say something slightly different. Is it too late to get any gene shearing done on, say, one of our uh, oh. busted athletes? Oh, well, that's why I asked about stem cells because, yeah. I mean, if we could get Jana Rawlinson on the, on the, on the stem the cells, cells yeah. and uh, <clears throat> maybe... Oh, Stefo. Stefo. John Stephenson, sure. yes. And, and if that was all legal and if it was going to help, I don't see I don't, I don't know the science well enough to know whether that whether drinking a bottle full of stem cells is going to do it or not. No. I don't know whether you've got to target them to no. specific areas. No. Look, can I just say that uh, <clears throat> let's say you know how kids go through growth spurts. Mm. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's a young kitty out there who might like feet bigger than Ian Thorpe's and whether we could nip out the gene that turns off the growth of feet. See, this has always been my dream, as you know. Mm. to get in there and tinker about so we could have very big-footed people going up and down for Australia in the green and gold. Mm. And I know, sure, it's a bit unlikely. No, look, I think all that's possible, Mm -hmm. but but, but that's for down the track. Yeah. I was just hoping to get a growth spurt between now and August the 8th. And uh, really, I know probably, you know, selection processes and all that sort of stuff, there'd be a million problems. But we're talking about the Olympics here. We're talking about gold. We're talking about $14 million for every gold medal we get. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it's costing us. Mm. And so far, all we've got is busted-ass crocs going over there or people who are likely to break down. We've got that kid, Matty Helm, with vertigo and the diving. We've got Stefo's gone, Rawlinson's gone, and even Ringwood Cockatoo. Mm. And we lost our walker, didn't we? To Nathan Deeks. Nathan that's Deeks. Right. Yeah. Although I have said, to, I've written to the um, walking organisation and said I'm prepared to go. Mm. At a stopgap. I mean, I've never tried to walk 50 kilometres in my life, but I feel, you know, as so though somebody had to make it, put their hand up and say, well, you know, if no one else do it, I'm prepared to. Yeah. Well, well, Deeks was guaranteed gold, wasn't he? I, I mean, know. I mean, well, Rollins was pretty close was to gold. Stephen said, Stefo off. Stefo was going to get gold. And Ringwood Cockatoo. Gold. Yeah. Mm, 
So we're just four sidebar. down. We're four down, aren't we? I know. Just sidebar on that. <clears throat> Mercifully, Andrew Hoy escaped <clears throat> those charges this week. Oh, those Trump uh, charges. a horse with uh, spikes in the front of his shoes. Yeah, yeah. That was good. Well, that had love gone wrong about it, didn't it? it? Did. That whole mm. allegation, that whole, you know, just to get his mind off, of, you know, elsewhere so he couldn't focus on Beijing. Because I've, oh, no. I've got Hoy down for gold. Well, well, I'm not sure where the Hoy tilt now is. Well, it was gold up he's... until a few months ago until this bloody lunatic charge was put against him. Yeah. Now he's escaped then, but he may be too late to get the Hoy tilt back on the rails oh, on Beijing. I see. Bound. Right. Uh, because Ringwood Cockatoo, the great the great Ringwood Cockatoo, I think was connected more with the missus. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know who, what he's got left in the what what uh, horse bolts he's got left in the lock or horse shots he's got left in the locker. Yeah. But well, anyway, I think the problem is with with a lot of Andrews horses. Uh, Andrews horses at the moment is they're injured. I, I don't know why, but they've got a lot of bleeding around the shoulders. <laughs> Might be time for a second fat of the afternoon. And now on This Sporting Life, it's time for the second fat of the afternoon. The second fat is brought to you each and every week by Mad Dads, the Woody's Float, Actar Technology and Chunky Chains, the rolled gold links that have your head coming out better. What's on the chopping block this time, HG? Ah, well, King, look, a terrific prize again, anchored by the J-Mag with the greats on the cover, the current issue of the J-Mag, two CDs, White Williams and Smoke and Lyrics Born and Everywhere Once. Uh, two CDs plus a Triple J sticker for the back of the car alongside that rabbit you've got there, which is looking lonely. So a new J-Mag with greats on the cover, two CDs, White Williams and Lyrics Born and a Triple J sticker for some lucky listener who can answer the following question, Roy. For all comers, Googling what will definitely get you into trouble. Googling what will definitely get you into trouble. That and that number again, Roy? One three one three hundred oh triple five three six. All comers. Phone now. Yes, telling the story of the Joker and the Thief in the Night. Wolf Mother there. Now, Wolf Mother, they're going to be playing Splendour in Grass uh, next weekend as part of, guess what, Splendour in Grass 08. Uh, who are we talking to, Roy? Uh, yeah, we're joined by Mike, who's joining us from uh, Turner in the ACT. How are you there, Mike? Well, thanks, boys. How are you? Yeah, very good. Now, Mike, being in Canberra there, are you near the All Bar Nun Club? Uh, I'm actually around the corner from All Bar Nun. It's a, it's a happening place in the ACT. I bet it is. Do you get there often? Uh, I've been known to go down on a quiet Sunday afternoon. It's uh, renowned for its Sunday sessions to, uh, to have, have a quiet pint. Now, uh, if, uh, the, the, the toilets, uh, the trough there, is it... Well, look, to be honest, I'm surprised there hasn't been an incident earlier because yeah. there's a, a woefully insufficient amount of space at the urinal. Yes. And I'm surprised that, you know, uh, a rugby league star hasn't been caught out earlier yeah. uh, yes. by the poor planning. Yes. Uh, Mike, if a person was barking, would you be able to hear out the front of the all bar and would you be able to hear it from your place? I'm, I'm pretty sure I would have heard it and, uh, and mm -hmm. I did hear some strange noises uh, a last Sunday, but I was convinced it was an actual dog. I think uh, Carney's done that good a job. Yeah. yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally speaking, do uh, is there any, um, you may not have been uh, there at this time, but is there any attempt of a now, uh, by the club uh, owners or people staffing the club to make any announcement either on the public address system uh, or by sending around a note saying rugby league players are on the premises, you have been warned? Uh, no, well, I don't think there's been uh, official moves by the, the club owners, but it certainly happens via word of mouth. Right. I think uh, word, word, word is spread amongst the punters that, uh, you know, things might get a little bit loose uh, pretty soon on. So if, if you want to keep your, uh, your, your trouser leg intact, get out of there. Right. Are, are the Raiders frequent visitors to uh, the All Barn Nun at all, Mike? Oh, you can't go there on a Sunday without seeing them. Oh, that must be fantastic. Well, that must pull a crowd knowing the Raiders are there. Well, it certainly does. I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity for people to get close to their, you know... Heroes. Hero, ru rugby league heroes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, would uh, you say that uh, it's lost um, a certain more how it is, select group of its clientele because it's become a Raiders hang? You know, uh, for the parking and the pissing on the leg and all those things. <laughs> I mean, no, that's not everybody's cup of tea. I understand that. But I well, know a lot well, of people who do enjoy it. Well, no, of course not. I think that uh, certainly their, uh, their attendance will suffer because some people don't like it. 
But I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing, as you mentioned earlier, some of the folks from maybe the outer areas of the ACT, like Queanbeyan or Cooma, uh, coming to the All on a Sunday to see, uh, you know, the, the antics of their local uh, rugby league heroes. Stars, yeah, for mm. yes. Yes, what a great idea. What a great idea. See, I would have thought that would have been a real magnet uh, for, for, you know, women wanting to meet blokes, interesting blokes. Well, I, Women I, in I, league, Roy? Women in league, yes. I think that, uh, you know, if, if a young lady was looking for a bit of companionship, she mm. could really couldn't do any better than going to the All Bar Nun yes. on, a, on a Sunday afternoon. Just and, on uh, the hope. What, yeah. what would the, Mike, uh, you might not be able to tell me this, but what would the All Bar Nun's main competitors be? You know, for instance, if a club wanted to become the centre of rugby league uh, action, off-field action, uh, you know, where could the, you know, where could the Raiders maybe run over next? Uh, well, you see, all by nuns in, in the leafy suburb of, uh, of Turner in sort of the suburban regions of, uh, of, of Canberra, but perhaps maybe the Ainsley Footy Club. Oh, yes. that, 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 that's another, uh, that's another uh, quiet sort of suburban area that is right for the plucking. Right. Uh, but, I mean, if you want to move more into the CBD, uh, you've got, you know, your, your Canberra favourites of your moose heads. And, yes. and your academy and, and those sort of places. Yes, very good. So you're not, should the all bar none, should, I don't know, officialdom frown unkindly on the all bar none, there's other pl- plenty of places to open oh, up and take a, up the slack. A, a, a plethora of, of clubs that would love to see some patronage from the NRL. I now, Roy, set would. out the question. Mike, have a swing at it. Yeah, no, yeah, before I get there, Mike, what have you yes. been doing with your afternoon? Now, and, and a couple of things. Did, did you watch uh, any of the feast of sport that was on last night? Uh, well, I'm actually driving back to camp from Sydney this afternoon, uh, and I was uh, at a party uh, last evening. I was lucky enough to watch uh, the Wallabies play, and as the party wind down, a bit of the Tour de France. Oh, fantastic. What a great night then. Well, you... well, yeah, it was It was really, uh, you, you have turned it well, it was a feast of sport. It was a feast. Now, you enjoyed the test match. It was a great test match. <clears throat> it certainly was. I, uh, I, I, I enjoyed watching it. Yes. And uh, I enjoyed uh, getting into my father-in-law, who's a New Zealander. Oh, well, that's, that added yeah. spice to it. But mm. you, you can almost see why Guido gets his money now, can't you? Oh, he's, he's a very talented footballer, although I'm still uh, still perplexed with Beric Barnes' headgear. I, can't, I just can't wrap my head around it. It's, it's just a bit too different from mine. It is a little bit uh, weird. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. But, uh, no, I, I, I thought they did a terrific job last night. Mm. Very good. And Cadell, you felt he's ripped off by poor teammates? Well, I think uh, he, he certainly was uh, let down by, uh, you know, Silent Lotto. I think it's been that way uh, from the start of the tour. But, uh, you know, there's always next year, as a young man said. Although I've been, uh, it's been interesting to see how he's been handling the media. Mm. I enjoyed seeing him headbutt a cameraman uh, earlier on in the week. Yeah, that was good. And, Maybe you know a bit of a crossover. Maybe they've been he's been taking some lessons from some of the boys from the league. Well, maybe when he gets back to Australia, you can head straight to the All Bar None. <laughs> I'd, I'd certainly like to see that happen. Now, uh, googling what will definitely get you into trouble? Shimmy whoosh. Yes, very good, uh, Mike. Uh, the uh, two pack, uh, should I say, the uh, featuring the new J Mag with uh, greats on the cover. The two CDs, the White Williams and Lyrics Born, and the Triple J sticker will get them in the mail to you, and they'll be there before the next Sunday session of the All Bar None. In the meantime, thanks very much for thanks, being part Jeff. of this sporting life. Have a good day. See, See you, Mike. Ah, yes, MGMT from New York City. MGMT and Electric Field from Oracular Spectacular. And you heard that on the Life on Triple J. At New Old Melbourne Town, every second week is Bush Week. Come on out and hear Mally Mal's bicycle band thumping out Cobber classics like Diamond Peg. I was a salty bum boat boy. And their latest hit, Sad Ned. See young George Gearside, the old smithy make a pound of nails in the twinkling of an eye using the family forge that has not been turned off in 56 years. Eat fresh damper pulled from hot coals with lashings of homemade jam and wash it down with genuine billy tea that has been swung three times round Grandad Desi's head. Dance yourself senseless when legendary country caller Stumpy McGuinness, the man with the loose toe, barks the call for the butter beef jerky jig. That is all in Bush Week, every second week at New Old Melbourne Town, Bexley. It's better than the real thing. Did you know that the heat bank properties of green and gold bricks keep your house 2 degrees warmer in winter and a full 1.7 degrees cooler in summer? Those are Housing Association confirmed facts. Just ask Aussie legend John Eels. Hello everyone, Stuart Clark here. And you know, it just seems like yesterday that I took 8 for 58 against the Warriors at the Wacker. 
geez, they were coming out well. I might go down to the nets and have another go right now. Gee, Grandad's become so much more interesting and he's making so much more sense since It's Me Memory Replacement Therapy turned him into Stuart Clark. It's Me Memory Replacement Therapy. Uh, Roy, uh, look, uh, just a couple of items uh, before we pack it up for the week. Um, mm. Look, no show next Sunday because of Splendour. We'll be going up in the Wolf Mother mm. uh, bus and uh, spending Splendour in grass uh, at Byron Bay, uh, helping them out. So that's mm-hmm. next Sunday, no show. And the Golden Ring Show, mm-hmm. the Triple J Olympic coverage, it'll be uh, from uh, for um, weekdays from the 11th, Monday the 11th, mm-hmm. uh, while the games are on. Obviously, the regular Sunday show will be on as well. So a fair bit of li- uh, Olympic coverage to come. And we're going to be on at 4.30pm uh, uh, as part of the Duels and Linda experience each afternoon in drive time. Roy, the Golden Ring Show... Uh, I know, I know. There will be a little bit of uh, you know proselytising the cause of rugby league to the Olympic community. But what else are we expecting to get done in that? Well, look, I, I just love the thrill of the Olympic experience, HG, of, of talking up Australia's position mm-hmm. and calling Aussies home. You know, there's nothing like cause, calling calling an Aussie gold. You know what I mean? And, you know, I said earlier on that we mm. would discover stars mm. in this fortnight mm. that we never knew existed yes, and probably forget them exactly as we as quickly as we discovered them on mm. August the 24th. But that yeah. is the beauty of the Olympics. That is the beauty of the Olympics. And there's that, what, what I'm calling the X factor, that is, you know, Steve Waugh. How important is Steve Waugh going to be to the team? You know, what's it going to mean to a lot of these kids having someone well, like Steve, Steve Waugh amongst them? I know. You know, and just that incredible experience, you know, all his, the stuff he's had going in India for all that long. Now, how is that going to plug into Beijing? I don't know, but it will. Uh-huh. No, no, you're absolutely right. And getting to know the local conditions is such yeah. a big part of the war philosophy, I it think. Is. It is. It is. Look, so uh, so the there'll be is... Falun Gong classes right from day one, you'd have to imagine. Can I ask also, Is are you disappointed, as I am, by those what I've described as death-riding the Olympic tilt this year? Mm. Uh, well, I've turned a deaf ear to them and a blind you. eye, I'm, I'm telling you, because I won't have any of that talk. This is a great team. Mm-hmm. You know, sure, there have been a couple of setbacks, you know, Stefferson, uh, Yana, you know, uh, and, uh, and the, the, the yeah, Deeks kids. Uh, I mean, the, 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 sure, but, but that if, always if, if Australian teams of the past are anything to go by, this is going to lift this team even more and make them even more yes. determined, and that's what makes me proud. I know how good they're going to be, and I know how good they are, and I know they're Australian. Now, looking at the larger issue, Roy, I know one of the things that we love when we cover the Olympic Games is getting locking horns with the society itself. You know, Mm. this no-smoking edict, Mm. you know, look, it could make the society a little bit more twitchy. For sure. For Uh, sure. I see Beijing on a hair trigger. Hair trigger. Is that how you're calling Mm. it? Mm. On a hair trigger. Mm. And, uh, of course, the other thing is the no, uh, you know, uh, we love to have a bet. You're not allowed to have a bet. You know, we love to shout out. You're not allowed to shout out. We mm. love to show signs. You know, Maddie, will you marry me? That sort of mm. stuff. You're not allowed to do that. Mm. Are you seeing these games as uh, the first silent games? That uh, It is, and it'll be a watershed, won't it, when, as we go to London after that? People will love it. Yeah, whether people think, oh, well, this is the way games should be conducted, orderly. Now, the other thing is the uh, pollution. I know we've steered clear of this because, mm. let's face it, you and I love China. We don't want to run it down. No. But even now, today, I understand in the paper mm. that they're suggesting it won't be as clear, crystal clear, pristine sort mm. of environment that we have outside, say, in Australia in no. our great cities like Melbourne and Sydney. No, it couldn't be. But, but so what? Yeah, so, so, exactly. So, so what? what? You know, if, if China wants to stink, let it. You know, let's just let's just take it as it comes. You know, the, the world <clears throat> the world's not the same everywhere you go. No, true. You know, go to Vanuatu. You're going to get a different experience than you would if you went to Tokyo. It's Fair you know, and 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 that's the way it should be. Beijing is a shithole. We know that. Well, let's embrace it and say, well, we love it. I know. Now, the other thing is, could you see the games going forward as uh, with uh, with the twin prongs of silent yet completely mm. polluted air? Yes. From Beijing onto the London side. Onto London, yeah, yeah. Well, I can I can see that working because you know, let let's face it, London's had its moments when it comes to pollution. Oh, indeed, the pea soup is in the before yeah. they stop people burning briquettes or whatever. It was. Well, yeah, yeah, industrial now, revolution. I mean, it was course, unlivable. 
I know. Now, listen, hooking up with old stars finally, Roy, before we mm. move on and uh, cope with Splendour next week. Mm. Uh, you know, there's so many old stars. You know, I just want to mention a couple of names, Rog, Pound, Gosper. Mm. It'll be great to see them all again, won't it? It will. And and I'm hoping uh, his excellently, excellency, uh, Juan Antonio, might blow in just for a couple mm-hmm. of hours as well. Do and, you miss the days when he was in charge? I do. I do. I do. I do. But, but <clears throat> let's face it, we've still got Kevin Gosper. No, and still, they can't take, they that, can't away take that away from us. I or mean, the we, movement. We have the number one patrician uh, when it comes to the way anyone associated with the Olympic Games should should bear, you know, their bearing. I mean, I, people often say to me, you know, if I was to join the IOC, how should I look? I say, look at Gospa. Yeah, look at Gospa. That's, That's how you look. True. And are you just secretly, you know, privately hoping for a bit of kerfuffle so we can see Kevin at his best? Yes. I yes. want to see him holding down a, con- a press conference. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see. I want say to see him pointing, re- saying, "You're next." Yeah, when somebody releases a, you know, I don't know, free Tibet pigeon and shoots it, mm. or something like that. You know, something's bound to happen of that sort. Something you can't possibly hope to imagine now. And generally speaking, I want to see. I want to see Kevin clamping down on something. <laughs> yes, quite. And look, uh, can I ask? You know, the Orban <coughs> Nun, the Orban mm. Nun Club. Will mm. we get a chance to do some of that stuff? I mean, really cut, run, you know, after hours, away from the games, away from the ice cube, away from <coughs> the bird's nest. Really let her hair down because Beijingers, they love that. They do. They do. We've experienced that. Look, people, Aussies are going to find that Beijing is far more like the all bar none than anyone's ever considered. <laughs> and on that cheerful note, uh, we leave you with a reminder that uh, no show next Sunday because of Splendour and then the Golden Ring show from Monday the 11th at 4.30pm as part of uh, Dules and Linda's Drive Time Experience. And we leave you with a simple reminder today uh, as we hook up again in a fortnight that Triple J is spot. Bye now. Triple J. Triple J. Triple J. Triple J. Triple J. Triple J. Triple J.